Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 151 Although bonus stats were indeed something to look forward to, the rewards were undoubtedly more alluring. Other than a few that looked like traps, they all looked great. After a bit of consideration, I chose the Death Blood Ring. It was a black metallic ring adorned by red gems. Just like its name suggested, it was quite chilling. Death Blood Ring Unique Durability 120120 Equipment Requirement Level 50, Magic 100 Option All Stats 5, Magic 10 Skill Death Blood, 1 On Attack, 2% Chance to Absorb 10% of Enemy's Mana to Recover Your Mana 2 On Attack, 1% Chance to Inject Your Blood into the Enemy In Exchange for 5% of Your HP, the Enemy Falls Under Irresistible Blood Contamination Status Effect Well damn I might have to kowtow to the dead Cyclops Lord for this. I took off my gauntlet for a moment and equipped the Death Blood Ring. Although it looked a bit scary, it was also fashionable in a way. While I was looking at my hand satisfactorily, the female S ranker approached and asked with widened eyes. W where did that ring come from? Curiosity will only bring your harm. Meanwhile, the others were also choosing their rewards. I was most curious about who would choose the Cyclops Lord's golden eye and the lump of refined blue iron. In the end, it seemed they were taken by Waya and Shuna, respectively. Oh wow, this is an orb. A what? When I turned around, a golden eye was shining on her palm. I thought it was a magic material, but look. On top of Waya's palm, the golden eye ball that made me hesitant to touch it began to emit brilliant light and spin. It seemed Waya could move it as she pleased. There was something called subweapon. I didn't know about it before. How lucky. It's good that you got what you needed. D damn it a freaking rag weight, this thing's defense is amazing. It seemed Walker was satisfied with the reward he chose too. Samire, you're still waiting to choose your reward, right? Yes. We have to recover our strengths before we get out in case an event raid breaks out. I didn't know about ability users, but for dungeon explorers, they could not leave the event dungeon until they picked their rewards. The event raid would only break out after this phase. As they spent the past month clearing event dungeons, it seemed they were quite familiar with the process. W where did everyone just? What is it? An extra-dimensional storage? Yeah, extra-dimensional storage. It's my ability. With a smile, Waya lied without blinking an eye. She was currently elated from receiving a subweapon, and the rankers also looked happy to see her smile, as they didn't say much else about it. Seeing others starting to rest, I approached the Cyclops Lord's corpse. Lydia tilted her head and asked through the guild message. Are you going to put that corpse into your inventory? Ah, that's that, but more importantly, my weapon was responding to this guy. Weapon. The four weapons the Cyclops Lord was holding. As Gluttony's spear didn't eat the same weapon it already ate, it only ate one of the Cyclops Club and stopped responding. Although the Cyclops Lord's weapons looked the same, it was possible that they were slightly different. Since no one used clubs in our party, I obtained their consent and brought Gluttony's spear up to one of the Cyclops Lord's weapon. Gluttony Spear devoured the club instantly. I brought it up to the other club just in case, and it really did eat it. Ooh. Kayak. Seeing my weapon eat another weapon, the female ranker, though it was annoying to keep referring to her this way, screamed. Of course, I didn't pay her any attention and let Gluttony Spear absorb the other two. Immediately afterward, the Gluttony Spear radiated a brilliant light. Finally, finally. Gluttony Spear reached 99. 9% 9 growth. To reach 100% growth, you must imbue all of your mana into it. I can't do that now. Why are you shining then? As full of expectation as I was, I became angry enough to almost snap the spear in half. If I consumed all of my mana now, I would have to make everyone wait for over 20 minutes while I waited for two mana potions worth of cooldown time. 
it was probably better to wait until the fighting was over. With a bit of disappointment, I put the Cyclops Lord's corpse in my inventory and turned around to face the others. Everyone's done resting, right? Yeah. T that. Was that also an extra-dimensional storage? After some ire chose the final item, a message appeared in front of us. You completely cleared AS rank event dungeon. All party members received three bonus stats. You will now return. The raid boss did not appear. Some clicked their tongues while some sighed in relief. Not long afterward, we were outside the gate. The moment we came out, we found ourselves surrounded by countless guardians. What was shocking was that most of them were at least S-ranked awakened. In other words, it wasn't just Korea's guardians that were here. Behind them were soldiers armed with guns and tanks. A man who seemed to be the representative of Korea's guardian stood in the front. After meeting my eyes, he spoke. The Guardian and the government have decided that they cannot allow you to rampage any longer. We recommend that you surrender peacefully. Come one, if you were going to do this, you should have done it earlier. No, were they waiting for us to tire ourselves out from clearing a s rank dungeon? I first turned around. Wu Young Ha and one other s ranker were collapsed on the ground. Seeing as how father was taking his hand back, it seemed they were trying to do something and got beaten up. That would mean I looked at the female ranker, who was blinking her eyes in confusion. You didn't know. What? Yeah, Shin. That looks to be the case. Ha, whatever then. Just stay put, got it? Why yes. Good, she's listening. I turned back around to the man. Then, I asked. All right, first Imam, did you watch the video? I did. And you're still using force? Yes. You are bringing danger by being too confident in your strength. You entered AS rank dungeon without the country's permission. As the citizens were not evacuated, if a large S rank monster appeared and you could not defeat it, countless civilians would have been exposed to danger. Huh? You mean destroying low rank gates won't be a problem? According to the New Moon Law, Gates ranked A or below are under the jurisdiction of Guardian and Freedom Wing. What you are planning on doing is simply illegal. And it can't be helped if they let gates turn into dungeons because of their lack of ability? I asked. You will you be okay with S or S ranked gates turning into dungeons? If the three remaining gates in Korea turned into dungeons, you should know well enough that Korea will be powerless against them. Of course. We want to get rid of gates just as much as you do. We need to have a conversation. Not with such ill-planned and ill-considered method, but with a method that would secure the safety of Korea and the interest of. So you want to negotiate. They wanted to destroy S or S-ranked gates, but they wanted to keep the event dungeons A-ranked or below for themselves. That was what that oldie was trying to say. You just have to promise that you will not enter foreign countries' gates without their permission. If you do, we will spare no efforts to help you get rid of the gates. Of course, we will also take your words into consideration regarding the removal of gates. We realize that you're strong, so well put a collar on you and erase only the gates we want to erase. If you listen well, we'll even give you a couple low-ranked gates. How surprising. His words were being translated automatically. Though, it's funny to think that Korean needed to be translated. There are already no gates left in Korea, so I don't understand why no, never mind, I understand. It's probably for shares, support from other countries awakened, or something along those lines. Fine, it'll keep this short. I raised my spear and slammed it down. Other than the female S ranker, Korea's other two S rankers had their legs broken. Come at me, you fuckers. Prince is angry. He says not to kill them. What does killing mean? Killing is elemental blade. First, I shot an elemental tempest to the front. All ability users surrounding us were sent flying. Since they were all at least S rankers, I believed that they wouldn't die. S shoot. Fire. The soldiers panicked and began to shoot, but unfortunately, none of us were weak enough to be hurt by guns or cannons. Weapons without mana could not penetrate our bodies, which were brimming with mana. In fact, most S-rankers were immune to guns. 
since they should have known this already, they probably expected us to give up after seeing their numbers. If you don't stop shooting those annoying things, they'll blow them up. When they do, we won't be the ones dying. At Waya's words, the firing immediately stopped. They had lowered their tail after being threatened with death. Modern weapons did not mix well with Waya. Just by snapping her fingers, they would become ineffective and might even blow. While Waya neutralized the soldiers with all sorts of magic, I counted the number of ability users who withstood my initial attack. Although Walker and Yiyun were disarming the ability users taken out by Elemental Tempest, there were still over 50 ability users that were totally fine. To think they could gather so many rankers while we were clearing the event dungeon it seemed Korea's guardian wasn't so bad. Perhaps they considered us to be serious threats. I fixed my grip on my spear. I counted heads, so don't you think about running away. As long as you don't die, our kind healer will heal you, so relax and come otherwise, they'll make my move. Only after my shout did the rankers start moving. S rankers should be more than strong enough to fell a few buildings by themselves. Lightning, flame, arrows, restraining power, clumps of metal. All sorts of abilities were being used. Meanwhile, I extended my spear with elemental blade and swung it in an arc. I, I knew it. Weak. I think that guy actually really enjoys elemental blade. We. Ah, wind. That's mine. You poor bastards, go to sleep. Oh earth. Father's shockwave swept the area. A few ability users attempting to approach Lydia were struck by the wall of earth that suddenly popped up from the ground and were sent flying away. The area was becoming a total chaos. Only ten minutes had passed since we came from the event dungeon, but the earth was fissuring, nearby buildings were falling, and trees were being rooted. At the same time, all rankers collapsed. The army already fell back with tears. Satisfied now? I asked the man who made the offer. He had run away the moment I neutralized Korea's 2S rankers, but now that I looked, he was back. I'm satisfied. He answered. On his face was a faint smile. Geez, you didn't have to make it so difficult. I apologize, but currently, no matter what you say, you cannot become justice. Even so there are people who wish to be on your side. We just did what we could do. It seems Guardian isn't completely rotten. It is an organization formed to protect Earth. Please remember that. I smiled and spoke. If you want anything, tell me. It'll sell it for a cheap price. You know how to trade. In that case, we would like some materials you obtained inside the gate. I don't know about other countries, but Korea's ability users often cannot hunt properly from lack of equipment. It is so bad that even I was tempted by the idea of letting gates become dungeons. I'll contact you separately. Do you need help cleaning up? We already have people ready, but thank you for the offer. Rather than that, you should go do what you want to do. I'm liking you more and more. Good, that's what we'll do. I grinned and turned around. Yiyun tilted her head and asked. Shin, why are you being so friendly with that guy? What happened? You see. I looked back at my companions. It seemed Walker really was tired, as he leaned on a wall and fell asleep, while father was looking at the collapsed S rankers like he had not gotten enough exercise. Waya forgot about the rankers and were playing with her golden orb, while Lydia was treating the injured and Shuna was bringing the fainted people together. Sumire was assisting Lydia beside her with her own unique healing spell. In other words, Yiyun was the only one who went wild without fully understanding what was happening. Mm, -hmm, how do I explain this? Basically, we got an unofficial approval to do whatever we want. Yeah. What? When did we discuss that? Alright, if everyone's done resting, let's go. We have to finish Korea before the day breaks. It's already past midnight, Kong Shin. That's why we have to hurry. I snickered and retorted. Walker muttered, then grabbed his head in pain again. I couldn't tell whether that guy was smart or dumb. That day, before dawn, we took care of the three remaining gates in Korea. No one dared to bother us. 
It was just that the word revival became the most trending word on the internet. Now, it was time to leave Korea and party on the world stage. Chapter 152 When we finished cleaning up the remaining dungeons in Korea, it was 11a. Event raids did not occur once. According to Waya, the chance of an event raid happening wasn't that high. Although it was best for everyone's safety that they didn't occur, but I would have liked one so we could clearly show our skills to the masses. We were currently in Waya's private plane. Although it would have been overwhelmingly faster to travel on Latte, we all needed rest after clearing four S and S ranked event dungeons. Right when I was about to get some sleep, a thought crossed my mind. Let's go over the rewards. We promised to sell monster remains we got from A ranked or below dungeons to Korea for a cheap price. It was the same for monsters from S ranked or above dungeons, though we would selectively sell only a portion of them. I had no business with the corpses that were taking most of my inventory space. I did, however, have business with the rewards from the two S ranked dungeons and S ranked dungeons. The first was the Death Blood Ring. Although the stats it gave wasn't bad, what was more important were its effects. A 2% chance to steal 10% of the enemy's mana, and a 1% chance to use 5% of my HP to put blood contamination status effect on the enemy. While I was clearing the other three dungeons, I felt elated every time the mana steal effect activated, but unfortunately, the blood contamination effect never activated. I was curious what it would do. The second reward was a half elixir I got from an S ranked dungeon. I considered choosing a weapon to feed to Gluttony Spear, but since its growth was at 99.9%, I decided to just go with the consumable. Even if I was on the brink of death, the half elixir would restore 50% of my HP and MP and cure me of all status effects. I already had a few emergency life ropes, but it wasn't bad to have another one. The third reward was a battle sword I got from the second S rank dungeon. There was no need to describe it. It was Gluttony Spear's food. Since none of us obtained much from this dungeon, we cleared the S rank dungeon with our cheeks puffed. This dungeon was amazing. Humanoid monsters appeared in this dungeon, and its boss was actually a group of ten hunters. They each used different weapons as well. In other words, the rewards had variety to them. As it was an S rank dungeon, they were also extremely valuable. The reward I got was Perfect Hunter Epic Durability 360360 Equipment Requirement Strength 150, Dexterity 150, Magic 150, Mid Rank Crossbow Marksmanship Options Strength 15, Dexterity 15, Magic 15, Adds Wind Attribute to Attacks Using Bolts, Attack Speed 20%, Automatic Reloading, Can Create Mana Bolts with 10 MP. Skill Invisible Shooter, Your Bolts Become Invisible, and their sound and presence disappear. Added 30% bonus to speed and attack power. It was a crossbow that drew the jealousy of all party members. It was the only epic grade item that dropped from this dungeon. Though it was an epic item, it wasn't showy. It was made out of some black metal and looked rather coarse, but it still could not hide its luxurious aura. I realized it with Wyatt equipping her orb. It seemed this crossbow was being treated as a subweapon. Just by having it hanging by my waist, it raised my stats. The precious strength, dexterity, and magic stats had all gone up by 15. I really wanted to give this crossbow a kiss. I'm done with going over the items, so what should I do now? I feel like I was forgetting something. What was it? I tilted my head and looked around. It was rather quiet, as everyone was resting in their own way. I then caught sight of Walker. He had just woken up from sleep and was busy cutting and rearranging the rag he obtained from the Forest of Rage. I blinked and looked at Walker, trying to figure out why he had caught my attention. Then, I realized. Walker, what about Yua? Today's a school vacation. Walker looked somewhat happy. I got a phone call saying that I didn't need to guard her today. Phone call. From your mother. Don't point your spear against someone's neck. Sorry. You made an easily misunderstood expression, so I overreacted, uh. Just how much do you like your sister? What are you talking about, all appas love their younger sisters. 
I puffed out my chest and declared proudly. Walker glared at me with the expression of a dead frog that was hit by BB gun pellets. I should show you an example. Go see how Brightman treats his younger sister. He has a younger sister. I'd rather not meet her. I know what you're worried about, but she's different than what you think. No, I understand. Unlike her appa, she's extremely kind, right? That's how it usually is in novels. Unfortunately. Sorry, but you're completely wrong. What I meant was, she isn't as childish as Brightman. Walker snorted and said. His voice had become slightly higher. Sophie doesn't try to act cool like Brightman. She understands her position extremely well and is quite reasonable for her age. Plus, her entrepreneurial talent is much higher than her older brother's. Most everyone in the Brightman conglomerate agrees that the one who should lead the group should be Sophie, not Joshua. Oh. Why was I so quick-witted about these things? I grinned and asked. You like her, right? Don't joke. I already told you, I grew up with Brightman. She naturally became a younger sister to me. Unlike Brightman, she didn't consider me a servant. No, maybe she knew but didn't treat me that way on purpose. After all, she hates the way Brightman orders people around. Walker still had a serene expression. Was I wrong? I became uncertain, but it seemed Walker didn't want to tell me the answer, as he turned away and went back to working on his rag. I felt like there was something more, but since he wouldn't tell me, I reluctantly gave up. After becoming bored again, I opened my inventory to put Gluttony Spear Awa. Wait. What I was forgetting about was evolving Gluttony Spear. My mana was completely full, and we would arrive at Japan in 20 minutes. Since it would take time to fly to the event dungeons, I should have enough time to restore my mana. Good. I put Gluttony Spear down on the plane's aisle. Because of its length, people might get hurt if I didn't. Let's go. I roused my mana and injected it into Gluttony Spear. Soon, it began to give off a crimson glow, which got more and more brighter as I injected more mana into it. Eventually, when most of my mana was injected, it gave off a similar brilliance as it did in the Forest of Rage. W what's happening? Wow. I closed my eyes, then opened them back up. My spear had changed its appearance. The shaft became slightly thicker. The spear blade was longer and sharper. It was completely red from the tip of the spear blade to the edge of the spear shaft, while strange engravings were inscribed onto it. Crimson Gluttony Spear evolved to Crimson Chaotic Spear. A weapon that wasn't completely absorbed has been accumulated as growth. Crimson Chaotic Spear's growth, 47%. Crimson Chaotic Spear Legend Durability 450450 Attack 7000 Equipment Requirement Strength 150, Dexterity 150, High Rank Spear Technique Options All Stats 10, Strength 25% Adds Chaos Flame Attribute to Basic Attacks Evolves by Absorbing Weapons By Injecting Mana and Chanting Transform, it can be changed to its Choker Form to transform it back into a spear, you can inject mana and pull it back. Legendary. I see, so that's the grade that came after Epic. Plus, its growth was already at 47% since it was unable to completely absorb a weapon before. It seemed like the Holy Sword was more amazing than I thought. Not to mention, even with these crazy stats, it could still evolve. I tensed and grabbed the spear. Instantly, my body was overflowing with strength. All stats increased, and my strength increased by 25%. It felt like the first time I obtained Zeus' true name. I murmured, trying to quell the sense of omnipotence. Do people on the higher floors all have weapons like this? No, probably not all of them. I could tell instinctively that this wasn't a weapon people can get just by climbing the dungeon for a long time. Even so, explorers on the highest floors should have legendary weapons and maybe even legendary equipment. Without a weapon like this, it must be impossible to break through the levels of the dungeon they were in. All in order to beat their world's enemy, which might not be possible, even with such weapons. Good. Imcom now. 
I planned on picking up my spear, but I changed my mind. It would be more convenient if I put it back in my inventory, but I would lose the strength I temporarily gained. Although there wouldn't be a huge problem since it wasn't too different from when it was Gluttony Spear, I couldn't handle a weapon that would change my physical ability in such a way. I had to carry it around as much as possible to get used to it. I looked at Chaotic Spear's option again. Transform. I already had a choker translator. I hoped people didn't think I had a strange hobby. I was quick to take action. I injected mana into the spear and quietly murmured, Transform. The spear immediately transformed to a reddish-black choker, which I promptly equipped. As it was still treated as being equipped, my strength was the same. Looking at the mirror, I found that the two chokers didn't look so bad together. At that time, Waya peeked her head out into the aisle. After seeing me, she asked. Shin, what's that choker? Something more important than my entire fortune. What? Waya's face was full of question marks. However, she didn't ask anything else. An in-flight announcement had flown out. We will soon arrive at Japan's Kansai Airport. Please make sure your seatbelts are fastened. Once we landed, I would be able to show Waya what it does. With a grin, I sat back down on my seat. After being emptied, my mana was slowly filling back up. I could feel that my body was itching for a fight. What kind of dungeons would Japan have? While drinking a mana potion, I thought of the dungeons that were waiting for us. Chapter, 153 Japan didn't have any S-ranked gates, but it did have three S-ranked gates. In addition, it had eleven dungeons ranked A or below. Although it was less than Korea, considering there were only about 200 event dungeons left scattered through Earth, Japan strangely had a lot of event dungeons. Right, similar to Korea, Japan had unnaturally many event dungeons. Because of what happened in Korea, the media portrayed us as a lawless group. What was interesting was the reaction of the civilians when we neared an event dungeon. Whoa! Holy shit, it's Dragon Knight. He came to Japan first. Take good care of us. Most of the people that saw us were cheering us on. I was rather bewildered by their unexpected reaction, but I soon realized why. To them, this place is their home. Imagine that a dungeon appeared in your backyard, and the only weapon and defensive equipment you had was a kitchen knife and a chopping board. Doesn't that happen often? It's like that whenever you're cooking and suddenly forced into battle. Ah, for the record, you're better off barehanded. The one holding the knife and the chopping board isn't a monster like you, but an ordinary civilian. Of course, you'd be better off with a knife than just your fists. To ordinary people, Monsters were only targets of terror. Plus, event dungeons appeared wherever they wanted. They could be in the middle of deserts or heavily populated areas. When dungeons became field dungeons, the government would aid the original residents, but it didn't change the fact that they would have to move away or live with monsters right in front of them. Both options were extremely stressful. Since someone volunteered to get rid of the dungeons, it made sense that they were so happy. Just like that, we cleared our first dungeon with an unexpected welcome. After eating a late breakfast in a nearby restaurant, I went to get Lade back, as she had gone back to the dungeon during our flight here. When I came back, Waya approached me with a piece of paper. Shin, I planned out our route. If we're lucky, we should be able to take care of all of the dungeons other than the S-ranked dungeons. But, we have to ride your wyvern instead of my plane. I refuse. Please, Lottie. Amem. When I scratched Lottie's neck and pleaded, she elongated her neck and began to contemplate. Waya made a dumbfounded expression, but I silenced her by giving her a thumbs up. Then, I scratched Lottie's neck more. It was a special technique of mine. If ordinary people tried, they would only have their fingers broken. You'll do it, right? Waya only says that because she knows you're much faster than a plane. Amem. Latte, you're the only one I can rely on. You'll let us ride you, right? F fine since it's hero's request, he'll allow the inept humans to ride me. Thanks, Latte. Mmm, -hmm, scratch me more, hero. Shin, you've gotten pretty used to handling women, haven't you? I didn't think you'd call Latte a woman, Waya. 
since we were in the middle of a city, we naturally caught the attentions of countless people. After they recognized Waya and me, it became even worse. In any case, I took the paper from Waya to memorize the route, when someone called me from behind. Appa, here. A cute little girl handed a box of chocolate to me. It was similar to the chocolate mushroom snack one from Korea. When I took it, the girl smiled and shouted. Eat this and defeat those monsters. Ah, thanks. To be honest, I was surprised. Not even a day passed since we caused a ruckus in Korea, but even a little girl knew us. As I thought, mass media is scary. That aside, I patted her head to thank her for cheering us on. Thanks. It means a lot. I like this snack too. Eh hee, I like it too. But I don't have anything to give you ah, do you like meat? Hey. You're not going to dismantle a monster here, right? What are you talking about, Waya? Meat is a universally loved food. Because Waya jumped in and stopped me, I had to give up on giving the little girl meat. I ended up giving her the cup ramen from my inventory instead, which she happily received. After the girl left, the others came out of the restaurant as well. It seemed they were watching the little girl from just now, as Lydia's expression was shaking. Shin, you like little girls. I knew you'd say that, but no. She must have seen me somewhere. She just gave me a snack. Lydia still looked like she didn't believe me, but Waya grinned and supported me. It's been a while since the world began to revolve around monsters and ability users. High-ranking ability users are global superstars. Not to mention, we displayed the flashiest performance. Since Japan's time isn't that different from Korea's, they already had morning and nighttime news to hear about us. It's understandable that a little girl like her recognizes Shin. You've gotten famous, Kong Shin. How about riding Ally of Justice on a cape? You'll be able to appeal to the masses better. You shut up, Walker. We're just doing what we can. What justice? I replied to Walker's teasing bluntly. I opened the box of Japanese chocolate mushroom, grabbing a handful and throwing it in my mouth. It was delicious. In Korea, we'd already clashed with Guardian once. It served as a show of force, not only to Guardian but also to Freedom Wing and various governments. Although it was a secret plan by the Progate Destruction Faction within Guardian, we'd still sent all of the rankers to the hospital. It was clear that we were unstoppable. As for what happened, I presumed it went like this. Within Guardian there were those that agreed with Dungeonifying Gates, while there were those that disagreed. The former seemed to have the upper hand in the conflict, but when we made a commotion, the Gate Destruction Faction took the chance to crush the other faction. Then, they showed the result to the whole world. A conflict between a small number of people, who wanted to destroy the Gates, and the Guardian, who wanted to create dungeons to reap benefits. If they could overwhelm us, they could have used us as the sacrificial lamb to calm the voices of dissent. Guardian was the world's protector. They would push the narrative that we were terrorists, and they would relate our cause to the act of terror as well. Although it was absurd, the victors always had the stronger voice, while the losers could not say anything even if they were blamed for crimes they didn't commit. However, Guardian lost thoroughly. It was exactly what the Gate Destruction Faction wanted. The Produngeonification Faction lost in physical strength and they also lost their cause through my interview. Could they stop us again in such a situation? The reason Guardian was bigger than Freedom Wing was that it was an organization created to protect ordinary civilians from the monsters. Now that their claim that Dungeonifying Gates would protect humanity crumbled, they had no means to stop us. Even so, they wouldn't be able to do a complete 180 and start destroying dungeons ranked A or below. If they did, it would be the same as bowing down to Revival, which only consisted of eight members. In the end, the only thing they could do was to leave us alone. They would pretend not to care no matter what we did and would focus on clearing S-ranked gates to show their good side. It was the best way to recover their image. What I didn't expect was how glorified we were. I clearly told the representative from Korea's Guardian that I would cheaply sell the monster corpses ranked A or below. However, he had announced this grandly. 
In other words, we became Santa Claus, who got rid of various countries' gates and gave them monster remains. In a way, it wasn't wrong. At first, I was unhappy that he made such a big deal out of it, but we didn't have much use for low-ranked monster remains anyway. Since his announcement increased our reputation, we also decided to cheaply sell monster corpses to Japan. In truth, it was possible since no one in our group was lacking money. Perhaps for that reason, our popularity in Japan reached the heavens. Up until now, the only Asian SS ranker was China's XI and Xiaomei, but Revival had four Asians. They especially seemed to like the fact that its leader was Asian. Of course, there were the Korean-hating Japanese who went out of their way to leave hateful comments on every news about us. However, they were only an extreme minority. Plus, even though Samayer was hiding half of her face with a mask, people suspected that she was Japanese from her frame and facial structure. Revival's popularity in Japan was only natural. That said, Samayer was a half, and her frame and facial structure were both different from a traditional Japanese girl's well, since she was still Japanese, I couldn't say anything about it. After Japan, our dungeon breaking 2 continued to Britain Brightman was nowhere to be seen, France, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, and other Western European nations, all in just two days. That said, there were only 18 gates in Western Europe. Korea and Japan really did have an unnaturally large number of gates. With how big Russia and China were, they had 23 and 28 gates respectively. Even so, they were relatively few compared to Korea and Japan. Are we mostly done with Western Europe? Other than Italy, yeah. Though, that could be considered Southern Europe. Italy. When I was young, I had visited there with father for training. Of course, back then, surviving and getting stronger were my only goals, so I didn't visit any tourist attractions. While I was reminiscing about Italy, Waya whispered in my ear. You know that there's an SS ranker in Italy, right? I heard that person is quite sexy. I'm not interested. Besides, France also has an SS ranker, but we didn't see him. There's no guarantee that we'll meet all the SS rankers. For the record, the SS ranker is a man. Oh. I became irritated. I don't know what kind of a crazy person used the word sexy to compliment men, but I didn't like it. It wasn't because I was expecting a sexy female ranker. Lydia began glaring at me too. I wonder how handsome he is. I'm looking forward to it. Go ahead. When I grumbled, Waya laughed. I'm kidding, so don't worry about it too much. I'm only focused on a single man right now. I don't have the leisure to look at other men. That's a funny joke. Huh, sorry. My face reddened and I turned away. Because Waya's hit and run came at the most unexpected timing, I couldn't get out of it well. Thankfully, if I just sat in this awkward atmosphere, someone came to take care of it. Who? You're too close to Shin. Oh Earth. The other girls, of course. With a sigh, Waya got off. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, kids. I won't do any foul play. Anyways, start getting ready. Italian ranker I wonder what kind of a person he is. No, I'd rather prefer that I didn't meet him. Murmuring to myself, I got up. Italy had a S-ranked event dungeon. To be honest, I couldn't wait to get the S-ranked dungeon's rewards. I transformed the choker into a spear and pointed it at the direction of Italy. Let's go. To Italy. I want to see the leaning tower of Pisa. I want to see Rome and Firenze. Venice's gondola rides. And Undine's. We aren't going there as tourists. And no matter how hard you look, you won't find any Undine's. T there aren't Undine's. No. If you want to see them, look in Neo Venezia. Chapter, 154. We safely took care of most of the dungeons in Italy. Although Samire was a bit sad that there wasn't a dungeon in Rome, after I told her that we could all come back to visit after we were done clearing event dungeons, she seemed happy. The only remaining dungeon was the S-ranked dungeon. Why did it appear in Venice's waterway of all places? Eh really? Didn't this happen before? Right, wasn't Windermere like that too? 
Waya seemed to have thought the same thing as she shrugged and nodded her head. Yeah. If it turns into a field dungeon, Venice would be done for. In various ways. I finally understood why Italy's media was especially supportive of us compared to other countries. It would be more detrimental to have Venice's event dungeon turn into a field dungeons than to lose a few low-ranked event dungeons. I grinned and urged Latte on. All right, let's go lessen their worry, Latte. Gra. Latte answered with a spirited shout and flew faster. With her astounding speed, it only took 20 minutes for us to reach Venice. There, I met with someone I didn't think I'd meet. Im Luca Bruno. You all really are extremely beautiful ladies. On top of the bridge near Venice's event dungeon, Italy's SS ranker was waiting for us. Like Waya said, he was very handsome. His slightly messy hair and shirt looked showy, and he seemed to be in his mid-twenties. In any case, the powerful mana I could feel from his body certainly told me that he was an SS ranker. Oh, how beautiful. I've seen many women across the world, but I've never seen such dazzling beauties. Hike. When Luca Bruno extended his hand, Yiyun and Ludia, who were bad with strangers, made frightened noises and hid behind my back. Samire, who didn't like flattery, frowned, while Shuna looked a bit happy and Waya was laughing. For the record, Pleen got tired from clearing the A-ranked or below dungeons, so she wasn't currently here. Beautiful. I haven't heard such compliments recently. Of course. I've heard a lot about you, Miss Mastiford, but you're even more beautiful than I imagined. Your eyes are like rubies, only prettier. Waya smiled at Luca Bruno's compliment and said to me. Did you hear that, Shin? He said they're prettier than rubies. Well I don't think he's wrong. Oh, then shouldn't you tell me that? No matter how beautiful I am, I won't know if you don't tell me. Sorry, but I'm not the type to say something like that. Imagine if I said those words to you. PFT. Puhaha. If you're going to laugh, don't ask. Why a burst into laughter? Since an SS ranker praised her on their first meeting, it was no wonder she was feeling good. I looked at Luca Bruno, who looked confused at Waya's laughter and sighed. Im Revival's leader, Yun Wawu. Nice to meet you. Oh, I apologize for my rudeness. I've been distracted by the beauties. My bad, Dragon Knight. Im Luca Bruno from Italy's Guardian. As you probably know, I am an SS ranker. Luca Bruno explained why he was here. It seemed he wanted to help us clear the S-ranked dungeon. Although I was confident we would have no problem without him, it wouldn't hurt us for him to help. Just when I was about to nod. Sorry, but we'll have to decline. Waya answered with a smile. Then, she did what I couldn't understand. She approached me and linked her arms with mine. I was dumbfounded by her sudden approach, while Ludia jumped and Samire made a cute shriek. If someone joins in, ITLL be hard to do this. You understand, right? Ah, we can still provide the monster corpses from the dungeon. Not for free, of course. Oh, sorry, I almost made a mistake. No problem. You already did, but you should know with this, right? Waya gave him a wink and turned away. Let's go in, guys. Yeah. Her voice was light but resolute. We followed her as if we had all been enchanted. The moment we entered the dungeon, however, she gritted her teeth and growled. Shin, next time you see him, kick his balls. What, why? That bastard tried to make a move on me. His ability has to be hypnosis or charming. I'm sure of it. I felt his mana moving stealthily. Not just to me, but to all the other girls. You didn't feel it. What? Damn, I didn't notice it at all. It was completely out of my expectation. To think Luca Bruno would scheme on all the girls in my party. I finally understood what Waya meant when she said he already made a mistake. However, it was hard to believe he used his mana without me noticing. How could I not notice? Considering Waya noticed but I didn't, his ability was surely a mental type ability. Yiyun, who remained silent the entire time, nodded her head at Waya's words and added. Yeah, it was scary. 
For a second, he looked like Shin and was attractive. I thought about calling Master, but the feeling disappeared instantly when I used Bleeding Heart. To confuse a man like him with Shin. Ludia berated Yiyun with a cold voice. I didn't even know why Yiyun was being scolded. After all, she cancelled his ability immediately with the special breathing method she learned from Duka. Hearing Ludia, Waya asked her. How was it for you, Ludia? Don't call me Ludia. I felt something, but I shook it off with my holy power. Mitaris is the goddess of justice and love, so an ability that brings false love is useless against me. I didn't think you guys were so weak that you would fall for such an attack. If you asked me beforehand, I would have helped you shake it off. You you, I think he had me, Ludia. When Wayauni refused and exerted her mana, I snapped out of it. I protected myself with guardian power afterward, but I was afraid to say something. That man is scary. Listening to the others, Sumire was gritting her teeth. It seemed she didn't feel anything. Was it the power of Athena's true name? Regardless, I was certain she was extremely angry. Unlike her usual calm self, she was shouting curses. He's the worst. The worst, worst kind of men. Right. People who try to control other people's feelings are the worst. Smiling on the outside like nothing, while trying to that bastard, I want to kill him. Waya gritted her teeth and joined hands with some ire. Several white fireballs were floating around her. Bewildered, I shouted. Why didn't you tell me? I would have immediately cut off his lineage. Hoo hoo, my son's all grown up. He probably turned out like that because of you, Kong Young Gong. After being with you, I finally began to understand Kong Shin. You're the real enemy kook. Looking at how angry I was, Waya surprisingly made a small smile. I knew you'd react this way, so I came into the dungeon first. We're finally in a good position with everyone supporting us. Imagine what would happen if you harmed an SS ranker. Everything would have gone back to square one. It doesn't matter. It's not like I started it to get everyone support. It's more important to pay back the indignation everyone suffered. Yeah, but I'm happy with just your words. Though, I'm a bit unsatisfied that you didn't refer to me specifically. Everyone is my precious friend and comrade. When I emphasized that point, Waya made a dumbfounded expression, but soon smiled again. My grip on my spear became loose because of her lovely smile. Yeah, let's see how long you'll run away with those words. Because I couldn't get myself to face her smile, I turned away. I knew what she wanted from me but I couldn't answer her at the moment. So instead of answering her, I urged everyone on. Let let's go hunt monsters. We need to clear this dungeon fast, so I can go kill the bastard. Like I said, you can't kill him. Did you hear what I said? Plus, he probably ran away already. Regardless, Luca Bruno's scheme enraged us all, and motivated us to clear the S-ranked dungeon faster. The dungeon itself was quite peculiar. Was it because it appeared in the waterway? The dungeon was half-submerged in water, while salamanders and fish-type monsters stood erect inside the water. They took turns jumping out and shooting high-pressure water that seemed to be powerful enough to cut diamonds. Without Waya, it would have been difficult. In other words, with Waya, they were of no threat to us. Her powerful flames easily evaporated the water they shot out, and we took the opportunity to kill them. Please forgive us, we don't want to die. We learned the human language just to apologize. Screw off back into the water. Waya's flames raged, sweeping through the fish spouting nonsense. Because she focused all the bonus stats she gained through clearing event dungeons in magic, her flames had gotten incredibly powerful. They could even instantly turn S rank dungeons monsters to ashes. We were busy trying to catch up to her performance. Although she laughed it off in front of me, it seemed she was extremely angry about what Luca Bruno did. In the end, we managed to clear the dungeon in just two hours. After we defeated the two boss monsters, a large salamander and a large fishman called Sawajin 1, we chose our rewards. For the first time in a while, my contribution was second. In any case, I chose an item called Crystal Lair, as it had a fancy name. An underwater tent. 
A high-class household tent that makes underwater as cozy as the surface? I picked an item that looked good, but a strange item popped out. As its option, it provided an unlimited supply of purified water and bread. With this, I would be able to live underwater forever. Though I didn't need to at all. I stored the puzzling item in the inventory and waited for the others to finish. If a large monster appeared, Venice would be done for. Don't jinx us. Although people nearby should have already been evacuated, Venice's beautiful waterways, bridges, and buildings would all be destroyed. Shivering at what Yi Yun said, I waited for the message. You completely cleared the S-rank event dungeon. All party members gained three bonus stats. You will now return. TSK. Someone just clicked her tongue. Who was it? With a new mystery, our dungeon breaking in Italy ended. As Waya expected, Luca Bruno was nowhere to be seen. I wanted to go find him and break his legs, but there were still event dungeons we had to destroy. For now, I had no choice but to let him go. Brightman and now Bruno. The number of people I had to beat up was increasing. That was good. Why are all male rankers like this? Why do all of them care so much about women? While leaving Italy, I asked. Lydia then retorted bluntly. Shin, you need to be more like them. Lydia's right. You need to care more. Sorry, my bad. No, now that I thought about it, there was a normal rancor. The American man in the place we were currently flying to. Pepper, how about Leon Pepper? He's gay, I think. Are you saying people who don't act like Brightman and Bruno are all gays? Isn't that too much? While Waya's controversial claims continued, our plane firmly headed to America. One of the two SS dungeons on Earth was waiting for us. 1. DND Reference. Chapter 155. For a month, Waya led the other guild members to clear event dungeons, and 20 days passed since I joined in. There were now only 48 event dungeons left in the world. Just my bonus stats are over 150. I have a lot of skill points saved up, too. Sitting in a New York hotel, I looked at my status. Name, Kong Shin Race, Human Sex, Male. Class, Elementalist Sub Skill Collector, Tamer Title, Zeus Rank, Gold 9. Level, 54. HP 43 8204382 MP 35 46035 460 Strength 215111 Dexterity 20579 Constitution 19466 Intelligence 3259 Magic 200109 Charm 8799 Luck 3949 Normal Skills High Rank Martial Arts LV6 Peruta Mad Typhoon LV1 Midrank Crossbow Marksmanship LV9, Midrank Gale Track LV2, Midrank White Lightning Consecutive Strike LV4, High Rank Heroic Strike LV2. High Rank Provoke LV5, Divine Speed Master, Return LV4, Heavy Armor Mastery LV5, Midrank Dash LV7, Peruta Circuit LV8, Soul Guard LV8, Dimensional Travel LV1, Overwhelm LV2, Deific Manifestation, Death Counter, Riding. Class Skills High Rank Spirit Mastery LV2, High Rank Spirit Aura LV9, Mid Rank Elemental Control LV9, Mid Rank Elemental Contract LV9. Mid Rank Thunder Tempest LV2, Mid Rank Elemental Blade LV8, Mid Rank Elemental Tempest LV8, Thunder Beast LV3. Subclass Skill Endow Skill, Taming LV3, Spirit of the Collector, Spirit of the Tamer LV3. Speed 45%, Strength 40%, Charm 15%. 148 event dungeon clears, 9 event raid clear. Accumulated bonus stats, 195. Current skill points, 21. No matter how generous I was, these were not the stats a level 54 explorer should have Walker, who had cleared event dungeons with me for the past 3 weeks, only had half of my total stats. In addition, I currently could not bring out the full potential of my stats. After all, my stats had gone up by over 150 in the past few weeks. I could constantly feel my body getting stronger and adjusting itself, but I did not know when it would end. Did you sleep well, T? 
Hey, Pepper. I put my mask on just in time and replied to Pepper with a sigh. Then, I got up from my bed. Pepper was standing in front of the open hotel room door. Don't be so bland. It's our reunion. Then again, it's been too soon. I didn't think I'd see you again so soon either. I retorted unenthusiastically and drank some water. Pepper looked around the door and blurted out in surprise. What, the blonde miss isn't here? Don't think Lydia is always sleeping with me. She's calmed down a lot. Plus wouldn't it be more of a problem if she was here? You would have just walked into the two of us. You're right. I was just too excited for today. It's today, right? Yeah, it's today. I don't know who, but you sure have a good informant. After finishing my water, I slammed down the cup on the table and twisted the corner of my mouth up. Right, today was the day we entered the SS-ranked dungeon in Lower Eastern Manhattan. As you already know, America suffered a lot from Antelope Canyon's dungeonification. Because of it, they've thought a lot more about gates than other countries. This time, when the gates appeared in mass, they already decided to destroy all gates, even the lower-ranked ones. Pepper explained as the two of us went on the hotel's elevator. The fact that Team Revival was working to destroy Gates also influenced them. You know about it, right? That day we owed a huge debt to all of you. Debt, you say? I naturally thought about Sierra, but that wasn't what was currently important. I let Pepper continue. You see, America actually has this amazing ability user. She's a daughter of an esteemed family, and she can tell if a large monster will appear when a gate disappears. He began to talk about her. With her help, we began destroying the gates where giant monsters wouldn't appear. Guardian, Freedom Wing, and Rogues all worked with the same goal in mind. Of course, we didn't have the time to destroy all of them. We really have to thank you for helping us destroy them. For such a large country, America didn't have that many gates. Plus, monsters appeared from two of them. Thankfully, America's Guardian had already told us about it. As thanks, we sold them monster corpses for a cheap price. This way, it would be a fair give and take. When they told us that they knew where boss monsters appear, I already suspected Sierra had a hand in it, but I didn't think she was so deeply involved. It seemed she was doing her best for her country as well. If only she would continue to do so. Good morning. Eh, Pepper's here too. Don't tell me, he really is. I was surprised seeing his face so early in the morning too. Glad to see you're healthy, Flame Witch. Anyways, T. To cut to the chase, America is very supportive of you guys. We empathize with your cause and we want to help you. Many Americans are touched by your bravery to go into an SS-ranked dungeon, too. So, as an SS-ranker, I can't miss out, can I? If I did, I would be losing my honor as a guardian. That's why I'm here. We're just doing what we can. Cool, how cool, T. Listening to Pepper's somewhat sarcastic praise, I joined the others. As we didn't want to go into an SS-ranked dungeon when we were tired, we each took some time to rest and check over our equipment and potions. We also cleanly used up the bonus stats we got. After a day, we were in our peak condition. Even Shuna, who was the weakest among us, could just barely be considered an SS ranker in terms of physical ability. On the other hand, Waya and I, who were the strongest, could probably only be described as SS rank. Is everyone ready? Yes. I got changed and I'm all ready to go. Well, I feel like I won't die anytime soon. I'm looking forward to it. Everyone seemed to have done maintenance on their equipment, as they were shining. As for me, I looked incredibly suspicious with Otta's secret, ordinary shorts, and a t-shirt. However, I had several rings on my fingers and a bracelet that changed into a sturdy set of armor whenever I injected mana into it. On my ears were fancy earrings, and two chokers on my neck. It was then that I realized something. Don't I look like a delinquent? No, thanks to your mask, you only look like a weirdo. Damn it. But with your handsome face and good body, you look okay. That's not a compliment. 
The SS-ranked dungeon was located in a park in Lower Eastern Manhattan. Because the gate appeared right at the entrance of the park, the entire area became off-limits and the most elite guardians were protecting it. Although Guardian and Freedom Wing rankers planned to enter it initially, they gave up after we stepped in. To be honest, even if we didn't come, it was uncertain whether they would actually get organized enough to go in. After all, they were still having trouble clearing S-ranked dungeons. Only two S-ranked dungeons had been cleared by groups other than Revival. It went without saying that the other SS-ranked dungeon in Russia was also left alone. The dungeon's difficulty is growing faster than ability users. Waya said bluntly. I don't know when another wave of event dungeons will come, but at that time, an SS-ranked dungeon might appear. One day, even an SS-ranked dungeon might appear. To prevent that from happening, we had to let ability users grow. The easiest way to do that was I glanced at Pepper. If it was him, I felt like I could trust him. I asked Waya for her opinion through eye contact, and she shrugged in response. It meant it wouldn't hurt to try. I immediately asked Pepper. Hey, Pepper. Do you want to join our team? Oh. You guys are recruiting. Sorry, T. America would be in danger without me, ha ha ha. But I like you and your friends, so we can talk about it again when another SS ranker appears in America. Yeah, take your time. As I expected, Pepper refused my offer. I didn't blame him. He should prioritize his country. However, if he didn't become our ally completely, we couldn't appoint him as a dungeon explorer mm, how troublesome. At that moment, Sumire stepped up. If you're hesitant to appoint him to the first dungeon, how about the second, Shinnim? No, Sumire, that's. I feel like he's trustworthy. Shinnim thinks so too, right? I do but. There weren't many ability users like Pepper, who was pure and strong. He had a good personality. Even so, we didn't watch over him for a long time, and if he decides to say anything about it. Waya then spoke. Soul contract. Ah. You UK you cruel bastards, kook. I remembered it again, cook. Soul contract cost 500,000 gold. Although it originally cost 1 million gold, neither were prices I couldn't afford. I couldn't say it was a small amount, but with the first dungeon and beyond, it would be easy to make that much. Pepper, I want to make an offer. Man, thank you for thinking so highly of me, but persistent men are hated. I want to give you something as a temporary member. Temporary member? Yeah, we can talk again after the dungeon. How about it? Pepper looked to be in thought. Soon, he nodded. All right, since my friend is thinking about me so much, I can do that much. Good. Then let's focus on the dungeon from now. I smiled and led the crew to the dungeon. However, my mood soon plummeted. The met the one person I didn't want to meet. Hero Nim, I wanted to see you. This person that called me Hero. Plus, she was the only one on Earth who could randomly contact people with telepathy. Sierra Kinex. Wearing a see-through dress and surrounded by countless guards, she was waiting for us near the SS rank gate. I wanted to go back home immediately, but I held myself back. I didn't really want to see you. Can you make some time for me? We can talk over a cup of tea. No. Then it'll be rude and steal a bit of Hironim's time here. Please forgive me. I want. Even at my blunt rejection, Sierra didn't even blink. No, she had her eyes closed anyway. Her voice didn't shake at all. No, it was telepathy. Mm. She used telepathy as if she wasn't phased at all. You became more reliable and imposing since the last time I saw you. You also became extremely strong. In such a short time although I can't see with my eyes, I can tell. How sad. I heard about Hironim's accomplishments. They were truly hero-like. My eyes weren't wrong. You really are perfect. Knowing that what I did is to your liking makes my stomach churn. It was hard to refute what she was saying. I had to use the influence my name had in America. Even though I told Sierra I wouldn't do as she wanted, I ended up using the fame she helped create. 
However, I also couldn't deny that it was the best choice. At the very least, I was confident that the method I chose produced the least amount of sacrifice. Hieronym created conflict within Guardian and is becoming renowned throughout the whole world. Even without my help, Hieronym could create a worldwide organization of ability users. Their conflict has nothing to do with me. In addition, they'll refuse anyone who asks to work for me. I was too insolent. I acted as if Hieronym needed my help when Hieronym is already outstanding I finally understand. I just want to do what I can by Hieronym's side. I only want to protect Earth against the danger it faces, and unite ability users to a single organization. That is all I want. Though, if Hieronym would let me give birth to a child, I would be extremely happy. This girl was insane. Completely insane. She wasn't even listening to me. I'm going to say it again. I have no plans to accept such heavy responsibilities. I'm going to continue doing what I can, protecting myself, my family, and friends. I can't confidently say I've been doing that, but at least from now, that's what I'll do. Though, the number of friends I have to protect have been increasing recently. When I was done talking, it seemed Sierra had paid attention to me this time, as she smiled. Even though she couldn't see, she looked at me accurately. It was kind of frightening. Hoo-hoo, I can't wait. The world will be saved by Hero Nim, and dirty humans' conflicts will disappear under Hero Nim's rule. And I yes, I would like to think of our child's name beforehand. It seemed world domination was the goal she had in mind for me. I was sincerely disgusted by Sierra's ecstatic expression and shouted. I will never, ever, never, ever, never get in a relationship with you, not even if the world ends and we're the only two people left in the world. If you want me to be more straightforward, I will. Nothing will happen between us even if I have to die. At my shout, people began to clap. Other than Pepper. All of the members of Revival were clapping. Yep, I recorded it. It'll make Lydia listen to it while she's sleeping. Don't even think about it. I took the recorder from Waya and also shouted at Sierra. If you're done, screw off. See can I have your contact information? Never. But sometimes, I want to hear Hieronym's voice. Don't talk like a kidnapper and screw off. T then, can I call you next time? Thank you. You really are kind. Now that I thought about it, she already knew my address. This girl only asked me to get my permission, and she was pretending that I did when I didn't. For a moment, I got curious as to how she'd call me since she wouldn't be able to use her telepathy over the phone, but I felt like asking her would only make the situation worse. As such, I chased her and her guards out with a little show of force. Ah, if you destroy this gate, a giant monster will appear. Be careful, Hieronym. I'm not thankful at all. Just like that, the nine of us with the addition of Leon Pepper came to challenge the SS rank dungeon. Although my physical condition was best, my mental condition was this was all Sierra's fault. Chapter, 156. You entered the event dungeon, Insect World. Hike. The moment the message rang out, Waya screamed and jumped at me. Feeling the sudden warm touch and the sweet scent, I looked down at Waya blankly. At the same time, the others, who were also looking at me blankly, said with cheerful voices. We won't be able to expect help from Waya, but let's do our best. Daughter, spiders aren't insects. You won't see them here, so don't worry. Ajushi, I'm bad with both spiders and insects. Yep, I knew she'd say that I couldn't help but sigh. Waya, I understand how you're feeling, but this is an SS rank dungeon. Without you, we'll be in danger. Yeah, sorry I'll try my best. We haven't even run into any monsters yet. How long are you guys going to stick together? Seeing Waya not getting off after saying she'd do her best, Lydia raised her eyebrows. With a bitter smile, I slowly separated from Waya and turned around. Then he'll go survey the area on Latte Latte. This event dungeon prevents monsters with strong mana from entering. Tamed monster, Latte, could not enter the dungeon. It's just one thing after another. Since Pleen wasn't strong enough for an SS-ranked dungeon, I sent her back. Latte, on the other hand, 
could raise my strength by twofold just by being with me. Unfortunately, she couldn't enter the dungeon. She probably won't be in any danger outside, but without her, we might be in danger. No, that was the old me. My stats were increasing by the day, and I had also learned Mad Typhoon. Even before that, my companions and I defeated the SS-ranked Flame Drake. There was no reason we couldn't clear this dungeon with our current strength. It wasn't good to underestimate ourselves. What's up with her? What is she scared of all of the sudden insect? Ah, you'll understand soon. The moment I answered Pepper, the ground fissured, almost as if a secret base was hidden underneath. Then, a black head emerged from it. It seemed like the head of an ant, only magnified thousands of times. Waya then jumped on me again. I, I might not be able to do it. Can I just stay like this? No. While I shouted at Waya, father charged forward with his spear. His spear vibrated strongly as shockwaves gathered around it. The ant discovered father and pointed its giant head, creepy eyes and annoying antennae at father. Then. Men. 1. I know how you're feeling, but you're a spearman, father. Father struck his spear down vertically at the ant's head. Surprisingly, the ant easily received father's spear with its hard carapace. Even as its head grinded against father's vibrating spear, not even a scratch appeared on it. It really had an incredibly powerful integument. Ha! However, father didn't back down and shot out even more powerful shockwaves. He was probably the best in the world in bypassing his enemy's powerful outer defense and attacking its internal system. The ant twitched for a moment before its head exploded and shot out its bodily fluid. Kayak. Because the terrified Wyatt blocked the bodily fluid with her flames, it didn't splash on us. On the other hand, father looked like he had gone swimming in a pool of it. He didn't seem to mind at all, as he gave us a thumbs up. Did you see that, son? Yes, father. It was a perfect battle. I inattentively complimented father, when Yiyun suddenly hushed us by putting her index finger over her mouth. Something's coming here in large numbers, Shin. In large numbers. I promptly focused on the tremor of the ground and the presence of mana. There really were enemies gathering here in large numbers. The problem was that they weren't just coming from land. When I looked up, it was exactly as I expected. I could see a black cloud swarming toward us. That was. A swarm of locusts. Hook Kaya. In the end, Waya couldn't overcome her fear of insects and exploded. The scarlet flames she shot out pulsed like waves and swept over the swarm of locusts heading toward us. Don't come, don't come, don't call me. Girls who hate insects are scary. I inadvertently nodded my head at Walker's murmuring. An indescribably vast scale of flames one that I had never seen before began to burn the locusts that numbered close to a disaster. Each of the locusts that died crashed on the ground, ringing a large thud. At the same time, a spicy fragrance spread out, and I had to stop my drooling father. There are others coming. Yiyun shouted hurriedly. Damn it, I had briefly forgotten about it because Waya's attack was so overwhelming. I could feel countless presences from the ground as well. The moment I realized, I stuck my spear into the ground and shouted. Thunder wave. Kia. Kashikashakasha. The damned insects sang in response to my lightning attack. No, please stop your giving me goosebumps. Just like the ant we initially killed, they appeared from within the earth. Most of them were ants, but there were also beetles, worms, and larvae. I didn't think insects were that creepy but seeing them magnified thousands of times, I could undoubtedly say they were one of the most frightening and creepy monsters I met. After Waya saw them, she began to shake. I, I'm scared, Shin. I'm scared. You're doing great, Waya. Just focus on burning the locusts. It'll take care of the rest. Waya, she got it. Waya tightly shut her eyes. Meanwhile, the others were killing the insects in their own ways. Ha! Huh. I didn't think there were monsters who could survive a bullet from my desert eagle. How fun! O oh Earth, punish the creatures who stole thy blessings and defied thy providence. They're tough. 
but they aren't looking at me even when I hit them. At Yiyun's words, I looked around. No matter how much my companions attacked them, the insects ignored them and were charging to a particular place. It seemed their target was my father. Ha ha ha, come at me. I, Kong Yung Gong Nim, will take you on. Father shouted a line from a 90s movie and faced the incoming insects. His shockwave ability was an extremely good match against the insects, as it destroyed the insects' insides. What was the difference between father and the other party members? It was obvious. Father was covered with the bodily fluid of the ant he killed. Plus, he was being updated in real time with other insects' bodily fluids. Father, you need to wash yourself off. The ant's bodily fluid is attracting the insects. Don't we have to kill them all anyways? Why don't you get covered in it too? Thanks, that's exactly what I thought you'd say. If father volunteered to take the aggro, it was the duty of a good son to make use of him. Father said hell bait them on his own. Ludia and Pepper, reduced the number of insects coming from afar. All the close-ranged attackers, stay near father and attack the insects. Ah, uh, Shuna, you stay and protect Waya, Ludia, and Pepper. Got it. Good idea. After explaining our strategy, I took Waya off of me and gave her to Shuna. Then, I shot forward with my spear. Pika was already infused in my spear and flickering with lighting. As I surged up the power of Pryuta circuit, a whirlpool began to form. I shouted. Ruyue. Yay, it's been a while since I materialized. I'm going to use a skill. Will you be able to run? Yeah. I immediately jumped on Ryu's back. As Ryue ran forward, I thought, there were just too many of these insects. Not even mentioning the swarm of locusts covering the sky, there were hundreds of insects coming toward us. Hundreds of SS ranked monsters. What a what an enjoyable battle. I immediately activated Gale Track. With the increased speed, I instantly sent a beetle in front of me flying. Aura. Every time I sent an insect flying, Ryue accelerated, and the charge became stronger. With the effect of the armor and tattoo, our charge was already amplified by 110%. Every time we sent an insect flying, it was rising by an additional 7%. After the tenth insect, the insect's bodies began to explode just by making contact with my spear. I freely changed the trajectory of the charge and killed the insects. If you wanted to defeat Revival, defeat Kong Shin with just this much, you were gravely mistaken. Hap. I let out a spirited shout, realizing that Gale Track's power had reached its peak. In other words, we had already sent over 30 insects flying. My original strength was amplified by Gale Track, which was then amplified by 110%, and was then amplified by another 200%. Although I would have been stronger if I was on Latte, there was no reason to discuss what could have been. I was glad that Ryue was here. What are you, a tank? Wow! he's so strong. Oh earth, protect him from injuries. How many insects did I kill? After running wild in the front line for a while, I suddenly felt the earth trembling. I could only imagine that the second wave of insects was coming. I took care of the insects nearby and got ready for Gale Track's final blow. Wind energy gathered and strengthened Mad Typhoon. Come, he'll send the leading monster flying. I held my spear tightly and adjusted my stance. I was prepared to kill any monster with one blow. Then, it shot up from the ground. A head with a terrifying horn, a leg like a crimson thorn, a segment, a leg, a segment, a leg, a segment, a leg I couldn't help but shout. A centipede. Hey, you're not an insect. Damn, if you're going to do this, name yourself Bug World, not Insect World. Now that I thought about it, I felt like there were non-insects in the ones I already killed. Isn't that guy getting caught up on the wrong things? T that's what's cute about him. I got it, flame witch, but you open your eyes and say that. Die, you stupid arthropods. I placed my rage in my spear and released its storm on the centipede. The centipede that had finally appeared was instantly blown into pieces, dying without even completely pulling itself out of the earth. Just the part that was outside was well over 20 meters long. By the looks of it, 
not even half of it was out of the ground. Looks like it's a semi-boss monster. I placed my hand on the centipede's severed head and placed it in my inventory. Checking with mana detection, around the third segment, I noticed a mana stone. Good, the mana stone of an SS-ranked dungeon semi-boss. This is what makes dungeon runs exciting. Guys, there's something other than locusts flying here. While I was drunk on the feeling of victory, Pepper's rather tranquil voice rang out. Something other than locusts. I raised my head and looked at the sky Pepper was pointing toward. I could really see another swarm of insects that weren't locusts. I inadvertently cursed out loud. God damn Asian giant hornets. 2. It seemed the fight would only get worse from here. I heard Asian giant hornets could kill humans, but those guys were enlarged thousands of times. That's cheating. The biggest cheat was. You bastards don't even live in America. Ignoring my shouts, the Asian giant hornets flew toward us like arrows. It was the start of a second round. Chapter, 157. Waya, take care of them. BBs. H hornets. Hua. I heard something collapsing. Walker quickly reported. Oi Mastiford stopped moving. That's not good. I wanted to make Waya snap out of it, but the Asian giant hornets were too quick for me to afford to look away. I had to block the hornets while Waya was recovering. Ruyue, please. On. Crystal cloud. Ruyue's elemental magic created countless crystals of ice in the air. Invisible particles formed a foggy cloud and continued to expand. Is this your ability? How amazing. It's the ability of the wolf I'm riding. Her name is Ryue. Keep watching, it's only the beginning. The swarm of hornets flying toward us entered the cloud. Immediately, they slowed down. The ice crystals had stuck to their bodies and wings, slowing them greatly. But that was only the beginning. Pika, materialize. I've been waiting. Spirit aura was cancelled, and a beauty wearing a black dress appeared in midair. She knew exactly what she had to do. With a smile on her face, she held a whip of lightning. I put a mana potion in my mouth and shouted. Cook them all. Chain lightning. The crystal cloud covering the hornets turned into a storm cloud in an instant. The wave of lightning raged in the vast sky and burned the hornets. However, there were still many hornets, and there were still insects crawling out of the hole the centipede created. Even though they were all SS-ranked monsters, they really had no manners, popping out in groups instead of one by one. Waiting for the mana potion's cooldown time to end, I swung my spear. Father, Walker, and Yiyun also decreased their numbers. I was glad that I brought Pepper along. He had a handgun in each hand. Other than when he reloaded, he constantly shot out bullets. His attack was magnificently stopping the advance of the insects. It was then that Waya snapped out of it. Waya, help. Sob, I hate this place so much. It seemed she was feeling better now that she had woken up after fainting. Even as she sobbed, she held up her staff. Her staff became heated red, and her mana instantly surged up. The mana then traveled back into her body and flowed to her orb. The golden eye constantly blinked and radiated light. Then, I felt that the insect army all turned their attention toward Waya. Everyone, get ready to attack. Waya shouted and threw the orb up. I realized then that it wasn't Waya that drew their attention, but the orb. The orb repeatedly flickered with golden light before the light burst out into all directions. Kaya. Kijijijijai. Both the insects that crawled out of the ground and the insects that flew in the sky stopped in place. I thought it was some sort of a restraint magic, but Waya then said something absurd. I tied them all together. The ones exposed to light will all take 10% shared damage for the next 10 seconds. That's a cheat skill. It's the orb's ability. That's a cheat item. In any case, I couldn't waste the 10 seconds she gave us. I poured my aura into chaotic spear. A reddish-black chaos flame began to burn above the spear. I gave the rest of my mana to Pika and shouted. Pika, attack just one of them with full strength. 
Thunderbolt. The lightning pika shot out then burned a nearby beetle until not even its ashes remained. The bugs that were exposed to the orb's light really screamed and began to burn. The other members also used this opportunity to each attack one target with full force. Kia. Ka. The effect was astounding. They didn't just stop moving, they were dropping dead. Watching the Asian giant hornets die was especially enjoyable. I then focused my energy in my spear. Before the 10 second period passed. This is the final blow. In front of me was an especially large ladybug. Because of Pika's powerful lightning, it still couldn't move properly. I aimed my spear, which was burning with a black flame, at it, and thrust it right on top of its carapace. Kia. The strongest move I could do was heroic strike. With my entire strength concentrated on the chaotic spear, the spear easily pierced through the ladybug's carapace and completely burned its body. With this, my mana was completely empty. However, I could deal a powerful blow to it within the 10 second why it gave us. Other bugs should have received heavy damage as well. I would never have thought that the chaos flame effect, which I only thought was an attribute, could turn into black flames when I put in my pure aura. I had only just noticed because I had always used spirit aura before. As I thought, it wasn't a legendary grade weapon for nothing. Since the ladybug was burnt up in an instant, it was clearly extremely powerful. Phew, I'm exhausted. After taking my spear back, I immediately struck down on the ground and held myself up. The mana potion was still on cooldown, but the health potion had a different cooldown. However, before I could take it out and drink it, I felt myself feeling invigorated. Lydia had healed me. I raised my head to thank Lydia. And I froze. My god. Shin, what did you do? What is this, son? You're amazing. Everyone looked dumbfounded as they added their remarks. Since I was just as dumbfounded, I couldn't really say anything. It was only now that I realized the effect of Chaos Flame when used without Spirit Aura and with Pure Aura. Kia. Kijijijijiji. Kogagagaga. All the bugs that had been exposed to the orb's light were burning with black flames. No matter how much they screamed or hit their bodies against the ground, the flames weren't extinguished. They screamed endlessly and struggled against the flames, but with the damage they took from the other party members, they didn't last long and collapsed. The countless army of insects had all died. Only then did the black flames recede and disappear. Waya shouted. That's a cheat skill. And no. It's Chaotic Spear's ability. Damn, she returned the words right to me. It wasn't that I didn't know Chaotic Spear added Chaos Flame attribute to my basic attacks. I just thought it was an ordinary attribute bonus. I never even imagined that it would be stronger than Pika's Spirit Aura. I had only just realized this attribute's strength. A flame that couldn't be extinguished until the target's death. Wasn't that Amadi no, any more was dangerous. Kayak. Damn. Suddenly, the ground began to shake and fissure. The SS-ranked monsters' corpses were falling into the crevices. Although these precious items were falling into nothingness, we couldn't grab them. The ground under us was fissuring too. Kook, oh earth. Lydia's staff let out a radiant light. The splitting earth subsided and the crumbling earth rose back up and supported us. It seemed it was not an easy feat even for Lydia who could control the earth, as she was sweating profusely. Lydia bit her lips and shouted as she struck her staff on the ground. T there's something underneath. Since all the bugs are dead, it's probably the boss. Please don't be a spider, please, please, please don't be a spider. At Lydia's words, Waya also began to sweat and murmur. Her prayer seemed to have worked as a long and giant horn popped up. Then, a second horn popped up. Its imposing head appeared, covered by a helm, and it stood tall with its armored body that was dozens of meters tall. Almost like a god of death from hell, ominous black flames were covering its body, making it look all the more horrifying. He let out a low and long roar. Jung. Its voice was full of dignity and instilled terror in its listeners. Although I wasn't affected thanks to my overwhelmed skill effect, I shook and shouted. 
Hercules rhinoceros beetle. I is that something to be so surprised about? Leaving behind the somewhat serious Yiyun, I tightened my grip on my spear and swallowed a mouthful of saliva. It didn't look simple at all. Not only was it ginormous, but the black flames burning around it added additional pressure. Could it be that it's no, how could that be? Because of its size, it took a while for it to completely leave the ground. However, we stood around in a daze, waiting for it to make its appearance. No one thought to attack it. We experienced facing an overwhelming enemy during our fight against the flame drake. The reason we were staying still wasn't because of that. We oui, we. Oui. Then, it finally finished coming out of the ground. It felt like the ground had heated up. It raised its head and observed us. Almost like an emperor of the sky, it looked down at the ground. The black flames covering its body raged as if to burn us for just looking at it. Because of the flames increasing pressure, we had to fall back a bit. Thinking that we were afraid, it let out a satisfied roar. Jung. Then, it collapsed. You defeated the event dungeon's boss monster, evil rhinoceros beetle lord. Four million gold is distributed evenly amongst party members. You received 500,000 gold. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. Just like that, we cleared America's SS ranked dungeon. Cyclops Lord's Golden Eye really was amazing. Chapter 158 If I didn't kill the ladybug with Chaos Flame, defeating the boss might have been more difficult. However, I burned the ladybug thoroughly, and the boss also appeared with flames on it. I had only found out with this incident, but it seemed Chaos Flame could deal continuous damage to its enemy in addition to being inextinguishable. With how big the Hercules rhinoceros beetle was, the flames were dealing fatal damage to it. If I tried to set it on fire without all that, it would have been impossible with my mana. The party members' stamina and willpower would have been worn down as well. We couldn't tell because it was already dead, but we might have had even more trouble depending on how it fought. We could easily see that its horn would deal fatal damage to anyone hit by it. He must have also had other means of attack. Of course, everything was impossible to know now that it was dead. We could say we had gotten lucky. I believed it was thanks to the good karma I gained throughout my life. Then, I put the boss corpse into my inventory. Everyone was focused on me. Son, hurry up and choose your reward. Don't make your father die while waiting. What a fun father, T. K. But a reward. Choosing it. What are you talking about? And what did you do to that beetle? There must be other things you find strange. He'll tell you all about it when the raid ends. Of course, you won't be able to run away after hearing everything, Kukuku. Don't threaten someone while you laugh maniacally. Also, choose your reward. Since everyone was getting impatient, I turned my attention to the reward list. 1. Golden Scarab's Tattoo. After seeing the first item on the list, I chose it immediately. I didn't even check the other rewards. A tattoo. I had to have it. It wasn't like an equipment, which I would replace eventually. Tattoos raised my stats permanently. I wouldn't be losing out by choosing it. Immediately afterward, the back of my left hand became hot. I took off my gauntlet and looked, where I saw the tattoo of a golden scarab. You obtained golden scarab's tattoo. Your luck and defense increase by 20%. All defense type skill effects increase by 50%. Positive effects will be added to all reproductive activity. Just as I expected, the effect was amazing. Since the luck stat could not be increased with bonus stat points, the only way to increase it was through items or titles that raised all stats. The Golden Scarab's tattoo raised my luck stat by 20% on top of raising defense by 20%. It even amplified defense type skill effects. I could only imagine how powerful dragon skin would be now. Plus, this positive effect to all reproductive activity I wasn't doing any reproductive activity, but I was sure having it wouldn't hurt me. One thing I was curious about was that this golden scarab's tattoo was shaped differently than the evil rhinoceros beetle lord. Of course, it wasn't too important of a matter. When I was stroking my completed scarab tattoo in satisfaction, Waya screamed. 
There's nothing but insects. Waya, you remember what this dungeon was called, right? Don't forget there's an event raid afterwards. I hate it, I hate everything. In the end, everyone other than the last person finished choosing their rewards. A helmet for father, a ring for Waya, and even though no spiders appeared at all, there was a dress made out of spider silk, which Yiyun chose. It seemed it wasn't what she was expecting, as she screamed when she received it. She didn't even show me what it looked like. As for Ludia, even though she could choose a better item, she chose the elixir. If I remember correctly, she would always choose elixirs, half elixirs, mana elixirs, or the like whenever they appeared as event dungeon and event raid rewards. Although full recovery items like elixirs were rare and she wasn't lacking in equipment I couldn't help but ask out of curiosity. Ludia, why do you always choose elixirs? Unlike the consumables from floor shops, they can be used on other people ill use them when Shin's in trouble. Why yeah, thanks. But you have to use them when you're in danger too, okay? Un. Damn, I was the idiot for being unable to guess the reason. Because I wasn't expecting that to be her reasoning, I became flustered and fell back. I thought no one had heard it, but Walker was already making fun of me. Love is always sacrificing oneself for one's partner. You two share a beautiful love. Don't push your twisted ideas on love onto me. What should I do? If things continued, I felt like I really would end up as Lydia's husband. Feeling a chill run down my spine, I turned around toward Lydia. As she was looking at me with clear eyes, I turned away quickly. How's everyone's condition? Perfect. Same. You can even manipulate when monsters will appear. Yeah, he'll tell you about that soon, too. Really, if I didn't fight with you in Antelope Canyon, would be extremely suspicious of you right now. But since you said you'll explain it to me properly, he'll wait. I'm also in a perfect condition, so let's go. Walker took out a potion and put it in his mouth. Then, he chose his reward. The world immediately began to crumble. At the same time, a huge energy gathered in mid-air, forming the appearance of a monster. An event raid has broken out. SS rank 50 man raid, Evil Mantis Queen. As your party cleared the event dungeon, you have the priority. The park outside the dungeon appeared along with the struggling remains of the insect world. In the midst of their boundary, a large mantis began to raise its body. Waya made another Manoa-like scream. Immediately afterwards, her scream was buried by an ear-splitting high-pitched voice. Humans, you dare chase me out. Send me back. Send me back now. We trembled at the chilling voice. SS ranked raid boss power was added to the furious voice to the point that it almost could directly affect our mind. Do not involve me and my children in your battle. Send me back. My head rang. As for father and walker, whose mental defense was much weaker than mine, they staggered without being able to carry themselves properly. This guy, or rather, gal for a 50-man raid boss, she was too full of spirit. However, something she said caught my attention. Right, she had just said the word children. The event dungeon completely disappeared, and we looked at the giant mantis who destroyed the entire park. Looking at its lower body we could tell that it was unnaturally bloated. My god, she she. She's pregnant. She's bearing eggs. Hero, hero, hero. You dog with a collar on your neck, it's you. You brought me here. Cut the bullshit, mantis. You were already here the moment the event dungeon appeared. A A, ah. I curse you. I curse all of you. I curse him and this world. Since it's come to this, I will eat all of you. I will not let anyone who threatens my children live. Its front leg shined, and boundless mana began to gather in it. It was then. Hero. Latte flew down toward me. She was waiting for me nearby. I jumped on her back and patted her. Latte looked at the mantis and growled. That bitch prevented me from coming in. She was trying to hide from other monsters. That bitch is a deserter. Sorry, I'm not sure what that means yet. You cowardly bitch, you dare separate me from Hero. Next time, I will not leave Hero alone. 
Uh, mm -hmm, yeah, thanks. It seemed she was furious that she couldn't enter the dungeon. I again patted Latte, who was flapping her wings furiously. Could it be that not all monsters were on the same side? Was that a good news for humans? I could think about that later. I had to focus on something more important right now. If an SS ranked raid boss gives birth, the result will be catastrophic. We need to defeat her here no matter what. Even as Waya said that with a trembling voice, she held her staff and orb and prepared herself for battle. Cyclops Lord's golden eye began to shine again. It seemed she was gritting her teeth and holding on at this unprecedented event. Walker also stopped joking and murmured. A mantis egg sac will hatch hundreds of tiny mantises. It could be less since it belongs to a monster, but it could also be more for the same reason. With how bloated her stomach was, she would give birth soon. If she escaped, hundreds of mantis monsters, ones that received the power of their SS ranked raid boss mother, would be born. Just thinking about it was chilling. Well stop her. Father said. His spear was vibrating from accumulated shockwaves. Well stop her here and now. Yeah, she's undoubtedly weaker than the flame drake. There's no reason we shouldn't be able to defeat her. I also added to father's encouragement. Although it had a stronger spirit than the flame drake, it could be understood as she was a child-bearing mother. In truth, we couldn't leisurely look at her. Mantises had wings. Although it was only my speculation, she probably could fly with them. That's how monsters were. There were wingless monsters that could fly, so how could winged monsters not fly? As such, we had to end it as soon as possible. It'll go on ahead. Latte. Wings of light formed from black flames. Latte spread her wings out and soared into the sky. She was already extremely fast, but she had gotten even faster. When I looked back out of curiosity, black flames were burning on her black wings. It was a skill she had never shown before. She was furious. Son, stop her front leg. Ill attack her legs. Ill join in, second master. I, ill protect you too. Ill go behind her to attack. Ill attack on my own too. The close ranged attackers charged toward the mantis. It seemed like she was far away because of her towering height, but in truth, she was quite close. That was just how event raids worked. In only a moment, everyone had reached her. Surprisingly, the one who sent the signal for attack was Waya. Eat this. When the golden eye flashed, a ray of light shot out toward it. When it hit the mantis left front leg, it exploded. Kia. A beam. How many skills does that thing have? That's it. Hurry up and go. I imbued my spear with aura and let chaos flame burn up. Looking at its enormous size, I felt like I was Gulliver who had come to a kingdom of giants. Ruyue, Pika. Block its front leg. Okay. Got it. My dematerialized elementals replied reliably. Feeling them drawing out their elemental power, I smiled and shouted at Latte. Charge at full speed. I've been waiting. Latte really accelerated instantly and charged toward the mantis face. However, the mantis reaction speed was also great. Before I could stab my spear into its face, its front leg quickly flew toward me. I will harvest your power. You dare. Freeze. If I hesitated even for a moment, the charge effect would disappear. I believed in my elemental's powers and without even turning around, I stabbed my spear, burning with black flames, in its face. Its front leg was paralyzed by Pika's lighting and froze from Ryu's ice. As a result, it only cut through the air. Critical hit. Kayak. Flames, flames won't extinguish. I'm not done yet. Latte quickly accelerated and flew behind the mantis, leaving a trail of flames behind. Because she was so fast, the wind was hurting my face. Hero, I'm turning. If I'm late even just a little, the others will be in danger. Aim for her face and continue charging. I shouted bluntly and put Aura into my spear again. When we were charging toward her again, her entire body shook. You you. It's dangerous. 
she's emitting a powerful aura. It's going to explode. Hero, D. It was undoubtedly the skill she was initially trying to use. I thought it was cancelled, but it seemed she had finished gathering mana. Her left front leg, which had half blown up from Waya's laser, glowed with a red light and flew toward me. Because of Latte was going too fast, I didn't think she could dodge it. Even my elementals could not do much against it. I thought quickly and even more quickly acted on it. Clicking my tongue, I kicked Lottie's back. My strength was powerful enough to affect Latte, who was flying at full speed, setting her off course and crashing into the ground. I won't die, so come catch me. Dragon skin. I used my defense skill and flew toward the mantis. Although my speed was halved when I used dragon skin, with giant wolf's tattoo and Hermes' true name, I was 45% faster. With my dexterity stat, I couldn't be said to be slow. You'll die. Ha, huh, why don't you try? My spear, burning with black flames, and the mantis front leg, glowing red, clashed. The front leg instantly exploded into pieces, then rained down on me as sharp thorns. There was nowhere to run. Kukuku, I will have your power, hero. It is the punishment for ridiculing a mother. The mantis voice rang out unpleasantly. I couldn't reply as I was too busy defending against the raining thorns. It was extremely painful. Oh Mataris. Protect him. I heard Lydia's voice clearly amidst the sound of thorns endlessly striking my armor. I could feel my drained vitality rising in an instant. I opened my eyes and shouted. Latte. On my way. I safely fell on Lottie's back. Using my mana, I pushed out the thorn stuck in my armor and raised my spear. I then heard the mantis shocked voice. H how can you be alive after that kahak? Before I noticed, one of her legs was severed and she was leaning to one side. Of course, it wasn't my doing. Because her fury was entirely focused on me, my companions could easily attack her. Why you you dare? It's your turn now, mantis. Black flames blazed around my spear. When I focused all my energy, a new layer of white flame appeared over the black flames. The black flames tried to dye the white flames black, while the white flames only protected its territory. After fighting for a bit, they became silent, almost as if they acknowledged each other's existence. The other's attacks died down momentarily. The mantis queen had started to shoot small thorns like it did before. Mere humans dare to humiliate this mantis queen. You shall not be forgiven. Next time you see me, I will be your god of death. No, it was a feint. She had opened her wings and were about to fly away. However, we would not let that happen. Burn. Why is great mana distorted the whole space? Then, crimson flames flared up from the mantis queen's wings. My elementals also attacked her wings. Don't you dare run away after hurting Shin. It'll make you incapable of hurting Master anymore. Ryue and Pika burned and froze her wings with their elemental power. They had also grown strong enough to fatally wound an SS ranked raid boss. In only a moment, her wings were broken. Her attempt to escape failed. Now that she had lost her wings on top of one of her front legs and back legs, she let out a furious roar. Kaya. I curse you all. Why did I have to come here? Why did I have to hurt so miserably by mere humans? Hero, hand over your power. Since you brought us here, pay the price with your life. This time, her right front leg stormed toward me. I charged at it to stab my spear in it, but the front leg backed away while dancing crazily. When I looked down, Pepper, who was armed with a minigun, was shooting at it while laughing. Madam Mantis, you're a million years too early to challenge humans. Ho ha 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 ha. Kayak. I had things I wanted to say to Pepper's remark, but now wasn't the time. Because of an ability user's natural physical strength, he was unaffected by the gun's recoil and had perfect aim. After being struck by hundreds of bullets, the mantis front leg could not reach me anymore. Now was my chance. I had to make use of this opportunity Pepper created. Eat this. It's an attack made out of 50% of your hated hero substance and 50% of chaos. 
I aimed my spear toward its face, where the black flames I previously shot out was still gnawing on it. With this blow it'll end it. Ah! Why must we disappear? Why must we lose our place? Why must I die to the likes of you? My children. What about my children? Kayak. Sorry but we're busy looking for a way to survive. I gritted my teeth and shot my spear forward. Almost like they never fought, the white and black flames amicably pierced the mantis' throat. Just like that, the mantis' neck fell off. Event Raid Success Six of Earth's dungeon explorers and two independent dungeon explorers, a total of eight dungeon explorers has successfully completed an event raid. This great achievement increases the rewards greatly. You obtained three stat points for completing the event raid. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. 1. Dimensional Travel Magic Book. 2. Return Magic Book. 3. Soul of Battle Blade. 4. Elixir. 5. Mantis Queen's Guardian Dagger. 6. Mantis Queen's Battle Scythe. 7. 3 million gold. 8. Wild Dance of Fresh Blood Technique Book. After I saw the reward list, I fell from exhaustion. Similarly, Latte flapped her wings slowly and landed. Now that I thought about it, Latte did a lot today, even using a skill I had never seen before. Although it was to save her, I had even kicked her I stroked her head. Sorry, Latte. Did my kick hurt? It's okay, hero, as long as you stroke my head a bit more. The hero is quite skilled at the head stroking technique. I can feel my fatigue disappearing. I smiled at Lottie's words and stroked her head like she wanted. Perhaps because she was my pet, but I found it cute that she could not be honest with herself. Shin, are you okay? Hurry and pick your reward, Im Curry. Kook. Sun. Shin. Since I took the Mantis Queen's attack previously, it seemed everyone was worried about me. Lydia should know my condition the best since she healed me before, so I didn't know why she was running at me with such teary eyes. Well, I guess it's okay since it's cute. And you, I only just realized, but aren't you calling my name too freely in front of Pepper? If he runs away, you better go catch him for me. Chapter, 159 After the raid ended, I honestly just wanted to sleep. Fatigue had built up from consecutively clearing an event dungeon and an event raid, and the Mantis Queen's words wouldn't leave my mind. The world and the invaders. The relationship that I thought was simple did not seem to be so anymore. It seemed the monsters didn't come here on their own accord. There was an existence controlling them from the shadows and forcing them here. It was already confusing that monsters were hostile to each other, but there were more things to consider now. Hurry up and choose your reward. Wait, let me take care of the risk factor first. I put my hand on the Mantis Queen's corpse and put it into my inventory. Pepper, who was watching, narrowed his eyes and muttered. The flame drake we fought before. All right, let's choose our rewards and go eat. I openly changed the subject and turned my attention to the reward list. Then, I was surprised. To think dimensional travel and return would appear like this. I already knew that there were few ways to obtain them. So Event Raid was one of them. It makes sense, I guess. SS ranked Event Raids are rare. Guild Revival's members all knew about Dimensional Mercenaries from my explanation. Since all Yiyun needed was more achievements and getting a title of an incarnation of a god, she probably wouldn't be interested in these. The one who would be interested was probably. First, I chose my reward. Although Wild Dance of Fresh Blood was tempting, Spirit of the Collector was shouting that the third item, Soul of Battle Blade, was a better item. After a bit of hesitation, I chose the blade. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, it was a small silver sphere. Not to mention, it looked rather familiar. Right, there was no doubt. It was the same shape as the elixirs I've gotten from 5th to 50th floors. I checked the item description just in case, and it was indeed a consumable item. Feeling a bit doubtful, I swallowed it. 
Your strength and dexterity increase by 10. You learned low rank blade rush. Using the skill and charging forward will create sharp blades from your body using your mana. Upon reaching your target, all blades will be shot toward the target. As strength, dexterity, and skill level increase, the blade's damage will increase. I was already surprised that it raised my strength and dexterity by 10, but it even gave me a skill. Not to mention, it was a charge type skill. If Gale Track was a multi-target charge skill, this skill was a single target charge skill. I was always slightly apprehensive about Gale Track, as it took time 29 targets to be fully charged 200%. With this, I could focus on damaging one target, while still having the 110% amplification for charge type skills. Ichem. Okay, return. While I was checking my item and its effects, it seemed the others finished picking their rewards. Dimensional travel and return went to Father and Waya, respectively. Father said he chose dimensional travel because it seemed harder to obtain, while Waya planned to choose return from the beginning. When I asked her why, she answered. I got a clearer information. When I solo clear the 80th floor, I can choose to go back to level 50 and start on the 50th floor of the first dungeon. An administrative guild's guild master told me, so I'm sure. Level 50. If you're falling by 30 levels, you'll lose a lot of stats, HP, and MP. I pretty much made up for it during all the event dungeon runs. More than I expected, in fact. Ah. She was right. She started clearing event dungeons a month before me. She had gained about 250 bonus stat points. Excluding HP and MP, it was equal to about 50 levels worth. Although it should be higher, it seemed there was a limit to the bonus points event dungeons could provide us. After clearing 200 event dungeons under S rank, Waya couldn't get bonus stats from those dungeons. She could only earn bonus stats from dungeons that were at least S ranked. Furthermore, the amount of bonus stats she was getting from those had also decreased. I was surprised she had cleared over 200 dungeons, but since I was nearing that number, I couldn't say anything. Since we found out that the bonus stats obtainable from event dungeons were limited, being dimensional mercenaries was that much more attractive. Since Waya's desire to improve herself was as great as mine, she had wanted to become one the moment I told her about it. She couldn't give up on the first dungeon either for the same reason. It would make her stronger. Of course, it would still be true that she would get weaker, but Waya would be able to enter the first dungeon with high stats, and she would be able to obtain the dimensional travel magic book from solo clearing the 50th floor's Wendigo. Since her level would decrease by 30, she might be able to grind it as well. Now that I thought about it, clearing 200 event dungeons and raking in stat points should be something only possible for early dungeon explorers like us. In other worlds, there were probably people like us, who raked in stats when monsters first began to appear. In other words, the moment that the world changed was the most dangerous time, but also the most opportunistic. Though different worlds must have been in different situations, it shouldn't have been too different. I don't know what's going on, but is everyone finished? Oh, uh, yeah. I remembered that there was someone here, whom we couldn't share the joy of getting rewards with. Since Pepper was looking at me with an extremely curious expression, I first decided to leave the area. Soon, the story that the SS rank gate disappeared would spread, and things would only get more tiring if the media began to pester us. A few hours later, Pepper became a second dungeon explorer under some ire. Using Soul Contract, we made him promise to not tell anyone about dungeon explorers. Once another SS ranker appeared in America, he would have to join revival and clear event dungeons or event raids when they happened. Furthermore, when he leveled up and obtained the right to appoint another explorer, he would have to get the majority of revival's members' agreement before he could make someone an explorer. This did not apply to just Pepper, but to all of us. Right. It seemed Waya was a bit dissatisfied that I made Yiyun into an explorer on my own. Waya and I were fairly closed back then, so she was unhappy that I didn't ask for her opinion on the matter. Since I felt a bit sorry, I agreed to this clause. Of course, we didn't make anyone else use a soul contract, but we knew that no one here would renege on a promise. So you've been hiding an immense secret like this, T. Once Pepper entered the dungeon and came back, 
he couldn't hide his surprise. He checked his status window or opened his inventory as he continued to make exclamations of surprise. With a grin, I told him. With your ability, you should be able to climb to upper floors quickly. You'll get stronger as you level up, too. My god, T. You can call me Shin. My real name is Kong Shin. Shin well then, friend, you can call me Leon. Since we're now friends that share the same fate. Why yeah. Pepper seemed to be overly excited. There was no music, but he was dancing to some beat. Ha ha ha. Good, monsters hidden in some mysterious space. I can't wait. Other than me, it seemed all the dungeon explorers had strange quirks I made a bitter smile. After making an ally in America, we left to clear the remaining event dungeons. Guardian and Freedom Wing weren't just playing around either, as they cleared some dungeons ranked S or above. In the end, on the 58th day since the event dungeons appeared, there was only one event dungeon left on Earth. It was the SS-ranked dungeon in Russia's snowy mountains. The reason that it was the only remaining dungeon was simple. It was because whoever the Guardian and Freedom Wing sent never returned. When Revival began to tour around the world to clear event dungeons and received an unexpectedly positive response, Guardian must have felt impatient. They didn't want to believe that a small group of fewer than ten people could undermine their group. There was only one way for them to recover their reputation. It was to conquer an SS-ranked dungeon before us. As a result, Russia's SS-ranker, Francis SS-ranker, and over fifty other S-rankers joined to attack Russia's SS-ranked dungeon. Of course, this all happened without public knowledge. The reason we couldn't see Francis SS Ranker when we visited was that Francis Ranker had already gone to Russia. We only found out about everything when we arrived in America. As I said before, the result was catastrophic. After entering the gate, nothing was heard from them again. When the other country's SS Rankers heard that the Rankers had gone missing for over three weeks, they refused to enter the gate. The reason was obvious. Even if they knew that a disaster would strike when an SS-ranked gate turned into a dungeon, there was nothing they could do if entering the gate meant death. Not to mention, it was another country's gate. Francis SS-ranker became the idiot for volunteering. It was then that we cleared America's SS-ranked event dungeon and even perfectly subjugated the event raid monster. Although it wasn't Revival, Guardian, or Freedom Wing's intention, Revival's popularity had skyrocketed. Some even called us the last hope of humanity. It was exactly the type of thing I hated. You guardian bastards, can't you do anything right? I shouted in Africa as I stepped on crocodile monsters. Our government officially requests revival. Please save Russia from its impending disaster. We will agree to any demands you have. The situation only got worse by the day until Russia's prime minister finally made an official request to us. I imagine complicated talks were exchanged in the process, but what was important was that Russia's humiliating announcement was equivalent to Guardian's surrender. Ever since we clashed in Korea, Guardian had never even mentioned us, pretending that we didn't exist. But now, they had reached out to us on their own accord. Although it wasn't our intention, we had planned to visit Russia last. However, they may have thought that we wouldn't subjugate Russia's SS-ranked gate. I could only imagine the faces they would make if the truth was revealed. In any case, Russia's promise was a promise we would gladly take. While thinking about what we could request from Russia, we flew toward Russia on Waya's plane. Russia and Francis SS Ranker do you think they're dead? They're still SS Rankers, so shouldn't they be alive? Though I've never met them, so I can't say for sure. Waya answered uninterestedly, as she polished her nails. I was surprised since I didn't think she would be so aloof about the death of other countries' rankers. Almost as if she read my mind, Waya smiled at me. There's no use worrying about it now, Shin. Thinking negatively will have negative impacts on yourself, your friends, and the world. So you're polishing your nails instead? Of course, I have to always look perfect. Then, whoever looks at me will be happy. That's a good reason, right? As Wyatt gave a flaunting smile, I ended up laughing as well. After polishing her nails, she started doing her eyelashes. I wondered if that was something she should do in front of others, but I had to admit that she looked beautiful. 
I retorted. You're really full of confidence. Why, did I say something wrong? No. I'm also happy right now. If only you could always be that honest. Although that's what Waya muttered, it seemed she didn't plan on pursuing an answer, as she hummed and continued to do our eyelashes. It seemed she was in a better mood. I took my eyes off of her and looked at Lydia, who was leaning on my arm and sleeping. She looked as beautiful as an angel. Looking at her, I felt deep affection rising up from my heart and weighing me down. Hugh. Shin, my mom says good fortune will run away when you sigh. I can't even sigh now. But what a very Korean saying. I'd like to meet her. After we entered Russia, everything was taken care of easily. The people we'd only seen on TV bowed and offered their handshakes. We stayed in the highest class luxury hotel and ate in the highest class luxury restaurant. In truth, it was quite meaningless to someone like me, who had no problem sleeping wherever or eating whatever. Although we arrived in the middle of the night, a countless number of people greeted us. What was surprising was that they only showed their faces, then said that we should go eat and rest since we must be tired from traveling. I thought they would ask us to enter the gate immediately, but it seemed we had really gotten famous. The next day, the Prime Minister asked to see me alone. I knew I had gotten famous from Revival, but I didn't think the Prime Minister would ask to see me personally. I became slightly flustered and told the others about it before I got on the limousine with the Prime Minister's secretary. Shin, careful. It's fine. I can probably survive a nuclear bomb, too. I wasn't kidding. With my mana protecting me, neither the radiation nor the blast could damage me. I could hold my breath for ten minutes if it came down to it, and if it was looking bad, I could always escape to the dungeon. I had some idea about what the Prime Minister would say. It would probably be an explanation for Guardian's actions until now, an apology, and things regarding the future relationship between Russia and Revival. He might even ask Revival to join Russia. Other than that he would probably ask if Russia could buy monster corpses we got from event dungeons or if we could rescue the rankers that went in previously. But when I got to the small reception room, the Prime Minister laid out all sorts of overbearing flattery, like how thankful he was that I came or how good of a leader I was, then said this. If Russia's SS ranker is alive please kill him. It was something completely unexpected. Chapter 160 our SS ranker was always mentally unstable. Before he entered the gate, he caused a huge incident. He murdered all key personnel of the government and top brass members of Guardian before he entered the gate. He probably thought he could escape us forever by going inside the gate. It just shows how mentally unstable he is. The team we created did not consist of two SS rankers and 50 S rankers as you may have heard but Francis won SS ranker and the 50S rankers led by him. In other words, he was out of our control. No matter how important SS rankers are, we can no longer tolerate his madness. He is a psychopath and a murderer. I beg you, please kill him. We will take care of the rest. I said that wasn't for me to do and refused. However, before I left the reception room, I told him that once I went inside the gate, I would act appropriately given the circumstances. When I came back to my companions, I told them what happened. Hearing that the government personally requested me to kill an ability user, they were extremely displeased. He killed all key personnel of the government, but the Prime Minister is alive. Something stinks. Even if he's telling the truth, it's irritating. If he's not, it's more irritating. Mentally unstable person why would someone like him have such a power? If the Prime Minister was telling the truth and Russia's SS ranker was alive, we may have to fight a human, not monsters, when we entered the dungeon. When I considered that the reason Francis SS ranker and other 50 S rankers couldn't clear the dungeon was because of Russia's SS ranker, a chill went down my back. However, Waya and Father came to a rather simple conclusion. There's no problem. We can just think of it as having one more SS ranked enemy. She's right, son. No matter who appears, can that person be stronger than me? Don't worry too much. No, father, what I'm worried about is no, it's fine. I couldn't spoil the mood when everyone sounded so confident. Plus, I had already killed a human before. 
I couldn't ask whether they could kill a human, even if he appeared as an enemy. Before we entered the event dungeon, we inspected our equipment and condition. After seeing that that everything was perfect, we headed to the snowy mountains where the event dungeon was located. The Prime Minister also came with us. This person didn't he have better things to do. When we were about to enter the dungeon, Lydia tilted her head and asked. Shin, where's the wyvern? Oh, Latte. She left for training. You're kidding, right? Do I look like I'm kidding? Latte seemed to be extremely vexed that she couldn't enter America's SS ranked event dungeon with me, as she asked for my permission and left for training. I wanted to ask what training she was doing or if it was even effective, but I didn't. Since she wanted it so much, I couldn't say no. I let her go after telling her not to overdo it. I didn't know what it was that she wanted. I just hoped she wouldn't return as something like Dark Destiny Wing in any case, not having Latte wasn't detrimental to our success. As such, we entered the dungeon. You entered the SS ranked event dungeon, Frozen Castle. The moment I stepped inside the event dungeon, a bone chilling wind blew. Of course, with my contract to Ryua and the effect of Red Dragon Felix's cape, it only felt like a light breeze. However, it seemed that wasn't the case for my companions. CCCCCC cold. Father, I thought you were an undead. I I am CC cold T2. With that, Yi Yoon jumped in my embrace. Then, she cheered. Shin's cape is hot. It's made out of a red dragon's leather. The moment Yi Yoon yelled, few more people clung to my cape. Pushing them off forcefully, I shouted. Didn't you buy cold weather clothes in the dungeon? Wear that instead. But it's hard to fight in it. If you're clinging on to me, neither of us can fight. In the end, everyone other than Waya and me wore thick cold weather clothes. Although I was fine thanks to my cape, it seemed Waya could protect herself with her flame ability. So, where are we? It looks like the castle's underground corridor. Everything's made out of ice. I looked around. We were in a corridor about 5 meters wide and 10 meters tall. The flat walls had no windows. It was the perfect underground corridor where you'd expect to hear the cries of captured criminals. However, for an underground corridor, the ceiling was too high. Not to mention, everything was made out of ice. The floor, walls, ceiling, everything. Although we entered all sorts of dungeons, the surroundings were always wide open and we had a spacious area to explore. However, although the place we were standing in was fairly spacious, it was clearly limited since we were caged in. If we took account the freezing energy that was continuously pouring in, the penalty we were suffering from couldn't be said to be light. We put Waya and Lydia, who were weak to close-ranged combat, in the middle, and quickly walked along the corridor. If the event dungeons we had entered so far all had the monsters attack us immediately, this dungeon was the complete opposite. Even after 30 minutes, we had not run into any monsters. Eku. Lydia, come here. An. After we walked in this cold for a while, Lydia, who had a weak constitution, kept sneezing. Even though we prepared ourselves for any environment we might find ourselves in, it seemed it wasn't enough. Feeling sorry, I brought Lydia to my side. I couldn't give her my cape because it was bound to me, but she would be able to share the warmth by being near it. After Lydia grabbed the edge of my cape, she stopped sneezing. Instead, Waya and Yi Yoon's cheeks were puffed up. I'm cold, too I'm so jealous. Your favoritism is too strong. I don't like it. Yi Yoon, your condition is much better than Lydia's. And Waya, you're warmer than anyone else here. I wanted to argue, but since it would probably be a hassle, I didn't. I simply ignored them and firmly walked onward. However, not long afterward, I hate to stop everyone. I had discovered blood splashed on the wall. There was a battle here. It's frozen. I looked around, but there was nothing other than the trace of blood. I told everyone to be on guard, then we continued onward as I actively used mana detection. After about 30 minutes, I suddenly felt a presence in front of me. It came with an extremely cold energy. Lydia, get back. I pushed Lydia into our formation. I pulled out my spear and manifested my aura. 
At the same time, I called Ryue and Pika. The moment they were summoned, they floated up over my shoulders and emitted elemental power. Soon, the enemy made its appearance. It was a golem about seven meters tall, made out of dozens of boulder-like ice. I finally understood. The ceiling had to be this high for this golem to appear. Goo. When the golem saw us, it roared and charged directly at us. However, it couldn't have picked a worse opponent. Don't touch Shin. Goo. Just three words from Ryue made the golem freeze in place. Dozens of ice crystals also rose up and stormed the golem. Shockingly, the ice forming the castle broke off readily and followed Ryu's command. Hmm, could this place be a stage for Ryue to shine? However, the golem looked fine even after being struck by Ryu's frightening attack. Goo. Oh, I see. The flaw was that Ryue couldn't deal huge damage to the golem as they were both had ice attribute. Ryue, who was looking proud, quickly became dejected. Yu Yu, I have to protect Shin. That was enough. Focus on blocking the golem's movements, Ryue. Waya. Ait. Waya threw a white flame at the golem. Even after colliding with the ice, the flame was not extinguished and continued to burn until it completely swallowed the golem. Goo. In the end, the golem melted to a puddle of water, while Waya proudly puffed out her chests. Huhu, did you see that? Yeah, good job. For someone who fainted just by seeing bugs it seemed she forgot all about what happened in America. In any case, it was true that defeating the golem was easier with Waya. I adequately lifted Waya up and surveyed my surroundings with mana detection again. Ah, uh, wait, let me go back. It looks like we'll run into monsters from now, so stay with me, Ludia. Don't call me Ludia. I'm going to be with Shin. Come, it's warm next to me, too, right? You big-breasted jealous witch. Humph, it's better than being a tiny-breasted jealous witch, right? I, am still growing. The alphabet just changed, too. Please don't say what alphabet changed like B, C, ah, uh, no, I shouldn't be thinking about this. After that, we fought giant bats, gargoyles, and golems all made out of ice. Ryue immobilized them, and Waya's flames violently melted all enemies even in this environment filled with ice. Unfortunately, because the monsters were all made out of ice, they didn't leave any corpses. However, we were happy because mana stones dropped with a higher chance. Mana stones could be used as currency in both earth and the dungeon. We were most likely underground. After all, there were no windows anywhere. Almost to prove that I was right, the rooms along the corridor were all weapon storage rooms full of golems, food storage rooms full of golems, or prisons full of golems. After three hours, we explored the entire corridor. It seemed that we were on the lowest floor. We found a staircase going up. I couldn't hide my excitement as things started looking more and more like an RPG game. Let's first eat before we continue. I knew you'd say that. Because everyone other than Highway and me were freezing, we all agreed to eat to warm ourselves up. I cooked ramen, using the floor shop's special item, burned to white ashes. With it, I had no reason to fear the ice castle, which even extinguished Waya's flame in a few minutes. After all, even without fire, this magical item could heat up its content at the desired temperature for a desired amount of time. However, things didn't go the way I expected. Oh, no. The water won't boil. Damn it even though the pot is hot, the water won't boil because it's too cold outside. What kind of an absurd environment was this? Even as I shook from this illogical situation, I refused to give up. If it the outside was too cold, I just had to make it warmer. I cleared some space around the pot and enveloped the area in chaos flame. Chaos flame wouldn't be extinguished unless I wished for it, and it wasn't just hot it was scorching. Seeing the water boil, I became satisfied. You're using a flame that could kill an SS-ranked dungeon's boss to boil water. You shouldn't say that walker when you're using that flame to warm your body. With all the training expeditions I went with father, I had become a master of making ramen. Even while boiling ten packs, I could maintain the noodle's springy texture. I considered it a marvelous talent. 
soon, when we were gathered around the ice castle's underground corridor and eating ramen. We sensed someone's presence. Are you going to eat that? Waya and I turned around with noodles in our mouth. There, we saw the Witch of Silver Ice. Chapter, 161 After slurping down the noodles in my mouth, I scanned her. She was short, perhaps about 130 centimeters tall. Her face and build were small. She had long silver hair that flowed down to her waist and shined like transparent ice. Her skin was milky white, while her eyes were rosy pink. Silver hair and red eyes. I murmured as I held up my spear. Is she not human? It's albinism, idiot. Waya put down the bowl of ramen she was holding and said as she knocked me on my head. Damn, it's not like I knew everything. I remembered with what Waya said. Albinism. It was the condition where one's skin or hair appeared white due to lack of melanin. I knew about it too. Even though I knew, I've only seen it once in a lion in Africa. Are you Francis S.S. Ranker? Waya asked. I also suspected that she was a ranker. Although she looked young, the overwhelming mana she possessed easily matched an SS ranker's mana and even neared Waya's and mine. It was also the reason I thought she wasn't human. Really? Emilina. Hi. Im Waya Mastiford. Hi. Seeing Waya wave her hand, the girl did the same. Then, she replied with her small pink lips. I couldn't help but notice her refined doll-like features. Are you eating that? Do you want some, too? You'll give it to me. Waya smiled and called her over. Come here. No matter how much mana you have, it's better to be warm than cold. I was told not to go near people. You can't go near people. Un. They would die if I did. Die. Who? While Waya was tilting her head curiously, I asked, feeling relieved. You're Russia's SS ranker, right? She nodded very candidly. Un. Wait, Shin. Didn't the Prime Minister say that Russia's SS ranker was male? No, now that I think about it, I don't think he said it clearly. I just kind of assumed. Plus, if she's alone, she fits the description of Russia's SS ranker perfectly. If you want to be sure, take off your choker. Waya took off her choker like I suggested. Then, she gestured for us to talk. I asked her again. Why do people die when you go near them? Because everyone becomes like this. Ilina waved her hand. Then, ice crystals formed like fluttering flowers. The space her hand touched all turned into ice, which stayed afloat in the air. I looked back at Waya. She nodded. Right, that was Russian. Slurp, so Russia's SS ranker has an ice ability. She can't control it. Sip. Second master, I heard, slurp, kids who awaken abilities, nom have trouble controlling their abilities. The others each slurped noodles or sipped on the soup as they murmured. I wish they'd choose between eating or talking. In any case, it seemed the prime minister had lied. Even so, how could they be so relaxed in front of such a powerful ability user? I glared at them, then faced Ilina again. Is that because you can't control it? Un. Because Ilina can't control it, everyone said to stay away. So that was why from a while ago, she kept her distance without approaching us. However, she wasn't moving away either. In fact, as we conversed, she was getting closer to the pot surrounded by chaos flames. It was then that I realized three weeks had passed since she came here. What did you eat until now? Golems. Golems in other words, ice. What else? Bats and rats and armors. In other words, ice. E.I. It was probably thanks to your mana, but I'm surprised you're still alive. Come on, eat. We have lots. But if I go you'll die. No one here is weak enough to die from something like that. Don't worry and come over. Mom and Dad also said they wouldn't die, but they did. The Ajushi from TV also died. The Appa that said I was pretty also died. The Ajushi who was mad at me died, and the people that came in here also died after saying they wouldn't. 
I became lost for words. She was staring intently at the pot, almost as if what she said had nothing to do with her. But that couldn't be the case. There wasn't anyone who would feel nothing after killing their parents. But I understood why the Russian government wanted me to kill her. How could they control a girl who lost her parents because she couldn't control her powers? Plus, the people that entered this dungeon must have been S ranked at the very least, and they died too she turned around, leaving me behind. Bye. Wait. I shouted instinctively, feeling that I had to stop her. I was confident that she wouldn't be able to hurt Y or me, but from the way she was acting, it didn't look like she'd touch us easily. When I thought about the reason Elena recklessly came into the dungeon, I became more certain. Before she walked away, I hurriedly summoned Ryue. As soon as Ryue saw her, she exclaimed in surprise. Wow! She's colder than Shin. Ryue, give this to her. Make sure that it doesn't get colder. Can you do it? Yeah. I can do it now. I took out a bowl, putting some ramen noodles in it along with chopsticks. Ryue made it float with her power and carried it to Elina. Seeing the bowl float toward her, Elina widened her eyes and accepted it. Then, she became even more surprised. This won't freeze. It's hot. Yeah, my friend helped me. Ah. With her eyes still opened widely, she picked up the chopsticks. After struggling with it for a bit, she frowned and muttered. This is hard. Hold on, I'll get you a fork. The fork was also delivered with Ryu's power. After eating ramen for the first time, Elina stuck out her tongue. Spicy. Ah, uh, was it too spicy for a kid? I'm not a kid. A small ice appeared above her tongue. Then, it became dew. So this was how she was drinking water. Although she did it effortlessly, it was nonetheless an amazing skill. Spicy. It's spicy but it's hot. I couldn't eat anything hot after mom died. Warm delicious. Sniffle. Damn, the ramen is too spicy. It's making me cry. Father, if you're going cry, do it quietly like Lydia and Samire. Don't make dumb excuses. Elina then finished the ramen I gave her and even drank the entire soup. Looking at her reddened face, it was obvious that it was an expression of I finished it because it was hot, but I can't handle the spiciness. Do you want ice cream? I don't like ice cream. It's too cold. Do you want caramel, then? While I delivered caramel to her with Ryue, the party members were all watching this strange exchange. They were eating ramen while crying silently or wiping their eyes. Waya made an indiscernible expression and messaged me. It's like you're taming her. I can't deny that. Elina finished the caramel as well. Her expression had become much more relaxed thanks to the caramel's sweetness. At least, that was how it looked. Now was my chance. I asked. Elina, why did you come here? The Ajushi from TV told me that people wouldn't die if I came here. I came in because I didn't want to kill people but other people entered and died. That son of a bitch. I still didn't have the full picture. However, I somewhat understood. Elina caused many casualties, including her parents. The Russian government probably wanted to exploit her even if they had to make sacrifices. After all, any sacrifice was acceptable in front of the SS ranker title. Of course, the sacrifices they had to make ended up being too big for them to handle. In the end, they decided to throw her away. Luckily, an SS ranked gate had conveniently appeared. They probably hoped that she'd die on her own. What I couldn't understand was why Guardian sent a team of ability users to conquer the dungeon. Did they try to exploit the Russian government's plan? No, wait. Elina, when did you come in here? A month and a half ago. It was about three weeks prior to when Guardian's team entered. I see, if they couldn't hear from her for three weeks, it made sense that they thought she was dead. However, that would mean Elina didn't eat properly for a month and a half. So an SS ranker's magic power was this powerful. Elina seemed to be especially special. Shin, we. I know, I was thinking the same thing. After answering Waya, I looked at Elina. 
she also looked at me. Her indescribably mystical rose-pink eyes seemed to be sucking me in. Elina, if you want. Thanks. While I was still talking, she suddenly bowed. I began to feel uneasy. Thanks to you, I had some pasta for the first time in a while. This isn't really pasta, but if you want, Elina, we can make you more. Kind people and good people I don't want to freeze people like them anymore. Wait. We won't freeze even if you touch us. I can touch you directly. Plus, I have a friend that can control fire and heat. This place is dangerous. You should run away. Wait, Elina. With that, she quickly disappeared. I couldn't feel her presence anymore. The only thing left was the bowl that had fallen to the ground. Damn, she just did a dine and dash. Shin, your ability to cloud the issue sometimes surprises me, but now isn't the time. Waya looked even angrier than me. She gritted her teeth and shouted. Russia, those arrogant bastards. They didn't call me, the greatest fire ability user, to control an ice ability user. They'll pay for this. Who's the one clouding the issue? We argued for a while, forgetting about the matter with Ilina. However, there was one thing we agreed on. It was that Guild Revival's tenth member had just been decided. Chapter, 162 After we finished eating and resting, we climbed the stairs. What awaited us was a large hall and giant chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. Of course, it was also made out of ice. In addition, there were thousands of ice bats hanging on the chandeliers. Although we took care of them easily, we became slightly worried, realizing that the castle might be much bigger than we anticipated. How long do we have left until uncleared event dungeons turn into field dungeons? I don't know the exact time, but it shouldn't be long. Last time, they turned into field dungeons on the 61st day exactly. And today is the 59th no, 60th, right? In other words, if we assumed that it was the same as last time, we had less than 24 hours until the event dungeon turned into a field dungeon. I didn't want to rush, but it was true that we had been taking it a bit leisurely. Should we split up? No, we should prioritize our safety. We don't know what's going to come out, so we should stick together. Even if we were late and the dungeon turned into a field dungeon, it didn't mean that we would die. It was just that humanity would continually be afflicted with a hell hole. Hmm, maybe the situation was serious after all. Personally, I thought we could more easily clear the ice castle if we had Ilina by our side. After all, her ability was practically made for this place. She didn't know that event dungeons could turn into field dungeons. If she did, she wouldn't have ignored me just now and would have lent her help. If we didn't clear the dungeon, the field dungeon might take countless people's lives. With a glimmer of hope, I tried to detect Elinus mana with mana detection. Of course, I couldn't do something like that suddenly. In that case. Can I burn the entire castle down with my flames? No, before we use such a brute force method, we need to see if there are any survivors. At the very least, Francis S.S. Ranker might be alive. You don't think he got done in by Elina? I hope that S.S. Ranker didn't have an aggressive personality. Considering Elina's temperament, it was unlikely that she attacked people first. It was probably her overly sensitive self-defense mechanism that poured in boundless mana of ice into whoever touched her. In other words, if Francis S.S. Ranker didn't try to touch her, he might still be alive. However, if he tried to capture her, seeing as how Elina was fine, he probably froze to death somewhere in this castle. Thawing someone and bringing them back to life was something only possible in science fiction novels. It wasn't something we could do. Once someone froze, they were dead. If a ranker died in a place like this, that would be troublesome. Though, I wouldn't mind if it was Brightman or Bruno. Let's hurry up from now. Walking faster makes it colder. Sorry, but bear with it. High stats were made to last in situations like this. For a month for me and two months for the others, we cleared hundreds of event dungeons without rest and obtained over 200 bonus stat points. We obtained the maximum amount of bonus stats from event dungeons ranked A or below, a feat that I would have thought was impossible. HP and MP 
According to what I heard from Loretta some time ago, there were some things one gained just by leveling up, depending on what dungeon he was in. Even without taking that into consideration, 200 bonus stats equaled 40 levels worth of stats. Although we each had our own strengths, we all had at least S ranked abilities. After gaining 200 bonus stats, it was safe to say that we had far surpassed the realm of human beings. Ordinary people would have instantly frozen to death just by stepping in this place, but we only complained that it was cold. After Yiyun became an ability user and a dungeon explorer, leveling up and increasing her stats, she probably never felt too hot or cold. When she came to this castle and felt the coldness she hasn't felt for a long time, she probably exaggerated it a little. So bear with it. So. You can't say, so bear with it, when you didn't say anything beforehand. Damn, I was connecting my internal monologue with what I was saying aloud. But I thought everyone would still understand realizing that reality was different than my ideals, I despaired. Then, I explained to Yiyun about the reality of the cold she was feeling. On the castle's first floor, we ran into what Ilina casually mentioned. The armor made out of ice. I couldn't understand. Living armors were supposed to pretend like normal armors, then attack unsuspecting adventurers. But what was it disguising itself for when this castle was only full of traps? In any case, there wasn't any time for questions. As spacious as the first floor was, it was filled with enemies, and had numerous ambushes set up. Ait. There are more coming to your left. The chandelier is alive. Yua, the wall is moving too. This better not end like, hey, the entire castle was a monster, too. If it did, I'm going to tear the castle apart. Thankfully, the chandelier and the wall were both disguised ice mimics. There really wasn't anything we could trust in this castle. At the same time, with us destroying every enemy in our path, the castle was getting noticeably cleaner. We ended up clearing the first floor in just two hours, much quicker than we took to clear the basement. Immediately afterward, we climbed up to the second floor using the staircase we found on the west side of the castle's first floor. The second floor didn't have a hall but had a long corridor with many rooms. Surprisingly, I could feel the presence of humans from them. It didn't belong to Ilina. I urged the others on. There are survivors, let's hurry. Shin, they'll just burn the second floor. I'm going to run out of mana, so make sure to catch me. Yeah, thanks. Why is white flames spread out in all directions, and we ran toward the presence? The enemies we faced on the way were quickly taken care of by Waya's army of flames. In exchange for our extremely quick advance, Waya was turning pale and was looking like she was about to faint. Guang. After some time, bats, rats, paintings, chandeliers, and armors were all melted away by Waya's flames. We thus ran to the presence without hindrance, and soon arrived in front of a large door. Yo! A giant golem standing in front of the door like a gatekeeper roared. It raised its giant ice mace but was melted by several white flame beasts before it could swing it even once. It must have been pretty strong as it took a majority of the beasts with him. Shin, I'm about to. Waya. As I thought, it seemed the army of flames, especially one with her white flames, took a heavy toll on her body and mana. The moment the army of flames disappeared, Waya fell backward powerlessly. I hurriedly ran behind her and caught her. Her body was cold. It was the symptom of one being completely out of mana. You can't move at all. No. I guess there's no choice. It might be a bit uncomfortable, but ill. Ill carry you, Uni. You must be more comfortable with a girl than a guy, too. Yiyun, you. When Waya responded to Yiyun touched, she silently smiled. Yiyun then made me get back and carried Waya on her back. To think they had developed such a close bond. I was touched. Next to me, however, Walker whispered to me seriously. Kong Shin, I think you should go die, cook. Hmm. What? I feel complicated. I should cheer on Uni, but. And no, it has to be Lydia. That way, there will be some hope for me. Eh. What's happening? When we opened the gate, 
the tragic scene in front of us was more than enough to shut out such trivial thoughts. My God! So many people are. Frozen corpses were everywhere. It wouldn't be surprising if someone mistook them as ice sculptures. There were at least forty of them, each with different faces, but the same miserable expressions. Was this Illinus doing? In front of the absurd horror, we couldn't hide our shock. Shin. Yeah, I know. As I thought, there was a survivor. He was in a miserable state, as he was frozen from his feet to his right under his nose. He noticed us and opened his eyes widely. He seemed to want to say something, but his mouth wouldn't open. In truth, I was shocked that he was still alive in such a state. I first made sure that there were no monsters nearby, then asked Lydia. Lydia, can you save him? Not as he is now. We have to thaw him. To think we'd actually have to do it. In any case, it was probably better to move him to a safe area before we... K.R.R. A loud sound rang out. When we turned around, the door we opened was shut tightly. Plus, the surrounding had gotten even colder, so much so that even I could feel it. Was I mistaken? When I was about to move the man, father called out. Son, something's not right. What do you mean, father? My fingertips are freezing. That's serious. I immediately turned around and checked on father's status. Although he spoke nonchalantly, it wasn't just father's problem. Aside from me and Waya, everyone's hands and feet were slowly freezing. In other words, the frozen corpses weren't caused by Elina, but by some other existence in this space. Gu. Koha. The corpses I thought were dead began to move while making strange noises. The awakened corpses were being used. Waya, how's your mana? I still need more time before ITLL fill up. Mana elixir. Ludia. I can't open my inventory. Damn. If I could, I would open Ludia's inventory for her. However, inventories could only be opened by their owners. Could this be considered a status effect? If it was, I could dispel it with Orc Lord's war cry. However, after I thought about it, I realized that although Orc Lord's war cry could cancel frostbite or paralysis from the cold, it could not prevent someone from being frozen. Plus, if I super armored them haphazardly and forced them to move their frozen bodies, it could have devastating effect afterward. I didn't want to imagine such a thing happening. In that case, I could only do something about it myself. Frozen corpses. Seeing the ice zombies closing in, I bit my lips and dispersed my mana outward. No matter who or what was freezing us, something had to be caught. Then. Humans humans always worry about their own lives in critical situations, so why do they all pretend to care about others? A voice rang out. It was the voice of a boy that hadn't passed his puberty. It was a cold, frozen voice. I raised my head. What do you think, human's hero? A pretty boy, who could be mistaken as a girl, was right in front of me. With a sour expression, he sometimes pulled on his shirt with his hands, as if he didn't like anything. Well, you probably can't hear or see. When I was about to say something, the closed door suddenly opened. Elina, who had disappeared three hours ago, was standing there. Don't kill him. You. When the door opened, the boy became flustered and turned around. When I saw her, a relieved smile appeared on my face. I could feel her sincerity. Seeing her step up for someone who only gave her a bowl of ramen, I became certain that we didn't think wrong. I could feel the victory in the air. To make that victory more certain and to turn it into something happy, I took action. I decided to use the skill points I had been saving up. Chapter 163 Why did you come, Ice Girl? That person don't kill him. To achieve your goal of not hurting humans with your ability, everyone here has to die. The boy spread out his arms and encompassed all members of Revival. Surprisingly, even though Elina couldn't have heard the boy, she instantly frowned. Don't kill them. I see, I thought you were different, but in the end, you are also a human. A weak human, a human that can't keep her vows, a human that blames others for their lack of ability. Don't kill them. Along with Elina's shout, 
a freezing wind blew inside the room. The first ones to get affected were the zombies running toward us. Though they were already frozen, they got stuck to the floor, then became cut to pieces by blade-like ice crystals that appeared in midair. Her ability was truly powerful and unstable. That is, it was affecting us as well. Ruyue. An. The moment the boy's power wavered, I summoned Ruyue. She seemed to instantly realize what she had to do, as she protected everyone with her ability. Can you thaw them? It's hard. We need to do something about that guy first. All right, leave it to me. While Ryu's elemental power surged up to protect all party members, the boy, who was fighting Elena, opened his eyes widely after seeing Ryu. -e. An elementalist. Kook so you could hear me. I hate you even more now, Dai. The boy's shout almost seemed like a shriek, as the room itself trembled. The freezing energy inside the room became stronger, clashing with Elinus' power and making it hard for me to see anything. Both Elinus and the boy's energy was immense, and Ryue was busy trying to block their energies. It would be harder to hold out for long with just Ryue power. If I didn't do it now, it would be too late. I immediately took action. It was simple, as I just had to distribute three skill points to each skill. You mastered mid-rank spirit aura. In addition to weapons and defensive equipment, you can now infuse elementals into your own body, amplifying your physical abilities. You learned high-rank spirit aura. While active, you can freely use mid-rank elemental magic. As the skill level increases, the amount of mana needed to infuse and maintain elementals in your body decreases and your ability amplification increases. I somewhat expected it, but with high-rank spirit aura, it was really possible to infuse elementals into my own body. Although it would be good to have my weapon use spirit aura, I could now use chaos flame attribute aura. As such, bar for a few special occasions, I didn't need to use spirit aura. It was good that I could now use spirit aura with my body. You mastered mid-rank elemental control. Elementals not connected to your soul will listen to you attentively and will follow your orders if they do not have a master. You learned high-rank elemental control. You can draw out the potential of your contracted elementals to their maximum. You can command free elementals as if they are your own. Finally. You mastered mid-rank elemental contract. You can perfectly draw out the true power of your contracted elementals. You learned high-rank elemental contract. Your contracted elementals are released from high-ranked seals, and all elemental-related techniques are greatly strengthened. The number of elementals you can contract increases by one. Then, the wind blowing inside halted. When the wind disappeared, only Illinus' ability remained, but soon, it was stopped. The boy looked back at me with a flustered expression. I grinned at him. Eh. Did you just notice? You you can see me. Yeah. I'm impossible. The boy took a few steps back. I then heard relieved voices from behind me. W few, I'm alive. I don't know what you did, but thanks, son. My companions, who were slowly freezing, were now thawing. Someone who could calm Elina's ability and bring about this change I glanced at Ryue. Ryue who had materialized without my knowledge, was not in her wolf form. Rather, she had the form of a girl, who had wolf ears and wolf tails huh? With a small face and delicate features, she looked just like a seventeen-year-old girl. Perhaps because she was originally a wolf, she was incredibly well-developed. Her beautiful silver hair that looked like a wolf's manies was exuding a unique charm. Did beast-type elementals take human form when their high-ranked seals are undone? Thankfully, she was wearing a dress that was seemingly made out of leather. Seeing me tilt my head curiously, Ryue widened her eyes, which were just as blue as when she was a wolf. Shin, I became weird. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. You're the one who thawed the others, right? Yeah. I suddenly became stronger. Good job. He he he. Praise me more. Ryu's ears fluttered happily as she ran into my embrace. Without thinking, I hugged her back and patted her head. Then, after realizing what had just happened, I became flustered. Although I had done it without much thought when she was a wolf, now that she had turned into a girl, 
the softness of her body and the stares I was getting were completely different. Why a Mastiford, you're looking at me like I'm some criminal. I'm only being intimate with my elemental as her master. The one that seemed to be most in shock was the boy. She evolved. Yeah, in a way, just for you. A as I thought, your butt. The boy shouted. My contractor is already dead. Damn. I see, if that wasn't the case, it wouldn't make sense that an elemental like him would be cooperating with monsters. Perhaps his contractor was wait, no. Something strange I. I can solve that later. That wasn't the important thing right now. Just because you lost your contracted master, it doesn't mean you can't contract another one. My master will only be Piscina. Other than her, no one can touch me plus, you're a human. Throughout the long history, human elementalist has never. Don't worry. I'm definitely an elementalist, and you're definitely connected to me. My very existence confused him, and at the same time, charmed him. That was what soul connection was. Just like how the maddened Ryue returned to being a pure elemental when we met, now that this free elemental realized he was connected to me, he couldn't go back to how it was before. No I hate you. It's fine. He'll listen to everything you want to say. No. Go away, I hate humans. Humans, who took Piscina away from me, should all die with monsters. Someone like you isn't my contractor. As I thought, some bastards had harmed his contractor. It was then that he did something completely unexpected. Shit, Elina. Ah. The free elemental had charged toward Elina, who was standing in front of the door. Damn, was he trying to forcefully possess her. Although Elina couldn't see or hear the free elemental, considering how she noticed that there was someone else here the moment she came in the room, it seemed she could feel his mana. Of course, that was an amazing feat. Regardless, if she couldn't detect his body, it would be hard to block him. I instantly activated divine speed and ran forward. Since my companions had already thawed, they should be able to protect themselves against the zombies. What I had to do now was to protect Elina, who had come to save me and my friends. Kook. I will not contract a human. I will kill you soon, just you watch. Shin. And no. Yes. Several shouts filled the room. The result was quickly shown. I reached Elina first, embracing her and rolling on the ground. As such, the elemental left the room without being able to reach his target. As the zombies had been swiftly taken care of, the only hostile thing left in the room was the freezing energy being emitted endlessly. Of course, Ryue was easily controlling the freezing energy, preventing it from affecting everyone, and Lydia was hurriedly healing everyone who had almost become frozen. Elina, who was in my embrace, opened her eyes widely. As we were sprawled on the ground, I quickly got up and dusted her off. Meanwhile, Elina simply stared at me in shock. Once I got done dusting her off and stood up straight, she checked that I was fine, then tapped my arms like she couldn't believe it. She opened her trembling lips. Why you won't freeze? I told you I want. You really won't freeze. Of course. Her mana was unnaturally enormous. It could be that staying in this dungeon for over a month had increased her ability, but regardless, the amount of mana she had neared the amount Waya and I had. She was comparable to me, even after I cleared so many event dungeons and completed event raids. The energy she was emitting was undoubtedly not something ordinary people could endure. It was easy to see that it was hard for her to live a normal life. ITLL be fine if you're with me. Really? Shin, can you not leave me out of it? For someone who just recovered, Waya strut toward us. Elina became startled and tried to back away, but Waya quickly placed her hand on her head. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo hoo. See, Shin. I won't freeze either. It's not just you. Yeah, I can't really win against your competitiveness. Excuse you, it's not because of competitiveness. I've been wanting to pat her the moment I saw her. Remember, the first one to pat her was none other than M.M. D. Don't cry. Sorry, did you not like it? Hick, hick. Oh, no. Elinus' red eyes were tearing up. 
I jokingly said to Waya. How can you make a little girl cry? Why you? You you, Wang. Ilina began to cry with a muffled voice. From it, I could feel her built-up pain. She must have been crying like this all this time. Without anyone knowing, she must have cried inwardly to herself. Ever since the day she lost her parents. I made eye contact with Waya. She gestured with her chin, but I shook my head and gestured with my chin. After all, a girl should be better than a guy at consoling a child. Waya smiled as if she couldn't help it, and held Ilina with both arms. There, there. You you hick. Let it all out. Ilina, thank you for saving us. You're a good girl. You you Wang. Good, good. Well, she's all ready to be a mom. Seeing Waya perform better than I expected, I turned around to check how others were doing. Then, Ilina held my sleeve. For the record, held was just the way I put it. To be exact, a stream of ice had reached out from her hands to my shoulder part of my armor and pulled it. I Ilina. Hick, hick. She's asking where you're running away. Is that what your ears heard? With no other choice, I approached her. Ilina, who was hugging Waya, reached out with one arm and embraced me. Although I stuck to Waya's body unintentionally, it seemed she didn't mind. Instead, the people watching us did. I, of course, ignored them. Ilina was the top priority, right now. I reached out and patted Ilina's back. Her tears seemed to have subsided as well. Because of how much she cried, her red eyes and turned even redder. Then, she murmured. Daddy. Hmm. Uh, M.M. Ilina? Sorry, but I'm still. While I wore a dumbfounded expression, Ilina turned to Waya and murmured. Mommy. M. Mommy. Kook, no, M.M. Are you calling us twice to assure yourself? Daddy and Mommy. Ilina murmured and buried her face between us. My eyes met Waya's, and we dropped our shoulders and gave up. I had a suspicion that we would need to carry this title for a while. Early autumn, I, Kong Shin, 21 years old, had gotten a daughter. A foreigner at that. Chapter, 164 Although I wanted to wait until Ilina fully calmed down, I was also anxious to save the surviving ability user. As such, as soon as Ilina's crying subsided, I patted her head and told her, Ilina, I'm sorry, but there's someone I need to save stay with Waya for a bit. Ina. Ina. That's what mommy and daddy calls me. Okay, Ina. Wait a bit. Un. After hearing me call her Ina, she let me go. Worrying that there was possibly no way out of this situation, I approached the ability user with worry. Although everyone else turned into ice zombies and shattered, he was still alive. However, he was in a much worse situation than before, as he was frozen up to his eyes. Thankfully, Ryu's ability had gotten stronger at just the right time, and the freezing had stopped. When I approached the others, Walker was the first to speak to me teasingly. Oh, here comes the father. Walker, if you want to fight, come. He'll be happy to crush you. Sorry, but I'm not cruel enough to injure a man with a daughter. Protect your home, Kong Shin. Walker. On the other hand, Lydia shook her hand and denied what Walker said. I won't accept it. She isn't my daughter. Sorry, but you're not my wife either. I want to pat Elina, too can I. You'll probably freeze instantly. Why is it only Shin and Wayauni? Well, I could understand where Yiyun was coming from. Ina was small and cute and looked just like a princess from a fairy tale. Although people with albinism were suffering from a pain that people without albinism couldn't understand, with how pretty Ina was, it might be considered a blessing than a curse. Plus, with the amount of mana that rivaled an SS ranks, she couldn't be feeling the pain ordinary people with albinism had. Although she had lost a lot in return, it would be different from now. I wanted to make sure that it would be. In any case, I had to treat this ability user that was on the verge of death. Ruyue, can you bring him back to normal with your ability? An. But that yellow head needs to help me. Ruyue answered energetically and pointed at Ludia. 
to use her beautiful blonde hair to call her yellow head how bold, Ruyue. Ludia, help. We need to save him. Because of my previous clear-cut refusal, Ludia's cheeks were puffed up. Even though she didn't answer me, she approached us, then pointed her staff at the ability user. What should I do, wolf? Im Ruyue. Im not wolf. Yeah, wolf. So what do I do? Shin, this yellowhead is calling me wolf. Can we just hurry up? If he really dies, it won't be funny. Although Ludia and Ryue kept bickering, they still cooperated to heal the ability user. As Ryue slowly thawed him, Ludia invigorated his mana and healed his injuries. Surprisingly, after a while, he began to operate his mana to help them, while his eyes were still closed. I wasn't sure when he was frozen, but he really was. About ten minutes afterward, the man slowly opened his eyes after regaining his appearance. He was a handsome middle-aged man with blonde hair mixed with white streaks and gray eyes. This must be what people mean when they say that people aged well. Thank you for helping me. I thought I'd die here. Im revivals Yun Wawu. Ah, the greatest hero of this century. You're even better looking in person. Your eyes look soft but show strong will. It's an honor to meet you. Im Laz Michel, Francis S.S. Ranker. He reached his hand out to me. When I held his hand, I instantly realized. He was a physical reinforcement type ability user. Was everyone in here your comrades? There were others, but most of them were killed by the ice monsters. As he said that, he stealthily stole a glance at Ina. Anyone other than me wouldn't have noticed. Although he didn't say anything aloud, I knew what he was hinting. I couldn't help but thank him for being considerate. Although he was being frozen to death, he had seen everything that happened. He knew Ina didn't want to kill people, and probably wouldn't touch the subject if we could control her ability. I'd like to express my gratitude again. Really, thank you. I thought I'd end my short life in this place. I still have many things I want to enjoy. It's great that we could save you before it was too late. I'm sorry to say this to someone who just came back from the verge of death, but can you help us clear the gate? Having a powerful and reliable ability user such as yourself would be of great help to us. Of course. In fact, I'd like to ask if I could help. I'm not the type of person who can sit still after being hit. I won't be satisfied if I don't get my revenge. He grinned and held up his sword, which he had been holding even whilst he was frozen. For a one-handed sword, the sword's body was wide and thick. It was a bastard sword. I'm confident in my ability to fight with my body. Good to have you on board. Once our introduction was over, Waya approached us with Ina in her arms. To be exact, Ina wouldn't let go of her. Now that she was done crying, Ina was practically in siege mode. Waya spoke with a voice mixed with happiness and distress. Get her off me. Why? You guys look nice together. Better than her clinging on me. Mommy's warm. Well, she is a fire ability user. Seeing Waya and Ina together really put a smile on my face, but there was something I had to tell Ina. When I called her, she seemed to have noticed that my tone was serious, as she looked up and stared at me. The guy that ran away. Have you talked to him before? Un. He talked in an ice caterpillar form. As I thought, he could forcefully possess living creatures. It was something only mad elementals were capable of. Of course, once a mad elemental successfully possessed a creature, non-elementalists would be able to talk to them too. He lost someone important to him and hurt others because of it. I want to catch him before he makes any bigger mistakes. Is he like me? No, even if he's gone mad, he hurt and killed many people. He's not like Ina, who ran away because you didn't want to kill anyone. But I killed lots of people, too. Everyone said that Ina is a bad kid. That the dead mommy and daddy would hate me, too. Damn, everything she said was making me cry. What bastard said that to Ina? I tightened my grip on the spear and contemplated about what to say to Ina. However, I couldn't come up with anything. Waya hugged Ina in my stead and stroked her gently. Ina isn't a bad kid. 
no one is bad. You just couldn't control the power entrusted to you. I'm sure that mommy and daddy who passed away wouldn't hate Ina. Really? Of course. I'm Ina's mommy now. Don't you believe mommy? I do daddy, too. She was acting like Ina's mom like it was natural. How funny. But since she consoled her perfectly, I let it slide. I also stroked Ina's head. Of course, Ina. No parent could ever hate their child. When I turned around, father silently gave me a thumbs up. It was a bit embarrassing to say this in front of father, but I was right, no parent could ever hate their child. A parent would love even a hateful child. That was just how parents were. I was sure that parents had committed a huge crime against their children in their past lives. Otherwise, their unconditional love couldn't be explained. I, this is too cheesy and embarrassing. Ina doesn't have to kill anyone now. Well help you. Ina, I want to help him, too. Humans were the ones who made him turn mad. Since I'm a human, I have to bring him back. All elementals were born with blank slates. When they met their contractors, they would gain deeper emotions, but when their contractors died, or more specifically when their contractors met a tragic death like that boy's, the shock would easily turn them mad. It wasn't easy for elementals to go mad, but when they faced humans' desires, it would happen more easily. Perhaps that's why the number of human elementalists had decreased. Once an elemental turned mad, it was incredibly hard to bring it back to normal. Unless one could perfectly suppress it and drain it of all of its energy, there were only two ways to bring an elemental back to normal. That was to kill the elemental or to find a new contractor. When I first met Ryue, I had planned to drain her energy and beat her until she snapped out, but after realizing that my soul was connected to hers, I contracted her. When I saw the boy, I realized that I was connected to him as well. After all, he wasn't materialized at the time. To maintain a materialized form without a contractor, an elemental had to use his own elemental power. That was fine if the elemental was in a place full of elemental power like Fairy Garden, but that wasn't the case now. As such, he did not materialize and use the environment to its fullest to attack us. His true strength should be much stronger. That said, I couldn't understand why unique elementals I met after Pika were all mad elementals. Not to mention, they were all connected to me. Perhaps yeah, let's think about that later, too. To do that, Ina, we need your strength. My strength? Yeah. I haven't told Ina yet, but this dungeon will soon appear on Earth. Really? What should I do? I don't want to kill people anymore. You just have to stay with us. I told you, right? It'll help you so that you don't hurt anyone else. Ah. Ina's expression became bright. Did she not believe me before? It seemed I would need to say things to her multiple times. With a bitter smile, I continued. When this dungeon moves to Earth, we probably won't be able to meet him anymore. When more people die, it will be too late to go back. He's running away from me right now. He must have really loved his previous contractor, but if we don't capture him, he will hurt more people. I want to stop that from happening. We have to catch him. Yeah, Ina. Can you help? Perhaps, she didn't need long explanations. Now that I thought about it, she probably wasn't mature enough to understand everything I was saying. I didn't know why I was explaining so seriously to a little girl. Ina suddenly raised her hand. I tilted my head and called her, as I couldn't understand what she was doing. I caught him. What? I looked at Waya. Then, I realized that the place we were in wasn't the same as the previous place. We were undoubtedly in a giant hall in the castle's second floor, but the place we were in had windows to the castle's outside. Seeing the height we were in and the ceiling that looked like a dome, I thought. Could this place be the highest floor? Everyone, including Waya, Guild Revival's members, and Francis SS ranker Laz Michel, had all been teleported. Wait, does that mean? I looked around. Then, I was dumbfounded. You're already here kook. Girl, you changed your mind. I saw the elemental making a shocked expression and an army of ice armors filling up the area. 
What was most shocking was the throne on the innermost part of the room, and a giant ice armor sitting on it like a king. For an armor made out of ice, it was adorned with intricate engravings, which were glowing with red light. As I expected, this dungeon's boss wasn't the elemental. The giant armor looked at us and slowly got up. On his hand was a truly giant ice hammer. Come. The eternal army will not fear thee. Seeing it full of spirit, I turned around and looked back at Ina. Couldn't you have said something? Without knowing how I was feeling, she puffed out her chest proudly. I can go anywhere I want inside here. Yeah, good job. Of course, I couldn't blame her. I plan to raise my child with nothing but compliments. If anyone's not prepared, tell me. Ina should be able to teleport us again. In good. Same. O oh power of the earth, bless us. Lend us your power. O oh Mitaris, bless us. Huh, my targets are all here. It seemed everyone was fully prepared. That was also the case for our enemies. Good, I will kill you here and now. All of you humans. Don't act wildly on your own. Maintain your elegance. Soldiers, open your eyes. The ice armors slowly got up. As they stood tall with their weapons, it was easy to tell they were much more orderly, completely different than the ones we saw before. They were undoubtedly much stronger, too. I'm sure that Ice Castle's environment had something to do with it, but each ice armor was overwhelmingly stronger than any of the bugs we met in Insect World. Now, there were about 200 of them. Even I couldn't stay lax in such a situation. It's going to get wild. Daddy, catch him. He'll catch the rest. What, Ina? Eight. Ina widened her eyes in Waya's arms and grasped her hands in midair. Then, all two hundred ice armors suddenly stopped. Could it be? Go back. Even if you command them like they're your pets what? All two hundred ice armors crumbled together. You really are strong, ice witch. But I won't lose. The giant armor gritted its teeth and shouted. Shockingly, the armors began to rise again. I could feel a frightening amount of mana moving. However, Ina pushed it back easily. As I thought, Ina was incredibly strong in this place. It'll take care of them, daddy. Yeah, thanks. Well handle the boss. You stop the elemental. Leave it to me. I left the armors to Ina and Ina to Waya. Then, I stared at the elemental floating above and glaring at me. You should be feeling it, too. Stop running away. I told you Piscina is my only contractor. He shouted in anger and emanated pressure in all directions. Kook, I somewhat considered it with what happened in the previous room, but he really was a wind elemental. In any case, it was best to stop an elemental with another elemental. I called my partners. Pika, Ryue. You called. An. I turned around. Once unsealed, it seemed they could maintain their appearance while they were in their spiritual form, as a miniature-sized wolf-eared girl and a dragon with beautiful scales were staring at me. Dragon. Chapter, 165. Pika, what's with your appearance? My appearance? What do you mean? Kayak. When was the seal released? Seeing Pika screaming, I thought back to the moment we made our contract. Pika had said that the small dragon tattoo on her cheek was a creature closest to the essence of my soul. However, when I contracted Ryue, the tattoo that appeared on her back wasn't a creature, but some geometric shape. At the time, I just thought it was different for a mad elemental, but. You. Did you lie? El lie? Why yes. I was told elementals couldn't lie, but everything was a lie. Wait, come to think of it, elementals were the ones who told me that. Those liars. But I thought you'd hate me if my real body was a dragon. AI. Do you hate me? Un. Do you hate me? Of course not. No matter what you guys really are, you're still my precious elementals. You don't need to worry about that. Pika looked noticeably relieved as she hugged my arm. It seemed coiling around my arm was her way of expressing affection. In truth, 
she looked very similar to a snake. If it wasn't for the two horns on her head and her marvelous scales, I wouldn't have been able to tell. The wind elemental, who was watching us, was acting strangely. Hateful. You took her away from me, but you're together with elementals. I'm not the one who took Piscina away from you. Unforgivable. All humans are the same. Humans took my Piscina away from me. They should all die. It's getting worse. I quickly summoned Talaria and flew up. At the same time, I infused Ryue into my body since she couldn't fly when she materialized. For an instant, I felt my body getting cold. However, I could also feel myself getting stronger. Wow, I became one with Shin. Uh, yeah. Certainly, I feel much stronger. I somewhat dodged Ryu's awkward comment and focused on my next duty. It was to materialize Pika. See can I materialize in my human form? Whichever one is stronger. You you. Oh okay. Soon, a black dragon appeared in midair. With a body length of about 15 meters, she truly looked like a dragon from Eastern legends. The two horns on her head were continuously letting off sparks, and her black scales were also brimming with lightning. Looking at Pika's awe-inspiring look, I widened my eyes. The amount of mana she was using up was completely different than before. Ryue also used more mana after she was unsealed, but it wasn't to this degree. Pika wasn't completely unsealed. What was she really? I swallowed my question and hurriedly took out a highest grade mana potion from my inventory and drank it. Although I was curious, that wasn't my priority. Die. Die. Fine, it'll beat you up until you're almost dead. It seemed she wasn't happy with being in her dragon form, as Pika shouted angrily and charged at the elemental. He tried to blow her away with his wind, but Pika snorted and shot out lightning from her mouth. The lightning easily annihilated the wind mixed with freezing energy and continued to hurl toward him. Pika shouted. Try materializing. You think I can't. But if I do. If you're going to be stubborn and refuse to accept the world's greatest master, you better bet your life on it. Pika was emitting an overwhelming pressure. The endless lightning shooting out from her body became spears that rushed to the wind elemental, and he could only run away. Even though he posed great danger to us in the second floor, he couldn't do anything now. Would I have won if I just materialized Pika before? How did she get so strong? No, I can't just stay here and let Pika do everything. Let's go before Pika really kills him. I kicked off the air with Teleria's power and charged toward the elemental. In my hand was the chaotic spear. If you don't want to talk, it'll do it your way. Cool. No, no oh. Master, he's materializing. His presence suddenly became bigger. The spear I thrust out was caught by the elemental's hand. This. This is why I hate it. I girl's voice rang out. At the same time, a giant wall of wind pushed toward me. I formed chaos flames and pushed away from the elemental's hand. I blocked the wall of wind and murmured in shock. You. I see. An elemental that refused to materialize. Elements might not want to materialize for multiple reasons. I thought that a free elemental would refuse to do so as it didn't want to waste its elemental power. That was what I thought. But that wasn't the case for him. It was obvious from his appearance. Long ears and clear facial features, a slim, yet somewhat voluptuous, body. It was undoubtedly the appearance of a female elf. Boundless elemental power and mana. He possessed a mana that an elemental could not possibly have. You fused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of you humans. You tricked me by saying ITLL helped defeat the demon lord. It was only obvious that he would go mad. Throughout history, the fusion of an elementalist and an elemental only brought about tragedy. This fusion was an evil magic, completely different from infusing an elemental into one's body like I was doing with Spirit Aura. It was unlikely that an elf would do such a thing, so just he said, humans had to be involved. How irritating. First Ryue, now him. Innocent elementals were hurt. 
the humans who made him like that must have died. There wasn't anyone for me vent my anger. Do you realize now? Do you? Why are you getting mad at my master? He's innocent, you idiot. The reason he kept a male appearance was probably to not subconsciously go back to that appearance. Fusing an elemental and an elementalist was already horrible. Whoever did so couldn't have made their sex different, as that would only increase uncertainties. Pasina died in pain. I hate humans, I really hate humans. Kook. Although it was unstable, the fused power of an elemental and an elementalist was truly powerful. The wind power instantly overwhelmed Pika's lightning and pushed her back. However, I gritted my teeth and charged toward him. No, her. How long do you plan on tormenting her? I'm not tormenting Piscina. Then remember your name. Let her go. I swung my spear. The wind arrows hurling toward me were all burnt away, as I continued to fly toward her. No, I don't want to lose her forever. Are you going to torment her for eternity for a stupid reason like that, Sharana? Although I was the one that said it, I couldn't help but stop in shock. It was the same for the elemental. Sharana. Ah, ah. She screamed. She suddenly began to shine. Then, I remembered how I knew her name. Right, in the dream I had to awaken my ability, I wasn't just with Pika and Ryue. Sharana was there, too. God, to think Sierra would actually be helpful. When I fought Ryue, I barely made her remember her name after beating her up. Back then, I couldn't remember the dream at all. Feeling somewhat strange, I approached her. Ah, ah. Shara, Sharana. Sharana. The moment I shouted her name, something I didn't expect happened. Pasina, let's stop. This person isn't your enemy. He's my new master. A new clear voice rang out. She was calling me master. It was then that I realized I had been gravely mistaken. The one I was facing wasn't Sharana. I should have realized when she attacked her contractor. She was Pasina, who was pretending to be Sharana. Pasina, you can go back now. Look, someone who could save us came. Sharana, can you believe a human? I can't do it. Pasina, I don't want to see you in pain. He's right. We have to go back when we can. Seeing two voices taking turns to talk in one body was somewhat surreal. I simply watched them quietly. Perhaps because Sharana spoke out, Pasina sounded a lot calmer. Sharana. Is that okay with you? He's a good person. Look, he has two elementals that can materialize. Her gaze fell on me. From beyond the elf body, I could feel the elemental, Sharana's eyes. But you're human, like the humans who tormented me in Sharana. I don't have a hobby of tormenting my elementals. Isn't that obvious from seeing me? But, I. Pasina, let's stop hurting and rest. Okay. Sharana's words silenced Pasina. Although my companions were fighting around us, the area we were in was quiet. Even the strong winds had subsided, as we were waiting for her answer. Finally, Pasina opened her mouth. Im. You're free now, Pasina. If Sharana's. Okay with it. It's for Pasina and me. Okay. With a voice of resignation, she reached her hand out toward me. While Pika was coiled up and watching us, I caught her hand. I'll trust you one last time, human. Leave it to me, Pasina. Okay. Now, I'll rest. Pasina's eyes slowly closed as she fell into my embrace. To be exact, their fusion had been released and her body fell after losing the power of its soul. With Pasina's corpse in my arms, I looked around. There, I saw an elemental. Not an elemental who looked like a boy or looked like an elf, but a beautiful elemental who wore a dress weaved with the wind. I finally understood. The reason that Sharana, no, Pasina was in the form of a boy was to prevent Sharana from coming out. Now that she was freed from Pasina, Sharana had regained her appearance. She looked like a lively girl in her teens, whose long green hair was split into two side-up tails one. Two side-up is a twin-tail-like hairstyle, 
but slightly different. In Two Side Up, the back hair isn't fully tied up like in a twin tail. Look up anime Two Side Up Hair. Im Sharana. Thank you for catching Pasina. Im Kong Shin, nice to meet you. Also. It's only obvious that I show your past contractor respect. First, I put Pasina into my inventory. I didn't know if I was going to bury her or cremate her, but leaving her body out in the open here would only damage it further. Sharana flew toward me and spoke. To commemorate Pasina's departure, I want to cry all night and sleep in Master's embrace. Can I do that after we sweep this place? Why yeah. Then let's first finish our contract, Master. With that, Sharan flew toward me and kissed me on the lips. She was swift, as expected of a wind elemental. Feeling the scent of a cool breeze on my lips, I opened my eyes, while Pika screamed. Ugyak. At that moment, a fanfare rang out in my ear. I felt like I hadn't heard it in a long time. You formed a contract with the wind elemental Sharana. Your affinity to the wind element increases greatly. List of contracted elementals. 1. Pika Lightning Elemental. Unique Elemental. Materialized. First seal released. Second awakening. 2. Ruyue Ice Elemental. Unique Elemental. Materialized. Unsealed. Second awakening. 3. Sharana Wind Elemental. Unique Elemental. Materialized. Unsealed. Second Awakening. Feeling the new power flowing through my body, I knew the contract between me and S. Harana was made. At the same time, Sharana took my mana and began to materialize. She became taller and more mature. Her hair always became longer and fluttered in the air as the wind blew around her. Right, this was the normal unsealing. Ryue and Pika were truly unique in this regard as they changed their form. Ryue became a girl from a wolf and Pika became a dragon from a girl. Wow, the seal was released right after we formed our contract. We must really be a perfect match, master. Sharana looked at her body with widened eyes, then hugged me excitedly. Emm, why did Elemental's intimacy go through the roof as soon as they formed contracts? Strange, I didn't remember pulling the same card more than once. 2. I don't know what this is referencing. Perhaps some card game where you can evolve or strengthen the same card? As Pika was glaring at Sharana like she wanted to eat her, I pushed Sharana away slightly and answered. My affinity to wind was practically at the peak already. It had been strengthened by many things, so it made sense that Sharana's seal was undone the moment we formed our contract. In any case, with Sharana no longer being a mad elemental, I was done with my job. I turned around to see how others were doing. He was defeated. Ah, an opening. It's so hard and cold. If you're done, hurry up and help us. Ice souls. Catch them. Ludia, block them. I told you, don't call me Ludia. Oh Mataris, embrace this evil soul with your love. Ice Witch, take this. Mommy. Scarlet Flame. The close-ranged attackers were all fighting the giant armor while dodging its hammer smashes. The long-ranged attackers were destroying the army of armor minions that the giant armor was endlessly creating, while also attacking the giant armor. It was a total pandemonium. Hap. Heaven Collapsing Strike. Humph. The Spear Father thrust out clashed with the giant armor's hammer. A boom rang out. Meanwhile, Laz Michel charged toward the giant armor and struck down on its foot with his bastard sword. Ha! Kaya! Hugh, now! Hit and run, Shadow! I know, a Jushi! You can try to hurt me, but it's useless! I'm coming! A giant scarlet flame rose up above the giant armor. Focused on the area carved away by the others, the scarlet flames were slowly but surely devouring its body. The giant armor roared and summoned more minions, which were promptly melted by a wave of Inus' hand. Why is flames and Inus ice were dominating the battle? Pika, let's go in straight. Leave it to me, master. I formed chaos flames again and asked Sharana. 
Sharana, what are you most confident in? Master, I can make everything stronger. Colder ice, faster lightning, hotter lightning. Good. I'm sorry to ask you when you just materialized, but can you help us? Gladly. Sharana's body seemed to scatter into thin air. In the next moment, the chaos flames began to rage as if to break through the ceiling. The chaos flame's power had almost doubled in an instant. Its powerful energy made everyone focus their attention toward me. Elemental, so you choose to side with humans. Even though the Lord gave you a chance. Demon SSI, I hate demons more than I hate humans. Let's go, master. I imbued all my mana into my spear. The giant armor sent armor minions after me, but they were easily blocked by Pika. While it was focused on me, my companions attacked violently. Pika. If I was the only one here, I would have attacked with Crimson Roar, but that skill attacked everyone, whether foe or ally. As such, the next strongest attack was to use Chaos Flames. It'll melt your fat armor. Like I'd bow to a mere elemental. While Pika and I were charging toward him together, Pika opened her mouth widely and accelerated. She dodged the hammer it swung and bit down on its neck, immediately releasing a vast amount of lightning. For an instant, the spacious hall became dyed in gold. Qua! Attack now! With the opening created by Pika, the attackers each left a grave injury on its body. Father used his shockwaves to break the ice forming its body, Yi Yun and the others left cracks on its body with quick successive attacks, and Laz Michel widened the cracks with his unexpectedly delicate control over his sword. Freeze! Even with Pika's full force attack, it was daunted in the least. Its eyes flashed and the air instantly became colder. However, we had our way of dealing with it. That won't work on us. Along with Waya's sharp shout, the air began to heat up. The ice that tried to form were quickly sublimated to vapor, as foggy steam filled up the hull. At the heated air, the giant armor roared. Qua! It was then that I decided to make my move. Amidst the dense water vapor in the air, I charged toward the giant armor. It seemed it could clearly see me even in this fog, as it flashed its eyes and shot its crumbling fist toward me. I can see you, cowardly human. I thought you'd say that, so I prepared this specifically for you. Shadow blink. In the next moment, I was behind it. Using divine speed, I gained more time and focused the chaos aura and heroic aura to the tip of my spear. Then, I thrust forward. Critical hit. My spear easily pierced through the giant armor's neck, which had been weakened by Ina and Waya's joint attack. A huge flame erupted. Strengthened by Sharana's power, the inextinguishable flame ignored its resistance and blazed, eventually separating its neck from its body. It let out a death throw. Quayak. Why you cowardly human? Lives about the result, fool. As I swung my spear and shook off the chaos flame, I murmured to myself like a cold city man. I was pretty cool if I said so myself. Immediately afterward, a fanfare rang out for all of us. You defeated the event dungeon's boss monster, high rank demon Protesla. Four million gold will be distributed evenly among party members. You obtained 500,000 gold. As the other party members were watching, I made a cool pose on top of the crumbling Protesla's body. I knew what they wanted to say. It was probably why I was acting so cool or that my flame was a cheat. But since I didn't get the first place in contribution, it should be fine. I shouted inwardly and said to the others. All right, let's go home. Our short, yet long, expedition had finally come to an end. Chapter, 166 When we came out of the dungeon, the guardian's cheer was truly breaking through the heaven. This time, I felt like it was a true welcome. Russia's prime minister also ran over as soon as he heard that the dungeon disappeared. Of course, as soon as he saw Ina in Waya's arms, he froze. Seeing him shaking, I winked and spoke. In exchange for taking care of Russia's SS ranked gate, Revival requests Russia to officially accept Ilina Alexandrovna Mikhailova's citizenship renunciation. She has already asked to be naturalized to Korea. There was only one acceptable answer. 
I put so much effort into memorizing Illinus' name that I would have smacked him if he didn't accept my request. We then split ways with Michelle on a good note. Although Sharana wasn't at fault, she materialized and apologized sincerely. Before he got on his flight to France, he told me, it was a truly astonishing experience. A giant armor that can talk, an elemental, and a different world you know more about it, right? Yes, I do. In the coming days, I suspect that I will have to tell you about it and seek your help. I've seen with my own eyes why your organization exists, so I won't doubt you. I hope the day comes soon. It seems it's much more serious than anyone could anticipate. Thank you for your thoughts. After saying our goodbye to Michelle, we went back home immediately. Samaya returned to Japan, Shuna went back to the guild house, Yiyun went back to her home though she kept turning around and looking at me, and Walker went back to his new house, which was right next to ours. Then, a problem arose. Daddy, don't you live with mommy? Uh, mm. Right, we weren't sure what to do with Ina. At first, I thought it would be easy since Waya said she'd take care of her. It'll take her. My place is pretty big for just me and my mom. I think mom would like Ina, too. Will you be okay? Isn't your mother an ordinary person? I'm Mother Koham. Oh of course, I promised Ina, too. That's true. This was the promise. First, I would appoint Ina to become a first dungeon explorer. This had already been done. She was now a first dungeon explorer. Second, Ina would quickly climb the dungeon and reach the 21st floor, when she would be able to enter the residential area. Third, we'd invite her to the guild house. She'd stay with Mommy Waya or Daddy Me when she was on Earth, and stay in the dungeon or the guild house when we were both away. The third clause was especially important. Without Waya or me, Ina would be treated as a dangerous ability user again. To help her live as a regular child, the third clause was necessary. Though she couldn't really live as a regular child from the moment she was made a dungeon explorer. Plus, even if anything happens, I can quickly come back, so it's okay. With my power, I can save people as long as not much time has passed. Waya spoke with a reddened face and hugged Ina again. Then, Ina tilted her head and reached out and grabbed my sleeve. As I wasn't wearing my armor, it was my actual sleeve. What about daddy? Hmm. Daddy's coming too, right? We became speechless for a moment. I wasn't sure how to explain this to her. However, Ina skillfully read the awkward air between Waya and me and asked. Are you having a divorce? We never married in the first place, Ina. As much as Ina was hungry for affection, she was indulging herself and having us spoil her. Because of it, she felt younger than her actual age, but she wasn't a girl that couldn't understand reason. She should know that Waya and I aren't really husband and wife, nor that we were dating. Even so, I explained to Ina again to drive the point home. Ina then puffed her cheeks and said, But the two of you are a match made in heaven. Where did you learn that phrase? Mommy taught. When Ina was about to reply, Waya blocked her mouth naturally and pulled her into her embrace. Ina, Mommy told you about the guild house, right? You can see Daddy there. You don't live together. Ina, you can't be stubborn about this. Okay. Ina helplessly nodded. Then, she gave me a peck on the cheek and made me promise. You have to come see me every day. Hmm, um, they'll try, Ina. Every day might be hard though. Beyond wasn't a place I could clear so quickly. Even when I explained that to her, Ina sulked. Kids really were difficult. Before we all returned to our daily lives, I called the guild members together. We then held a funeral for Piscina in the guild's resort, resting place of the angels. The funeral was a special ceremony for elementalists, and Sharana watched in her materialized form. It was something only possible when a fellow elementalist was present. In this funeral, elementals would gather in the corpse of the elementalist and they would sublimate the mana left in the corpse. The body would then naturally dissipate. The myth was that an elementalist that went through this funeral would reincarnate as an elemental. As it used up a lot of the helping elementalist's mana, it wasn't viable during battle. 
it was rare for there to even be an elementalist to help. In addition, most elementalists hated to this funeral ceremony to be seen by others. Thus, it was a rare sight. That said, the elementalist funeral ceremony was probably one of the most beautiful forms of funerals for humans. Elementals, light up the path forward for your friend. An elf elementalist. Poor girl, she couldn't die all this time. Prince said to help. This is my first time doing this. Countless colorful elementals gathered in Piscina's corpse. In the process of naturally taking out her mana, the elementals shone with a light that even those who couldn't see elementals could see. It was almost as if a rainbow was being drawn above Piscina's corpse. Beautiful. My. Ichem. Unbelievable, to think Kong Shin could show such a beautiful sight. Except for Walker, the rest of Revival's members watched silently. It would have been nice if we could have held funerals for the rankers that died in the event dungeon, but their corpses became lost when the event dungeon disappeared. As time passed, the light became stronger. Eventually, the light began to diminish around a focal point. By the time the elementals stopped giving off light, Piscina's corpse became particles of light and scattered into the air. All mana left in her body had been used up. Goodbye, Piscina. It was really fun being with you. Sharana spoke with a cheerful voice and created a breeze to send the particles away. I couldn't help but ask Sharana. Will Piscina be reborn as an elemental? Yes. Since we even held an elemental funeral ceremony, I'm sure of it. I'd like to meet her again one day. She murmured in a whisper, then bowed. Thank you, Master. I didn't think you even knew about the elemental funeral ceremony. It comes with being an elementalist. Though, I don't really know how I know. I smiled bitterly and turned to look at the party members, who were still standing around with blank expressions. Thank you for coming over, everyone. Let's enjoy a good tuna sashimi at the mansion and go back to exploring the dungeon. I wanted to finish it soon. The melting tuna no matter how much I ate, it wouldn't disappear. Waya and I were eating it whenever we could, but there was no end in sight. Perhaps I had to give some of it away to Fairy Garden. While everyone began to move, there was one person that continued to stand still. It was Ludia. When I approached her, she stood in place and asked. Shin, what did you say was the name of the elf elementalist? I told you, it's Piscina. Why? I tilted my head and put my hand on her shoulder. She flinched as if she was slightly surprised, then became pale and asked. Shin, Piscina is the name of the legendary elf hero who fought against the demon race in Luca Continent fifty years ago. I immediately ran to Loretta. Because I told her I would be away for a while, she had temporarily gone back to Fairy Garden. Thus, I had to run to Fairy Garden to meet her. Loretta. When I opened the door to the log cabin, I saw Loretta and Lynn drinking tea, and also a beautiful woman sitting right next to Lynn. When Loretta saw me, she threw the teacup she was holding the woman on the opposite side of her caught it with magic, and jumped toward me. Kayak, Shin Nim. I wanted to see you so mu I, I mean. You took too long, stupid. I wanted to see Loretta a lot too, but there's something more important right now. You treated it like an unimportant matter again. Treating my feelings like the weight, you said you wanted to see me a lot. Ehe. Loretta's expression quickly changed from a look of injustice to a blooming smile. Though it looked stupid, it was also quite cute. However, I didn't have the time right now. Wow so this is Loretta's boyfriend. Well, yeah. He's a bit of an idiot, but he strangely attracts women. You be careful, too. So he's like you, Lin. You dare to make fun of a draconian? How bold. Good, follow me i will show you my rage. I could hear Lynn and the woman's chatter, but I ignored them and pulled off Loretta, who was rubbing her face on my chest as if to poke a hole through it. Loretta, you know I left to destroy event dungeons, right? Yes, Shin Nim told me about it. You became so strong, but you shouldn't trust your status too much. What's important is your level. No matter how overwhelming your stats are compared to an enemy, if your level is too low, the league of your soul will fundamentally pale in comparison. 
you can tell me about that later in more detail. There's something I wanted to ask Loretta about that. What is it, Shin Nim? It seemed she realized that I was being serious. Loretta's eyes had also become serious. I calmly explained to her what happened. Meeting the elf elementalist Piscina and my new partner Sharana in the dungeon, and that they were both from the Luca continent. Is the demon army that attacked Luca continent also attacking Earth? Loretta, how can that be possible? The demon army only just conquered the Luca continent. How could they have been invading Earth since two years ago? Did they operate two separate armies? Or is there a warp in time that I'm not aware of? And no, neither of them are true. Loretta shook her head. Her lips were trembling. Oh, please, I can't. Loretta. They aren't Earth's enemy. I'm sure of this because only worlds that have lost their power can invade other worlds. I heard an absurd secret. Wait, did that mean that the world's enemy was also residents of other worlds like us? Were they invading other worlds to steal their power? How did they lose their power in the first place? No, I could solve that mystery later. The important thing now was. Then why did an Earth's dungeon have a boss who served the demon lord? Isn't it obvious? kid? They can't pave a pathway themselves, but they can use the pathway that's already been drilled. Lin responded in place of Loretta, who was lost for words. His eyes flashed with coldness. Your world is currently being attacked by two forces. Although it's rare, it's not like it hasn't happened before. Ones that got a taste of the world's power could easily turn their attention to other world's powers. Even after they achieved the continual existence of their world, they aren't satisfied and seek to obtain even greater powers. That's who you're dealing with. He continued with a slightly trembling voice. We call that a double crisis. Simply put, you're fucked. Chapter, 167 Originally, the invasion process is extremely slow. After all, there's a limit to the number of times that the pathway can be used before it can be used again. But once a double crisis occurs, the dimensional pathway widens and the invasion speed accelerates. The world that faces a double crisis then faces more enemies more quickly. Loretta's explanation validated Lin's words. Just like he said, Earth looked pretty fucked. Shin Nim, tell me. How many event dungeons appeared this time? About 300. 300 300 the invasion of Earth began one year and eight months ago, and it was about two and a half months ago that the demon army from the conquered Luca continent began to reach out to another world. The woman who was talking to Lin responded instead of Loretta. It looks like one of the forces invading will completely arrive in two years at least isn't your world over. Shut it, Elian. Loretta said with a smile. The woman, Elian, flinched. With that, their relative positions were made clear. It's fine. If it's Shin Nim, he might be able to do it he's completely rewriting the dungeon's history. If he can climb to the end of the dungeon within two years. Ha! You think he can conquer the first dungeon, which has never been conquered, in just two years? What floor is he in? 98th? 54th? Pft! And he's an explorer of beyond. The woman called Elian had a dumbfounded expression. Loretta, are you saying that for real? Or have you finally lost your mind? Fine, as an explorer of beyond at just the 54th floor, it is true that he is a genius. He'll admit that. Even so, it's impossible. It's physically impossible. He can perhaps barely achieve it if he's given 200 years. Just one year and eight months ago, Shin Nim was on the fifth floor. Oh, I knew that expression. That was the expression Yi Yun had when I first told her about the dungeon. It was the, what the hell is this person saying? Kind of expression. However, Loretta gestured at her, as if it was a waste of time to explain things to her. Elian, sorry, but leave I don't want non-guild members to hear what I have to say from now. You should know this, but Loretta. Leave. With that, Loretta gestured strongly with her hands. Elian's words were interrupted and she faded away. With a harumph, Loretta snorted and explained. That woman's is the guild master of the administrative guild, Lost Valley. 
Ever since she fell for Lin, she would ignore her status as a guild master and visit Fairy Garden. You don't need to pay attention to a fool like her. I had the feeling I knew a similar woman, but I didn't say it aloud. Loretta then began to drink her tea again. Meanwhile, I asked Lin to fix my equipment. As I hadn't done any equipment maintenance for one month, they were quite bruised. Lin scowled, but still accepted my armor and began to work on it. Loretta, who was drinking tea, suddenly grit her teeth after seeing my armor. Lin, Shin Nim's equipment is old. For how long are you going to let him wear such lousy equipment? Nunim, it hasn't been that long since I made them for him. Plus, they're epic grade items. Don't make me say it twice. TSK understood. It'll make him better ones. I had felt it before, but perhaps Loretta was quite a tyrant to those working for her. While I was thinking about their subordinate superior relationship, Lin glared at me and spoke. But I won't do it for free. Bring me some reasonable material, something that would make me hit my knees and yell, that's it. What would Lin be impressed by? Flame Drake. Please. Where would I use that lizard? If you want to impress me with the type of creature, bring me a dragon or a peak rank demon. Lin snorted and answered. He made me remember something. I took out the corpse of the demon army commander Shituno, which I had just stuffed into my inventory. How about this, Lin? The moment Lin saw Shituno's corpse, he bit his lips and clenched his fists. Then, he muttered like he hated it. Damn, this is it. Why aren't you hitting your knees? Go on, he'll be watching. Do it. Ack, how annoying. Beside Shituno's corpse, Lin took parts of the evil rhinoceros beetle's carapace, the cyclops lord's skin and blood, and other monsters which were stuffed in my inventory. Then, he took Red Dragon Felix's cape, which was originally attached to the armor set. He'll refine the cape by adding the demon's skin. It looks like he'll be busy. Great. It looks like you found yourself a job to do, Lin. I already have a lot. Do you want to kill me, Nunim? Ei, how could my Lin die from something like that? So hurry up. Loretta pressured Lin with a bright smile. Lin scratched his head and let out a deep sigh before he got up. Damn it then I'm going to go work on these. Oi, Kong Shin. It's going to take me a while, so live without a cape for a bit. Thank you, Lin. Humph. He gave me a snort and left the cabin. Seeing his back, Loretta snickered. Lin must really like Shin Nim. Which part of that conversation gave you that idea? Don't you know? No matter how much I plead, Lin never makes equipment for someone he hates. I thought what Loretta did was more like threatening with authority than pleading, but I must have misunderstood. I was certain. It definitely wasn't because I was afraid of her last bullet of extermination. Then, Shin Nim, let's go back to talking about the matter at hand. Loretta put down her teacup, placed her hands on her knees, and looked at me intently. Her mystical eyes that occasionally flashed with light seemed to be examining me with worry. Um, don't worry too much about what Elian said. It's not over yet. Ah. I remembered what we just talked about. However, the fact that twenty years had turned into two years didn't really strike me as real. Two years. I had to face someone like that demon lord in two years. Compared to the Luka continent's countless number of warriors, Earth was too ill-prepared. The ability users were not finished growing yet and there were only a few dungeon explorers. We could only now begin to look for trustworthy allies, but to think we only had two years left. Not to mention, the one behind this crisis was none other than the demon lord who attacked the Luka continent I asked the suspicion I had since a while ago. Loretta. No, it's a coincidence. Loretta interrupted me. It's not because Shin Nim went as a dimensional mercenary. If that was enough to cause a double crisis, no one would want to be a dimensional mercenary. But I'm Earth's hero. Could that have affected? No. Shin Nim, I can promise you. That's not it. Do you not trust me? Loretta brought her face up to mine. Her golden eyes were shining like two bright gems. She was close enough for me to feel her breath. Seeing Loretta's resolute eyes, I shook my head. 
I trust you. The demon lord probably doesn't know about Shin Nim's existence. He will only realize once he crosses over. He simply invaded another world through a pathway, which happened to lead to Earth. Please, trust me, Shin Nim. Like I said, I trust you. Ungood. Loretta moved back with a satisfied expression. Then, she suddenly clapped. All right, then think about what you should do now. What should I do? You should finish climbing the dungeon in two years. She said it as if it was simple. If possible, your allies, too. That sounds extremely difficult. But Shin Nim is the only one qualified to enter beyond, right? If it's just the first dungeon, Shin Nim's friends might be able to succeed with a monopoly over the blessings. I'd like it if that were the case. If that happens, you have a great chance to succeed. I can guarantee it. You want us to do in just two years what other explorers couldn't in hundreds of years. Otherwise, Shin Nim's world will come to an end. When I became silent, Loretta also became silent. This time, the silence continued for a long time. When I couldn't handle the atmosphere anymore and was about to get up, Loretta opened her mouth. Shin Nim. Yes. If if Shin Nim is scared I. Loretta. Even if you abandon your world, I won't blame you. I doubted my ears. Loretta. It would go against the dungeon and the Lord's philosophy but Shin Nim is more important to me. I, I won't blame you, so if if the burden gets too heavy if Shin Nim can't bear it anymore. I cut her off and asked. What happens if I run away? If a hero stays in the dungeon for too long, it will be the same as his world losing its power. In other words, the same thing that happened to the Luka continent will happen to Earth. Her silence was the strongest affirmation. Seeing her reaction, I felt alleviated. Running away it wasn't that I hadn't considered it. But if I did, what about my parents? Even if I made Mother and Yua into dungeon explorers and brought them to the dungeon, what about my friends? Would they think the same way as me? If they didn't, would I be able to leave them behind and abandon Earth? No, of course not. I didn't plan to in the first place. Why did I have to abandon my friends and escape to the dungeon? Because of the demon lord? Because of the other unknown enemy? I should stay put in the dungeon because I was afraid of them. If I threw away what was important to me and survived, would the life I have be worth living? I was certain that the answer was no. I hated losing my freedom the most. No one could tie me down. I hated the people trying to restrain me because I was a hero, but what I hated the most was throwing away my freedom because I was afraid of monsters. I grinned. You already know my answer, right? But Shin Nim. I decided. Two years, right? Are you sure about that? Why yes. It's two years at the earliest. But. It'll do it within two years then. I said lightly and smiled. Then, I wiped Loretta's eyes, which were beginning to tear up. Short and simple. If I can conquer the dungeon in two years, I can destroy whatever comes my way, be it the demon lord or anything else. B but it doesn't have to be Shin Nim that does. But there's only me. It'll do it. I know I can. So don't worry and just watch over me. It'll break through the dungeon and save the world. It'll be the coolest guy in the world. Shin Nayim. Loretta was still frowning. So, I continued. For Loretta, he'll make sure I succeed. For me. Loretta, I'm going to be different. Trust me. Loretta widened her eyes. With her already big eyes, she looked slightly scary. How did you? It's easy to see. And no, sure, Shin Nim, I, Shin Nim is the only, ah, uh, uck. Uh, did you perhaps meet, a huck? Loretta ended up biting her tongue. I couldn't help but laugh seeing her clumsiness. I already know. Don't worry about something like that and wait. The first dungeon's fifty-fourth floor and beyond's fourth floor. I'll first clear them and come back. I patted her head and continued. You don't trust me. I trust you. I trust in Shin Nim's potential. So let me keep supporting you. Of course. 
Then, it'll be off. I smiled and left the cabin. I heard Loretta sniffling, but I didn't turn around. Now, it was the time to conquer the dungeon. Just you wait, 100th floor. By the way, I didn't propose to Loretta, did I? Chapter, 168 Because it's been so long since I entered the dungeon, I've almost forgotten what monsters appeared in the 50th floor range. Regardless, I met the giant humanoid monsters of the 54th floor head-on and broke through in just one hour. Eh. This was the first time I had broken through a dungeon floor in one hour. When I reached the floor shop and saw that Loretta wasn't back, I realized just how quickly I had broken through the 54th floor. Flustered, I looked back. Hoo-hoo, this is my power, master. Yeah, Pika is really amazing. It's a good thing my seal was released. It seemed like the biggest reason was that I charged through the floor by riding on a materialized Pika. When I materialized Pika, I didn't have the spare power to summon Ryue or Sharana. I simply drank mana potions whenever they were off cooldown and scorched monsters in our way with Chaos Flame. It was fine to use Pika's ability from time to time, but I was still lacking in mana to ride her and rush forward for dozens of minutes. This method would not work in beyond. Just five stacks of Orc Lord's war cries would turn our quick charge into a shortcut to death. Regardless, I need to clear the first dungeon as quickly as possible. After all, Beyond inadvertently takes up more time. I first dematerialized Pika and circulated Peruta circuit to restore mana and relieve fatigue. Now, climbing the first dungeon wasn't so difficult. If it was, I would be troubled. I only had two years left. The less time I spent in the first dungeon, the better. I needed to focus my time on conquering Beyond. Alright, let's go once I'm fully revitalized. My goal is to break through in four days. Master can do it if Master is with me. Master doesn't need the others. I smiled at Pika's declaration and patted her head. Sorry Pika, but I'm going to need Ryue and Sharana's power too for Beyond. On Beyond's fourth floor, both Orc Lords and Wraith Queens were waiting for me. I already knew how fierce Orc Lords were, but the Wraith Queen's mental attacks couldn't really affect me. Since the only physical attack they could do was shooting ectoplasm's arrows, I felt that I could just ignore them. Of course, things didn't go as I expected. The Orc Lord's war cries affected all allies. In other words, the Wraith Queens were also strengthened. Their mental attacks weren't strengthened by much, but their ectoplasm arrows were extremely scary. Just a single one of them could break through my armor and shake my soul. If that wasn't enough, they were shooting hundreds of them at once, which bounced around and got strengthened further. It was like I was in hell. Human. A human with a shining soul. Cool. Eat him. Handsome men are all enemies. You bastards including personal enmities. Have a taste of my crossbow bolt. My spear technique couldn't do much on beyond fourth floor. Since the Wraith Queens shot hundreds of ectoplasm arrows at me whenever they saw me, I didn't have the chance to run into them and create whirlpools or whatnot. What I relied on was the epic grade crossbow, Perfect Hunter. Perfect Hunter Epic. Durability 351360. Attack 3750. Equipment Requirement Strength, Dexterity, Magic 150. Midrank Crossbow Marksmanship. Option Strength 15, Dexterity 15, Magic 15. Adds Wind Attribute to Bolt-Based Attacks. Attack Speed 20%. Automatic Reloading. Uses 10 mana to create mana bolts when the user is out of bolts. Skill Invisible Shooter, makes the bolts invisible and removes sound and presence from bolts. Adds 30% bonus to speed and attack power. Thankfully, Perfect Hunter already had a wind attribute bonus. When Sharana was infused into it, the wind attribute was strengthened even more, maximizing the speed and piercing power of the bolts. In addition, one couldn't see the bolts Perfect Hunter shot out. As a result, it was hard to dodge them and many only recognized the bolts once they were hit. Quang. Cowardly human. Kwa. Kill that human. No matter how much they struggled and tried to kill me, they couldn't catch up to me in speed. 
The only thing they could do was to use war cries and shoot out the strengthened ectoplasm arrows. But since ectoplasm arrows exploded upon contact, it was possible to shoot them down. I left Ryue to this task. The countless ice crystals Ryue created was perfect for blocking the ectoplasm arrows. Elemental. Kill the elemental. Girls prettier than me should all die. Kill all the girls hanging around guys. And the important thing was to purposefully let a few ectoplasm arrows go through. After I dodged them with acrobatic maneuvers, they would bounce around the walls and kill wraith queens or orc lords. It was similar to how I was dealing with them before. Kayak. My soul is being purified. How are you being purified by your own arrows you're going to put exorcists out of business? Hot. I busily maneuvered around, dodging their attacks and shooting out bolts. With my stats increased over the last month, I felt much lighter. It was why clearing the fourth floor was quicker than the second floor. If I could control the ectoplasm arrows with Ryue, the fourth floor was a piece of cake. That said, I couldn't continue this hit and run tactic forever. As I had to continue onward to find the pathway, it was possible that I had reached a dead end. Kwong. As expected, when I found myself in a dead end, the orc lords shouted and charged at me, as if they were waiting for this moment. The wraith queens also shot out a countless number of ectoplasm arrows as they flew toward me. I ordered Ryue to create a whirlpool of ice and used it to strike away the ectoplasm arrows. Then, I shouted. Pika. Thunder ground. A black dragon appeared in the air. A thick bolt of lightning flashed through the crowd of monsters. When the powerful lightning joined the ice crystals, it became stronger and spread out in all directions. The monsters all screamed in unison. Quiak. Next up. I hung the crossbow on my waist and took out the chaotic spear from my back. Because the monsters were super armored, they continued to run at me even as they screamed in pain. If I didn't kill them now, I would be trampled to death by them. Elemental Tempest. Elementals gathered in my spear while chatting noisily. Pryuta circuit spun vehemently and covered my entire body in a whirlpool. I tamed the whirlpool of mana that seemed to want to explode and trapped it at the tip of my spear. As more elementals gathered, the spear shone with more and more brilliant light. Die, human. Sorry, but I can't die even once. The moment they arrived in front of me, I released the storm of elementals. Almost as if I shot a cannon, a giant back blast pushed me backward and made me hit the wall behind me. I groaned and checked my surroundings. If any of them were alive, I had to get them before they got me. However, after the storm passed, the pathway was still. Just like always, the monsters all disappeared without leaving a trace. Although they would respawn soon, there were currently no monsters within my detection range. Good. After confirming that no monsters survived, I put my spear away on my back. Then, with a deep sigh, I took out and drank a new mana potion. The highest grade mana potion was delicious no matter how many times I drank it. Pika, I'll call you again. But I want to stay with Master. Sorry. It's okay during battle, but it's hard to keep three elementals out at all times. Pi. Sorry, sorry. I sent Pika back and quickly moved on. When I wasn't in battle, I infused Sharana into my body instead of the crossbow, so I could maximize my movement speed. If I used more mana, I could even fly. Teleria's usefulness had somewhat disappeared. Though, if I summoned Teleria, my speed would increase even more. It looks like Master is very used to flying. Most elementalists have trouble when they fly for the first time. I have something called Teleria. It lets me fly for a fixed period of time every day. I was using it when I was fighting Piscina, too. Wow. Now that you mention it, you really were flying back then. You really are special, like having three elementals isn't enough. While listening to Sharana and flying through the pathway, I shot a bolt toward the ground. The bolt then bounced around from the ground to the ceiling multiple times like a bouncy ball, then struck a corner of the wall with a mountain crumbling force. Immediately afterward, a boom rang out along with a scream. Qua. Good. This zone is taken care of. 
Using mana detection, I had detonated a trap I discovered and even killed an orc lord that was waiting around the corner. It was truly a satisfying feeling. Kia. The wraith queens that were outside of the trap's range came out and began to shoot ectoplasm arrows. However, if they weren't strengthened by war cries, I didn't even need to dodge them. Ruyue, shield. Crystal guard. I took out my spear and charged at the crowd of wraith queens. At the same time, Ruyu's ice crystals enveloped me like a cloud. I circulated Peruta circuit and activated Mad Typhoon. The whirlpool of mana mixed with the ice crystals disintegrated all ectoplasm's arrows it touched. Kayak. Kill that human. Hap. Blade Rush. Before I reached them, I activated Blade Rush. Blades then immediately protruded out from my mouth. I bumped into a Wraith Queen, tearing her to shreds. Then, the blades shout out and tore apart the rest of them. Chaos flames swept over those that survived. Critical hit. Kayak. Hugh, how long do I have to listen to your screams? I muttered and erased all traces of the Wraith Queens. The moment the monsters disappeared, complete silence once again arrived. I had gotten used to it by now. In beyond, it suddenly became loud, then suddenly became silent. It was truly a capricious space. However, even though everything was proceeding smoothly, I couldn't be happy. Two days had passed since I entered Beyond's fourth floor. I was confident that I was advancing quickly, but I still hadn't seen a straight pathway. Though, I knew I was rushing things compared to my last Beyond explorations. It seemed Ruyue had seen through my impatience, as she cheered me up. Don't worry. Shin is very strong. I wasn't sure what being strong had to do with it, but I knew she was trying to console me. I patted Ruyue, who materialized on her own accord and hugged me. Sharana, who was infused in my body, also added. Even if Master doesn't hurry, Master is already very fast. Her words were much more meaningful than Ruyue's. I made a bitter smile and nodded. You're right. If I rush too much and die, it would be a true disaster. Thanks. Let's keep going at this pace. The two-year time limit was extremely stifling. I could no longer climb the dungeon solely based on my desire to improve myself. The fact that I had to save my friends and family continued to push me. Perhaps it was acting as a poison. When the spear held up to protect freedom was weighed down by responsibility, it would lose its sharpness and swiftness. That would be truly foolish. All right snap out of it and go. I slapped my cheeks with spirit and flew up again. I even summoned Teleria. I wanted to push away some of this stifling feeling. Let's go. Yes, master. Twenty minutes after that, the straight pathway opened, and I broke through the corridor filled with orc lords and wraith queen using crimson roar and elemental tempest. I had broken through beyond's fourth floor in two days. It was a pleasant surprise. Damn, I should have waited a bit more. I wasted Teleria. Chapter, 169 After clearing beyond's fourth floor, I immediately continued to the first dungeon's fifty-fifth floor, as I wanted to make use of the time I had left on Teleria. While I was sweeping my way through the floor, I received a message from a friend for the first time in a while. Crown Prince, are you listening? Ah, run. It's been a while. You're finally picked up. Did something happen recently? It seemed he had messaged me a few times when I was busy clearing event dungeons. I must have really been busy if I didn't notice. I spoke with a bitter smile. Yeah, I've been busy with things in my world. I see. Well, I'm sure all explorers are busy in one way or another so, what floor are you on? I'm about to challenge the 55th floor. 55th floor. Ren became flustered. Just how busy were you? I'm grinding the 55th floor's elixirs right now. Well, that's one thing, but I entered the dungeon above the first dungeon. You mean beyond? I couldn't hide my surprise that Ren knew about beyond. How did you know, Ren? My fath and my continent's hero was Beyond's explorer. I see. When we first met and you told me you defeated the Lizard Knight alone, I suspected that this might happen, but to think it really would. 
Run. Hmm. Wait. Run, did you also defeat all bosses alone until now? I didn't think you did. Of course. The reason I took so long breaking through the dungeon before I met Crown Prince was because of it. Fath the hero said I had to defeat the dungeon's bosses alone, so I defeated the Orc Lord and the Wraith Queen alone. It was just that I didn't grind the elixirs they dropped. I see. Because he was so happy when he defeated the Lizard Knight alone, I always thought that was the first time he defeated a Floor Master alone, but it seemed he was just happy he succeeded without ever dying. Did I never tell you about it? Regardless, meeting Crown Prince increased my dungeon clearing speed by dozens of times. I really can't thank you enough. Putting aside the fact that he never told me about it until now, just what was Ren. The son of a hero and master of a strong knight could Ren be a crown prince or something in his continent? Wait, Beyond currently only had three explorers. One was a woman and one was me. Then, could the other man be Ren's father? I was curious, but I didn't feel comfortable asking Ren about it. Surprisingly, the dense Ren seemed to have read my mind. It's unlike Crown Prince to hesitate. My continent's hero is dead. I felt stifled. I see. There was no time to transfer the position of hero to me either. Our enemy's evil hands had already reached the upper echelons of our forces and there was nothing we could do. The position of hero was transferable. Loretta had told me about it too. However, it wasn't something that could be transferred so easily. Both the receiver and the relinquisher had to meet certain conditions and it took a long time. Simply put, once one received the position of hero, it was extremely difficult to hand it over to someone else. Ren, then. I already told you. In the only explorer in Pan and Continent, including the second, third, and fourth dungeons. Of course, we have no beyond explorers either. I couldn't believe that he could say what he was saying so nonchalantly. The hero was dead. There were no warriors who could reclaim the world's power. I could understand why Labique had escaped from Panem. In that case why? Why are you staying in that world, Ren? Ren became silent for a bit, then spoke. Rather than saying he was choosing his words, it seemed like he was making a vow to himself as he was explaining to me. Because there are still things I need to protect there. That's why, Crown Prince. Most likely, I would remember his words for the rest of my life. His resolute heart, expressing that he would not doubt his decisions and actions, caused me to feel respect for him. Thinking that I would never forget this moment, I said respectfully. If there's anything I can help you with, tell me. Thank you, Crown Prince. You'll remember it. Ha ha ha, Crown Prince couldn't be more reliable. After that, we chatted more about trifling matters and ended the conversation. I felt like a new courage had filled my heart. Thinking that Ren and I would develop into a special relationship that was different than the one with currently had, I stopped in front of the 55th floor master room. The 55th floor master was an ogre. It was large and muscular, had rust-colored skin, and was said to be the strongest of all biped monsters. Strangely, it had two heads, which was said to double his strength. I was curious how having an extra head doubled one's strength, but I didn't think anyone would answer me. According to Ren, he successfully overpowered it with his overwhelming strength. Though, he said he died two times before he succeeded. As such, I opened the door feeling tense. Fight me. Kaya ha 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 ha. As expected, there was only a giant ogre standing in a spacious wasteland. The moment it saw me, it screamed strangely and charged at me. Every time it stomped on the ground, the ground tremored. Feeling its strength from the ground, I couldn't help but be shocked. My god. It was weaker than an orc lord with seven stacks of war cry. This guy was a total weakling. Kaya ha ha ha. Pika, materialize. I've been waiting, master. The moment Pika appeared in her dragon form, I jumped on her back and held the chaotic spear with both hands. Infused into it was none other than Sharana. With her, the chaos flame attribute wasn't eaten up, as she could amplify it purely. The chaos flame blazed ominously and rose up in a whirlpool along with the vigor of Mad Typhoon. I took in a breath and squeezed Pika with my legs. 
It was the signal telling her to charge. Uhuhu. Pika, don't make weird noises and charge. There's only one reason I materialized you. Short-term fight, right? Okay, I'm going now. I didn't know what it found so laughable, but the twin-headed ogre continued to laugh as it approached me. As the saying, fools rush in where angels fear to tread, went, this was exactly that. Plus, compared to the orc lord, it wasn't even that fast. Eat this. Kayaha. When Pika shot toward it like an arrow and blasted it with a lightning bolt, it raised its arms and crossed them to block it. Ogre skin was famous for being highly resilient, and this guy was also a floor master. I wondered if it would easily block Pika's lightning, but it seemed the unsealed Pika's lightning was completely different than her old lightning. It instantly pierced through the skin's resistance and electrocuted the ogre. Kayak. Now that's what I wanted to hear. Tempest. When it let out a blood-curdling scream and stepped back, I shot the flame whirlpool enveloping my spear forward. It blocked the tempest I aimed at its left head with its arm, but the chaos flame devoured its entire right arm and began to scorch it. Kayahak. Pika. Leave it to me. The ogre screamed and swung its arm toward us. Although there was no way we would be hit by it, when its menacing claws cut through the air, they drew glowing traces of black aura, which flew toward Pika and me. Pika then skillfully maneuvered its body and dodged the attacks before she spat out another lightning bolt. Kayahahak. Not enough. I still had most of my mana remaining. I gripped my spear tightly and fiercely circulated per Yuta circuit so that the spinning sound was even audible from the outside. In an instant, another whirlpool of flame shot up around the spear. Master, the claw attack is coming again. What, damn it. Kaya. It seemed to disregard the flame devouring its right arm as it swung its arms violently. With every swing, five aura streams shot toward me. In the end, dozens of aura streams were flying toward me. Pika hurriedly flew up to dodge them, but she soon clicked her tongue. Master, the auras are changing direction and following me. Turn around and charge toward him. Wasn't it supposed to be strong physically? How? He's just playing with auras. I gritted my teeth and tightened my legs around Pika's back to fasten myself. Hey, hey, I can die happy now. You can't die, Pika. Pika's body shone with a golden light and discharged lightning. Countless bolts of lightning flickered and dealt lightning damage to the ogre, paralyzing it. Cool. Kook. Even so, it managed to raise its left arm against me. I instantly widened my eyes and controlled Pika to dodge its thick arm. Although it was weaker than the Orc Lord, it was still true that it was stronger than me in terms of pure strength. If I faced its attack with my spear, I couldn't guarantee my shoulder's safety. Thankfully, Mad Typhoon could damage my enemies without ever needing to touch them. Kai Gagagak. When it realized it missed, it turned its left head toward me and swung its arm once more. However, its stance was already ruined. I leapt forward strongly and thrust my spear out in full force. The chaos flame enveloping the spear swept over it as if to devour it whole. It'll burn your arms off. After we successfully left chaos flames in its left arm, we brushed past its body. Then, we heard the aura streams it flew out striking its body and exploding. Pika instantly turned around and charged toward it again. Master, attack. I'm already on it. When I imbued my spear full of aura, Sharana cheered and expanded the chaos flames more strongly. Enveloped by the reddish-black whirlpool of flame, the chaotic spear looked like a dragon. However, the twin-headed ogre didn't seem to want to lose so easily. Although its arms were being eroded by the chaos flames and letting out a strange smell, it raised its arms without a care in the world and screamed. Twin-headed ogre used ogre power. Its strength doubles for a period of time. Wow! A skill I really wanted popped out. My eyes sparkled as I pulled my spear back. With that skill, I could control gigantic freely. Master, that guy got super strong. Can you block him, Pika? Of course. It clasped its hands and struck down on the ground. The ground then sprung up. 
It was almost as if it used Dullahan's outburst skill, except with its bare fists. However, the lightning shooting out of Pika's body perfectly struck the earth shards away. Master, are we dodging? No, we don't need to waste our time on this guy. Charge. Without replying, Pika increased her speed and charged toward the ogre. I also raised my spear high up in the air. Above the whirlpool of chaos flames, white flames began to blaze. The twin-headed ogre spread its arms out and ran toward me. It seemed it wanted to capture me, but that definitely wouldn't happen. Sorry, but you're nothing more than a small fry. K.U. Boom. It smashed its arms against each other. Some of the chaos flames around it even fell off because of it. However, immediately before it did so, Pika dematerialized and dropped me, letting me dodge its arms perfectly. Its attack brushed past my head and could only pick off a few strands of my hair. Before I landed on the ground, I saw a good target. As expected of a wild ogre, there was something asserting its presence on its uncovered body. Damn, where's the mosaic? Otherwise. Take this. Egg breaker. The flame whirlpool accelerated to the limit with mad typhoon, didn't just break, but rather ravaged and ground everything it touched. I dodged the blood, skin, and bone waste flying about everywhere and landed on the ground. Then, I let out a deep sigh. Phew. The spear hit an unfortunate area. From now, Teacher Ogre can never have a child in other words, he cannot ever have a sexual relationship. Kia, Kayak. I shook my head and held up my spear. The twin-headed ogre could no longer make laughing noises. It was already dead. Both mentally and physically. Chapter, 170. You became level 56. You obtained five bonus stats. You obtained the qualification to challenge Beyond's fifth floor. Amazing. You are the first in first dungeon's history to succeed in soloing the twin-headed ogre on the first try. The dungeon will remember you as a great explorer. You obtain two skill point as a reward. Remaining skill points, 20. You obtain the title, Twin-Headed Ogre Master. All stats increase by 2. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You defeated the Twin-Headed Ogre alone. You obtained the special reward, Twin-Headed Ogre's Leather Pants. You obtained 350,000 gold. You received the only reward left hidden by the first explorer. Congratulations. Your luck stat increases by 1. Secret. Twin-Headed Ogre's Tattoo. I was ecstatic that no one had gotten the first achievement for the 55th floor. Not to mention, the reward was a tattoo. I happily chose the reward. Immediately, my arms began to heat up. The giant wolf's tattoo was engraved on my legs, but it seemed the twin-headed ogre's tattoo was for my arms. I took off my armor and checked the tattoo. Streaks of red lines were being drawn on my arms. You obtained the twin-headed ogre's tattoo. Your strength increases by 15%, and once per day, you can add 50% damage to a close-ranged skill. I'm full of power. I tried to look cool and made a pose showing off my muscles. Feeling the strength surging through my body, I nodded in satisfaction. Then, I put my armor back on. What reward did Ren get? Since he didn't get the first reward, could it be a single-headed ogre tattoo? In any case, I had no longer had any business in the boss room. Pika, who had dematerialized and returned to her small dragon form, coiled around my arm, as I walked out of the room. When Loretta saw me from the floor shop, she flapped her ears and welcomed me. Though I'd seen it many times by now, the ways her ears flapped were always amusing. I thought, I'm curious about elves' muscle structure. Could it be that elf queens had different muscle structure? Shin Nim. I'm back. You were really quick. The twin-headed ogre shouldn't have been an easy enemy. Compared to the orc lords, he wasn't anything. Ha ha ha. Loretta smiled wryly, then seemed to remember something as she said, Shin Nim. Now that I think about it, I forgot to ask you. I'm sorry to make Shin Nim even busier, but I think Shin Nim would like it. I don't need the lecture. Okay. 
So, if you could fight floor masters more than three times per day, would you? Of course. I nodded my head vigorously and pushed my face toward hers. Then, feeling embarrassed, I pulled back, but Loretta looked completely unaffected as she took something out of her pocket. It was a stack of glowing golden paper. Fighting a floor master three times every day, but never get tired. The floor shop has specially prepared an item just for you. Ten times. Ten times per day. This entrance ticket for high-ranking explorers is incomparable to the average entrance ticket. It is called, ten times a day, you monster. Now, each ticket is only 100,000 gold. Don't miss this chance. Ill buy it, so change the name immediately. Change it. Make it a simple combination of adjective and noun. Who's the one that named it? Bring that person to me now. The entrance ticket's name was quite disturbing, but since it was exactly what I needed, I bought it anyway. Using all the money I had, I bought 400 tickets. Since I got 350,000 gold per raid, each of them would be a 250,000 net gold profit. If I used all this money on earth instead of the dungeon, the market would undoubtedly crash. It still felt unrealistic that the gold from the dungeon could be exchanged for earth's currency. You really bought it. I knew my eyes weren't wrong. So many ten times a day, you monster. Change the name. You don't like it? Elian said it was her best work. All right, let me go beat her up now. Ah, uh, Elian should be hard for Shin Nim right now, so wait until Shin Nim's level 90. No, since Shin Nim is in beyond, level 80 might be enough. Thanks for the advice, Loretta. That Elian woman looked frail. To think she would be that strong since Loretta chased her away with a single wave of her hand, just how strong was Loretta? As if to stop my train of thought, Loretta stared at my face fixedly. Will you be okay? Fighting the floor master ten times a day isn't something to scoff at. I shouldn't say this as the seller, but you'll become exhausted. The more time I save on the first dungeon, the more time I can invest into beyond. So, of course, I should do it. Isn't that why you brought them to me, Loretta? That's true but... Loretta's ears drooped slightly. I smiled and patted her head. Thanks anyway. You can't sell this to just anyone, right? I am the one who asked Shin Nim to do such a difficult task, so it's only right that I support Shin Nim to the best of my ability he he. Then, I'm off. Eh. Are you leaving? W where? Aren't you fighting the floor master again? And no, there's someone I need to meet. A girl? Loretta's soft and flowery eyes quickly turned into the sharp cold eyes of a solitary assassin. It was seriously scary. As she's technically a girl. Oh. Meeting a girl instead of fighting floor masters. I'm quite curious as to who it could be, hoo hoo. Loretta, can you put the battle axe back in the floor shop and calm down? She's only nine years old. Nine. And no, I'm almost three hundred times Kekoham. I erased what I just heard from my head and chanted the sentence, Loretta's seventeen years old, when Loretta asked with teary eyes. Does Shin Nim like younger girls? That's cheap. I can't do anything about that. I'm like a father to her. It's not what Loretta's thinking about, so don't worry. Father? Yes. Loretta made a radiant smile and took out two giant battle axes from the back of the floor shop. Carrying a weapon on each hand. This woman, she's serious. Hoo hoo, to deliver another hook punch right after the first. Shin Nim is really amazing. Now, if you obediently tell me who the mother is, you'll only see a single person's blood. You mean you're going to kill her, right? You're killing that person, right? In the end, I didn't say Waya's name. I knew Loretta wouldn't really hurt her, but I was worried that Waya would be in trouble when she crossed over to the first dungeon and met Loretta. Although I wanted to trust Loretta, she was clearly not thinking straight with those two axes of hers. I dodged her charging toward me and hurriedly escaped to Mariana's garden. Daddy. Yeah, Ina. As I had already told Waya and Ina that I would be back soon, the moment I arrived, I was greeted by Ina's headbutt. 
She smiled happily and rubbed her face on my cheek. For the record, Ina could use her mana to move extremely quickly. Though, she couldn't teleport like when she was in Ice Castle. She was similar to Waya in many ways. No matter how outstanding her ability was, if she continued moving like that and hunting monsters, she would run out of mana. Fortunately, HP and MP were completely restored when a floor was cleared. As such, Ina was already on the 22nd floor on just her second day. We may have created an unbelievable monster. I originally planned to come as soon as I finished Beyond's fourth floor, but I ended up taking three more hours because I didn't want to waste Teleria. I made a wry smile at the slight sense of guilt as I patted Ina's back. How are you so fast, Shin? Didn't you say it could take over a week? Waya appeared behind Ina and asked. Since she was still wearing her battle dress, it seemed she had just come back from the dungeon. There's a reason that I have to hurry a bit more. A reason to hurry? Yeah this is a good chance. I'll tell you first. Just me. The others might not be ready for it. I feel like you won't be shaken that much even if I told you. Waya puffed out her chest, apparently happy with what I said. She really was weak to compliments. You can tell me anything. I'll hear you out, hoo hoo hoo. I patted Ina a few times since she was asking for my attention. Then, I messaged Waya. The enemies we faced in the last event dungeon was from the Luka Continent's demon army. Lydia told me about it, and I looked more into it, so I'm sure. Luka Continent? Where Lydia used to live? Eh doesn't that mean Lydia knows about this too? Why was she sad about that? As Ina kept poking my face, I tickled her for revenge. Kiki, im ticklish. Lydia is from the Luka continent. It was thanks to her that I noticed it so quickly. N never mind. Sorry, I know I've been weird lately. It's unlike my usual calm and collected self. I have to fix it soon. Strange. Did the Waya I know go through cattle mutilation? The Waya I knew was always short-tempered and straightforward of course, I didn't say it aloud as I worried that the cool and collected Waya would burn in rage. Hurry and get to the point. It seems our world is getting attacked by two forces right now. Because of that, we don't have much time. I was told that one of the forces would completely cross over in two years. Waya became silent. I also didn't say anything else. Ina was the only one making a sound as she kept playing adorably. Without her, the atmosphere would have been heavier. For someone with an ice ability, she sure knew how to warm someone's heart. Could my daughter be the world's greatest daughter? Waya's silence soon ended. She sauntered up to me and pushed her face up against mine. I backed off a bit, flustered, and Waya frowned. I inadvertently froze. For someone with a fire ability, she sure knew how to freeze someone. Could she also be the world's greatest? I asked her slightly panicked. W what is it? Are you okay? Though she was frowning just a moment ago, she was now looking at me with concerned eyes. I shrugged in response. Well, that's why I'm diligently climbing the dungeon. I heard I could do something if I conquered the dungeon within two years. Even so, it should be hard with just my strength alone, so woe. Waya suddenly pulled me into her embrace. Flustered, I froze. Ina, who ended up being squeezed between Waya and me, laughed. W what's wrong? I'm not the only one in danger. The entire earth is in jeopardy. But in the end, they're all aiming for you. You're their target, only because an unknown being gave you an unknown power. B but as you know, I'm quite strong C can you let me go? Sorry, but I have someone in. That's none of my business. This woman just cut me off. Just when I took the courage to say it. What's important is that you look strained and that I want to embrace you. Really? I responded brusquely, but to be honest, I might have slightly fallen for her. No, I fell for her a lot. This woman's uselessly many charms really troubled me. Shin, you won't run away, right? There was no doubt in her tone. It was as if she knew exactly how I would act. I couldn't help but break out into laughter. 
At the same time, she hugged me even tighter. Good remember, it'll always be by your side. I won't let you bear everything alone if if you die, it'll still be by your side. Do you understand what I mean? Why would you go so far? If you really don't know the answer to that question, I'm going to burn you now I'm surprised too, but right now, I'm the most serious I've ever been in my life. I can't refuse right? Of course. How pressuring. I didn't know whether she was consoling me or threatening me. But, to be honest, the load weighing down deep inside my heart seemed to have become much lighter. I decided to thank her honestly. Thanks, I'll be relying on you. Good. I'm happy that you know my worth. I'm happy because mommy and daddy are happy. Ina, who was still between us, shot her arms up in the air and shouted. We were taken aback by her sudden outburst, but soon, we met each other's eyes and laughed. Then. I inadvertently ended up seeing a beautiful sight. I need popcorn. Hey race the popcorn, Walker. Nom nom. Is is this the time to eat popcorn? They're acting like a family. I won't allow this. Oh Earth. All of Revival's members were there. We fell into a panic. H. How. I broke through the 60th floor and came to the guild house to rest when I saw you two filming a melodrama. I couldn't let the others miss this, so I called them. Walker, you. When I turned around to look at Waya, I caught her hiding her hand after giving Walker a thumbs up. I already saw you, Waya. When I was about to lecture them angrily. An event raid broke out in the first dungeon. SS rank 500 man, power basilisk. The guild, Desert Scorpion, has requested for help from all guilds ranked D or above. You can participate in the event raid with members your guild who agrees to participate. Chapter, 171. We all froze. First, I calmly took Waya off of me, and appeased Ina and put her down, as she wanted to stay with me. You're already a father, son. Show of hands. Who wants to go? I ignored father and asked everyone whether they wanted to participate. There was no need to explain anything. As it was an event raid in the dungeon, we wouldn't actually die. As such, it could only be beneficial. I assumed other guilds and explorers thought the same way. I didn't know whether that would be of benefit or loss for us, but we didn't need to avoid people just because we didn't know them. I'll stay out. I'm not strong enough. Maybe when I advance to the second dungeon. I'll stay out too, Shin Nim. My defense ability probably won't be useful versus the giant basilisk. Walker and Shuna were the first to decline. Yiyun also raised her hand. I can't go either, Shin. Until I learn the technique Master taught me, I'll have trouble with monsters that have large bodies. It'll only damage my pride if I go. Everyone else was quiet. In other words, Waya, Father, Ludia, Samair, Ina, and I would be going. I asked Ina. Ina, will you be okay? Un. I got even stronger. Now that she was a dungeon explorer, she was undoubtedly stronger than before. The amount of mana she had even rivaled Waya's. Regarding mana, Ina was most likely the strongest amongst Earth's Awakened. It was also why she couldn't control her ability for such a long time. Un. You're crying, Daddy. Don't cry. And no, why would Daddy cry? I patted Ina's head and smiled. Then, I turned to Lydia and asked. Will you be okay, Lydia? My ability is supportive, so ITLL be okay. I'll focus on supporting you and father. Ha, huh, thanks. Ludia, don't make Yungona Jushi your father on your own. You better support me too. Hoo hoo, I'll be expecting your support as well, Poludia. I didn't need to ask Waya and Samire. Waya was the strongest one in the guild besides me, and with her god's true name, Samire was stronger than Shuna. Plus, with Sumire's unnaturally fast pace, I had the feeling she would cross over to the first dungeon soon. Although Shuna was working hard with Ludia. Eh. By the way, Ludia, do you still party with Elos? No, I haven't been able to contact him recently. We were also gone for two months, so we're climbing separately. 
Shuna and I are strong enough on our own now. It seemed that clearing event dungeons for two months successfully strengthened everyone. With a wry smile, I looked at everyone. Everyone appeared to have made up their minds. All right, then the six of us should go. This is the first time in seeing the first dungeons explorers. I wonder how strong they are. Wait a moment. Let me check if Latte can come with us. I messaged Latte, but she didn't say anything after replying, I trust Hero. It seemed she was still busily training. No choice. If I had to fly, I would just have to use Sharana's ability or take the mana consumption to ride on Pika. Let's go then. Seeing that everyone gathered around me, I clicked the participate button on the window. Then, just like when we entered event dungeons or teleported, the surrounding instantly changed. We found ourselves on a rocky hill. The event raid communication channel has opened. Three minutes to go. The raid will begin in three minutes. Tisk, that's not enough time. Why doesn't the Lord give us more time? Be content stopping him for ten minutes, Ralph. A communication channel opened the moment we arrived, and voices of explorers flooded us. I first checked the terrain. We were at high altitude, on a hilltop about three kilometers in diameter. I could see the cliffs around the edges. Including us, there were about a hundred or so people. Eh. There are some new faces. What, is it a new guild? Why are there so few of them for a D-rank guild? Oi. What are your ranks? Everyone's gold. I shouted back at the man wearing an armor and a cape. Although Ina and Lydia are still silver ranks, Ina was incredibly strong, and Lydia's ability didn't lose to anyone either. The man's cape had a yellowish brown scorpion. I could immediately tell that he was a member of Desert Scorpion, the guild leading the raid. Gold. Gold ranks are participating in an SS rank raid? Hey, don't you know your ranks? You should at least be level 80 for SS rank raids. You have to be platinum, understand? We won't blame you if we die, so don't worry about that. TSK, these newbies. Ralph, stop trash talking and help with straightening up the terrain. I'm going. Tui. Ooh, how unpleasant. He spat at us and headed back to the direction of his guild. Father laughed as he took out his spear, but I stopped him. What's wrong, son? I'm just trying to educate someone on basic manners kindly. Father, what floor are you on? 64th floor. You'll catch up soon, right? You can pick up your spear then. They're the raid's host and have the strength to back up their arrogance. Unless we're definitely above them in strength, we can't respond justly to their rudeness. Ha. Fine. Since you're our leader, father will listen to you. Thanks, father. Kulham, now that you're a father, I can feel the sincerity in your words. That has nothing to do with it. Was everyone here platinum ranked? Indeed, I could feel each of them emanating powerful energies. We weren't inferior regarding stats, but the spirit they were emitting had entirely different qualities. The difference in the league created by levels. With Soul Guard raising my soul's league, I could more easily feel the difference. It was a complicated feeling that was hard to describe. Cool. Wow, look at Shin's expression. He looks like he's about to die from anticipation. But Uni's expression says Uni's about to die from loving Shin Nim too much. With the female members' looks, we were only getting more and more attention as time went on. Even so, no one openly made a move. It seemed they understood the importance of the upcoming raid. Oi, since you won't be able to deal decent damage, try to survive. We were stupid for thinking anyone from the first dungeon would be dumb enough to join an SS rank dungeon without a plan. I'm going to say it clearly. Don't blame us if you die. Thanks for worrying about us. I responded with a smile to the man, Ralph, who talked to us before. He raised his hand as if to say something else, but he soon clicked his tongue and walked away. Meanwhile, Revival's members were talking excitedly. They were forming a plan without me having to say anything. The Flame Drake was only a 100-man raid, but he was so powerful. I wonder how strong the power Basilisk is. 
Don't push yourself too much, daughter. We're here to get stats. There's no need to overdo it and get ourselves in danger. Just call me Waya, Ajushi. Unless you want me to call you father. Waya Eleni Mastaford. Grandpa, you can call me Ina. Ooh, that has an excellent ring to it. Call me again, Ina. Grandpa. Hey, you guys talking like a harmonious family. Why are you doing that now? You had all the chance to do it before. Let's at least form a basic plan. I can somewhat guess what kind of attacks the basilisk will make. Basilisks are known for their ability to turn people into stone. I hear their breaths also have a petrifying ability. You don't have to worry about petrification. With the power of the earth, I can neutralize even the basilisk's petrification. Lydia declared confidently. I already began to think it was an excellent idea to bring Lydia along. It's probably going to be huge. Waya and Ina should stay back and attack from a safe distance. An. I'm stronger when I'm with Mommy. Of course, Huhu. Mommy is also strong with Ina. Father, Samair, and I will be in the front as usual. Samair, there's no need to use Athena's power unless you absolutely need to. Yes, they'll focus on defense, Shin Nim. When I was about to say something, Father, the earth suddenly began to tremble. The event raid begins. The power basilisk makes its appearance. With pounding hearts, we all waited for the power basilisk to appear. We took out our weapons, and I also summoned my three elementals. At the same time, I grabbed a mana potion. I was ready to drink the mana potion and explode with Peruta circuit at any moment. It slowly appeared. We couldn't hide our shock. Its body was over 300 meters long. Not only was it bigger than any monsters I've seen before, but it also emitted petrification energy just by opening its enormous mouth. I could see the surrounding turning into stone. More importantly, its entire body was. A suit. What are you, the Iron Man? So that's why it's called power. Why I made an exclamation of surprise as I yelled angrily. It was covered in a strange armor. Across it was several hundred meters long armor with geometric symbols which emanated powerful mana. It was as if it was wearing a power suit. Attack. If that mana seal fully activates, we're screwed. I don't know what's happening, but let's first attack. Along with the shout from a member of Desert Scorpion, we also used our strongest attacks. Lydia struck the ground with her staff, making needle-like rocks shoot up and hurl toward the basilisk, while I created and threw a huge ice spear with Ryu's power. Everyone in the raid seemed to have some long-ranged attacks, but only twenty or so had exceptionally powerful long-ranged attacks. The basilisk's armor easily blocked most attacks. Hap. Then, Waya created an enormous white fireball in the air and hurled it toward the basilisk. It landed on the basilisk's head, which was also covered in an armored mask, heating it up greatly. At the same time, Ina playfully waved her hand, freezing the mask with extreme freezing energy and shattering it easily. This daughter and mother combo. Amazing. However, after being hit, the basilisk realized the attack had come from our guild, as it turned to our direction and shot a breath with a furious roar. Lydia quickly transmuted the rock needles into an earthen shield, while Samire stood behind the shield as the second in defense. Once exposed to the breath, Sumire's shield and arms began to petrify slowly. However, just like she said, Lydia could easily cure Samire. The other explorers, who also skillfully dodged the petrifying breath, cheered after seeing the basilisk's bare face behind its broken mask. Bravo! We got its mask off with the first wave of attacks. Amazing! Who did that? It was that gold rank. A gold rank did that? Shit, it's charging. It's going to use its tail to attack afterward. The ground began to tremble once again. Seeing that we were unaffected by its breath, the basilisk was charging toward us. Damn, we took its aggro too much. Despite how massive it was, or perhaps precisely because it was so massive, it shortened the distance between us quickly. Scatter. Everyone scatter. Waya and Ina, go with Lydia far behind the tanks. 
Everyone else, separate and attack whenever you see the chance. Waya hugged Lydia from the back and flew into the air. Ina also flew back with Waya. Father forcefully kicked off the ground to get away. As for Samire. Samire, sorry. Shin Nim, I it's my please. With her heavy armor and large shield, Samayar wasn't as mobile as the others. I held her in my arm and flew up with Sharana's power. Most of the people in the basilisk's path dodged, but there seemed to be slow people even among platinum-ranked explorers, as some could not avoid in time. The basilisk's weight crushed them, instantly making their vitality hit zero. The basilisk was strong enough to one-hit K. Platinum-ranked explorers. I could only imagine how much it would hurt if it hit me. Thank you, Shin Nim. You you, I don't think I can block it with my shield. You just have to dodge its charges, cheer up. Yes. If Shin Nim says so, I'm sure I can do it. Before I noticed, this child's belief in me had almost turned into a religious fanaticism. After putting some ire down, I flew back up. Including me, about thirty people were flying in the air. Platinum ranks were certainly different than others. Start from the right leg. Right leg, got it. Oi, long-ranged attackers, go for its left eye first. Its mask is off, so obviously you should go for its head. Ah, uh, I've been curious for a while, but who's the epic witch controlling that fire? I'd like to hire you as my secretary. I guarantee you're going to die in this raid, you shithead. The explorers simultaneously began to assault its right leg. The basilisk ignored the dozens of long-ranged attacks hurling toward its eye and breathed its petrifying breath at the close-range attackers closing in on its leg. Half of the explorers shook off the breath with their high resistance and pierced their swords, spears, axes, and hammers at the basilisk's foot. On the other hand, the remaining half became partially petrified and had to fall back. Of course, with my abnormally high resistance, I quickly overcame the petrification and set its foot on fire with chaos flame. Although the power suit. Or rather, carapace blocked the flame it began to burn up. However, the flame then got smaller. It seemed its carapace had the ability absorb chaos flame's mana to extinguish it. Heal. Healers, move. If damage dealers go below half health, it's over. Isn't the blonde girl in the priestess robe the famous crown princess from Luca Continent? She was alive. Focus on the basilisk, retard. Then, an explorer suddenly shot up into the air. It was a man wearing a blue armor and carrying a large sword. His cape also had the emblem of Desert Scorpion Guild. There was only one reason why I paid any attention to him. It was because the amount of mana he was emitting was making me shake. The basilisk also discovered him and opened his mouth. Kaya. Ice crash. After arriving at the basilisk's right leg in an instant, he slashed down with his sword. He accurately hit the part of the carapace weakened by chaos flame, which then exploded with a crackling noise. Shockingly, his attack didn't end with just that as it froze most of its right leg. Right, froze. The ice he creates seemed incapable of melting, as it weakened the energy being emitted by the basilisk. I instinctively realized that his ice was of similar nature to my chaos flame. When I raised my head, I saw him grinning at me. It was as if he was saying, your flame got extinguished halfway, but my ice froze him wonderfully. Sly bastard. If you froze him first, my flame would have broken its carapace and burned its leg. I just wanted to take the bonus stats from the raid without going all out, but a switch turned on inside me. I didn't want to lose to that bastard even if I died. Difference in levels. Eat shit. My weapon isn't my level, but this. It'll make you regret provoking me. Chapter, 172 With its right leg's carapace broken off, the basilisk let out a furious roar that reverberated across the entire hilltop. Several of the people who heard the terrifying roar then became stiff, and signs of petrification could be seen on their bodies. I also halted for a moment, but I soon snapped out of it with the help of Soul Guard and my mana resistance. I then immediately saved Samire, who had frozen stiff. You can use Athena's power if you want. Really, Shinnim? Yeah. Let's show them our strength. 
you also don't want to be looked down on, right? Yes, Shin Nim. I understand. I fanned some wind toward some ire, who was looking at me with respect and flew back into the air. After roaring, the runic patterns on the basilisk's carapace began to shine, and it shot small rock-like things everywhere. These rock-like bullets also petrified whoever they touched. Kaio. The basilisk's roar continued. Unless there was continued healing, it was easy for people to die. Long-ranged attackers were pouring attacks at the basilisk's exposed face, but the basilisk swung its massive tail and blocked the attacks before they could hit its face. His tail then fired more bullets at all the explorers. I charged toward him as I dodged these bullets. Blade Rush Massive monsters had a boundless life force, making them difficult to kill. However, their size also made them easy targets. I easily dodged the basilisk's tail swing and weaved through the rain of rock bullets. Then, I stabbed my spear into its left leg with full force. Chaos Flame once again flared up above its carapace, and the blades from Blade Rush also hammered on its carapace. Of course, just this wasn't enough to damage him. Dark Thunder Explosion The basilisk's body twitched for a moment, after which black lightning shot up from my body and poured into its carapace. The communication channel instantly became noisy. What's that? Isn't that the 15th floor master's skill? I haven't seen that in 40 years. Can someone explain what happened? That guy isn't wearing something like the Dark Rat Man set in an SS rank raid, right? Oi, once that skill hits, it paralyzes its target regardless of the target's strength. Attack now. Unfortunately, Dark Thunder Explosion's duration wasn't that long. The moment the skill ended, I once again struck down at the carapace on its leg, then backed off. Immediately afterward, its tail swung past where I was standing just a moment ago. If it were to hit me, it would petrify the part of my body it hit, which would then be shattered by the following shock. It would be a fatal damage. In fact, one of the other explorers was hit and instantly died. These platinum-ranked explorers weren't all that much. How could they not read such a giant monster's movements? Regardless, once people began to die left and right, the surviving explorers became more spiteful and poured more attacks toward the basilisk. Almost everyone was attacking its left leg instead of its frozen right leg. Ha! Die! Kugya! At that moment, its carapace emitted a brilliant light. I instinctively flew up and avoided the light. Most of the flying explorers did the same. However, several of the explorers on the ground couldn't do so. These explorers then perfectly turned to stone. Damn it, its armor's activating. Priests, hurry. Mouth. Its eyes are shining. Attack. Stop it. Damn, was it too hard with 100 people. Stop being defeatist and use your damn skills. Thanks to someone's shout, bright lights began to shine from the ground. Among them was one particularly brilliant light. A beautiful girl holding an ornate shield was making the basilisk scream in pain. Wait, that's some ire. Look, the basilisk is petrifying. What? Someone's petrifying the basilisk. A god's power. That girl must have a god's true name. An unknown explorer with a god's true name. What guild is she from? She must be the guild master, right? She's even young and pretty. She's just my type. Hey, you son of a bitch. Who the fuck are you? If we fail this raid, I'm going to kill you. What guild are you from? Good, Samire. Well done. Samire had undoubtedly created an opportunity for us to overturn the situation. Although the basilisk possessed a petrifying ability, it was pushed back by the Medusa's head on Athena's shield. Starting from its eyes, which were about to do something, it became partially petrified. The experienced explorers present did not miss this opportunity, shooting powerful attacks at the basilisk. Of course, father and I were among them. Father contained a powerful shockwave in his spear and successfully dealt a blow that the basilisk could not ignore. He had aimed for its petrified face. Although the petrification was done by a god's power, since the basilisk possessed a petrifying ability, 
it wouldn't be surprising if it broke out of it sooner. It was better to shatter the petrified parts of its face before it recovered on its own. However, I aimed for a different place. Several long-ranged attackers were focusing its face, and as its one unpetrified eye began to shine, I avoided its face. Hap. I descended from the sky like an arrow and surged up the energy of Mad Typhoon. A whirlpool of chaos flame became compressed and gathered at the tip of my spear. With a spirited shout, I struck down at the basilisk's massive tail. Kayak. Good, it was effective. With twin-headed ogre's tattoo, I had gotten much stronger. With the momentum created by my quick descent, my attack successfully shattered the basilisk's tail armor. The tail armor broke. There's a crack in its back armor. Attack there. Ah, uh, wait. Stop. Two flying attackers charged toward the basilisk's back despite the dissuasive shout. They were both warriors holding a hammer and an axe respectfully. They seemed to be from the same guild, as they simultaneously struck down on the basilisk's back with their weapons filled with aura. Immediately afterward, the basilisk's back emitted a bright light. A message then rang out in my ear. Sage Time Guild, Annihilated. I was curious as to who came up with that guild name, but unfortunately, it wasn't all that important right now. I broke out in a cold sweat as I checked the basilisk's back. What took away the Sage Time Guild members' lives was none other than a group of flying snakes. There were hundreds of mini basilisks shooting out from the basilisk's back. Damn, this never happened before. They're going to split. Hurry up and kill them. The communication channel became noisy with shocked voices and curses. The magician's attacks became focused on the mini basilisks, but their magic resistance was annoyingly high. In other words, warriors had to take care of them. The one who stepped up was the man who froze the basilisk's right leg before. Magicians, focus on stopping the basilisk's movement. Focus especially on its head. Warriors, kill the small ones and break the basilisk's dorsal armor. He was most likely Desert Scorpion's guild master. After shouting out his orders, he charged toward the group of mini basilisks, followed by about ten flying warriors, all wearing the same fluttering Desert Scorpion cape. As I also didn't want to miss this opportunity, I hurriedly charged forward. Sharana, we're going full speed. Yes, master. Gale track. There were finally guys that could boost my attack power. There was no way I would let others have them. I frantically accelerated and shot past the others. No matter how high leveled you are, you won't be able to catch up to my speed. I am the owner of Hermes' true name and the contractor of the unique wind elemental, Sharana. Who's that? He's that gold ranked guy. Gold rank? With that speed? You're kidding, right? A trail of chaos flame was left in the path I took. I charged toward the mini basilisks like a comet. The first mini basilisk that faced me blew up after being hit with my spear. Great. With this. Come. You used provoke. All enemies in the area will attack you with great hostility. In an instant, I was surrounded by mini basilisks. They seemed to be capable of petrifying people with their gazes as I could feel a ticklish sensation of resistance from parts of my body they were glaring at. Of course, they weren't strong enough to penetrate Soul Guard. I smirked and sent them flying. Most of them were killed in a single strike. Wah! Looks like we won't be needed. Turn. We're attacking its dorsal area. Itchem. Magic flashed from all sides, while the basilisk's attacks shook the earth. Of course, its armor was being broken by the explorers even now. Everyone present had the strength to threaten the basilisk's life. Perhaps it was why this battle seemed especially exhilarating. After all, this was the first time fighting with explorers stronger than me. However, I still wanted to defeat that guild master. Master, the wind energy is getting stronger. Gather as much of it as you can. We're going to make a huge attack. Even as I ordered Sharana, I constantly changed the direction of my charge and pierced through the mini basilisks with my spear. 10, 12, 15, 20. A bit more. A god's power. Damn, is that guy a monster. 
Then, along with the shocked exclamations of a few explorers, the basilisk stopped moving. Its over 300 meter long armor was completely frozen white. It was undoubtedly that guildmaster's attack. For a desert scorpion, you sure like using freezing attacks. Attack while Scissornath's power holds it back. It's almost out of stamina. If we can properly break its armor, it will be our victory. His confident voice reached all the explorers through the communication channel. The explorers then used their most powerful skills they were saving to break the basilisk's armor bit by bit. The armor that once covered its giant body perfectly was now in a pitiful state. It was then that I finished the 30th mini basilisk and prepared for Gale Track's final blow. I could feel the wind energy gathering around me from Peruta Circuit's powerful rotational force forming a storm like whirlpool. With a grin, I shot up. Although I didn't obtain ogre power yet, twin headed ogre's tattoo gave me just enough strength to try this. What's that whirlpool? It's flying up. It's that guy. Does he also have a god's true name? No way. It's already surprising that a new holder of a god's true name appeared today. Throughout the entire first dungeon, there are less than 20 people with a god's true name. Yeah, keep talking. I was already hundreds of meters up in the air. The mighty wind whirling around my spear and body was so powerful that it was hard to see with the naked eye. However, I wasn't done yet. Gigant. 2. The author changed the skill name from Gigantic to Gigant. The pronunciation is easier to see now too. The pressure on my arms instantly became stronger. Even with the stats, God's true names, tattoos, and strength from Chaotic Spear, it is hard to use Gigant. I could tell that I could only last about two minutes with this enlarged spear. Thankfully, that was more than enough to finish off the Basilisk. Sky God's Rage Boom! A golden lightning descended on the long and thick Chaotic Spear. The wind energy gathered from Gale Track changed its property through Sharana's influence and began to empower Sky God's rage further. The lightning energy instantly became amplified, dyeing the clear sky in a golden hue. The lightning spear immediately grabbed everyone's attention. I knew it, he's a holder of a god's true name. Who is that bastard? No, what is this guild? Yeah. Wait. The first place for guild contribution. It might get stolen. Hey, stop. Getting first place over the host. Did anyone tell them? They said they were all gold ranked. Would you have told them? Hurry up and kill the basilisk before he attacks. Please, if it were that easy, God's power wouldn't have been necessary. It was already hard to just kill it together, but it seemed there was some rule. Explorers sure like to make things difficult. Of course, it was none of my business. Pika, come into the spear. Kayaha. It has an incredible energy, master. The lightning was strengthened once again. I found it hard to keep my eyes open. However, I couldn't stop now. I forced my eyes open and tightened my grip on the enlarged sky god's rage spear. Then, as I descended toward the roaring basilisk, I shouted. It'll be the one to take its head. You used Orc Lord's war cry. All party members are cleansed of negative status effects. All party members attack power increases by 50% for the duration. All party members become super armored, unfazed by enemy attacks. Then, I activated the effect of Twin Headed Ogre's tattoo, which boosted the damage of a close ranged attack skill by 50% once a day. Even though I was wearing armor, Twin-Headed Ogre's tattoo appeared above it and glowed with a crimson light. Feeling the incoming threat, the basilisk shot a petrifying breath toward me, but it was blocked by the force of Sky God's rage. I became a streak of a crimson comet and shot down toward the basilisk. As it was the final blow of a charge skill, my armor, and Giant Wolf's tattoo boosted the damage by 110%, Gale Track boosted the damage by 200%. Orc Lord's Warcry boosted the damage by 50%, and finally, Twin-Headed Ogre's Tattoo boosted the damage by 50%. In total, the attack just now was increased by 410%. Of course, as that was just the increase, the actual damage I did was 510%.
there was no need to describe its destructive power. I wasn't done. I added heroic strike on top of everything. I scraped together every bit of mana in my body and poured it into my spear. As I swallowed the mana potion I had prepared in my mouth, I shouted. Divine speed. My already unfollowable speed became not three times, but ten times faster. There was no chance for the basilisk to dodge my attack. I took the basilisk's petrifying gaze without being phased, and struck my spear down on its forehead. It was very fortunate. After all, the basilisk undoubtedly had bones. With Skullbreaker's effect, all critical damage was increased by 50%. As critical hits normally dealt 200% of the normal amount, with the Skullbreaker title's effect, the attack was amplified to 300%. I found it funny that I was playing with numbers so much, but the result wasn't funny in the slightest. Kugya. Once the spear collided with its forehead, it discharged the lightning of ultimate strength and pierced through its head. The spear, which was dozens of meters long, split the basilisk's head into two. The basilisk barely squeezed out its death throw before it became silent. From its split head, it no longer emitted the petrifying breath or gaze. Immediately afterward, the armor left on its body detonated. Its body became dust and disappeared. The SS rank 500 man raid boss was finished. Chapter, 173 Event Raid Success Out of a total of 117 participants, 83 survived and completed the raid. This achievement increases the reward. You receive two stat points for completing the event raid. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. All guilds other than the annihilated guilds achieve the necessary minimum contribution. Guild masters will be rewarded in order of guild contribution. Leftover rewards will then be distributed among non-guild master explorers. Guild revival's contribution is the highest. Its guild master may choose a reward. 1. Evil Eyes of Petrification Legend. 2. Mega Rock Breaker Epic. 3. Rock Tail. Guild revival became C rank. When challenging event dungeons or event raids, when five or more guild members are present, all guild members' abilities will be increased by 7%. I raised my head. All the surviving members were staring at me. Then, the man who talked down to us in the beginning, Ralph, flew over to me with his cape fluttering. Hey! Pass over the picking right. You can't be thinking of taking the reward before the host, right? Should the host always get the first pick? Yes. That's not what the dungeon system seems to think. Fool, it's a regulation. The host lets others participate in an event raid, and in exchange, the host chooses the reward first. It's a basic courtesy in the dungeon. It was an interesting claim. I felt like I had experienced it before. The part where some fools are trying to press an unwritten rule. But you requested for help because you couldn't have taken care of it alone. We accepted it because we had something to gain from it. There's no reason for us to hand over what's rightly ours. You want to defy Desert Scorpion, the first dungeon's strongest guild. Do you need me to explain why 1 plus 1 is 2? Everyone understands that 1 plus 1 is 2, but no one understands why we have to give up something that belongs to us. With that, I turned and stared at Desert Scorpion's guild master, who was standing in midair without looking our way. What do you think? My guild was acknowledged as the first place in the contribution by the system, and probably by everyone else here. Will you not accept this result? He was silent. Meanwhile, Ralph tried to grab me by the collar but backed off after seeing Pika discharge a bit of lightning. Then, he shouted. The system is weird, too. Without Master, it would have been impossible for you to deal the final blow to the Basilisk. Your Guild Master raised contribution thanks to me too. Regardless, I want to hear his thoughts. No, before that, I want to know. Did this regulation apply to you when you weren't hosts? No one responded. The communication channel buzzed. Hey, newbie. Desert Scorpion is an S-ranked guild. Simply put, it's one of the strongest guilds in the first dungeon. I like what you're trying to do, 
but if you don't follow the rules they created, you won't have a good future. Isn't it obvious that this rule only applies when they're the host? Do you know how much crap they spout in the raids they're invited to? Everyone tries their best to get the first place contribution, so who'd want to give it up? TSK, those bastards. I was impressed with your spearmanship, do as you want. With your guild strength, I doubt the Desert Scorpion will be able to do much. Plus, I'm looking forward to it the day you overtake them will be the day the dungeon's cast system changes. Let me add something. Can you give one of your guys to our guild? Just one. Honestly, just one. Where is your confidence coming from, you pervert? Who are you? Don't change your voice and use your real voice. Come on. I looked at Desert Scorpion's guild master once again. He finally opened his mouth. I witnessed your strength. To be honest, I was impressed my guild can make you even stronger. Throw away your title as a guild master and come to us. If it's you, we can even make you the vice guild master. Since you came this far on your own, you should know what the wise thing to do is. It was a complete non sequitur. I see. I threw away any hesitation I had and picked the evil eyes of petrification. Immediately afterward, my eyes stung with a burning sensation. I could barely hold in my scream. Cook! Ah, that bastard. He chose the reward. Damn, is that. The evil eyes of petrification tests your capability as its wielder. Peruta circuit rotates strongly. Mad Typhoon activates. Soul Guard activates. High Rank Spirit Mastery activates. Overwhelm activates. The power of all elementals connected to you undulates. The evil eyes of petrification acknowledges you as its rightful owner. The power of petrification is vested in your eyes. You can draw the full strength of evil eyes of petrification. You obtain the evil eyes of petrification. Your magic stat increases by 100. With just your will, you can petrify all targets with magic resistance under S rank. You can also turn petrified targets back to normal. You can remove petrification status effect from targets petrified through other means. At your current level, depending on the amount of mana you imbue, you can petrify targets up to SS rank. Even if a target cannot be petrified, its movement speed will be decreased if exposed to your gaze. Overwhelm skill strengthened the evil eyes of petrification. It will increase further through intelligence stat, magic stat, and overwhelm skill level. Your resistance to all types of evil eyes increases. You become the focal point of gods with inheritances related to the eyes. When the pain disappeared, and I regained my senses, I blinked my eyes as I thought over the messages I had heard. My eyes didn't hurt anymore. In fact, they felt extremely refreshed. I felt like I could see all the mana in the world. A thought crossed my mind I immediately asked Ryue. Can you make me a mirror? A large mirror of ice instantly appeared, reflecting my entire body. I put up my helmet's visor and checked my eyes. I spat out. Ah, uh, shit. My black Korean irises had become golden. Although the center of my irises took a hint of gold after contracting pica, it had been barely noticeable. Now, however, it was easy for anyone to see. Plus, almost as if the entire Milky Way had been stuffed inside my eyes, countless particles of light were sparkling within. No, my eyes became anime. It looks like I have 8th grade syndrome. What am supposed to do when I use these eyes? Yell, banishment, this world. Master became like me. Pika deactivated spirit aura on her own and coiled around my arm. It seemed she was thrilled. Wait, this meant my eyes were like Loretta's. Perhaps it wasn't so bad. In any case, the members of Desert Scorpion didn't look so happy. That bastard got evil eyes. I can't believe it. Evil eyes. We must have our revenge. What guild was he from? Revival. From here on now, Guild Revival is banned from the residential area. After realizing what I obtained, Desert Scorpion's guild members became enraged and caused a ruckus. Meanwhile, the guild master slowly descended from the sky toward me. I could see his eyes flashing with subdued anger. 
However, what he said next was completely unexpected. You, are you an explorer of beyond? How did you know? Because Revival isn't a guild within the first dungeon. I looked at the list of guilds this afternoon, so I'm sure. The only way your guild could be here is if your guild was of Beyond's affiliation. After all, only Beyond's guilds can be invited to the raids from all dungeons. That's amazing. I thought we could participate in the first dungeon's raid because I was originally from the first dungeon, but it seemed that wasn't the reason. However, after confirming that I was from Beyond, he continued with an even more enraged voice. You Beyond explorers always act so rampantly. Evil eyes you dare take evil eyes from the event raid I hosted. Sorry, but this belongs to me. I'm just saying this in case you somehow believe otherwise. How arrogant. Even if you came to possess evil eyes, do you think you could wield it properly with your low level? Mm -hmm. if you want to continue talking, can you pick your reward first? Other people are waiting to pick theirs, you know. I then added. Also, can you get out of my face? You're even uglier up close. You and your guild won't be able to enter the first dungeon's residential area. You'll pay for taking Desert Scorpion lightly. How? He snorted at my innocent question. You won't be able to use any shops or auction houses. My guild has the power to make that happen. Also, you won't be able to see event dungeons or event raids for the rest of your life. Oh, that's quite surprising. I wondered since when non-administrative guilds could do such a thing. I suspected that an administrative guild was backing them up. However, even if what he said was true, we could simply use other dungeon shops and auction houses. Event dungeons and event raids. We could simply go to other dungeons event dungeons and event raids. At this moment, I became certain. That was, becoming a Beyond Explorer had freed me from the conflicts between the explorers and guilds of the first dungeon. Since I knew that, I smiled lightly. That's very scary. Kook. Know that no explorers will participate in any event dungeons or event raids, you host. Let's see how long you can continue to climb the dungeon alone one more thing. He grimaced. Don't become involved with Daisy Ectradian. Otherwise, what I just said will only be a child's play compared to what you'll go through. With that, he turned around and left. I grabbed the chaotic spear, which had fallen after the effect of Gigant wore off, then tilted my head. Daisy Ectradian? Who's that? His words remained in my mind. My intuition told me that the name would come up again. I looked over at the explorers, who were talking amongst themselves to choose their rewards, while I thought I should go back and ask Loretta about it. That very night. An announcement to all explorers of the first dungeon. It has come to light that the first dungeon's S-ranked guild, Desert Scorpion, violated the first dungeon's rules and bribed an administrative guild to oppress other explorers for personal reasons. Four out of five administrative guild masters have testified. Thus, Desert Scorpion has been demoted to D-rank, and will eternally be restricted to ten maximum members. Please hurry. Unless guild members withdraw until the maximum member limit is met, guild members, including the guild master, will be randomly kicked out. Also, all members that withdrew will be unable to enter another guild for 10 years, and will forever lose the right to become a guild master. The guild master and members of Desert Scorpion will be unable to participate in event dungeons and event raids for 50 years. They are also forbidden from hosting event dungeons or event raids. Furthermore, their contribution points in floor master battles will be deducted, and they must pay one. Five times the average amount for all items in the floor shop. Desert Scorpion members who withdraw within the next one hour will only face the first penalty. That night, Desert Scorpion completely collapsed. From what I heard, the Vice Guild Master was the first to leave. Isn't this too much, Loretta? I appreciate the sentiment, but the love is too much. Chapter, 174 Daisy Ectradian Yes, Loretta. Do you know who that is? The next day, seeing Loretta act completely nonchalant, I decided to give up asking her about what happened with Desert Scorpion. Instead, I asked her the other question I had. If Desert Scorpion's guild master told me not to get involved with this person, I figured that Loretta knew about her as well. 
However, as soon as she heard what I said, she took out her axe and smiled. So, who's that woman, Shin Nim? Im the one who asked. Also, aren't you taking that axe out way too often lately? But Shin Nim is the bad one for asking about other women knowing how I feel. What's bad is Loretta's head. Didn't I explain? Then, Il stopped joking and. You were really joking, right? You want use that axe, right? Hoo hoo. Loretta simply answered with a bright smile. That meant she wasn't joking, right? Sorry, Shin Nim. I can't tell Shin Nim even if I want to. But I think Shin Nim already has somewhat of an idea who she is. I do. Yeah. I didn't know exactly who Daisy Ectradian was. However, the only thing he knew about me was that I had a god's true name and that I was Beyond's explorer. In other words, this Daisy Ectradian was likely to be Beyond's second explorer. It was the strange woman who offered to take my corpse. I was concerned about her. Just like the first explorer, it seemed she didn't want to leave her mansion. Why wasn't she exploring the dungeon? Perhaps, Desert Scorpion's guild master had something to do with it. Then do you want to stroll through the residential area and ask around? Why are you linking your arms with mine? To make the best use of our time, hoo hoo. In the end, Loretta dragged me off to the first dungeon's residential area. However, the people that saw us together acted rather. Strange. Hey, is that guy. Revival's guild master, right? The holder of evil eyes. Evil eye holders are even rarer than holders of God's true names. There are less than ten of them. I hear he has a God's true name too. Ah, uh, my evil eyes gave away my identity. They had to be talking about me since I was probably the only one who recently gained evil eyes. However, their following words made me drip with sweat. I only found out with this incident that administrative guilds also have ranks. Look at him. He looks like a natural women magnet. It's not surprising that he could even seduce the fairy garden's famous queen. They're walking around quite publicly. Did Desert Scorpion not know about this? He doesn't appear often in the residential area. It looks like he's trying to show off right now. He sent Desert Scorpion to their death so it's understandable. Desert Scorpion simply paid the price for their deeds. They're the ones who bribed an administrative guild to try to destroy an innocent new guild. They got what they deserved. I looked back at Loretta. She was happily humming as she pressed her body against me. I sang the national anthem inwardly and asked Loretta. Loretta, tell me honestly. What's your goal for walking around this? I'm advertising to everyone so other women won't bother Shin Nim. And? I'm warning others who might bother Shin Nim or Shin Nim's guild. She was brutally honest. It seemed she wasn't really avoiding the matter with Desert Scorpion. Really, I didn't think there would still be such a dirty guild remaining in the first dungeon. I got slightly angry and ended up being a bit overzealous. The administrative guild almost became four, hoo hoo. F4. Don't worry, Shin Nim, it was resolved peacefully. All administrative guild masters are close friends. There's a liar here. It seemed Loretta understood what I was thinking, as she put her hand on her mouth and smiled with her eyes curled to a crescent shape. There's nothing to worry about. Everything I did was within my authority, so there won't be anyone who won't acknowledge it. Harming other guilds or explorers for the benefit of one's own guild is strictly forbidden in the dungeon. That's good, then. All the attention we were getting was starting to get annoying. When I glanced over them, they seemed to have thought I would attack with my evil eyes as they all turned away scared. Hoo hoo, I'm so happy. That's. Good. Seeing the extremely happy expression on Loretta's face, I could only smile wryly. Since she did it for my sake, I decided to enjoy this moment as well. Soon, however, a man stood in front of us, blocking our way. It was Desert Scorpion's guild master. Well. Done. Yeah, really. You made it sound like you could do whatever you wanted with the first dungeon, but it seems there are proper laws in this place, huh? This won't be the end of it. No, this is only the beginning. He gritted his teeth and shouted. 
Of course, purely in terms of strength, he was stronger than me. I could feel him already trying to overwhelm me with spirit. Trying to kill me my spirit in the middle of the residential area. This guy had to be nuts. I held Loretta back, who was about to step forward angrily. I made up my mind to try out the evil eyes. I would get in huge trouble if I accidentally turned bystanders into stone, but I suspected that the magic resistance of an S-ranked guild's guild master wouldn't be lower than SS rank. Even if the petrification went through, I could always cancel it, so there was no worry. In the first place, the spirit he emitted was also threatening to people with low abilities, so we were doing the same thing. I poured mana into my eyes, and the golden evil eyes began to shine brilliantly. Even I could tell that a bright light was coming out of my eyes. Desert Scorpion's Guildmaster's spirit immediately subsided. He gritted his teeth to hold his stance. Kook. You. You can already wield the evil eyes so freely. Sorry, but I'm a lot stronger than you think. I'm warning you now. I'm already busy with everything going on in my world, so don't bother me. If you do, it'll make you regret it. Ha. I already lost everything because of you. I have nothing left to lose. I smirked. Because of me. If someone overheard, they'd think I was the guild master of a large guild that bribed an administrative guild to harass and threaten small guilds that got in our way. Mark my words. You'll regret what you did. Remember that you made an enemy of the holder of Sizernath's true name. It'll kill you one day, Earth's hero. He's saying that knowing that I'm Earth's hero. How can he act like he's the victim when he simply paid for the crimes he committed? I guess the dungeon has people like him too. No, perhaps, being an explorer for dozens of years is what made him change. In any case, I wasn't afraid of him whatsoever. I saw his strength during the raid. I knew that he had a god's true name and that he was currently much stronger than me. However, the time we spent was different. He said head kill me one day. Fool, you already lost your chance when you said one day instead of a week or a month. I deactivated the evil eye's power with a smirk. Only then did he pick himself up properly, still glaring at me intently. It was then that I remembered something. He was the best person to ask about Daisy Ectradian. Who's Daisy Ectradian? If you're Beyond's explorer, you should know that deserter wench. I already warned you. Don't get involved with her. Don't think about helping her either. Deserter. That's right, she's a filthy deserter. A deserter that dared to defy me. Just like you, I will kill her too. He turned around, leaving me behind. However, Loretta caught him with his words. Hold on, customer. How can you just leave? Fairy Garden's master. You're not satisfied with taking everything from me. What else do you want? Of course there's something I want. Loretta tilted her head like he just asked the most obvious question. You announced that you'd kill another world's explorer. You can't be expecting me to gloss over it. Plus, you mentioned another world's name and threatened to kill its hero. As the dungeon's administrator, I cannot let that slide. So what, you're going to kill me? No. Loretta smiled brightly. From this moment on, you are no longer a dungeon explorer. Moreover, you'll have to promise that you'll never do anything to hurt Shin Nim. Through a soul contract, of course. D don't be ridiculous. You can't do that to me. What right do you have to? At that moment, a door suddenly opened up. He tried to enter it, then screamed. The door was closing before he could pass through it. Loretta said with a slightly lowered tone. I can see how much Sipua is looking out for you. Threatening another explorer is a grave offense that is strictly forbidden in the dungeon. When that explorer is a hero, the punishment becomes unimaginably heavy. Dungeon explorers are expected to help each other. Didn't Sipua teach you properly? Why you? You freely oppressed others with Sipua's backing, so you have expected that the same could happen to you. It seems you prevented explorers that went against your guild from using the residential area's facilities. You should be glad you aren't being punished by the Lord personally. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be able to keep your life. You. Who are. 
Kook. He knelt on the ground. I widened my eyes. I could feel that his strength disappearing. His soul's league, his powerful constitution, and boundless mana, they were all disappearing. Now, he only had the strength of a level 30 explorer. It was probably the mana and strength he built up through training outside of levels. Most of it should be from the god's true name. A sparkling piece of paper appeared in midair. Loretta caught it and took out a pen. Now, let's see. What should I write to make you suffer more? Ho ho. Loretta, was the reason we strolled around the residential area today. Don't ask me that. Just think of it as a good wife helping her husband. Loretta expected us to run into him. No, she baited him to come. Once he saw us, he would undoubtedly threaten me, and Loretta would then punish him thoroughly. Everything had gone as she planned. Loretta, I can't quite understand. How can someone lose his qualification as an explorer so easily? Didn't I tell you? Heroes receive special treatment in the dungeon too. At the very least, they shouldn't be threatened by other explorers, should they? Of course, if someone threatens to murder a hero, he must face a grave punishment. And the one who administers that punishment is. Loretta pointed her pen toward herself. Her calm smile gave me a chill. I'm so glad that I could catch him before Sipua got to him. I was worried that she warned him beforehand. You. Bitch. Don't you know that cursing at an administrative guild's guild master is also punishable? Regardless, it'll be adding to your list of crimes. I came to understand that making an administrative guild's guild master was disastrous. Then, a woman appeared midair. Loretta, you. How could you do this to my lord Kayak? You need to be disciplined too, Sipua. Stay put in your guild house and wait for your punishment. She was instantly sent back by a wave of Loretta's hand. After taking care of her like swatting a fly, Loretta threw the contract in her hand at the man gasping for breath on the ground. Quietly read it and sign it. If you do, your punishments won't increase any further. Do it for Sipua, who cares about you. Ku. Qua. Just like that, he lost his qualification as an explorer and was kicked out. Furthermore, he was forbidden from meddling in my affairs in any way. Everything happened under Loretta's leadership. Seeing me stare at her blankly, Loretta said carefully. Shin Nim is busy with clearing the dungeon and matters back on earth, so I can't have Shin Nim distracted by trash like him. I can only do these types of things. D do you think I went overboard? I simply did what was within my authority to do, don't hate me. And no, I was just surprised because Loretta sent him away so cleanly. Thank you. It's just that. I didn't think he'd be threatening even if I left him alone yo. Shin Nim, that kind of thinking is knave. Loretta's expression suddenly became more serious. Don't think that Shin Nim is the only special person. Even after losing their power as a dungeon explorer, there are many people who can threaten Shin Nim. Not making any enemies or cleanly destroying all enemies. These are the only choices Shin Nim has. Of course, I think the former is much better. Though most explorers also think the same way, there are always outliers like that trash. So if Shin Nim makes enemies, make sure to tell me about them. Loretta continued with a firm voice. It'll take out the trash. From now on, it'll take care of it, so Loretta doesn't have to do anything. She was right, I was naive. I had the dimensional travel skill. If I really wanted to harass another world's explorer, I could think of many ways to do so. Although I wouldn't do something so troublesome, there were many crazies in the world ones that did things without thinking about the consequences, ones that only lived for revenge. It seemed I relied too much on the assumption that personality was part of the qualification to be a first dungeon explorer. I should have known that people could change. Only after Loretta took care of the dirty work did I realize this. Really, I was wasting my intelligence stat. If possible, don't make enemies. If I do, destroy them thoroughly. That's it, right? If possible, it's better to use soul contracts to tie their lives down. Still, Loretta's methods were iron-blooded. 
By the way, the wisest thing Shin Nim could have done was to not participate in the raid. Although Shin Nim's guild is strong, it's still not in a position of absolute strength. Then from now. No, it's fine now. Fortunately, we crushed a guild and its guild master. I doubt anyone will try to be Shin Nim's enemy. It really turned out well. Loretta smiled as if to ask for my agreement. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Or rather than that, since I got the information I wanted, I'm going to go. To Daisy Ectradian? Uh, mm. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Loretta linked her arms with mine again and shouted joyfully. I had somewhat expected she would do so. With a bitter smile, I headed to Beyond's residential area. It was time to meet Daisy Ectradian. Of course, my arm was still linked with Loretta. Chapter 175 I ended up coming to the guild house with Loretta without much thought, but wasn't this the first time I brought Loretta here? Yes, it was after realizing that, I began to sweat. If Waya or Ludia sees me. A war that destroys the entire residential area might break out. However, I soon became relieved after discovering that no one was in the guild house. Loretta pulled on me. Come on, Shin Nim. Let's go. Ah, uh, yeah. Loretta should have an idea about who's in my guild. Was she not curious? Though that's why I thought, I didn't ask her. There was no reason to pull back the disaster I avoided. Make sure to introduce me to Shin Nim's guildmates next time, okay? Hoo-hoo. <laughs> Ek. Loretta you scary woman. As I had already explored Beyond's residential area, there wasn't much fog, and it wasn't hard to find the second explorer, Daisy Ectradian's mansion. It's been a while since I've been here. Re really? Yes I didn't think I'd ever come back. You're the one who suggested coming along. Yes, I'm extremely happy because I'm with Shin Nim. I didn't respond and continued to walk silently. She also followed suit without saying anything. After twenty minutes, we finally arrived at the second explorer's mansion. Only then did I sigh and come to a stop. Really, I thought I'd die from the awkwardness. Go back. Now, I felt like I understood what the mana surrounding this mansion did. As such, I wasn't surprised when the communication channel got noisy. I came because I have something to talk to you about. Can you make time? If possible, I'd like to add you to my friend list. Friend list? You don't even know my name. There's no way you could don't tell me. Can I? Go ahead. I added Daisy Ectradian, and she accepted it. I immediately messaged her. As you expect, I met with Desert Scorpion's guild master. He talked about you. Lauderd Heidel Cyan, head of Cyan Empire's Royal Knights. Yes, him. It was the first time I heard his full name, but I still answered calmly. I felt like I was worthy of getting an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. You if you fought him at your current strength, there's no way you could be safe and sound. The reason you're cooped up in your mansion is related to him, right? What if it is? I faced Loretta. She tilted her head cutely. Nowadays, she was trying to show off her charms whenever she could. She must have realized it was working. Him and his guild are over. It was found out that they bribed an administrative guild. How could that could it be the person you brought along? Precisely. There was no answer for a while. Then, the fog covering the mansion cleared up a bit, and the mansion's gate opened. I want to hear what happened. I felt like I would get an alert saying quest success. With a smile, I entered the mansion with Loretta. The mansion must have been neglected for a long time as all sorts of thorn bushes, vines, and weed covered the area. She must have never left the estate I called Sharana and Pika. Can you clean up the garden? Of course. Should I cut everything up? It'll burn everything. Let's go, annoying wind girl. After you, perverted worm SSI. Please don't fight. Regardless of their relationship, the garden was cleared up in three minutes with their cooperation and went back to being a spacious garden. It was as if 100 professional gardeners had worked on it. Elementals are really strong. 
After we finished cleaning up the garden, the mansion's front door opened and its spacious hall showed itself beyond the door. I entered the door along with Loretta and the elementals. Even after they finished the job, Sharana and Pika didn't think to go back. Sharana sat on my shoulder modestly, while Pika coiled around my arm. Since I wasn't in battle and had to worry about using mana, I didn't particularly mind them being out. I'm on the second floor. The room furthest into your left. I opened the door to that room. I expected it to be extremely messy, but it was actually immaculate. The window taking up the entire side of the room was open, letting air through. Daisy Ectradian was on the bed in the corner of the room. She was lying face down, wearing nothing but a white dress shirt. Her black lace panties were in full view, but Loretta poked my eyes to block the view. Ow! What are you doing, Loretta? Kook, so the evil eyes can petrify me too hoo hoo hoo, you've grown so much, Shin Nim. Loretta shook her hands, and her partially petrified fingers went back to normal. She gave me a meaningful smile, but I continued to quibble. Why did you poke my eyes? If you don't look away quickly, I'm going to attack you again. Damn, but I want to see more. I'm kidding, of course. While I looked away, Loretta approached Daisy Ectradian and shouted. Why aren't you wearing anything underneath? Don't tell me you're trying to seduce my Shin Nim. Do you want to get hit, customer? I don't have the strength skirts are uncomfortable. Hurry up and wearing something. I only have the uniform. You you. Then at least cover yourself with a blanket. It took another thirty seconds before I was allowed to look again. Daisy Ectradian was now sitting on the bed, wrapped in her blanket like a sushi roll. From her uncomfortable expression in her fully buttoned-up dress shirt, I could tell that Loretta buttoned her up too. I somewhat expected it from what Lauderd Heidel Science said, but she was gorgeous. Her ash-like hair flowed down her shoulders, and her ominous red eyes had a magic power that drew people in. They were undoubtedly evil eyes of some sort. I could recognize it more clearly now that I possessed them as well. Her facial features were slightly unnatural. Her red irises took up more space in her eyes than the scara, making her look a bit creepy. Her nose was small and stout, while her lips were overly thin and ash-colored like her hair. Also, her ears were small and sharp. Her lips and ears were especially unnatural. Her skin was also a pale gray-white. After a bit of thinking, I asked her. Can I ask what race you are? I'm a gray elf. She narrowed her eyes and stared up at me. Then, she asked. What happened to Lauderd Heidelsheim? Simply put, he picked a fight with my guild and got his guild destroyed. He lost his qualification as a dungeon explorer and was kicked out to his world. To his world. My world's silent continent was ruined. It's been taken over by the bookwalkers. I immediately made a silent prayer. Good luck surviving, Lauderd. Ectradian became quiet after that and looked at Loretta who was standing next to me. Did you do it? Of course. He can't set foot in the dungeon anymore. I see. She seemed to be immersed in thought. Then, she surprisingly bowed. Sorry, but I can't do it. I can't enter your guild. I didn't say anything, did I? My evil eyes. They receive others' thoughts or send them my thoughts. Because you possess evil eyes, I can only read a little but I thought you were lying, so I read your mind. Sorry. She got me. To think she could do it so stealthily without me noticing. Damn, it was my fault for letting my guard down based on her appearance. I hit my cheeks, then asked her. How about now? Amazing. I can't read your mind at all really. It's been a while. Well done, Shin Nim. Don't pat me. Ah, the woman. I couldn't read you at all, but I could read it just now why didn't you do what you were thinking of? Whoops. It seems I let my guard down. Geez, I'm still inexperienced. Shin Nim, can you leave the room for a moment? I'll call you back once I compose myself. I feel like you're going to do something to Ectradian, so no. TSK. Loretta gave up on her plans to bury Daisy Ectradian. Relieved, I asked her. 
It was my final goal to ask you to enter my guild. For now, they'll be happy if you continue your activities as an explorer. There's no one to hold you back now. No, that's not it. She widened her eyes, then blinked a couple of times. I want to try again. My world collapsed, but if I climb the dungeon again maybe I can chase them out. Then why? I'm a necromancer. She continued. I can't obtain corpses in the dungeon. Don't you have any? On the decisive day, half. In the dungeon, the remaining half to Heidel Sion. I lost everything. With that, she raised her head and flashed her red eyes. I instinctively knew she was trying to convey something to me. I relaxed my evil eyes and let her thoughts flow into me in a way that it wasn't overbearing. Daisy Ectradian was the head of the military unit of Selwan, an elven country in the Silent Continent. At a young age, she was chosen to become a first dungeon explorer. She proliferated and became the strongest in Selwan. As she continued to get stronger, she could turn stronger demonic beasts into undead. Eventually, she obtained a god's true name and entered beyond. It went without saying that she was the forefront warrior in the war against her world's invaders, the Bookwalkers. However, the day her world's hero died, she lost half of the army she commanded. The surviving people lost their will to resist the Bookwalkers, but Ectradian continued to fight. It was then that a conflict broke out between her and Lodert. Lodert had always harbored evil intentions against her, and using the event raid that erupted when they were climbing the dungeon together he crushed the remaining half of her forces. As they belonged to different countries, the Empire who wanted to command Ectradian as they wished supported Lodert's scheme. As Ectradian knew this, she returned to her mansion without going back to Silen. Lodert had wanted her to offer her body in exchange for letting her recreate her army, and Ectadian had refused to accept his terms. When she tried to obtain corpses some other way, she could not achieve her goals in Silen because Lodert obstructed her. It was the same when she tried to obtain them from other world's explorers, as the guild Lodert operated, the Desert Scorpion, prevented them. In the first place, monsters strong enough to help clear beyond didn't come out for sale. She was no longer allowed to make an army for herself. In the end, rather than submitting to such a cowardly man, she decided to give up on her world. Just like that, she became a neat. Even if she had a god's power, as a necromancer, she couldn't advance in the dungeon by herself. It was especially the case as an explorer of beyond. Just like that, for the past 73 years, she was lying on the bed of her mansion. I already gave up. Corpses to clear beyond's twelfth floor, normal corpses won't do. So you want to just die in your mansion. Unthank you for ruining Heidelsion and making him so miserable. Now, there's no reason for me to raise my whip. I have no regrets. With that, she lay back down and closed her eyes. I could finally see her clearly. For a hero of Selwan and an explorer of beyond, her body was petite. Perhaps it was a trait of the elves, but her chest and butt were certainly voluptuous. However, she still had a small frame. Her shoulders were narrow, and her limbs were pitifully thin. I felt like I was watching a withering flower. I couldn't just let her be. Ectradian. If if there are corpses you can be satisfied with, will you continue exploring? Do I have to enter your guild? I'll back down for now. After all, I can't bother you with my world's problem. Once I push back the danger my world's currently facing, I'll ask you again. At my words, Loretta burst into laughter. Shin Nim, what are you talking about? Shin Nim is talking like Shin Nim is going to defeat other world's enemies. What are you talking about, Loretta? I tilted my head and answered. Once I defeat the two enemies my world is facing, do you think you'll have anything to be afraid of? In that case, why wouldn't I go defeat other world's enemies? Shin Nim, you really? As my words were too reasonable, Loretta became speechless. Then, I heard the sound of a blanket falling. I turned my head toward the direction of the sound. Daisy Ectradian, who put her blanket aside, was standing up and looking at me. Her evil eyes were shining with an exceptional red light. The corpses let me see them. Good. That's what I wanted to see. With a grin, I answered. First, wear a skirt. 
Chapter, 176 I was kicked out of the room. Realizing that Daisy Ectradian would take forever to put on her clothes by herself, Loretta chased me out so that she could help her. I was already talking to Ectradian when she didn't have anything on, so was there really a need to kick me out? I felt wronged. Have I been too hungry for affection lately? No, I've been hungry since I was born. Then, the door opened. Shin Nim, let's go now. Mmmm calm now. The two of them came out. Seeing Ectradian, I became lost for words. Just one minute ago, she was only wearing a white dress shirt and black lace panties. But now, she was wearing a grey blazer with gold buttons, and a black leather miniskirt that revealed her thighs. On her head was a sharp grey beret, and she was wearing black high-heeled shoes. Finally, black stockings wrapped around her delicate legs put the finishing touch. Not even an experienced army private would be able to change so fast into his uniform. How did you change so fast? Not to mention, the uniform is very Earth-esque. Several worlds share similar cultures and styles, Shin Nim. Think about all the weapons you've seen. My battle uniform. With my enchant skill, my equipment, I can put in. Ho ho. Ectradian was bragging about something I didn't even ask about. T then let's go, Loretta, Ectradian. I have a lot of corpses, but the best one is in my guild house. Call me Daisy. My last name is too long. Then, Daisy SSI. You can call me Shin. I don't like being formal. It's too long. Unnecessarily. Oh okay, then I'll just call you Daisy. Although Daisy yawned and followed us nonchalantly, I took it to mean that we had gotten closer. Loretta also smiled and whispered to me. Shin Nim, you've gotten skilled at tricking people. Tricking? What do you mean? Saving other worlds. You said it to gain her favor, right? Huh. Eh. There was a slight miscommunication with Loretta, but we returned to the guild house without much problem. When we arrived, however, we saw Father and Walker drinking alcohol under a parasol. Father, you drink with Walker. There's someone to drink with, so why wouldn't I? You want to join? Don't try to gloss over this matter, Kong Shin. Who are the girls behind you? Walker pointed at Loretta and Daisy with his glass of alcohol in his hand. I turned around to introduce them to each other. While Loretta had her hands together modestly, Daisy quickly ran to the boar and drake corpses decorating the garden. The two of them had gotten compressed so much that the boar was now the size of a small car, while the drake was also only about seven meters. Amazing such perfect refinement. The master who did this, introduce me. You're looking at him. You have such profound knowledge over corpses. No. Meanwhile, Loretta was bowing to father respectfully. It's nice to finally meet you, father. Im Loretta. I got to know Shin Nim in the dungeon. Though I'm still inexperienced, I'm supporting Shin Nim in climbing the dungeon. I'm not too keen on Korean etiquette and may make many mistakes, but please guide me. Thank you for the polite greeting, daughter. So son, when can I see my grandkids? Not any time soon. Loretta, why are you making him misunderstand? Misunderstand? He's my future father-in-law. Loretta declared without batting an eye. Father laughed wholeheartedly, while Walker snickered with his eyes open. I thought this one was the real one, but I guessed wrong, he he. If Mastaford sees this, she's going to get angry. To think you hid a woman from your wife. You're quite good. I don't have a wife, Walker. Who, I'm surprised you can say that when you have such a big daughter. Shin Nim, can I hear about this in more detail? So you really had a partner. Geez, I don't like it when you hide things like this, uhuhu. I'm scared the most when you laugh like that, Loretta. Really, heaven was helping me by not letting Waya be here. Back then, she ignored what I was trying to say, but she must have realized I had someone in my mind. If she knew that was Loretta Kook. Just thinking about it made my head hurt. In terms of personality, I knew why I wouldn't lose to anyone. I called Daisy. So. Can you use them? They're both perfect. 
the boar surpassed its limit. When it becomes an undead it might continue to grow. It's the same for the flame drake. Here, the corpses weren't being stored. They were evolving. Daisy clasped her hands together and murmured in a dazed voice. Although her slow speech made it hard to understand what she was saying, I could tell that she liked the corpses. But two isn't enough. She drooped her shoulders. So she could show such reaction in front of corpses thinking rather stupid thoughts, I began to put corpses down onto the garden one by one. When I began taking out the corpses I gained from the SS rank dungeon, insect world, Daisy's red eyes shone ominously. Giant insects. Insect undead cool. Setting aside the fact that you're a necromancer, do you just like undead? This rhinoceros beetle is perfection. She was already in pure ecstasy from looking at all the insect corpses. She wasn't paying attention to me in the slightest. I made a wry smile. Then, curious about Father and Walker's reaction, I looked back at them. Loretta was pouring alcohol into Father's glass. How is it? You can have Shin now. Take him. Thank you, Father. I will serve him well. Don't give me away on your own, Father. Loretta too, don't take his word seriously. T.S.K., what a boring son. I agree, Father. Ah, but Shin Nim has many good points as well. They were getting along extremely well. I thought Waya and Father were a good pair, but it seemed Loretta was even better. I guess she didn't live 2700 yet, 17 years for nothing. I didn't change what I was thinking because I felt a vast killing intent. Not at all. Father finally stopped cracking jokes with Loretta and looked at Daisy. She was still buried inside the pile of corpses being elated. Who's she? A beyond explorer. It's hard to explain, but I want to sell her our corpses. Though it isn't now, she'll eventually join us. Do you really need to get our permission, Kong Shin? What's in your inventory is yours. Even if they aren't, as long as you explain properly, no one will mind it. Though, I'm sure many of them will be unhappy that you're selling them to such a beautiful woman. Walker added useless remarks as he snickered. It seemed he became laxer when he drank. In any case, father seemed to agree. That's better than letting the corpses rot in your inventory. You weren't planning on selling them for money anyways. I saved them in case we needed them. Wanting to help others is always admirable, son. That's especially true if the person you're trying to help wishes to walk on her two feet. Do as you want. When someone owes a debt of gratitude, they'll feel pressured to pay it back more than it's worth. Yup. Most people would take things for granted and ask for even greater favors. Only a few would do as Walker said. Daisy faced me. Her eyes sparkled. It's possible with these. Thanks. Glad to be of help. Just know that they won't be cheap. Of course. But, there's something I want to ask. She looked at me in the eyes. If I help you, your world will you save my world? I widened my eyes. Although I wanted her help and was ready to accept it wholeheartedly, I didn't expect her to make the offer. Did this mean she trusted me? I collected my thoughts and answered. I was expecting you to pay me later. I have eyes for people. Her eyes flashed. She was undoubtedly talking about her evil eyes. Indeed, there were no eyes like them. I nodded. Of course, if you help save Earth. Then, good. Daisy also nodded and answered. Guild Revival. Ill join. The tenth member of Revival was thus born. Guild Revival became B rank. When challenging event dungeons or event raids, when five or more guild members are present, all guild members' abilities will be increased by 10%. How strong are you that the guild ranked up just by you joining? First guild. Not sure. Even as she answered, she was busily walking around the mountain of corpses in the garden. Then, she stopped in front of one and seemed to fall into thought. Soon, she crushed it. It then transformed into mana and spread to all the other corpses. It seemed it was a corpse's reinforcement technique for necromancers. 
Just like that, she crushed a few additional corpses in poor conditions and made the other corpses abundant with manna. She hummed and made a satisfied expression. She then put her hand on the skirt's chain belt and pulled on it. Yua, what are you doing? This, my weapon. Strong and cool. Daisy bragged needlessly. She was holding her belt no, whip. Her skirt didn't fall. The whip wasn't actually tightening her skirt like a belt. While I let out a sigh of relief, Loretta grinned. Disappointed, Shin Nim. You can ask after you put down those fingers you're pointing at my eyes. This, and this. While Loretta and I were glaring at each other, Daisy continued to work. Every time she swung her chain whip, the monster corpses filling up the garden began to twitch. It was a truly horrifying sight. Even so, it mysteriously drew people's attention. Daisy's mana continued to spread across the garden, and in the end, captured all the corpses perfectly. The corpses rather, the undead were lining up in front of her. We all watched her in awe. If they all attacked together, it'd be difficult to deal with them. Necromancers are amazing. Really not to mention, such a beautiful girl is commanding this army of corpses. Is it an enemy? Do I kill her? You you, there are two new beauties. I can't see. Daddy, hold me up. As Ina was fretting, I held her up to let her see more easily. But Ina, you can fly eh? When did you come? Just now. Walker sent us a report. So. Can I get an explanation, Ina's daddy? Can you not address me in ways that would cause misunderstandings? Oh. The horn was sounding for war. Not against the army of corpses, but it was here and now. Chapter, 177 Waya stood on Lydia's side for once and glared at Loretta. It was because Loretta was standing right next to me. Yiyun was still in a panic, while Daisy was busy with moving the corpses and didn't care about what was happening here. Shin, who's that woman? She's Loretta, the floor shop shopkeeper and a guild master of one of First Dungeon's administrative guilds. Hello, my name is Loretta. You're members of Shin Nim's guild, right? It's nice to meet you all. Administrative guild master. She's not an explorer. The girls looked flustered. Waya then said with a more relaxed voice. I misunderstood. It looks like my intuition's not working well. I'm also Shin Nim's future wife. I knew it. An enemy. At Loretta's bold statement, Waya and Lydia immediately entered battle mode. Loretta most likely said that to keep them in check but it seemed Waya and Lydia took it as a provocation. Balls of flame appeared in mid-air and the garden's ground began to crack. I was afraid they would really turn this mansion into a battlefield if left alone, so I stopped them with a sigh. Loretta, don't spread lies. You guys too, stop using your power for useless things. Lies? Really? It's not useless. It's justice. D don't be angry, Shin Nim. I'm sorry. Loretta was eventually going to meet the others, and I knew Waya and Lydia would react this way. But if they really fought, it would only end with Waya and Lydia getting punished by the administrative guilds. Regardless, since Loretta was the one who provoked them, I warned her. Loretta, I'm sure you were kidding, but don't cause trouble. Got it? B but I wasn't kidding I was being honest Shin Nim got mad at me. Shin Nim. Loretta drooped her ears and sulked. It seemed she was shocked quite a bit as her eyes were slightly teary. I wanted to hug her, but I wasn't done talking. I turned to face Waya and Lydia. Waya, Lydia, Loretta isn't an enemy. She's a benefactor who helped me for a long time. You guys are being rude to her. She didn't do anything wrong, she was just kidding. Plus, I should be the one angry at her joke, not you. Shin, I told you how I felt about you. It's normal for me to get angry. And me too. It'll be troubled if you go to someone else. Let me say this clearly. I breathed in and breathed out. Then, I continued. Until I solve the danger Earth is facing, I won't date anyone. The atmosphere chilled, but I didn't stop. I think I said before too, but I don't have the time for it. 
am already busy breaking through the dungeon and fighting Earth's monsters, so how am I going to find the time to have a relationship? Even if I had the time, I wouldn't have the peace of mind to do so. Even now, I'm confused because of all of you. You're all charming and out of my league, but you all said you like me. I can't just choose one of you like choosing a college course. I have to think about it over and over again, but I don't have the time for that right now. Even if I have to miss this golden chance that might never come again in my lifetime and have you all come to not like me. Even if I have to remain single for the rest of my life. I still can't make a decision. Romantic relationships aren't allowed for me right now. Understood? Puhaha. So my son can say that. GGOL, golden chance, kukukuk. Father and Walker burst into laughter, while Waya nodded and the others drooped their heads. Waya's cheeks were flushed. That was a pretty good effort. I can't say that I'm happy that you can't decide on me, but I'll let it slide. You sure are confident. Of course, I'm the best woman in the world. But, since she isn't from our world, it'll still leave some space for deliberation. I like Shin too I was the first to confess to I hate Uni. But remember, I won't let you go until you fall for me. I told you last time, right? What's important is that I like you, so be prepared. Aina, let's go back. Okay, mommy. Ah, uh, Uni, me too. Why it took her flame back. Then, with a slightly uneasy expression, she took Aina from me and went into the mansion. Samire looked at me for a moment, then ran after Waya. While Waya's words were weighing down my head, Loretta flapped her ears and shouted. I, am used to waiting too. You say that, but you take out your axe whenever I talk about other women. T that sorry. I know I shouldn't, but I get worried about thieving cats I apologize for today. I'll go back and reflect on it, so come console me kindly later. I don't think if you can say you're reflecting when you're asking me to come console you. I'll see you later then, father. After politely saying goodbye to father, Loretta disappeared from Marianna's garden. Waya and Loretta. The two storms had passed by safely, and I couldn't help but sigh in relief. Daisy then approached me. She seemed unfazed by everything that just happened. She simply had a jubilant expression that showed just how elated she was about getting new corpses. I used my skills. First time in a long time. I'm hungry. Daisy, why are you asking me the eh? What happened to all the corpses? Inventory. Do you want payment? Later. For now, let's go in the mansion. I have to properly introduce you to everyone. After that I'll let you eat an amazing tuna sashimi. After hearing the phrase tuna sashimi, father and walker slowly got up and walked into the mansion. When I was about to invite the others in, I noticed that Lydia was nowhere to be seen. Yiyun, where's Lydia? She took Shuna and went to the dungeon. She looked like she was extremely troubled. I'm worried. I'll message her later. Let's go in for now. What I said might have shocked Lydia. She was relying on me, but what I said today was no different than saying that the status quo would change. Perhaps, she might have imagined a future without me. Hewitt really was complicated. Um, Shin. Hmm. Before I noticed, Yiyun had approached me. Her eyes trembled apprehensively. Can it not be me? Am I not charming at all to Shin? Of course not. Don't be absurd. But, I'm just a normal girl. What normal? You're extremely charming and unique. You don't lose to anyone. Especially when you're fighting monsters. Because I didn't add the last part, Yiyun seemed to be feeling much better. Hee <laughs> hee, thanks. I really like you. Yeah, yeah, I like you too. Then is today our day one. My answer is the same as last time. TSK. Alright, let's go in. I'm sure everyone's waiting. I don't want to see father's personality when he's hungry. Blood sugar low. Can't, move. While joking with Yiyun, I dragged Daisy, who had gotten extremely sluggish after playing with the corpses, inside the mansion. This time, we managed to finish a fourth of the melting tuna that I had left. Around dinner time, 
I left the guild house. Although it was good to spend time with my guildmates, it was more important to quickly finish grinding the twin-headed ogre. If I dawdled too long and a day passed by, I would have wasted a day. I reluctantly refused father who asked if I wanted another drink and headed to the dungeon. Since Walker was there, I figured he wouldn't be lonely. Though they weren't that close, in the beginning, they had gotten much closer after drinking together. I wanted Walker to participate in the guild's activities out of his own volition, not because of the contract. In order to do so, it was best that he got closer to the guild members. Walker wasn't a saint, but he wasn't evil either. He was over thirty, but talking to him, I realized just how caged he had lived his whole life. More specifically, he was very biased toward one side of things. His thoughts were dark, sometimes overly down-to-earth, and sometimes cold-hearted. Since he must have had to deal with Brightman's shady actions, it was understandable. However, that didn't mean he had to continue that way forever. That wasn't the proper and normal way of living. Though, I couldn't say that our current lives were normal either. Being bound to us through the contract and having to work with us, it seemed he was changing one step at a time. I could tell that he was opening up to the people in the guild. He was even joking with me when I had severely beaten him up and forced him to sign a contract. I was certain that a day would come where the contract would become unnecessary. I wanted that day to come. I had an idea of what kind of elixir the twin-headed ogre would drop. When I ground the giant wolf on the 45th floor, it dropped tattoo invigoration elixirs. When I was talking with Ren, he casually remarked that he was grinding invigoration elixirs on the 55th floor. As such, I was more or less certain. Choose your reward. 1. Ogre's Tattoo Invigoration Elixir. 2. Twin-Headed Ogre's Leather Belt. To my eyes, the words Ogre's Tattoo Invigoration Elixir looked like the words of God. Without hesitating, I chose the Tattoo Invigoration Elixir and threw it in my mouth. Instantly, the tattoo on my arms glowed. If this elixir had the same function as the one for the wolf tattoo, your twin-headed ogre's tattoo becomes more invigorated. Your strength increases by 0. 0.5% and constitution increases by 1. As you have the twin-headed ogre's tattoo, your strength increases by an additional 0. 0.5% and your constitution by an additional 1. As I thought, there was an additional bonus. I flexed my arms contently and thrust my spear into the air a couple times. No other explorer had the twin-headed ogre's tattoo. I was the only one who had it. When the normal ogre's tattoo was invigorated to its limit, it would raise its possessor's strength by 15%. However, that would only be half of the strength increase I would enjoy. First. It was truly a sweet word. The 55th floor was the best. All right. Then let's continue this momentum and go again. Yes, master. If it's only this, I can go 100 times without feeling tired. I wish I could. The dungeon's mana, the effect of other explorers, and whatnot, it seemed the dungeon system wasn't so simple. Although this 10 time battle ticket looked like a simple piece of paper, it contained an extremely complicated arrangement of vast mana that I could not even begin to fathom. Plus, it was undoubtedly made of special material as well. I was certain that the price I bought them from was a bargain. With such a thought, I left the floor master room. When Loretta saw me from the floor shop, she flapped her ears with a blooming smile. Then, her ears drooped. It seemed she remembered me scolding her. You came, Shinnim. Yeah, I'm going to go back for another round though. Although I didn't mean to answer curtly, Loretta shrunk back slightly and asked carefully. Are you still mad? No, I wasn't mad, to begin with. It was just that I didn't like how you lied to provoke the others. With that, Loretta would probably not joke like that again. When I glanced at Loretta with that thought, Loretta was tearing up. No, she was crying. Hick, hick, I'm sorry. Hick. I didn't you'd hate it so much. Loretta. I, I want do it again, I want joke again, so don't hate me, Hick. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, I don't hate you at all. I don't hate you, so crying. 
I had to stay for 30 minutes to console Loretta who started crying. How can a woman who's lived over 2,000 years cry like a teenage girl? It's too cute. Chapter, 178 Fighting the twin-headed ogre ten times a day was honestly just too easy. Now that I thought about it, fighting the floor master three times a day had been nothing at all. It didn't even take twenty minutes to kill the twin-headed ogre, so fighting it three times would only take an hour. As I was now, I would be fine even if I continuously fought for ten hours. Plus, even though the twin-headed ogre was strong and fast, it was a normal ground-based monster that couldn't even use magic. After I fought it a couple of times, I had memorized its movement and attack patterns and became able to defeat it in ten minutes. I had an incredibly high strength stat, which was even further amplified by Zeus' power and Ogre's tattoo. I also had Mad Typhoon, which showed greater strength than what was possible with my stats. Although it would be hard for me to block a demon army commander's regenerative ability like Peruta did, it was still extremely easy for me to deal a blow that surpassed a mere ogre's regenerative ability. It was what greatly helped to shorten the time I spent fighting the twin-headed ogre. After I left the floor master room, I was drinking a fatigue recovery juice worth 100 gold when Loretta spoke with a dumbfounded expression. Shin Nim, you should know that there are explorers who go in as full ten-man parties and fight the twin-headed ogre for three hours. If someone saw you, they'd think the dungeon was made to be climbed alone. There's no reason for me to care about them. I only have to care about people stronger than me. I don't have the time to turn back and feel proud seeing people weaker than me. Loretta slightly sulked at my cutthroat response. If Shin Nim ever collapses from working too hard, know that Shin Nim's precious things will be missing when Shin Nim wakes up. I won't collapse in front of Loretta so don't worry. I retorted with a grin, and Loretta made a scared expression. She looked like she was about to cry. Are you still angry? No, that's not it. It's just that guys like to. Uh, no, never mind. What is it? That sounds like some extremely valuable information. Please continue, now. Never. Not even over my dead body. Why? I had no plans to say anything. I finally got her to stop, because if I had said anything, she would have gone on about the marrying thing. I stuck my tongue out at Loretta and headed toward the floor master room again. But from the happy expression I saw before I turned around, it seemed Loretta was making her own assumptions and being happy. Perhaps in her head, she had already planned out our wedding. However, my prediction was immediately proven to be wrong. Loretta's thoughts were leaking. Ehe, then well name our seventh kid this. I'm sure he'll be just as cute as Shin Nim, Buhuhu. Amazed at Loretta's ability to surpass my expectations every time, I shook my head. Then, I opened the door to the floor master room. Fight me. Twin-headed ogre. Like I said before, it didn't take long for me to defeat the twin-headed ogre. I defeated it four times in one hour. In other words, after two and a half hours, I had nothing more to do for the day. Including the time for rest, for hours was more than enough. Since I had to grind the boss 80 to 100 times on average, I would be forced to a leisurely lifestyle for a while. Although I grew impatient thinking about the two-year time period I had, since I knew being impatient wouldn't change anything, I thought about how to spend the time more efficiently. First, I decided to talk to Yua, who was still sulking. Humph. However, I failed at every attempt to appease her. I spent the remaining time sparring with father or teaching some ire spearmanship. With the exception of Walker, who had to guard Yua for about a third of his day since school had just restarted, when they weren't climbing the dungeon, most revival members were socializing in the guild house. This made it extremely convenient for me to see and teach Samire. With a shield on one hand and a spear on the other, Samire charged toward me. Although she was attacking and defending rather sensibly, I still skillfully dodged her attack and lightly attacked her shin which her shield wasn't covering. Your lower bodice guard is lacking. Kook, guide me more, Shin Nim. Anytime. The moment I responded, Samire clenched her teeth and thrust her spear toward me. Her basic battle tactic was to defend with her shield and attack with her spear. It was appropriate if she wanted to act as a tank who drew the enemy's aggro while also acting as a damage dealer. 
The tip of your spear is shaking because you're too focused on your shield. Kook. I'll fix it. I did my best to point out her mistakes and to help her hone her spear. When I attacked Sumire's opening, she would be hit, but by the time she got back up, the opening was gone. Seeing her grow, I couldn't help but be excited as a teacher. As a result, I ended up overdoing it slightly, but Sumire happily accepted it. Perhaps this was how father felt when he was teaching me. Regardless, I was happy that my guild was full of such talented people. After we sparred for two hours, Sumire bowed, drenched in sweat. Thank you for your lesson, Shin Nim. My spear technique reached mid-rank level 5. You're progressing well. You'll be able to use it in real battle soon. Although I'm lacking, it's thanks to Shin Nim's enthusiastic teaching that I'm improving so much. I'm extremely happy to serve Shin Nim as my master. No, you're doing well. You have talent and you're putting in an effort. I'm happy to have Samire as my first disciple too. Shin Nim. No, don't look at me with those sparkling eyes of respect. It's ticklish. I scratched my head. All right, let's go wash ourselves off and eat something. Yes, Shin Nim. I'll prepare the food. When I went upstairs after a refreshing shower, I unexpectedly saw Daisy there. Although there wasn't anyone to prepare food, Daisy was sitting alone at the table with her head down. She was in her uniform, but her beret was on the side, while her chain whip was wrapped around her arm like an accessory. I was surprised that the whip could be worn in so many ways. She must have felt my presence as she turned toward me. Her head was still drooped on the table. She flashed her red eyes ominously and spoke. Blood sugar. Low. Need food. She said it in a cool way, but the content was anything but cool. It even made her outer appearance look worse. Where were you until now? Well, that aside, just what did you eat for the past 73 years? Preserved food. In inventory. Tasteless. I ate here, threw away all preserved food. My stomach wants tasty food. Oh hey, that last sentence was grammatically correct. You'll have to wait a bit for the food. Eat this for now. I took out a chocolate bar from my inventory and gave it to her. Daisy's eyes flashed and she grabbed it. After peeling the wrapper, she took a big bite. Yummy. You don't need to use your evil eyes to tell everyone around you. Wait, wasn't this the first time she shouted something? She wasted such an important scene on a chocolate bar. I wanted her to shout in a more emotional event. I felt slightly betrayed. Then, seeing Daisy put her hands out like asking for another, I flicked her forehead. We're going to have a proper meal soon. You know Samire, right? She's a genius in various ways, but she's especially talented in housework. You can look forward to her food. Mm. For yummy food, I can. Wait. Good. Daisy took her hands back and nibbled on the chocolate bar she had left. Although it was good that she had calmed down, I still didn't know why she was here. If I remembered correctly, after eating the melting tuna, she disappeared and was nowhere to be seen. Four days had passed since then, so that meant she had come back after four days. Just when I was about to ask, Daisy opened her mouth as if she just remembered. Beyond. Twelfth floor. Broke through, thanks to you. Ah. So she went straight into beyond that day. It was a rather quick decision, contrary to the slow and lax attitude she was showing now. I nodded my head with admiration. That was quick. Good job. Your children, very strong. Puki, Iana, Loro, especially strong. What's up with those cute names? I don't know which monsters you're talking about. Flame. Drake and, Iron. Boar, Evil Rhinoceros. Beetle Lord. Good job shortening their names to such cute ones. Fighting together, I'm happy. Seeing her elated expression, I lost the heart to say anything. I simply made a sour smile and patted her head. Then, remembering that I patted her without thinking, I pulled my hand back. However, Daisy didn't seem to mind. In fact, 
she looked at me curiously when I took my hand off. I don't, mind. Continue. No, sorry. That was rude of me. You're okay. She was really friendly. Was it because I was another Beyond Explorer? No, that's probably not it. Just when I was thinking about the reason, Daisy spoke out. You, surrounded by, pretty girls. Clearly showing feelings, but you're virgin. With you, I feel safe. You're dissing me, right? You're openly dissing me. Wait, so you were actually listening to us properly. I felt like I had my back stabbed thoroughly. I was so sad that I wanted to cry. Reliable. More than other girls, feel safer. Don't let your guard down, I'm a man too. Plus, other girls. What girls are threatening your chastity? World is. Wide. Don't make that distant expression. You're scaring me. I unwillingly came to find out that pretty girls were sought after by both men and women. I really did not need to know that at all. In any case, Samire, Daisy, and I, a rather unusual combination, enjoyed a lunch together. Then, when I was about to start my training after getting some rest, I got a message that broke the peaceful atmosphere. It was from Walker, who was protecting Yua on her way back from school. Come back to Earth now, Kong Shin. Your sister got done in by Luca Bruno's ability. I'm running back with her in my arms, but. In any case, come now. I'm coming immediately. People that got on my nerves even by doing nothing seem to have gotten tired of living, as they pulled on my hair and opened the gate to hell. Chapter, 179 I immediately came back to Earth. I knew where Yua was. I rushed to her in my armor. Sharana. Yes, master. After infusing Sharana into my body, I even used Talaria. Then, I used divine speed and was able to reach Walker in just 1 minute 13 seconds. In an area strangely silent and deserted, insect-type monsters were flying toward Walker. It was undoubtedly Luca Bruno's doing. In Walker's arms, I could see Yua struggling to free herself. Let me go. Let me go now. Kook, calm down, Kong Yua. Your Appa is here. Ah, uh, Appa. Appa, say something to him. I have to go meet someone now. First, I used Pika's ability to scorch the surrounding monsters, then calmly received Yua from Walker. I could see something condensed in her eyes. Her cheeks were flushed red and her eyes were out of focus. It was the typical charm status. Let me go, Appa. I would be troubled if I can't meet him. Yua, calm down first. I hate Appa. You don't even know how I feel. Eh. Yua's expression distorted as if she was agonizing over something. I, I Appa but that person you you. She was in conflict because of me even while she was charmed. Touched, I wanted to hug her and rub my cheek against hers but now wasn't the time. I took a deep breath and shouted. Yua, snap out of it. You used Orc Lord's war cry. All party members are cleansed of negative status effects. All party members' attack power increases by 50% for the duration. All party members become super armored, unfazed by enemy attacks. In an instant, Yua's eyes became focused again. Eh. She looked extremely confused. She touched her cheeks, knocked on her head a few times, then realizing that she was in my embrace, she blushed. Appa, what's going on? Sorry, Yua. I dragged you into my problem. And no, I'm fine. Did I trouble Appa? I it's bad if I did. You didn't, so don't worry. Are you okay, now? Why yes. It was really strange. I suddenly really liked someone I saw for the first time to the point I couldn't control myself it was too strange. Then, Walker Ajushi grabbed me and if it wasn't for him. I put Yua down and dusted her off a couple times. Then, I bowed to Walker. Walker, thanks. I just did what you told me to do. I'm just doing my job. Still, it's thanks to you that Yua is safe. Thank you, really. I won't forget this debt even if I die. Humph, 
As long as you know. Sorry, but can you continue protecting Yua right now? I have something to do. Interesting. Of course, you'll protect your sister wholeheartedly. Go wild. I patted Yua's head one more time, then opened my visor to reveal my eyes. Then, I stared at the insects that were still flying toward me. After meeting my eyes, the insects all turned to stone and fell to the ground. Countless thuds rang out as if there was a hail. You're no human. This is Appa's. The insects turned to stone the moment they got in my range. Unless there was a healer who possessed mana that surpassed mine, it would be impossible to cancel my ability. Hundreds, then thousands of rock sculptures piled up around us. Then, I lightly waved my hand, creating a tornado with Mad Typhoon. With Sharana's power amplifying the tornado, I shredded the sculptures into tiny pieces. In just a moment, all the monsters disappeared. I made a light sigh and pulled my visor back down. I then turned around to Yua and Walker and spoke. Then they'll be off. Appa, can I go with you? I want to see Appa teaching him a lesson. I can't forgive myself for being unable to choose between Appa and that person. It seemed Yua wanted a closure for herself as well. I looked at Walker. He shrugged and remarked. I was also vexed because I could only run away. I want to see how Hell react when he sees you. All right, then let's go together. Pika, materialize. I've been waiting. Pika materialized in midair as a dragon. When I put Yua and Walker on her back, Yua cheered. How beautiful Appa is amazing. Do all dungeon explorers have something like this? Sorry to break your fantasy, but it's your Appa that's special. I put a mana potion in my mouth and ordered Pika to fly. Pika soared into the air, and civilians who saw her from the street screamed. Kong Shin, your sister's face isn't hidden. It's fine. They already found out anyways. We'll be more open from now on. I don't plan on hiding anymore. There's no reason to either. I doubt Luca Bruno came all the way to Korea, saw Yua for the first time, and charmed her because he was mesmerized by her. He undoubtedly approached her knowing that she was my sister. In that case, there was no longer a need to hide my identity. There was only one thing I needed to do. That was to show what would happen if they bothered me. Pika, full speed. Follow Luca Bruno's mana. Got it. Pika shot forward like lightning. He wasn't far from here. He had even used some ability to prevent people from approaching her. He must have thought that Walker was stronger than him in a direct fight and planned on chasing him away before he acquired Yua. Acquire Yua and acquire ha 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 ha. Found you. Pika shot down like an arrow. The people around us screamed and scattered. Meanwhile, I grabbed a man who was running away like the others by the nape of his neck. He looked at me with a flustered expression. As expected, he had disguised himself rather thoroughly. However, he couldn't hide his mana. It's been a while, Luca Bruno. What are you two doing? I'm not such a poor. I threw him on the ground face down. Immediately, tiny monsters that were stuck on his body flooded toward me to counterattack then became petrified and fell. I grabbed his face and jumped down Pika's back. People gathered around us, murmuring. What's happening? A dragon? Is that a dragon? Wait, isn't that dragon knight? The dragon he's riding changed. It must be an Asian version. I'm just an American touring Kore kook. Grabbing his face, on one hand, I poured mana in my foot and kicked him in the face. The mana barrier he had instantly shattered and a few of his teeth flew into the air. The bystanders screamed. Dragon Knight is beating up an innocent man. Call the police. Call them for what? A second, third, fourth I wasn't satisfied with just his face. I threw him down on the ground, raised my foot and slammed it down on his back. Kahak. Luca Bruno, this will be my only question, so answer. I asked. Who told you about my sister? Why are you doing this to me Kak? Was he still trying to hide his identity? I smirked and brought my spear out. Then, I cut off both of his arms. 
Yua screamed, but I had no plans to go easy because she was watching. I scorched his severed arms using Pika's power and swung my spear again to fling the blood off. Next, I placed my spear on his back and said firmly. Next is your heart. Be Brightman. It was Brightman. Not just you, but he has the information on everyone in Revival. An organization he is forming without Guardian knowing is Kohuk. I smacked his back with my spear shaft. Then, I asked again. You sure it wasn't Guardian's doing? Why yes. Organization name, members, tell me everything. And now. See can you heal me first? And my arms. I raised my spear. Just when I was about to strike down with it, Luca Bruno shouted desperately. I'll say it. I'll say it now. Walker, sorry, but can you take out a note? Sure. Walker gnawed on his lips and took out a notepad. While he took down each and every word Luca Bruno was spewing out, he asked. Xian Hu. Xian Xiaomei. It was China's SS ranker. It seemed I'd need to see her face too. The question was whether she would still have her face afterward. After Luca Bruno finished saying everything, I took my spear back. When I looked around, I saw several police cars around us. An officer who seemed to have a high rank shouted on a megaphone. We're the police. Go back. I put mana into my words. The police blocking the road were pushed back by the Manus pressure. It was the same for the people around us. Although there might have been a better way to go about it, I didn't want to be bothered by anyone right now. At the same time, I opened the guild communication channel. All members of Revival on Earth, confirm your family's safety. If something seems off, notify me immediately. I will take care of it within five minutes. Don't worry, Shin. I have guardian members and familiars protecting everyone's families. It's mainly you and I that's being targeted. Wyatt immediately responded. I didn't think other members' information would have had their information exposed as well. Brightman, just how much money did you use? I gritted my teeth. In any case, I felt grateful to Waya for taking care of something I had forgotten about. Waya, thanks. I only thought about my own family damn, I didn't think other members would be targeted at all. It would have been obvious if I thought about it for a moment. It's fine, it's my job to take care of things you don't have the time to do so. That got me many points, right? Did you fall for me yet? Yeah, I did, is your mother okay? Yuan, she's fine. Walker messaged everyone as he took Yua. I took care of it before it was too late. In the middle of talking to Waya, I raised my spear and struck down on the ground once. Ability users that popped out amidst the police force and Luca Bruno who was trying to join them all froze. Everyone, stay with your family. I'm going to go take care of an organization called Heroes of Shadow. It'll take you when everything's over. Shin, I want to go too. And me too. No, it's fine. You don't have to come with me. Sorry, but having you there won't help me. For now, you guys should focus on increasing your ability through the dungeon. I swung my spear and shot out a whirlpool, shredding the ability user's limbs and Luca Bruno's leg. Quiak. If there's anyone else you brought with you, tell them to come out now. They'll take care of all of you together. Want help? A sluggish voice rang out. It wasn't from the guild communication channel but from the private messaging system. Daisy? Insect extermination must be done cleanly, leave none behind. Thoroughly. My ability, very useful. Daisy's unexpected offer made me reconsider. But Daisy, I don't want to use your power for something like this. Plus, this is Earth's. I want to, help. Your benefactor, friend. Grateful person. To be honest, I was thankful for her offer. Like she said, insect extermination had to be done thoroughly. Otherwise, they might reproduce again. I didn't want to involve her something like this since she had trouble with people, but she sent me another message, I want to help. As if to urge me again. In that case, I'd be happy to have you. Thanks, I'll come get you in a bit. Un. 
Ill get ready. After I finished talking to Daisy, I approached Luca Bruno. He gasped and crawled backward. I, I told you about Brightman, so please. That's beside the fact. I held my spear up and struck down at his place. A fountain of blood shot up into the air. Luca Bruno screamed. Gua! Kook, just watching it hurts me. Sorry, but it doesn't look cleanly cut. I struck down once again, and again, and again. Just in case, I used Mad Typhoon to shred the area. Only then was I certain that I finished the job. Goo. Good, perfect. With this, it wouldn't matter even if you seduced women. Ah, uh, my appa is too cool. 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 Hey, Kong Shin. Your sister is still weird. She's not normal. It was then that a white ball of light appeared above Luca Bruno's forehead. I didn't feel any hostility from it, so it wasn't an attack. I tilted my head and reached out toward it. The moment my hand touched it, a message rang out in my head. Would you like to use the hero's authority to retrieve the ability given to Luca Bruno? Chapter, 180 The moment I heard the message, I froze and found it hard to breathe. I couldn't believe my ears. What? Retrieve his ability? How was that possible? Why was this the first time I was hearing it? Or, did I need to meet certain conditions to make it happen? However, my questions weren't important. What was important was that I could take away Luca Bruno's ability. It didn't even take me a second to come to a decision. I nodded my head. Immediately, Mana began to leave Luca Bruno's body. He let out a painful scream. Qua. Eh. Did the pain come later? Eh that person, he's getting paler. The mana that left Luca Bruno was absorbed by the white ball of light, which then flew into my hand. I stared at it as if I was enchanted. Another message then rang out. A suitable candidate for the ability is nearby. Would you like to bestow the ability? Without having to ask, I already knew who the candidate was. It was almost instinctual. I stared at the ball of light, then faced Yua who was looking at me intently. She called me, as if she knew what I was about to say. Appa. Yua, do you still want to become a dungeon explorer? Yua immediately shouted aloud. I want to help Appa by Appa's side. I don't to sit back and wait anymore. It's going to be difficult, think about it, Yua. I want to protect your peaceful daily life. To be honest, I don't want to ask you this, but... Appa, please I want to be by Appa's side. Please. Looking at Yua's fervent eyes, I finished what I was saying. But it wouldn't be bad for you to have the strength to protect yourself. Appa. She jumped into my embrace. I had to try hard to make sure she wasn't hurt by my armor, and I managed to succeed. Walker made a dumbfounded expression. You're too soft on your sister. Wrong, idiot. That's not it. She's my everything. I lifted the ball of light into the air. Then, I warned Yua for the last time. Know this, Yua. It's going to be a lot harder than you thought. Once you get this ability, there's no turning back. You'll be standing in place of another ability user, fighting terrifying monsters and climbing the dungeon. Your life will be at risk and you might receive grave injuries. Will you still do it? But Appa is already doing it, right? Yeah. Then I want to do it too. I'm tired of waiting for Appa to come back, while I just sit and study. He'll say it just in case, but you brother and sister aren't normal. Shut it, Walker. I pursed my lips and rebuked Walker. Then, I let the ball of light in my hand touch Yua's forehead. The ball of light smoothly went inside her, as if it belonged to her. The boundless mana Luca Bruno had changed its property and began to completely transform Yua's body. It seemed Yua couldn't bear the shock as she fainted. I held her in my arms carefully. He'll have to take Yua back home before I leave for Britain Walker, do you want to come with me? Walker looked at me with a slightly surprised expression. Kong Shin you're changing, bit by bit. What? No, it's nothing. I will. I want to see Brightman's end with my own eyes. 
I retrieved the abilities of the other members of Heroes of Shadow Hoas. After doing it once, I got the knack for it, so it was easy to take them away. It seemed the condition was how much they opposed me, the hero, and how faithful they were to the original mission of ability users, monster extermination. As they easily crossed the former standard, it was extremely easy to retrieve their abilities. It was annoying to keep the small abilities, so I waved my hand and the balls of light flew away. They were most likely going back to Sierra. You can't absorb them. One ability for one person. Didn't you learn when you were young, Walker? One pudding for one person. You think abilities are like puddings. Plus, Brightman always took my puddings, that son of a bitch. That's what I thought. I laughed and remarked. Let's go get your pudding back. I left Yua in the house to sleep, and talked to the revival members about making Yua become an explorer. They were shocked to hear that I could take away abilities from ability users, but no one disagreed with me wanting to make Yua into an explorer. The biggest reason was that I already gave her an ability. She had a powerful ability and was undoubtedly on our side. There was no reason not to let her become an explorer. Kuhum, I promised to talk to them about letting people become dungeon explorers, but we never said anything about giving abilities. Of course, since it was an impulsive action, I couldn't say anything even if they were mad. I left father to guard Yua and mother. When Yua wakes up, make her into a first dungeon explorer, father. Yeah, I got it. I agreed to it, but was it what Yua wanted? Yes. Um, I'm sorry. No if that's what Yua wanted, it's fine. I was worried about her being too attached to you, so I wanted to prevent her from being an explorer or an ability user but if it's to the extent that she obtained an ability and wanted to become an explorer. It seems I won't be able to see her boyfriend for a while. Don't worry, father. Even if she can't date anyone, he'll live with her for the rest of my life. Screw off, son. Mother patted the sleeping Yua and looked at me with a grumpy expression. So, anything for me? Mom, to be honest. Yes. You're not suitable with any ability. Mother sulked and hit me, but it didn't hurt at all. I laughed and did my best to protect her hands as she hit me. I thanked father again and left the house. First, I went back to the dungeon and joined Daisy. Then, I called Latte. Latte, come. Understood, hero. Latte was in the resort area training, but considering she immediately responded to my call, it seemed she had finished her training. When I met up with her, I finally understood what she meant by training. Don't tell me. Yes, hero. This is the result of my training. No one will be able to stop me now. I can be with hero no matter where hero goes. In front of Walker, Daisy, and me was not a wyvern, but a young lady. She had long black hair, large black eyes, and a tanned brown skin. Her eyes had a sense of wildness than reason, while her fingernails were dyed black and curled outward. Latte was in a human form. Not to mention, her explosive breasts and plentiful but exuded a feminine charm. I shouted. Why are you naked? Is it not obvious? I never wore anything in front of Hiro. It would be rude of me to hide myself in front of the person I served. Is Hero doubting my royalty? Im not, so wear some clothes. No, go back to your wyvern form. Sorry, but we're not going into any dungeons today. We have to fly. Do I have to make other people ride on me again? Latte frowned and asked in a low tone. She had a charming husky voice. Sorry, they'll make up for it later. If it's something within my power, anything. Hoo hoo, they'll remember it, hero. Latte closed her eyes. By the time she opened her eyes back up, she had gone back to her wyvern form. I jumped on her back with the others, then called Pleen. Let's go, Pleen. I can go too. Really? Yeah, we're going to need your power. Ehe, I'll do my best. Pleen jumped on me excitedly. Latte flapped her wings as if it displeased her, while Walker's expression stiffened. It seemed he was slightly afraid of Latte. On the other hand, Daisy was stroking Lottie's back slowly. Then, she murmured. Kill he if she dies, I want corpse. 
He'll bring her back as cool child. I won't kill her. She won't die either. I initially planned on going to Britain, but after Walker told me Brightman was currently in America, I changed my destination. After realizing what happened, Hoes seemed to have influenced other countries to talk as if I was a criminal, but it wasn't that effective. There was already a precedent of Guardian trying to groundlessly condemn revival and we had turned it around beautifully. Although they were using mass media all over the world to scheme against us, they were either ignored or criticized. I felt like I knew why. Sierra. Just be quiet and accept her help this time. I know. She knows I can't refuse either. I won't say she owes me a debt, but she's mistaken if she thinks he'll forgive her with this. Hero, there are five fighter jets coming this way. Shoot it down. I don't care if the pilots die. Understood. Lottie's black flames covered the air. To provoke Dark Wing, the Queen of the Sky, one had to at least be on the same level as the Flame Drake. Seeing the fighter jets crashing down helplessly, Daisy tilted her head. Fascinating monster. Those aren't monsters. They're fighter jets, a vehicle made by human technology to fly. Weapon. Mm, -hmm, something like that. Shape. Hard to put mana into. With weapon like that, mana won't advance. Yeah, my world originally didn't have many ability users. Latte accelerated. In less than 30 minutes, we arrived at Boston, where Brightman's company headquarters was located. I couldn't help but ask Walker. Why is a British company's headquarters in America? Unfortunately, that's just how it is. It's easier to do business across the world here. Brightman's in there, right? Isn't that obvious? There's a landing zone on the roof and a helicopter waiting 247. It's a new model that can travel back to Britain in just two hours. He's staying in America for his business. I'm surprised he can even leave Britain now that Waya isn't there anymore. That's how it was initially, but Britain seems to think that it is now safe. Not that it was my business, but they sure sent their minds away to a vacation on Andromeda Galaxy. Latte flapped her wings and came to a stop. Now that we were right in front of it, I could see just how big the building was. I was too lazy to even count how many floors it had. It was the tallest and largest building in the area. Beyond the windows, I could see people in the middle of work staring at us with widened eyes. I smiled at them and waved by hand. Then, I asked Clean. Can you make everyone in that building leave? Also, make them and others in the area stay away from the building. That's easy. La la la. Pleen's mana amplified her voice. The effect was immediate. People working mindlessly suddenly stopped as if they were possessed and began to leave it was happening in every floor of the building. At the same time, a man on the highest floor stood up abruptly after seeing us. Silver hair pushed back using pomade and the appearance of someone in his twenties. It was none other than Brightman. I met his eyes and smirked. Walker, on the other hand, was distracted by something else. Ooh, a mass exodus. When I looked down along with him, I saw a countless number of people leaving the building through the door. With the unexpected number of businessmen leaving the company, the murmur of the city people even reached us in the air. However, regardless of what the people were talking about, the employees' mass exodus continued. Brightman, who realized what was going on slightly late, shouted at us. I can't hear you, you son of a bitch. Almost everyone's out. Oh, really? Brightman's glaring at us, Kong Shin. He looks like he's ready to charge at you at any moment. Mm, I like courageous people. But I hate people that scheme behind people's backs. I summoned Pika and Sharana. I leisurely took out a highest grade mana potion and popped open the cork. I put the potion in my mouth and materialized Pika. It's done. Only that annoying man is left in the building. Yeah, thanks, Pleen. Ehehe. <laughs> I lightly patted Pleen and drank the mana potion. Then, I ordered Pika and Sharana, who were yawning like they were bored. Sink this building. In less than a minute, the building collapsed. Chapter, 181. Kong Shin, you just turned a small city into rubble and dust. Isn't it awesome? 
I should take this opportunity to live a grander life. Along with the crumbling concrete, Pika and Sharana shredded computers and other electronics. The giant building that had once stood tall was nowhere to be seen and only an empty plot of land remained. I might have a talent for the demolition business. Why you, what? As expected of an SS ranker, Brightman was completely fine. He reached toward Pika and Sharana, but there was no way the elementals would be caught by him. Soon, he realized that it wasn't the elementals he had to aim for. It was me. Thunder Knight. You think you can get away with this? Both you and Korea will pay for it dearly. I jumped off Latte. After recalling Pika and activating Thunder Beast, I pulled my fist back. Seeing me jump down, Brightman gritted his teeth and dodged. However, if I was going to let him escape, I wouldn't have jumped off in the first place. Sharana. Kook. Brightman froze on the spot as if something was restraining him. I suspected that he wouldn't be able to move for at least ten seconds. I circulated per Yuta circuit to the limit, and a giant whirlpool of lightning enveloped my fist. I was just about to hit the ground. Seeing Brightman's face getting bigger, I struck my fist toward him. Cack. Thanks to hitting his face with full force, I didn't receive much shock from the fall. Instead, Brightman slammed against the ground and caused fissures to break out. Kook, Thun Thunder Knight, you just. I'm going to hit you now, so don't open your mouth. You might bite your tongue. You just committed a crime Kohuk. I gave him an uppercut. Immediately afterward, I felled him by kicking his chest and mounted him. His face was swollen. Thunder Knight. That one was for the punch you gave me in Windermere. I hammered his face with my fist. His nose, which stood as high as his pride, sunk. I continued with lightning wrapped around my fist. This one is for hitting on Waya when you're a middle-aged married man. I punched his solar plexus three times. He coughed out blood. As expected of an SS ranker, the way he coughed out blood was different than normal people. I leisurely dodged it and hit him one more time. Then, I focused my mana in my fist and held it up. And this one is for daring to touch my sister. Coo, hook. For the next ten minutes, I beat him so that he could only barely breathe. There wasn't a single bone in his body that wasn't broken. I made sure to break his jaws, so he could only eat porridge for the rest of his life. I made it so that he could never walk, never hold or touch objects, give birth, or have hair. At that time, Latte landed. When Walker and Daisy got off, they widened their eyes after seeing Brightman. When I turned around, Walker surprisingly had his mask off and was revealing his face. Ed Ward. Hearing the words that left Brightman's mouth, I remembered that Walker's name was Edward. I was also amazed by Brightman's rate of recovery. Joshua, what a sorry state you're in. When Walker was with me, he always called Brightman by his last name. Now, however, he was calling him by his first name. They exchanged glances that I couldn't understand. So you really were alive. You didn't know. I couldn't believe it until I saw you with my own eyes but why? I told you, Joshua, that the world won't continue to go the way you want it to. Fool. Why did you join hands with this kid? You're a kid too, Joshua. But unlike you, this kid isn't a selfish narcissist. Kahak I won't allow a yellow monkey to hold the supremacy over the world. Edward, it's not too late. Right now, get this monkey out of here. I punched his face again. On the other hand, Walker burst into laughter. You hit a new low, Joshua. You tried to kidnap an innocent person just for that. Kidnap? You destroyed Brightman Group's building for something like that. You've always been like this, Joshua. You treat your belongings like treasures and others' belongings like pebbles on the side of the road. No, the ones you liked, you tried to obtain by all means. I always found your attitude disgusting. I see that it still hasn't changed, even in this situation. Edward. I gave you everything you had. You're right, Joshua. You did give me everything. Walker approached us. His fist was enveloped by a black aura. When did he get so strong? 
His mana was certainly above an SS ranker's. He stopped in front of me and raised his fist. While I stared with widened eyes. He struck down on Joshua's face. Kohuk. But there wasn't a single thing I really wanted. With Walker's blow, Brightman lost consciousness. He picked his fist back up and shook off the blood. Then, he said with a grin. Punching him like that was on my bucket list. You you're pretty cool. You just found out. You really have no eyes for people. While a strange air flowed between Walker and me, Daisy shoved her face toward me. His mind, I read everything. Lacking information, I can make up. Thanks, Daisy. Then. There was no reason to hesitate. I removed Brightman's ability down to the last minuscule piece. For someone with such a dirty personality, his ability was a brilliant ball of light with a golden luster. It seemed abilities don't always match their users' personalities. I held it toward Walker. Take it, Walker, it's yours. I thought you'd say that there's someone I want to give it to. Is that okay? Brightman's younger sister, Sophie. Eck. Walker looked at me in shock. I made a sly smile and poked his shoulder. Not a single thing you wanted, huh? I think I know what one of them is, eh? Kekong Shin, you cuck. You just cursed, right? He he he, so am right. Kong Shin, that's not it. I rolled Brightman's unconscious body into a random crater in the ground. He would no longer be able to do anything on his own. If this Sophie was the type of person Walker described her to be, I was sure she'd take care of Brightman. You prepare the soul contract. Whether she can accept an SS rank ability is another matter. Can I just make her into an explorer? Walker, I didn't know you were such a pure-hearted guy. I told you, I have no romantic feelings for her. I couldn't give someone an SS rank ability just because Walker liked her. Although I wouldn't impose a harsh condition like the one on Walker, there had to be measures in place to prevent her from doing anything out of place. For example, using her newly acquired ability to create a strange organization like the one Brightman tried to make. We told everyone in Revival about the matter and voted on creating a new dungeon explorer. Unlike with Yua, most of the members didn't know about her. As she was also the younger sister of Brightman, they couldn't fully trust her either. In the end, most of them agreed under the condition that a soul contract would be used. Walker created the contract for Sophie as he trembled. Then, we headed to Britain. As we took our time destroying Brightman's organization on the way, it took about four hours. Sophie was staying in Brightman Group's luxury hotel in London. She was in charge of operating Brightman Group businesses in Britain and was 27 years old this year. Unlike her older brother, she was extremely talented in running a business. According to Walker, that is. I get it, so can you stop bragging about your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. The moment she heard Walker's voice, she led us into her room. I was grateful. If possible, I didn't want to deal with Britain's police. Sophie was indeed the type of girl Walker would like. Unlike her older brother, she had a slender and tender figure. Though her grey eyes were a bit sharp, her radiant blonde hair mitigated her cold look. Just like her older brother, she had a sharp nose. With her charming full lips, she exuded the charm of a beautiful woman. Edward. Surprisingly, she jumped into Walker's embrace the moment she saw him. She didn't look at us at all. You should have told me if you were alive, stupid. Joshua would have found out if I did. Couldn't you have done it secretly? That's. I hate you. It seemed British people had a custom of kissing people they hated. Wanting to get hated as well, I asked Walker. Not your girlfriend, you said. This is family intimacy. Edward, I was so worried. Looks like you've been well. Not without you. Sophie buried her face in Walker's embrace and didn't look up. Walker sweated. He faced us and shook his head, but it was too late. Daisy said bluntly. Humans are really weird move imagination to reality explosive reproduction rate. There would be all sorts of crime, so stop there. No crime, if there's love. Let's not talk about that for Walker's honor. Sophie refused to get off Walker for a while. 
After twenty minutes, she seemed to have calmed down, as she turned her head and faced us. Of course, she was still in Walker's embrace. She asked with a cold look. So, you're the one who ended my oppa. You won't make excuses, right? It's all over on TV. Well, yeah. You can call me Dragon Knight. I can't believe you appeared in front of his younger sister did you kill him? He's alive. Though, he won't be able to satisfy any one of humans' three desires. Edward, why did you go under such an eccentric man? He's better than your appa. It's impossible for anyone to be worse than my appa. You don't have to say something so obvious. The ball of light I held began to shine even more radiantly the moment it neared Sophie. It meant she was extremely suited to the ability. There wasn't even a need to make her into an explorer. Sierra why did she turn Brightman into an SS ranker instead of Sophie? I glanced at Walker, indicating that it would be fine for her to accept the ability. He sighed and took out the sole contract. Then, he began to explain. Sophie's eyes widened as she listened to Walker. After about ten minutes, she gave the reaction I was expecting. Edward are you telling me to become the head of Brightman Group? Exactly. Ken can I think of it as a proposal? Edward, stop being too cheeky all the time. This is a proposal, right? No, you and I are in different leagues. With this, you'll be able to stand in a position you're suited for. Ah, I knew that expression. It was the expression Loretta made often. Waya also began to make that expression recently. Whenever I saw that expression, things got tiring. It seemed my intuition was frighteningly correct, as Sophie pushed Walker's chest and shouted. No. I won't become the head. I won't take that ability and become an explorer or whatever either. Sophie, think of the bigger picture. I am. Without you, I can't focus on any work. The profit this quarter wasn't that good either, and I wasn't satisfied with my report for grad school either. If this continues, they'll be single for the rest of my life and die a virgin. If you won't become my fiancé, I won't agree to any condition. Sophie, you. Since Appa's out of hope, he'll have to continue the clan, but I don't want to marry anyone besides you, Edward. I said what I wanted, so come back when you've made up your mind. This woman somewhat resembled Waya. Was it a British thing? Was everyone so cool and fiery like Waya? Sophie pushed Walker away. Of course, as she was not an ability user, it didn't do much. Walker sighed and turned toward me. I'd never seen Walker make a face like that. Kong Shin, cooperate. Sure, I will. When I nodded, Walker's expression brightened, while Sophie's expression darkened. You're not satisfied with ruining Appa and want to ruin my marriage too? If you do, He'll use the Brightman Group's full force to annoy the hell out of you. Listen to me, Miss Sophie. If it's what Miss Sophie wants, I can put a clause in the contract that Walker has to become your fiancé. Walker and Sophie exchanged their expressions perfectly. Let's get along, Dragon Knight. No, my best friend. Kong Sheen. With this, everyone can be happy. Except for Joshua Brightman, of course. Chapter 182. In exchange for acting as a wingman for Walker and Sophie's relationship, Sophie forgot everything about what I did to Joshua Brightman and happily signed the sole contract. She then became a third dungeon explorer under Walker's appointment. Of course, she also received Joshua Brightman's ability and would act as Britain's protector in his place. When needed, she would also join Revival as she was its member. In the end, everything turned out well. While we were on our way to China, Walker growled as if he wanted to bite my head off. Kong Shin, you. You should be more honest, Walker. That was the best for everyone. She deserves better. You aren't so bad, Walker. Really. You're annoying. All right, it's time to go to China. There are many people we have to take care of there. Unlike Britain and Italy where Hoes was formed without their guardian's knowledge, China's Heroes of Shadow organization was much more widespread and numerous. As such, it was likely that China's guardian was involved. I was happy with it. 
It was more fulfilling if there were more things to destroy. The moment we entered China's airspace, several fighter jets surrounded us. I already knew China didn't see me in a good light. Seeing the Chinese fighter jets shooting missiles at us, I spoke regrettably. Latte, shoot them down. Understood. We swept through everything blocking our path. We visited each HOES facility in our list, which was made perfect through Daisy's ability, and retrieved the abilities of the ability users. China was flipped upside down and the media condemned me, but I didn't care in the slightest. Instead, after receiving the necessary information from me, Wire revealed everything about Heroes of Shadow and what they did. The world once again began to shake. After about three hours of going wild in China, we finally met China's SS ranker, Xian Xiaomei. To our surprise, we found her sleeping in her villa with a pretty girl in her arms. Although we caused quite a ruckus taking care of all the ability users guarding the outside, Xian Xiaomei and the doll-like girl in her arms were still sleeping soundly. Feeling uncomfortable by the fact that they were both naked, I turned to Walker and asked. Walker, why are they sleeping like that? I don't know. Maybe their family? Our faces both reddened and we couldn't look at them directly. Daisy then interrupted. This woman, lusting after another woe up. I quickly clasped her mouth with my hands. I got it. You don't have to say it. Humans are, really weird. Daisy seemed to have thought that she was kindly telling us about it, as she puffed her cheeks angrily. Since I had to do something about it, I summoned Pika. Pika, fry them. You're bold, Kong Shin. But there are enemies, right? Xin Xiaomei was on Luca Bruno's list and Joshua Brightman's memories. Plus, most Hoes members in China were affiliated with higher ups of the government. It made sense to beat them up thoroughly. You really are. Both of them? Ah, uh, wait. Daisy, can you read check? I can't read, they're sleeping. Then Pika, first wake them up. Pika's lightning dyed the room in gold. Two screams immediately rang out. Kayak. Ow. Both Hoes members. Positive. Pika, burn them both. Pika coiled around them and discharged a terrifying lightning. Xian Xiaomei seemed to have quickly understood what was happening, but with Pika holding her down, there was nothing she could do. Teeth under night. How? Pika. Kwa. The girl in Xian Xiaomei's arms had lost consciousness long ago, while Xian Xiaomei desperately shot her mana toward me. I felt a strong debuff aura, but I wasn't surprised as I knew she was a cursed magician. Although I did not expect that she would be able to use it so quickly, it still had to make contact with its target to activate. In other words, as long as I dodged it, it wouldn't do shit. Why isn't she weakening Pika? Master, there's no way to weaken an elemental. Ait. KRR. Xin Xiaomei was released only after she almost suffocated to death. However, as her crime was less than Luca Bruno's or Joshua Brightman's, I decided to stop here. Although she would need support for the rest of her life, she would at least be able to walk on her own legs. I instantly took out Xian Shaymai's ability. Then, before she fainted, I asked. Did you join Heroes of Shadow because of some ill will against me? A as if. I just wanted to obtain Waya Mastaford from Mice Kayak. I then made her just like Joshua. I suddenly craved for a cigarette when I had never even smoked before. Walker seemed to have thought the same way as he began to smoke. After letting out a puff of smoke, he remarked. It looks like there are many forms of desire, Kong Shin. Yeah, I just found out today too. I gave her ability to Walker. Although he was a close-range attacker, he surprisingly took her ability well. As his main method of attack was dealing a fatal blow after coming out of stealth, Xian Shaomai's debuff ability would help him greatly. In any case, with this incident, China lost an SS ranker. That day, Daisy, Walker, and I traveled around the world to catch Hoes members by reading their memories. Because we were traveling so quickly, night became day and day became night from us changing our location. As a result, we didn't know exactly how much time passed. 
With ability users and their organizations disappearing all over the world, the entire world was focused on me. There was even a rumor that Revival was going against all ability users. After confirming that all of Hoes routes were pulled out, I returned to Korea without regrets. I threw Otis' secret in my inventory. At least on Earth, I knew I would no longer need it. I made everyone who went against me pay for their actions. I thoroughly crushed them, retrieved their abilities, and made it so that they would have difficulty living a normal life as ordinary people. If there were people trying to go after me even after this incident, I wouldn't let them off so lightly. I officially announced my thoughts about this incident and revealed my name. I declared to all Guardian and Freedom Wing members, as well as rogue ability users. Even if all you come at me together, you won't be able to leave a scratch on my finger. Today, you saw the price for daring to touch me. I am the enemy of monsters, cleaner of dungeons, and friend of humanity. As long as you don't needlessly provoke me, as long as you remain an enemy of the monsters, as long as you desire to dispose of dungeons, I will remain your ally. Being on TV with my real face was a strange feeling. In any case, it was no longer a laughing matter. Whether it was television, internet, or radio, my name and face was being shown. I was the leader of the Guild Revival, a monster who crippled three SS rankers overnight. Although Sophie replaced Joshua Brightman in Britain, China and Italy lost their SS rankers on top of many other ability users. Though they probably wanted to kill me, they didn't have the ability. With this incident, the world came to know what would happen if they went against me. I became an untouchable existence. I was officially recognized as the strongest on earth. Son, there's a surge of people wanting to enter our dojo. Ignore them. We only receive one disciple as heir anyways. We call it a dojo, but it's really only for sparring. Should I make a spear technique for mass distribution? If I organize everything I learn from fighting monsters, I can make a spear technique that's not for fighting people, but for fighting monsters. Hmm, I've thought about something like that too. If we also make a mana cultivation method and spread it, we'll be able to make acquired ability users too. You want to try it? Sounds like a good plan, father. We immediately bought all the mana cultivation methods in the floor shop and started to analyze them. No matter how much I increased per Yuta circuit's level, it was a unique technique that was hard to pass on to others. As for father, he didn't even have a proper mana cultivation method. As a result, we had to go through several different mana cultivation methods and pick the one that would be the easiest to teach and pass on to others. For a week, Whenever father and I weren't in the dungeon, we worked hard to create a mana cultivation method, but in the end, we didn't succeed. The only positive result was that we had a more in-depth knowledge of mana. It looks like we'll need more time. Let's do our own research and talk about it later. I have to go to beyond now. I left the dojo and headed to our house. I already got used to the pouring stairs whenever I came out and could easily ignore the high school girls that flocked to ask for autographs. When I went inside my house, however, I witnessed a strange scene. Daisy was at the dinner table, eating. Oh, you're here, son. Nom, nom. Swallow what's in your mouth before you talk. You're here, Shin. Ho ho. I was used to Lydia greeting me whenever I came home. After all, she's been here for quite a while now. But Daisy? Wait. I've been busy for the past week with analyzing mana cultivation methods and grinding the floor master. Was Daisy staying in my house the entire time? Did you never go back to the dungeon? Nom, nom. I did. But the food here is, much better. You came back just to eat. Explorers that lost their worlds and became independent could be brought to other worlds through the return skill. Once they set their foot on this new world, they could come back here after entering the dungeon. That was how Daisy was going back and forth between the dungeon and earth. In any case, the way she sat comfortably on the table wasn't normal. She looked even more natural than Lydia. Who cares? It's not like having one more mouth to feed is any trouble for us. Plus, she's a cute girl. Girl? Mother, she's at least five times older than you. Feeling a killing intent coming from Daisy, I stayed silent. 
It seemed Daisy wanted to believe she was seventeen just like Loretta. Appa, you didn't eat yet, right? Il prepare food for Appa. Ah, thanks. Yua smiled sweetly and took out a seat for me. Then, she went over to the kitchen while humming. After getting her ability, Yua stopped sulking and returned to being an archangel. No, she had jumped up seven realms and had become a seraph. She was so dazzling that I couldn't look straight at her. Ian, Siskan. Using her SS ranked mana, Yua managed to climb to the 20th floor in one week and officially became Revival's guild member. Her ability was charming. Although she could charm monsters and attack them while they were confused, her ability was best suited to control monsters. In other words, she was a natural tamer. Because monsters in the dungeon couldn't be tamed, I told her I would get her a suitable monster to tame, but I had forgotten about it after being distracted by researching mana cultivation methods. But from what she said during the meal, it seemed she learned to use whips from Daisy and got through with just that. Even though her ability was charming, since she had the boundless mana of an SS ranker, it was understandable that she could break through the 20th floor with just her whip technique. According to Daisy, Yua had a talent for using whips. A whip was indeed suitable for a tamer. But weren't whips tools for punishment? A whip using sadistic Yua. That didn't sound so bad. Wait, no. Since we're talking about it, we should find a monster for Yua to tame. She can't rely on whips forever. Yes, I wanted to ask Appa about it too. Ah, before that, Daisy. There was a corpse I forgot to give you last time. Really? This was the second time Daisy used an exclamation mark. Her red eyes flashed. It must have really excited her if she couldn't wait and tried to read my mind. I made a wry smile and scooped a spoonful of rice. Once I finish eating, let's head over to the guild house. It's big, so I can't take it out here. Big. Good. Event raids, I need big undead. While Daisy's eyes sparkled, Lydia murmured grumpily. You don't give me anything. What would you do with a corpse? Humph. I decided to prepare a gift for Lydia soon. When we arrived at the guild house and I took out the evil mantis queen, the one made a big reaction wasn't Daisy, but Yua. Oh Appa, I. Yeah. Feel really good. Yua excitedly approached the evil mantis queen's corpse. Did she want to fry the evil mantis queen and eat it? In that case, I'd have to apologize to Daisy. Thinking about how to tell Daisy about this, I followed Yua. However, where Yua stopped was none other than the evil mantis queen's reed end, where her egg sac was attached. Hook. When did these get so big? They're dead, right? No, Appa, these children are alive. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Not. They could survive in the inventory. Oh, that's interesting. With that, I began to activate Mad Typhoon, but Yua shouted and stopped me. No. I can raise them. But Yua, if something goes wrong. ITLL be fine. They haven't been born yet. They're still blank slates. She wasn't wrong. We shouldn't associate the unborn children with the sins of the parent. If Yua could control them well with her ability, they could indeed become our ally. Since we had a way of controlling them, there was no need to kill them thoughtlessly. Yua, if it looks like you cannot do it, you have to tell me, okay? Of course, Appa. Yua smiled, telling me to relax, then imbued mana into the evil mantis queen's egg sac. Immediately, the egg sac began to pulsate. It was ripped apart, and hundreds of white mantises popped out. Hike. Why are they white? Is it because of Yua's angelic heart? Larvae, just born. What, I can't even joke. Of course, even as I joked, I was fully prepared to send them flying with my spear. However, my worry was for nothing. The calf-sized mantises were lining up in front of Yua, almost as if they knew who helped to bring them to life. Wow, they're all so cute, Appa. Uh, yeah. Perhaps, after obtaining her ability, Yua had changed from the younger sister I knew. Even while I nodded with a pale face, more mantises jumped out of the egg sack and lined up in front of Yua. 
She seemed to be happy, as she swung her whip and shouted. All right, follow mommy. Let's go eat, everyone. Key. Over three hundred mantises cheered all together. Just like that, my young sister came to command the world's strongest army of mantises. It was the start of the legend of the Monster Queen. Chapter, 183 That day, I finished grinding the twin-headed ogre. You consumed ogre's tattoo invigoration elixir to the limit. The twin-headed ogre's tattoo became invigorated to its peak. Your strength increases by 6%. Your constitution increases by 6. You equip the twin-headed ogre set. Your constitution increases by 27. When the twin-headed ogre set is equipped, you can use ogre power once per day. Ogre power doubles your strength for 5 minutes. Though extremely simple, seeing ogre power's description put a smile on my face. I immediately extracted ogre power from the set and inscribed it into the pocket watch's 11 o'clock position. I clenched my fists. With this, I would be able to freely use gigantic. There was also only one skill left to put into the collector's pocket watch. Without having to grind the 60th floor, I could simply extract Crimson Dragon Scale Armor's skill and put it in the watch. When Lin makes me a new armor, I would have to say goodbye to this armor. However, Crimson Roar was too strong of a skill to throw away. It was wise to put it in the pocket watch. Alright let's do it. Once I made up my mind, I acted quickly. I immediately extracted the skill from the armor and put it in the pocket watch. After a red gem was inscribed in the pocket watch's 12 o'clock position, the watch shined. Collector's pocket watch has been completed. The power hidden in the watch is released. You became a skill mixer. Your magic increases by 10. You obtain the skill, skill synthesis. When used, you can choose one skill to act as a base and one or more skills to act as supplements. The base skill and the supplement skills will then become one. Skill synthesis cannot fail, but the newly created skill may be weaker than the base skill. The pocket watch's skills may also be synthesized, but they cannot be synthesized with the other skills you have learned. Skill synthesis has no skill level. You obtain the skill, Spirit of the Mixer. Spirit of the Mixer increases the chance that skill synthesis produces a skill you desire. It has no skill level. Eh. The mixer in my kitchen flashed in my head, which I quickly shook off my mind. Skill mixer it seemed it was the natural result since the pocket watch could only contain 12 skills. Still, combining skills together as I had never even thought of the possibility, I looked at the skills in the pocket watch. Collector's pocket watch. 1 o'clock. Orc Lord's War Cry. 2 o'clock, Vengeful Spirit's Wail. 3 o'clock, Dark Thunder Explosion. 4 o'clock, Dragon Skin. 5 o'clock, Die Hard. 6 o'clock, Undead Roar. 7 o'clock, Outburst. 8 o'clock, Shadow Blink. 9 o'clock, Gigantic. 10 o'clock, Ice Touch. 11 o'clock, Ogre Power. 12 o'clock, Crimson Roar. Hmm, now that I think about it. There were many skills I normally didn't use. I rarely used Vengeful Spirit's Wail or Undead Roar, and now that I wasn't lacking in attack power, I wasn't using Dark Thunder Explosion or Outburst. On the other hand, skills like Ogre Power and Gigantic were better used together. There were also perfect skills that I couldn't synthesize no matter what. The first was Orc Lord's War Cry, and the second was Dragon Skin. They were both amazing defensive skills that saved me numerous times before. Although I didn't use Die Hard that much, it was the last lifeline I could rely on. As for Crimson Roar, it was slightly annoying that I could only use it when I was alone, but since I couldn't even begin to think about what skill to fuse it with, it was hard to touch it. This skill synthesis skill is quite a gamble. I checked my luck stat. It was unprecedentedly high. Plus, if I continued without doing anything, I wouldn't have the space to put the new skill ID get on the 60th floor. Sometimes, one had to be bold. Alright. Once I made up my mind, I immediately activated skill synthesis. A large stone slab appeared in the air. It was divided into two sides, one having a large cavity and the other having several smaller cavities. 
It was clear that the larger cavity was for the base skill and that the smaller cavities were for the additional skills. Just like skill description said, it seemed I could use more than one skill as additional inputs. Vengeful spirits wail and undead roar. Which one do I use as the supplement? What was more useless? Objectively speaking, it was vengeful spirits wail. Although I didn't use undead roar, it was quite useful since it decreased all living beings' speed by 95%. Although I was also affected by the skill, I could always use Orc Lord's war cry to dispel the effect for me and my allies. It was just that I never met an opponent that forced me to use it. If I did, I was afraid that it would have a method to block the skill somehow. This skill could it really be more useless than Vengeful Spirit's Kuhum. On the other hand, Pleen can more or less do the same thing Vengeful Spirit's Whale does. They were both trash. Though I felt like I was being a bit too rude to the skills, I was too lazy to change my mind. Actually, if I use both of them as supplements, what base skill would they go well with? Of the other ten skills in the pocket watch, I thought hard about which one needed the two skills effects. Orc Lord's War Cry If it turned out as I hoped, Orc Lord's War Cry would also stupefy others. Interesting. I liked it. Kook, but am not confident. At times like this, one needed to experiment. I decided to synthesize skills I didn't really need before I attempted to synthesize any skill with Orc Lord's War Cry. Outburst and Dark Thunder Explosion like a certain robotic cat pulling magical gadgets out of his 4D pocket, I placed the two skills and placed them on the base and supplement spots respectively. 7 o'clock skill, Outburst, is embedded in the skill synthesis base skill position. 3 o'clock skill, Dark Thunder Explosion, is embedded in the skill synthesis supplement skill position. Outburst was more practical than Dark Thunder Explosion, and more importantly, it was less embarrassing to yell Outburst than Dark Thunder Explosion. Skill Synthesis The stone slab began to spin in place. Seeing the stone slab glow as it accelerated, I was worried that it would explode like in Manwa. Thankfully, no explosions happened. The stone slab eventually began to decelerate until it came to a stop. The line that divided the slab was no longer there. Instead, a symbol letting out a mystical light was engraved in the center. I put my hand on the symbol. You obtained the skill, Gaia Buster. When used, the power of black lightning surges through your weapon and shatters the earth. Countless shards of rocks holding the power of black lightning hurl towards your target, dealing massive physical damage, lightning damage, and curse damage. The more your target is hit by the shards, the more exponential the damage becomes. The target hit by the attack will become paralyzed and stunned. These effects cannot be resisted. Gaia Buster can only be used once per day. Why? Why? Why did another embarrassing skill name appear? Even though the skill itself is so good. I swallowed my rage and stored the skill in the 3 o'clock position. In any case, I was certain about one thing. It was that the base skill's effects were properly maintained. In that case, now was the time. A man had to be bold when necessary. But before that, let me try with gigantic and ogre power. I wasn't timid. I just liked safety. You obtained the skill, Gigant Time. For five minutes, you can enlarge your weapon or a part of your body. The enlarged target will be imbued with the divine power of a giant and give off a terrifying destructive power. When a weapon is enlarged, you will not be affected by the weapon's weight. Gigant Time can only be used once per day. Yes, this is it. Perfect. The skill effect was exactly what I wanted, and more importantly, the name was normal. I smacked my lips. This was fun. Now, let's get to the fun part, you hee hee. Letting out a strange laughing noise, I activated skill synthesis again. I decisively put Orc Lord's war cry in the base skill position and threw Vengeful Spirit's wail and Undead Roar in the supplemental skill positions. Then, I suddenly thought that it might be too boring if I only included sound-based skills. I should put in the pretty useless I mean, although it's good, it's more fun I mean interesting to see what would happen. I was talking about ice touch. I had Sharana who could tie someone down and I had the ice elemental Ryue, who was getting stronger by the day. 
To be honest, Ice Touch really wasn't all that Yusef uh, it was slightly less effective. In any case, I threw the skill into the supplement skill position. Three supplement skills. Seeing the stone slab shining radiantly, my heart began to bounce. Hoo-hoo, good skill synthesis. The stone slab spun violently. As I watched full of expectation, the stone slab accelerated, then began to decelerate. In the end, a radiant white symbol appeared in front of me. I felt like it would blind me. You obtained the unique skill, Frozen Roar. Ice touch, you put in too much effort. Why are you so self-assertive? When used, all existence, other than you and those you acknowledged as your allies, will be frozen cold. Even if they resist the freezing effect, they will receive a critical status effect that threatens their ability to move. This skill targets all existence, whether they are living or dead. Immediately after the skill is used, you and your allies will be cleansed of all status effects and will regenerate all wounds. For five minutes, you and your allies become super armored, while all abilities are increased by 50%. Furthermore, when facing those affected by Frozen Roar, your chance of landing critical hits doubles. Frozen Roar can only be used once per day. You created a unique skill. Unique skills are skills that possess strength on par with God's powers without receiving the breath of a god. This grand achievement causes all gods to focus on you. Gods related to winter become especially interested. You obtain three skill points. Current skill points, 23. Wow. Something completely unexpected happened. Ice Touch perfectly combined the other three skills together. I meant to add a little more effect to the skill but ended up making some ultimate skill. Although I was the one who did it, I became touched. I put Frozen Roar in the one o'clock position. The gem letting out a white silver glow seemed to be giving off a chill. It seemed not all gems were the same. However, with some gems missing, it didn't look that good. I organized the gems in the pocket watch. Although I only filled up the 12 o'clock position today, 8 o'clock through 12 o'clock positions were empty again. However, I was more than happy seeing the aura the newly acquired gems were emitting. Collector's Pocket Watch 1 o'clock, Frozen Roar Orc Lords Warcry Vengeful Spirits Wail Undead Roar Ice Touch. 2 o'clock, Gaia Buster Outburst Dark Thunder Explosion. 3 o'clock, Dragon Skin. 4 o'clock, Die Hard. 5 o'clock, Shadow Blink. 6 o'clock, Gigant Time Gigantic Ogre Power. 7 o'clock, Crimson Roar. Should I synthesize the other skills too? No. Perhaps, I might get better skills later. It wouldn't be too late to synthesize them later. Although I could also synthesize skills other than the ones in the pocket watch, I decided to think about that later. Right now, I had to go to beyond. Shin Nim, why did you come out so late? I was worried that vitality hit zero. Sorry, Loretta. I had to do something. When I left the floor master room, Loretta pouted. However, when I explained what happened with the collector's pocket watch, she widened her eyes and nodded. I didn't know that there was a stage after. After all, that watch has never been completed before. Why? Shin Nim, do you think it's common to collect all the floor master sets? True. I nodded in agreement. Then, I told Loretta. I'm sorry to tell you this when I just saw you again, but I have to go beyond fifth floor. I hate Shin Nim. He'll be back soon. Well, that's true. I doubt even Shin Nim will be able to beat him on the first try. Eh. Him. Ha. Huh. You didn't know. Loretta tilted her head and asked. To me, who was fully prepared to break through an ocean of orc lords and wraith queens, her following words were like a thunderbolt from a clear sky. Just like the other dungeons, Beyond also has floor masters every five floors. Why is that the only part that's the same? No matter how much I nitpicked, there wasn't anyone to give me answers. Just like that, I received a chance to test my newly acquired strength. This is unreasonable. Chapter 184 I entered Beyond's fifth floor with Loretta's encouragement. Of course, no matter who my opponent was, I didn't plan on dying to them. 
If my vitality hit zero and beyond, I would have to wait a whole month before I could re-enter. If I wasted a month, it wouldn't matter how quickly I climbed the dungeon. Loretta seemed to be taking things slowly after declaring a two-year time period, but I was different. I couldn't just climb the dungeon for two years. I had to work as a dimensional mercenary and clear event dungeons when they appeared. Even so, the bastard in front of me was just morally wrong. Qua. Ghost Orc Lord's war cry rang out. The Ghost Orc Lord is cleansed of all negative status effects. Its attack power increases by 50% temporarily and it becomes super armored. Soul Echo activates. Ghost Orc Lord's war cry rings out repeatedly. The Ghost Orc Lord can be affected by Warcry's effect by up to 10 times. A half transparent Orc Lord floating in the air shouted. The dozens of skulls dangling on his glaive also screamed at the same time. They were precisely what increased the effect of his war cry. I could see him getting stronger right in front of my very own eyes. How many times do you have to multiply your strength before you're satisfied, you cowardly bastards? Goo. When I entered Beyond's fifth floor, the first thing I saw was the large hall I was currently in and this ghost orc lord. It was relieving to know that I wouldn't have to spend several days exploring Beyond, but the fact that I had to face this half-spiritual half-living being was quite stressful. Guang. Damn it. Like a ghost in a horror movie, the ghost orc lord blinked forward repeatedly to approach me. Every time the skulls on his glaive cut through the air, they let out ear-splitting screams, which served to stress me out even more. I quickly rolled backward and dodged the glaive. After cutting a few strands of my hair, the glaive struck the ground, making a terrifying sound ring out. At the same time, the entire room rumbled. Feeling strange, I was about to fly up, but before I could do so, I felt my stomach churning and coughed out a mouthful of blood. I took out a potion and grit my teeth. So it doesn't matter whether I dodge the attack. Really, this boss fight couldn't be more annoying. The Ghost Orc Lord's attacks were so powerful that it was difficult to block them. Even if I dodged them, the entire room would shake and damage me. I couldn't help but praise my decision to not bring Latte and Pleen. One could argue that I would be able to fly with Latte and dodge the vibration attack. However, even though the hall was spacious, it wasn't large enough for Latte to fly around freely. Pika was out of the question for the same reason. Gua. Kook, I was wondering when it was coming. Along with his cry, hundreds of grey ectoplasm arrows shot out from his body. Without a hint of hesitation, I hurriedly summoned Talaria and Sharana to fly up. Right, this bastard was the combination of dozens of orc lords and wraith queens. If they were the combination of the two, then I should have no reason to lose, I felt more at ease as I told myself this fact. Gua. The reflective property of the walls was gone. Instead, no matter where the ghost orc lord's attack hit, the room would rumble and deal damage proportional to the attack's force to whoever was touching the ground. Of course, now that I was flying, it had little meaning. I tried to think about how I could use this property to damage the ghost orc lord, but as he was flying from the very beginning, there really was nothing I could do. The hundreds of ectoplasm arrows aimed for my life without mercy. Affected by ten stacks of war cries, even a single ectoplasm arrow dealt immense pain. I danced like a fairy to avoid the incoming ectoplasm arrows, which then struck the room's walls and exploded. Immediately, the room shook with an explosive rumble. I ended up giving the ghost orc lord an upper hand due to just how unexpected the fight had begun, but if I didn't find my rhythm fast, I would be in danger. Alright Quan. You activated Frozen Roar. All enemies in the battlefield freeze in place. All allies temporarily become super armored and have all abilities increased by 50%. Your chance of landing critical hits double when fighting enemies affected by Frozen Roar. A freezing energy descended in the hull. The ectoplasm arrows flying toward me slowed down, and Frost appeared on the Ghost Orc Lord's half-transparent body. Using Sharana's power, I detonated the ectoplasm arrows one by one and thought about what floor master skills to use. Unfortunately, without enough space to even fly around on Pika, there was no way I could use Gigant Time. I also couldn't use Gaia Buster, as it would strike the entire room with too great a force. In that case Kook. 
Ruyue. Got it. The ghost orc lord had already broken out of the ice. I tried to tie him down again with Ryu's power, but it was not enough. In the end, I stopped thinking and tightened my grip on my spear. As if I only fought with floor master skills. Prepare to die. I charged toward the ghost orc lord, as I poured more mana into Ryue and told her to restrain the ghost orc lord more. At the same time, I drank a mana potion and formed chaos flames on my spear. The ghost orc lord let out a horrifying scream as if he wanted to kill me with his scream alone. Gua! I don't have the time to be wasting here, you ghost orc. I dodged his slow-moving glaive and thrust my spear toward his waist area. He may have a spiritual body, but he couldn't dodge my chaos flames. Although the ice restraining his movements completely melted away, he was affected by inextinguishable black flames in exchange. Maddened by the flames, the ghost orc lord shot out more ectoplasm arrows and launched aura waves by swinging his glaive. The room shook endlessly, damaging me while I was still flying. Although the vibrations came from the walls, the sheer force had even spread through the air. Things couldn't continue like this. The ectoplasm arrows seemed to be shot towards me almost infinitely, and I couldn't continue to let it happen. Cook first, they'll get rid of this vibration. Ruyue, go back for now. When Ruyue left, the ghost orc lord went wild with joy. He charged toward me and swung his giant glaive like a scythe. I shouted. Kuang. You used crimson roar. Everything blazes in flames. In terms of visuals, nothing could come close to this skill. The entire space blazed and dealt critical fire damage to all targets other than me. The ghost orc lord's painful scream was especially memorable. The chaos flames expanded their territory as if the blazing space was their home. At that moment, the ghost orc lord threw his glaive at me. It seemed even the blazing space couldn't stop the super-armored state. I sent an aura imbued with chaos flame flying toward him and dodged the glaive. The glaive then struck the ground. The entire room rumbled from the shock. That was the end. I sighed in relief. So it really was effective. Even the words I just said disappeared after a weak vibration. It was impossible to turn the space into a complete vacuum, but it seemed what I planned worked. Mechanical waves could not travel without a medium. As Crimson Roar burnt up all the air when it activated, vibrations became unable to travel through the air. Of course, this put me in a tough spot as well. Even though I was a level 56 explorer, I couldn't last long in a space without air. Pika, let's go all out. Got it, master. I raised my spear and held my breath. I concentrated my strength on one point and charged towards the ghost orc lord with Pika. Take this and die. Heroic strike. The ghost orc lord also let out a hearty scream and charged toward me. Well, since I couldn't hear him, I only assumed he did. Plus, his annoying horror movie-like blink skill was active again. If I didn't focus, I would lose a limb in an instant. I had to land dozens of attacks, but my opponent only had to land one to fatally wound me. Now, there was no air to breathe either. Really, nothing was going my way. There was nothing more terrifying than fighting a super-armored enemy, but I smiled. A warrior shined when he fought with his life on the line, and a warrior shined the most when he overcame everything and came out victorious. I flashed my golden evil eyes and thrust out my spear, filled with chaos flames and heroic aura. The spear shot past the ghost orc lord's glaive and pierced his side. Qua! Cry louder, you pig ghost! I shouted to encourage myself and thrust forward again. The chaos flames devoured his entire body. You cleared Beyond's fifth floor. You obtained the qualification to challenge the first dungeon's 56th floor. You obtained five bonus stats. Your maximum HP and MP increase by 2%. Experience has been added to skills you frequently use to progress through Beyond's fifth floor. You defeated Beyond's first floor master, Ghost Orc Lord, alone. You obtained the title, Ghost Orc Lord Slayer. All stats increase by one. Choose your reward. 1. Echo Ring. If you're only going to display one item on the list, don't tell me to choose. 
Even as I complained, I quickly picked the reward and ran out of beyond. After all, even I couldn't stay without air for long. Puha. The moment I arrived at the floor shop, I took in a deep breath and breathed out. Loretta looked at me with widened eyes. Shin Nim, you succeeded. Hugh, Hugh of course. You're really rewriting history. That's not true. I didn't get the first reward. I responded as I looked at Echo Ring, a metallic ring with a transparent jewel. Loretta retorted. Shin Nim, Beyond's explorers are all people who defeated floor masters alone. Shin Nim is the newest Beyond explorer. Did you really think that the first reward for Beyond's first floor master would be untouched? Koham. Although there are only three left now, there were other Beyond explorers in the past. Of course, most of them are now. It's fine, Loretta. A heavy silence flowed between us. Loretta made an awkward smile and turned away. This woman still couldn't fully believe in me. She was constantly trying to create a reason to run. Though I knew she was doing it for me, it wasn't of any help to me now. Of course, since Loretta would probably get sad if I said anything, I decided to just look at Echo Ring's option. Echo Ring Unique Durability 230230 Equipment Requirement None Option doubles the effect of all roar type skills. Ooh. Although it didn't raise my stats, it was a perfect item that was practically made for me. As if it was waiting the entire time, it came out right after I obtained Frozen Roar. Of course, it also represented the property that Beyond's first through fifth floors had. I immediately took off my gauntlet and put the ring on my finger. Loretta slowly approached me as she studied my expression. She was indeed too cute. D did you get a good item, Shinnim? Yeah, it's a fantastic item, enough to reduce Loretta's worries. Stupid, I'd be worried even if you're armed with a holy sword hying. A bitter smile appeared on my face as I thought about the Luca Continent's hero. Right, I shouldn't get arrogant. People much stronger than me fell helplessly in front of their enemies. I couldn't be happy with just clearing Beyond's fifth floor. As if to distance myself from Loretta, who was getting dangerously close, I escaped the floor shop. All right, Loretta, it'll be going straight to the 56th floor then. Eh. No, stay with me a bit more. I don't have any time to waste. Sure, Shin Nim. Be before that. See you on the 56th floor shop. Loretta shouted louder. Before that, buy a magic detector. It's 150,000 gold. It'll take one. Apparently, the 56th floor had mimics and golems, which were only detectable by using the magic detector. If you're just going to sell me an item, don't make the atmosphere all weird. Chapter, 185 From what I've seen in the dungeon so far, the dungeon was designed for party play. The width of the passageway and the number of monsters that appeared together were the biggest examples. There was no consideration for explorers climbing the dungeon alone. However, the traps and rewards were also party-based, meaning that solo explorers had more to gain. Traps were more dangerous when a large number of people tried to cross them. There were traps that activated when a certain number of people stepped over an area. For example, there were traps that caused the ground to collapse or traps that rained down arrows. For ordinary explorers and parties, it became even more difficult to dodge these traps as others would panic. Of course, for me, it was hard to say whether these traps could even deal 1 HP worth of damage. In any case, parties were weak to traps. It was quite cliché for trap experts to die because their party members got in their way. I had a lot to say about traps, but I had even more to say about rewards. The most common situation explorers would face while climbing ordinary dungeon floors was deciding who the reward from named monsters would go to. There were also conflicts as to who would rest, who would get the few high-grade herbs and materials, and who would get the extremely rare epic-grade items dropped by bugged monsters. The 56th floor was filled with mimics. Just like their name suggested, they mimicked weapons, treasure chests, wardrobes and the like to trick explorers. They devoured unsuspecting explorers that touched them or simply just passed by. Because of their outstanding disguise, it was extremely difficult to tell them apart, 
and even if one did, they were quite strong so it was hard to face them. As such, the best way to deal with them was to identify them and quickly attack them while they were still thinking about how to eat you. Of course, this was easier said than done. Fortunately, as everything on the 56th floor were mimics, it was quite easy. If I was suspicious, I just had to stab my spear through it. If I was in a party, someone might have gotten caught off guard, but there was no problem for a solo explorer like me. I almost didn't even need a magic detector. Damn, but even I can't help it sometimes. After I killed a named monster, I instinctively reached out to grab the fancy sword that replaced it. The sword then opened its mouth and bit down on my gauntlet. It was only then that I realized the mistake I made and burnt it with my lightning. These mimics provoked people's instincts. People instinctively grabbed treasures, dodged traps, opened doors, opened boxes, climbed stairs, went into holes kuhum. What's making me grab things and the magic detector is ringing. I despaired at my patience. Initially, I was going slow, being wary of any traps, but I decided to change my method. I left Sharana to destroy any traps and charged forward on Ryue. With that, I escaped from my desires. I was going so fast that I couldn't see anything. Suddenly, a stone decoration popped out in our path. Thinking that it was a mimic, I swung my spear to cut it, but the stone decoration grabbed my spear and put a stop to our charge. Gua! Ah, uh, it's a golem. Mimics had excellent disguising ability, but poor durability. Golems, on the other hand, were magical creatures made out of stone or steel, and were naturally tough. Of course, toughness was rather subjective. I clicked my tongue and burnt the golem with chaos flames. Sorry, but both mimics and golems are weak as hell. What if the entire passageway was a mimic? Would it even hurt me if it devoured me? The moment I thought that, the magic detector vibrated and the passageway began to narrow. So there really was a mimic like that. Wait, I paid 150,000 gold for this thing, but it noticed even later than me. Loretta cheated me. Do I burn it? Pika immediately shot powerful bolts of lightning left, right, up, and below. When they crashed with the walls that were closing in, a loud boom rang out. The mimic was dead. Before its body scattered into particles, Ryue accelerated and got out of the passageway. Immediately afterwards, however, a mouth opened up on the floor to devour Ryue and me. I raised my spear and struck down on the ground. As the magic detector continued to ring, I didn't know exactly where the mimics and golems were. To put it bluntly, it was useless. In the end, I acknowledged that it wasn't the best idea to charge forward on Ryue. I drank a mana potion and decided to take a special measure. I dematerialized Ryue and flew up by using Sharana's power. I didn't want to resort to this method because of its large mana consumption, but there was no other choice. Since I couldn't trust the floor or the ceiling, I could only trust the air. Even after that, I faced golems pretending to be walls, treasure chests that smacked their mouths, mimics that disguised themselves as the ceiling, which then got out of the way, revealing traps then rained down arrows. Of course, these arrows were also mimics in disguise. In the end, it took me three hours to break through the 56th floor. It was quite slow compared to my recent times. You became level 57. You obtained the qualification to challenge beyond 6th floor. You obtained 5 bonus stats. Oh, you broke through the 56th floor in just 3 hours. How amazing. But why are you so out of breath, Shinnim? First hook hook. I glared at Loretta and demanded. I want a refund. Loretta didn't refund the 150,000 gold at all. She instead said she would give me a queen elf's blessing and tried to kiss me. I of course blocked it with one hand and jumped into Beyond's sixth floor. Beyond's first through fifth floors had the first dungeons Orc Lord and Wraith Queen, the fifth and tenth floor master respectively. I suspected that Beyond's sixth floor would have the fifteenth floor master, Dark Ratman, and my suspicion was spot on. The moment I entered the first hallway, I faced dozens of Dark Ratmen glaring at me. To be honest, I was reluctant to fight the Dark Ratmen. I had been killed once by a Dark Ratman, and they also used the extremely cheaty Dark Thunder explosion skill. 
I still vividly remember being hit by dark thunder explosion. Now, they appeared in groups. GG GG. Human meat. Human meat is here. It's time for a lightning festival. Seeing the dark rat men flickering with black lightning, I swallowed my saliva. If they got me, that would be it. With that, I prepared myself to use divine speed. If I used dragon skin, die hard, and divine speed well, it was probably possible to break through the sixth floor within a few days. Alright, let's go. GG GG. Dark Thunder Explosion. They used Dark Thunder Explosion at the same time. I didn't even think to avoid their attacks. I first summoned Pika and gave her ample mana. I then formed Chaos Flames and prepared myself to combat any lightning that flew toward me. At the same time, I prepared myself to use Dragon Skin if I received too much damage. After I was done with all the preparation, I charged toward them. And in five hours, I safely broke through the sixth floor. Shin Nim. You died, right? You must have died, right? Don't say die. Say that my vitality hit zero. Plus, if my vitality hit zero, I wouldn't have returned to the floor shop. I was still dumbfounded, but the Dark Ratmen in Beyond Sixth Floor didn't hurt at all. Originally, Dark Ratmen's strong points were their speed, strength, and their powerful skill, Dark Thunder Explosion. Even though the Dark Rat Men on Beyond Sixth Floor was stronger than the one I faced on the dungeon's fifteenth floor, they were still slower than me and had paper-like bodies. They died like flies every time I swung my spear clad with chaos flames. Even when they used Dark Thunder Explosion, my absurd lightning resistance easily shook it off. In fact, Pika became ecstatic and absorbed the lightning. Rather than calling it Beyond Sixth Floor, it was better to call it a power plant for Pika. I didn't have to worry about the Dark Ratman's attacks at all, and Pika destroyed all the traps with all the lightning she absorbed. It was the first time I simply marched through a beyond floor. Elemental Nim is strangely shiny Shin Nim. Loretta's imagination shocks me from time to time, but she only filled her belly with lightning. After that, I spent a few days clearing the first dungeon's 57th floor, beyond 7th floor, first dungeon's 58th floor, and beyond 8th floor. Beyond 7th floor had lizard knights. As their main method of attack was striking the ground with their spears while they were dragon skinned, I simply flew up and charged past them. Unlike in floor master battles, I didn't have to kill all the monsters in Beyond. The orc lords were scary because Warcry affected other orc lords and lasted indefinitely with their low cooldown. On the other hand, the lizard knight's dragon skin did not affect other lizard knights and had long cooldown time. If needed, I just had to wait out Dragon Skin's duration and kill them off one by one. Beyond's eighth floor was even easier. When Lizard Knights used their ground-based attacks, they damaged Dark Rat Men, and when Dark Rat Men attacked, I was fine but the Lizard Knights went epileptic. While they inadvertently fought each other like idiots, I leisurely took care of them one by one. Climbing the dungeon couldn't have been easier. If things continued like this, it was entirely possible to conquer the dungeon in two years. I became intoxicated in this feeling. I was getting stronger by the day and climbing the dungeon was extremely smooth. Even if I tried to stay humble, I couldn't help but feel that I could do anything. Crown Prince please, help me. Until one day, I got a message from a friend. Chapter, 186 Please, Crown Prince. I can't protect them alone. W.Y. can't I be happy? See Crown Prince? And no, nothing. By now, I was used to something happening whenever I was climbing the dungeon smoothly. Event dungeons, event raids, Luca Continent, and now this. Just when I thought I could focus solely on the dungeon, Ren was calling me. I couldn't let my guard down at all. In fact, I felt like someone was doing this on purpose. I gritted my teeth and asked Ren. What's up, Ren? Tell me. No, Crown Prince, you must be having a hard time too. It was my mistake, forget what I said. Cut the crap and tell me. Why yes. Ren's world, the Panon Continent, was a peaceful land where humans and beastmen coexisted. Of course, both races had to face numerous difficulties until the peace was achieved, 
but they had reportedly done it. At least, that was how it was two hundred years ago. Things began to change one day. Small conflicts between humans and beast men increased in scale as time went on until one day, a war broke out between a human country and a beast man country. I'm not really interested in pan and continent's history. What if it was the history of an outsider's invasion? The war raged and blood flowed like the ocean. Another country then jumped into the war, and the entire continent became enveloped in the war. Before a dungeon explorer revealed the truth of the matter, everyone thought it was a self-created disaster by humans and beast men. That wasn't it. It was the doing of Pan and Continent's invaders, the El Pedais. El Pedais? That's what they call themselves. We call them brain worms. That's what they are. Bugs that crawl into our brains. According to Ren, these brain worms crawled into the brains of sleeping victims and ate the content. The victims would die and the brain worms would then pretend to be the victims they killed. The only way to detect whether someone was eaten by a brain worm was to use a special magic for detecting life signals. Brain worms could perfectly imitate the actions of their victims to the point that not even the victim's own family members could tell anything apart. However, the fact that they were still brain worms didn't change. When enough brain worms gathered, they would finally reveal themselves and drag others into their hell. Luckily, people with high mana could detect brain worms in their initial form and avoid them. The explorers who found out about the brain worm's existence did their best to find their weaknesses, and they notified everyone that they were the ones who caused the war. However, the effect was minimal. Upper echelons of most countries' government had already turned into brain worms, and soon, stronger brain worms that Pan and Continent's warriors had trouble with began to cross over. And, unable to stop the war in time, the population of Pan and Continent plummeted. The brain worm's forces only grew stronger as they consumed more people and strengthened themselves in the end, 170 years after the onset of their invasion, an incident happened that made everyone lose their hopes against the brain worms. I had a feeling I knew what was coming. Though I blocked my ears, I could still hear Ren's voice. The hero of that generation the Lion Empire's Golden Lion Emperor was eaten by a brain worm. Ren. The worm that controlled the hero was the one that ruled over all other worms. It was the so-called world's enemy. Regardless, after it gained the power of the hero, the worms began to conquer the continent at an unprecedented rate. They were now able to reproduce in our world. Ren said that the only way the Pan and Continent's people could survive until now was because they found the brain worm's weakness. The ocean. They can't enter the ocean. Not even the worm that obtained the hero's body could enter the ocean. We realized that the worms avoided invading ocean-based countries. Since they couldn't cross the ocean, they used another passageway to deploy their troops to the countries in the ocean. You should have noticed that sooner. I already told you. They were extremely meticulous and skilled in hiding their weakness. An explorer then ran to the ocean to escape the brain worms noticed coincidentally, and it was thanks to this coincidence that the remaining explorers could breathe a sigh of relief. Of course, that didn't last long either. Why? At my question, Ren became silent for a while. Then, he confessed in a somber tone. Crown Prince Beast Men are unable to swim. Beast Men couldn't enter the ocean. Most of Pan and Continent's survivors were Beast Men. Thus, they could only resort to creating a base near the ocean and using ocean water to fight against the brain worms. Thankfully, they had someone who could wield the power of water, but after he was eaten by the brain worms, the last hope had disappeared. This was around the time Sir Le Beak died. Most of the remaining explorers also died then. Ren, right now, you're. I'm protecting eight children. Five beast men, three humans. When the base collapsed, I barely managed to save these children and found a safe place to hide. By climbing the dungeon, I found food to bring back for them. This was when I met Crown Prince. This might sound harsh, but there really seemed to be no hope. Regardless, I urged Ren on since I had to hear what was happening now. Ren, tell me the current situation. They discovered our hiding place. We're running. It was rather simple. We're currently resting after defeating the pursuers. 
But soon, a stronger squadron of brain worms will attack us. I ended up talking to Crown Prince out of desperation. I understood how Ren was feeling. He most likely wanted to get whatever help he could. I sighed and asked. So, what are you planning to do? Before it's too late, we have to go back to the coast. We have to create a base that will protect us from them. We have to drive the ocean water and create a man-made island of some sort. Sounds like tough work even when you get to the coast. Rewrite. After thinking for a bit, I continued. Did you submit a request for dimensional mercenaries? Yes, but no one came. How about using dimensional travel skill to move them elsewhere? That's impossible, Crown Prince. Dimensional travel can only be used alone. Why don't you put some skill points into it and ah? Uh... Right, that was my skill. The original dimensional travel skill didn't have skill levels, so it didn't matter how many skill points you had weight, but there's return. If I could use return with the eight children other than Ren. My return skill was currently level four. I could take up to three people with me. As I had never distributed skill points into it, I used 15 skill points to raise it up to level 8. Return became level 8. It can be used 6 times per day and you can choose 6 returning points. You can bring up to 5 people. Damn, it's not enough. Once I came back to Earth using Return, I couldn't go back to Panon with Return. I had to use Dimensional Travel to travel between worlds. Because of Dimensional Travel's cooldown, it wouldn't work out. I bit my lips. Meanwhile, Ren was still talking. Crown Prince, forget about what I said. Impanans Ren. This much danger, I can get through by myself. No bullshit allowed. I'm not a bull, I'm a lion. In this situation, there really was only one thing I could do. It was to ignore Ren's request. Ren knew he was making an unreasonable request, and he took it back as well. A brain-eating worm disgusting. It wasn't that I didn't feel any sympathy for Ren, but there was just no hope. Thus, I told him. Don't die before I get there. Crown Prince, I told you, don't come. I was just ranting. If you die, they'll kill you, got it? Crown Prince. Shut it. If I think it's too dangerous, they'll escape by myself. Crown Prince. I hung up on Ren. Then, I contacted the person on my friend list whom I never contacted before. Labik, are you doing well? P. Panon Continent requested for dimensional mercenaries what do I do, rookie? You should know who made the request. And no one wants to go. Rookie, tell Ren Nim to get out of there. Please. Ren doesn't plan on leaving. He's protecting eight children. Eight that's two less. Labik. What are you going to do? Me? What, are you telling me to go to Pan and Continent? Tell me quickly. What are you going to do? Tell me what you're thinking. Rookie, you. My dimensional travel skill is a bit special. I can bring someone else with me. So, Labik, what are you going to do? As I spoke to her, I put skill points into dimensional travel. LV2, LV3, LV4 It was then that the number of people I could bring increased by one. The cooldown decreased by quite a lot to two months. I now had one skill point left. There was no going back. W what do you mean I, I can't go. I'll die if I do. Definitely. You might die, that's true. I didn't make my decision easily either. Then how can you say it like it's nothing? Are you looking down on death? If a brain worm kills you, you can't even enjoy eternal rest. Your brain will get eaten and your body will become their toy. But if I don't go, the same will happen to my friend. Labik, it'll give you five seconds, so make up your mind. If you can't, I'm going to go alone. W8. No, I want I want go. I escaped by myself, so how can I, at this point? Three. Two, one. You oot. Fine. I'll go. I smiled. As expected of a woman in love. Good. I'm sure Ren will be touched. Maybe, he'll be so touched that he'll hug you. 
H he will hug me. Ren Nim will. Go Pen no, I'm not going to fulfill my desires. Even I wouldn't throw away my life to satisfy my lust. I just want to make up for the loyalty I failed to protect. I got it, so meet me at the first dungeon residential area's pub, cocked. Make sure you're fully prepared. Rookie okay. I hung up on her as well. Then, I let out a long sigh and opened the guild communication channel. I'm going to go do a dimensional mercenary request. It might take a while, but don't worry. Is it safe? At my sudden announcement, the guild communication channel became noisy. Waya then asked me with a worried voice. Though I was thankful that she was worrying about me for some reason, I broke out into laughter. What requests are safe? But well, ITLL be fine. I spoke honestly. I can see the ending. Chapter, 187 I could only bring one explorer with me using dimensional travel. However, contracted beings like elementals and tamed monsters could come with me just like how I could bring them to the dungeon from Earth. I could always unsummon the elementals if things got dangerous, but tamed monsters were a bit more troublesome. Both Pleen and Latte made a fuss about coming with me, but Pleen wasn't suited as an elite force. She couldn't defend herself well, and her ability wasn't suited for direct fights. Plus, I didn't know how much her ability worked against these brain-eating worms. Although I felt sorry for leaving her out, there was nothing I could do. On the other hand, Latte didn't lose to many in terms of strength. Plus, now that she could transform into a human I was curious just how she obtained that ability, her range of activity increased as well. She was all around a reliable companion to have. For the record, I made sure that she wore proper clothing when she was in her human form. I gifted her some elastic leather clothes. Although she refused to wear clothes at first, when I pouted and acted sad that she wouldn't accept my gift, she frowned and put the clothes on. Hoo-hoo, I was getting more skilled at handling my subordinates. Latte looked smugly at Pleen when I told Pleen that she couldn't come but Latte could. Hoo-hoo-hoo, you see, fish? This is the hero's choice. I'm not a fish. I'm a siren. No. It's just that your ability isn't suited for what I'm doing, Pleen. Wish us a safe return. Hick. Okay. You're weak. Do you know why, fish? I'm not a fish. And I'm not weak. Shin said I was a good singer. You are weak because you are lacking. In training. Training? Yeah, yeah, let's go, Latte. Ever since she transformed into a human, she was learning lots of weird things. Regardless, there were only five minutes left until I had to go see La Beak at the pub. I hurriedly left the resort with Latte and headed to the first dungeon's residential area. The first thing I did was accepting the dimensional mercenary request. Then, while I was making my way to the pub, the people's attentions became focused on me. It's Revival's master. Earth's hero. Did you check the guild rank? It's already B. Hey, don't even think about messing with that guild. An administrative guild has its back. We're different from Desert Scorpion. We have no intention of abusing an administrative guild's authority. Though I wanted to tell them off, I didn't. Latte became angry instead. Are they cursing Hero? Not that I think highly of Hero, but it is true that Hero is strong enough to make me submit. How strong are they that they're cursing Hero in the middle of the street? I must test their strengths. Latte, please. Also, don't use words like submit. Hero should be proud. Hero made me submit without using force. That shows how grand Hero is. Our surroundings became noisy. Hey, did you hear that? I was wondering if it was a new woman. It's as I thought. Without using force. That must mean. Yuga. Hero. I grabbed Lottie's hand and ran to the pub using Gale Track. There, I saw Labique with a solemn expression on her face. She wore a set of upgraded armor from the last time I saw her and she had a large black claymore on her back. Why you're here? I thought about it for a long time, but if I could see Renim's face one last time, he'll have no regular kayak. Let's go. 
If I stayed in the residential area any longer, my reputation is going to plummet to the point of no return. Labique seemed to be giving excuses as to why she was going to Panin, but I was too lazy to listen to her. She should just say she wants to see Ren. All right, dimensional travel. W8. Too late. The residential area melted down. As if to paint over the now blank canvas, a new world appeared. The sky was pitch black with not even a single star in sight. Everything was quiet. We were in a small open area in the middle of a dense forest. I said wait a bit, Rue. Labique was just about to say something to me when she suddenly stopped. She froze and seemed to be staring at behind me. Then, she fell as if her legs gave out. I turned around. There, I saw Ren, who was staring at me with widened eyes. Ren. You really. You really came, Crown Prince. Damn, I told you not to come, so why? When dimensional travel was used for a dimensional mercenary request, the user was naturally summoned next to the person who made the request. Otherwise, the user would be summoned to the friend-listed person. Of course, I would have ended up next to Ren regardless. Ren's voice was quiet unlike usual. In fact, his voice seemed to be suppressed as it didn't travel well. I closed my eyes, then opened them back up after a brief moment. I had analyzed the mana in the surroundings. Is it an artifact? Yes. I obtained an item that prevents sound from traveling far. The dungeon sure is a nice place. Ren took out a pentagonally shaped pendant and smiled. Then, he frowned again. He seemed to have remembered what he was talking about. Wait, don't change the subject, Crown Prince. It's not too late, you should. If I think it's too dangerous, they'll run away on my own, so don't worry. Now that you say that, I'm hurt. Ren's perked up lion ears drooped. My fists cried at the cuteness unbefitting of Ren's face, but I swallowed down the urge. In any case, they'll prevent El Paydais from aiming for Crown Prince, even if costs me my life. I won't stop Crown Prince now, but if it gets dangerous please do go back when I give the signal. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Then first, he'll introduce you to the children. They haven't been able to rest for a while, so they practically collapsed when they got the chance. Hoo hoo, you'll be surprised how cute they are. Ren's ears danced and showed his affection for the children. At that moment, I fully comprehended Ren. I see, so the reason Ren's trying so hard is. I nodded my head seriously and lightly tapped Ren's shoulders. Ren. Hugh, I understand Ren. It's understandable. Un. Thank you for understanding. But understand what? Rather than that, who's the beautiful woman next to you? A dimensional mercenary. Ren, who didn't have immunity against women, backed up after noticing Latte. I introduced her. She's my pet. My name is Latte, the hero named me. Don't trouble hero, lion. Pet. Rookie, you're the worst. Eh. And from that, Ren finally noticed the woman sitting on the ground. Labique quickly clasped her mouth with her hands, but it was too late. Ren discovered Labique and widened his eyes. Sir. Labique. Why your highness? Labique quickly dusted off the dirt on her armor and displayed her respect for Ren. So you really were alive, Sir Labique. And my apologies. Even if I have ten mouths, I have no excuses. Lebwick's ears drooped and stuck to her hair. To be honest, just looking at their ears were interesting. However, Ren burst into laughter. His ears seemed to be jumping around in joy. I'm glad. I'm extremely happy that you are alive, Sir Labique. Your Highness. I was worried that Sir would have missed the chance to go back to the dungeon. After all, Sir Lebwick's loyalty was the greatest in our world. And no, your highness. I'm just a defeated cat that turned tail and ran in the face of our enemy. So she was a cat. While I was musing about the novel image of a defeated cat, Ren smiled bitterly and lightly tapped her shoulder pauldrons. Raise your head, Sir Lebeek. The only reason I'm alive now is all thanks to the swordsmanship Sir taught me. 
Plus, in touch that sir didn't forget about me and returned. Ren Nayim. Ah, her tail is shaking. The tail protruding out from a hole in her armor wagged gently and expressed ecstasy. To be able to show the appearance of a girl in love just by the movement of a tail, beast men were amazing. Worried that Lebeek would jump on Ren, I quickly shoved my hand between them. All right, while well I'm happy for your reunion, but let's leave it at that. Ren, when are we setting off? Emm, -hmm, I want to let the children sleep longer, but we'll probably have to leave before the sun rises. The assassin's tracking techniques are truly vexing. Well, the El Paidais that took over the assassin's brains, to be exact. Your Highness, I solemnly swear that I shall protect your Highness no matter what. I'd rather that sir survives. Your Highness, no, I will. Those beast men are weird. Why are they so bent on dying? I was just about to ask the same question, Latte. That's what I said, but I knew Lebeek was planning on paying the price for abandoning Ren. To be honest, when I told her about the situation, I only half expected her to come. I couldn't really understand if it was love or re-emerged loyalty that was pushing her to do this. I just hoped that her actions would bring good results for both her and Ren. A fruit. Latte seemed to be perfectly familiar with her human form, as she jumped to the perfect height and grabbed a fruit hanging on a tree branch. She then wiped it off with her sleeve and took a bite. Her movements were rather wild. Even in her human form, there were traces of her true body. The biggest example was her sharp canine teeth. I took the fruit she held out after taking a bite and also bit down. Then, I asked Ren. Is flying a bad idea? We don't have a way of flying. Even if we did, the sky is filled with enemies. In fact, we're in this forest so that we won't be noticed by the enemy's air squadrons. Ren, can you draw the path from here to the coast? I have a map. It'll show you. Rookie, you look pretty used to all this. What about you, Labik? For a night, you don't look used to this at all. You. Sir Labik has little experience on the battlefield. She was my guard knight and sword teacher. Please understand, Crown Prince. You have experience commanding an empire's soldiers and fighting in wars. It's not right to compare Sir Labik with Crown Prince. For a moment, I seriously contemplated what world's crown prince he was talking about. I mean, didn't I make it clear that I wasn't really a crown prince? But when I looked at Labeek, who was tearing up, I lost the will to say anything. I nodded my head generously and took another bite of the fruit. Then, Latte exclaimed. Hero, there's a worm in that fruit. Kayak. Crown prince. From then, I trembled for thirty seconds, but thankfully, it wasn't a brain worm. Thank God. But just when I was trying to show off. If there was a hole, I wanted to crawl into it. Chapter, 188 I burnt the fruit crawling with worms as calmly as I could, then followed Ren to see the children. Now that I thought about it, there was no way I wouldn't notice the brain worm's mana. Of course, it was too late for regrets. The milk was already spilled. People had eyes in the front of their face so they could look onward. As such, I walked facing onward. Ian, I think this is a saying. Crown Prince you have a pretty cute side. Shut your mouth, Ren. Scream again, Rookie. One more time. Shut your mouth, Labeek. I was annoyed that I seemed to have dispelled the last remaining awkwardness between them. When my eyes got sharp, they finally became quiet as we headed to where the children were sleeping. Of course, they weren't too far off. They were in a mud hut that Ren seemed to have made. Labeek lost the light-hearted smile she had and examined the sleeping children. Lena, Yuruto, Demi with just your highness power, they. I lost two children on our way. I still can't forget the way they looked at me. Ren remarked calmly and patted the children's heads. There were three beast man girls and two beast man boys. Two of the humans were girls and the other was a boy. I expected them to be fifteen or sixteen on average, but all eight of them seemed to be somewhere between ten and twelve. Perhaps, they were even younger. 
Ren's situation was indeed grave thinking about how long they'll need before they could grow strong enough to enter the dungeon by themselves, I sighed. Ren Appa. Sleep, Teak. A human girl who woke up closed her eyes again after seeing Ren. Ren brushed the girl's hair and looked up. His eyes flashed sharply. I'll show you the map to the coast, Crown Prince. I want to hear Ren's plan. Do as you wish, Your Highness. Labik and I retorted and nodded our heads. Ren also nodded in response, then suddenly looked back at Labik. Don't call me that, Sir Labik. There is no country anywhere in this continent. But Your Highness. Call me Ren. That is the only name I have left. You don't need to address me with an honorific either. Chichich how could I dare call your highness name? TTT that would be like if we were lovers. Lovers? It's just calling each other by name. Stop overreacting. It was clear as day that Labique was in love with Ren, but as expected of Ren who was single his entire life, he couldn't catch any one of Lebwick's signals. Come on, Ren. Why do you think Labique came back after she abandoned this world? It's because she has a lingering attachment, you idiot. I felt like going crazy from wanting to shout this out loud. Ian, says you Shin. Crown Prince, you look like you want to say something. No, I know I'm not in a position to say something like that, so I decided not to. Crown Prince is truly mysterious. Your head is more mysterious. Kuhum, your high Ren Nim, I still cannot, not use an honorific. I hope Ren Nim understands. Don't talk respectfully either. Talk to me as if I was Crown Prince. I in that case okay. Is that good? Excellent. I'm happy, I feel like I've gotten closer to Sir. Ren Nim. Lebwick's breathing became unpleasantly rough. I wanted to leave so she could express her carnal desires, but it seemed she still had a hint of humanity left as she restrained herself. I, am not a knight anymore, so please leave out sir. Just call me Labique. It felt like she was just trying to advance their relationship by changing the way Ren called her, but I stayed silent and just looked at the map Ren opened. Ren seemed to be hesitating, but with Lebwick's persistent persuasion, he conceded and decided to call her by her name. Labique immediately messaged me. I can die happy. Re, Ren Nim is calling me by my name thank you for bringing me, rookie. You don't need to thank me, just go die. The distance between the forest we were in, Selbitz, and our destination coast, Mylete, was about 1,000 kilometers. To hide our tracks as much as possible, we would travel through mountain ranges. However, there was about a 50 kilometers long distance from the end of the mountain ranges to the coast where we would be in a completely open area. There, we had to be ready to face attacks from the enemy. I couldn't help but sigh thinking just how Ren would have made it without me. Well move about 50 kilometers per day. Thankfully, the children are well trained for their age, so they can keep up. They were all members of the royalty or the nobility, so they can read, write, and even wield mana. The beastman children are especially outstanding. If needed, they can run while carrying the human children on their backs. Hoo-hoo, they're truly admirable. Is that how you've been traveling through the forest until now? That's right. I bitterly smiled traveling a thousand kilometers just on foot I could only laugh in vain. I checked the map again and took out a piece of paper to draw on. Eight small circles and five large triangles. Written with mana, the markings didn't solidify but floated around like ice on water. Let's speed up. We should be able to since we're explorers. That's true, but what about the children? Well carry them. I took the small circles and placed them on the triangles. Ren, who was looking at the paper, asked carefully. Crown Prince, there are other dangers in the forest other than the Elpadis. It's full of strong monsters and monsters that like to ambush. If we're carrying the children, how are we supposed to react? If it wasn't for that, I would have carried them in turns. Hear me out. To protect the children from ambushes, well put Latte in the back. I took a black triangle representing Latte and dragged it behind the other shapes. In her human form, Latte was a lot more mobile and still retained her strengths as an attacker. She would be able to deal with most situations by herself. 
Even if we met with someone on par with Luca Continent's demon army commander, I believed she would be able to hold on. Of course, to ensure her maneuverability, she wouldn't carry any children. That's not enough. We might be safe from enemies ambushing us from behind, but what about the front? I can tell that this woman is strong, so wouldn't it be better to put her in the front to charge forward without caring about our back? Then we'll have a point of weakness. You can leave the front to me. To be honest, I'm the strongest out of anyone here. I dragged the golden triangle representing me and placed it in the front. Ren nodded in response, while Lebwick's eyes narrowed. What? You may not know, but I'm a level 69 explorer. I acknowledge that you're strong enough to work as a dimensional mercenary, but in terms of strength, I. Lebeek, this crown prince is the guild revival's master. What? You mean, the savage who toys with an administrative guild master? Oi, you, meet me outside. Five minutes passed before we got back on track. Ren let out a dry cough, trying to ignore the giant bump on Lebwick's head. Since Crown Prince will be in charge of the front, Lebeek and I will have to carry four children each. No, the two of you have to guard the sides. I placed two of the triangles on the left and right sides. There was now one large triangle and eight small circles in the middle. Ren tilted his head. Crown Prince, sorry, but I'm bad with puzzles. Rookie, stop beating around the bush and get to the point. It's simple. Well let someone else carry them. There were five triangles from the beginning. Realizing this now, Ren tilted his head. I grinned and summoned Ryue. She immediately took my mana, materialized into her humanoid wolf form, and jumped on me. Hi, Ryue. I'm sorry, but can you materialize in your wolf form? But I like the beast man form more. Please. Okay. I like that Ryue listened to whatever I asked her to do. I was thankful that she met a master like me and not one with lecherous intentions. When Ryue transformed into a giant wolf form, Ren and Lebeek nodded their heads, finally understanding what I meant. So she can transform into different forms. Amazing. She was a beautiful girl, and her wolf form is just as beautiful. Gur. Lebeek seemed to be burning her competitive spirit at Ren's words, but because I was too lazy to say anything, I just ignored her. Ryue should be able to carry all the children on her back. She has the intelligence to protect them from falling off, and more importantly, she's quick and silent when she travels. Shin is praising me. Of course, Ryue is amazing. Ihihi. I scratched Ryu's chin. Ren looked jealous for a moment, then went back to a serious expression. So well leave the children to her and focus on guarding them. Exactly. Much better, right? Crown Prince really is amazing. I don't have the words to express my admiration for Crown Prince's abilities. Ren is amazing too. No one will be able to win against Ren's desire to protect these children. Cook, don't flatter me. Ren blushed and turned his head. His lion ears were twitching, unsure of what to do. Lebeek began to glare at me this time. Wait, was she considering me a competitor? Before the sun rose, Ren woke up the children one by one. They all got up silently without a word of complaint, immediately stretching and dusting off their bodies. As if they promised beforehand, they became shocked after seeing me, cheered after seeing Lebeek, and exclaimed in surprise after seeing Ryue. Who's this cool appa? What a cool armor. Between Hyung Won and Ren, who wins? Ren Appa is still cooler. Uni, you were alive. Night Nuna, I wanted to see you. Look, look. A cool wolf. Wow. What a beautiful fur. Could it be Ancestor Nim from the myths? So soft. Wolf Nim, did you come to protect us? Thinking just how overwhelmingly popular Ryue was, I looked at Lebeek. She was somberly looking at the morning sky. I, am a deserter but still, losing to a wolf. They're kids, Lebeek. Who, I only have Ren Nim. Why don't you confess already? After breakfast, we put all the children on Ryu's back. I could handle Ryu's materialization with Peruta Circuit's natural mana recovery, 
so I didn't even need to drink mana potions. However, the children seemed hesitant to ride on Ryue. Riding on this wolf nim's back. No, wolf nim will get our bad luck. What soft fur. Guys, Ryue doesn't mind you guys being on her back, so don't worry. I hate everyone other than Shin, but I'll allow it since you guys are kids. Wolf Nim talked. Wolf Nim really was an uni. I asked Ren why the children treated Ryue so respectfully. The Beast Man Empire's founding mythology starts with the meeting of a golden lion and a silver wolf. That's probably why the children like the girls so much. Is that why Ren likes Ryue too? UK, and no. I didn't have any impure thoughts. I just thought she was beautiful. Stop, Labik. Labik? Ren tilted his head and turned around. Labik, who was holding her claymore, quickly hid her hands behind her back and smiled. It's nothing, Ren Nim. Crown Prince, did Labik do something? No, nothing. So Ren, what do you think about Labik? Mm, Labik is extremely beautiful and strong. She became my guardian knight at a young age. Even during a war, many soldiers became lovesick because of her. Labik threw her weapon down, put her hands on her cheeks, and squirmed. I sighed in relief and stopped Ren. That's enough. Ren suddenly grinned and whispered in my ears. Are you interested in Labik, Crown Prince? Now that I think about it, you did bring her here should I introduce you to her. How did you come to that conclusion, you idiot? We didn't have the time for such petty conversations. Once the children got on Ryue, we quickly set off. Ren was the slowest, so we had to slow ourselves down for him, but we were traveling about seven times as fast as when Ren was alone. Like Ren said, we had to deal with the forest's monsters. Most of them were quite grotesque, and usually popped out from the ground or jumped down from the trees. However, the reason I made a formation that thoroughly protected the children wasn't to protect them against monsters. Forest monsters no longer posed any threat to me. Kia. What are you trying to achieve by entering this forest? An orangutan-like monster with a melted body that seemed to have bathed in hydrochloric acid jumped down from a tree. While another monster that looked like a spider magnified hundreds of times and wrapped in iron armor popped out of the ground. Ren and Labik both held up their claymores and prepared to face them. I, on the other hand, simply stared at them with my eyes. They became stone and clumped down. Ek. What's this? What do you mean? They're stone. What, you've never seen evil eyes of petrification before? I replied with a hint of sassiness and broke the petrified monsters with my spear. Then, I urged them on. Let's hurry. Don't just stand there dumbfounded. This is the first time I've heard of evil eyes of petrification. Say it earlier if you have such an ability. I ran forward as I snickered at the party members who were touched by my ability. They gritted their teeth and followed suit. Whenever monsters appeared, I turned them to stone, and we marched forward as we broke them. In the end, we covered 700 kilometers in just one day. There was only 300 kilometers left until our destination. 1. Young Older Brother Male to Male Chapter, 189 Shin Appa, here. Thanks, Alpha. Ehe. A rabbit-eared beast-man girl, Alpha, handed me a bowl of soup. I gave her head a pat and took a sip. It was a beef cream soup with an excellent taste. After all, I was the one who brought it. All hail instant food. How mysterious. Just putting some powder in water makes such flavor in either the floor shop nor the residential area has such items. It's expensive, so be thankful. Ooh, as I thought, Crown Prince is really generous. These tiny bits of meat must be expensive too. I wonder what kind of meat it is. You might be curious what that meat is, but this young is worried for your future I hesitated on whether to tell him the truth or not but seeing him so happy, I quietly took a spoonful of soup. Then, a light breeze blew next to me. Master, I came back from scouting. Good work, Sharana. The sky has really weird creatures. They look lifeless on the outside, but their brains have extremely active mana. How many are there? 
close your eyes. When I did so, Sharana put her forehead against mine. With our extreme intimacy, she could transmit images to me with this. Crown Prince. What are you doing all of the sudden? Shu. I put my finger on my lips and silenced Ren. Then, I closed my eyes and looked at the evening sky appearing in my sight. A star similar to Earth's sun was setting, dyeing the sky red, and a few clumps of clouds were scattered here and there. Filling up the sky was a countless number of winged creatures. Trying to count them was useless. I couldn't help but sigh. Hugh, there are so many. You finally understand why we must travel through the mountains. It's quite overwhelming. Do you think there are other survivors? I'm not sure but I sure hope so. There was only one mountain range left until the plane. As there would be a rocky mountain in the middle, we would have no choice but to be completely exposed in this area. Once we get through the rocky mountain, the forest of tranquility will await us, a forest that was once a holy land. Here, the flow of mana becomes calm, making it hard to fight. More importantly, it becomes difficult to track someone using mana, so we won't have to worry about pursuers from the rocky mountains. Wouldn't it be better to set up a base camp at Forest of Tranquility then? The Forest of Tranquility is a holy land, but at the same time, it is also called a graveyard. It is fine to stay there for a day, but if you stay any longer, a grim reaper will come reap your life. It does not matter whether you are a human, beast man, or El Pedais. Staying in the holy land for more than a day would only hasten your death. There sure were strange places I grumbled and unsummoned Sharana. Then, I gulped down the soup. Then, I opened a canned coffee while I waited for the children to finish eating when Alpha and another beastman girl asked curiously. Appa, what's that? Is it food? It's a beverage. You guys can drink it when you're adults. Really? Of course. I want to drink it now. No, you won't grow taller if you do. I quickly chugged down the coffee and crumpled the can before one of the children could reach it. Seeing me easily crumple the can with a mermaid drawn in a green circle, the children exclaimed in surprise. It seemed they were just curious. I told myself not to drink coffee in front of children. It's only been a day, but they really are attached to Crown Prince. Really? Shin Appa is handsome. He's kind and strong. He's close to Wolf Nim. But Ren Appa is still more handsome. To be honest, I thought I was more handsome than Ren, but seeing Ren's happy expression, I stayed silent. If Ren came to Earth, I decided to call Officer Padori one. After dinner, we set off again. Even in the dark environment, my evil eyes continued to petrify all monsters that attacked us. As I ran, I thought about ways to become stronger to better ensure everyone's safety. Like in Luca Continent, I couldn't be sure what to expect in a foreign world. I was, of course, talking about skill synthesis. Although the result was random, the result from the synthesized pocket watch skills was very satisfactory. It was definitely worth synthesizing skills that I didn't use or skills that overlapped with others in use. I already had some candidates in mind. Crown Prince, we should set up camp here for the night. Once we get through here, we'll be at the Rocky Mountain, where we won't be able to stop to rest. You're right, let's set up camp. With that, I took something out of my inventory and placed it down on the ground. Ren tilted his head. What's this? A triangular, half-transparent giant crystal is it for some ritual? Go in. Go in. You can go in. Wow, it's so big. Cozy. It's so comfortable. The children fearlessly ran into the giant crystal. Right, this was none other than Crystal Lair 2. A high-tech camping tent that even worked underwater. It was large enough to fit 20 people and magically provided fresh water and bread infinitely. It was sitting in my inventory like a useless piece of junk, but I finally found the use for it. Ooh! How revolutionary! Wow, this would be perfect for staying overnight in the dungeon too. Everyone went inside and began to rest comfortably. As Crystal Lair even had an automatic alert system, it would wake us up when hostile beings neared it. If only it had wheels, it would be perfect. Crown Prince, aren't you coming in? 
I have something to do. I waved my hand and told them to rest. I walked a little ways away from the campsite. Latte followed me to guard me. Skill Synthesis When the circular stone slab suddenly appeared in the air, Latte flinched and took a step backward. I smiled at her and touched Gale track from my list of skills. Then, with a strange sensation, a small clump of light appeared in my hand. I placed it in the base skill slot and placed Blade Rush, a good single-target charge skill, into the supplement skill slot. I didn't want to juggle with two separate charge skills and hoped that a skill that combined their good points would appear. Of course, just combining them like this would be boring, so I added the dash skill, which granted bonuses to my running movements. Feeling that it wasn't enough, I even added Thunder Beast. The light flashing from the stone slab became brighter. My heart raced as I activated skill synthesis. You obtained the unique skill, Wind King's Rage. With an unpredictable path and unfollowable speed, you charge forward, carrying a powerful lightning and wind power. When you collide with an enemy, a spear of lightning will appear and pierce through the enemy, after which a powerful wind will blow the enemy away. The enemy's mana will be absorbed, increasing the charge's destructive power by 10%. At any point, you can explode out with a powerful energy at a target. Currently, at level 1, the charge's destructive power can be increased up to 150%. As it is too powerful, after being fully charged, this skill cannot be used again for 3 hours. When uncharged, the skill can be used again after 10 minutes. You created a unique skill. Unique skills are skills that possess strength on par with a god's powers without receiving the breath of a god. This grand achievement causes all gods to focus on you. Gods related to storm and lightning become especially interested. You obtain three skill points. Current skill points, four. Good. As I had already created a unique skill before, I wasn't particularly surprised. Gale Track, Thunder Beast, and Blade Rush weren't ordinary skills. Dash couldn't be ignored either. In any case, I was happy with the result. Just like I wanted, I would be able to use this skill regardless of whether I was facing one target or multiple targets. Surprisingly, this skill didn't have ranks like Thunder Beast, Dimensional Travel, and Peruta Circuit. In such cases, it was much harder to raise the skill level, but each level would show a sharp increase in power. It was a skill that had surpassed the notion of being ranked. It made me feel especially giddy. Alright, that's enough rejoicing skill synthesis. This time, I used White Lightning Consecutive Strike as the base skill and put Thunder Tempest into the supplement skill slot. I didn't put other skills in this time as it would be too wasteful to put any of my remaining skills into supplement and attack skill. You obtained the skill, Lightning Spear Storm. With a powerful whirlpool of lightning, you draw in nearby enemies, striking out consecutively with a White Lightning imbued spear. Each strike uses 0.1% of your mana and the final strike uses 10% of your mana to deal a powerful explosive lightning damage to all enemies. Although I didn't get another unique skill, it became what I designated a master skill. The skill was more than what I expected. Pryuta Circuit certainly had such an ability. Now, I was able to draw in nearby enemies near me. It seemed like a skill that would appear in games, but I decided to ignore it. Alright, next. To realize a skill I had thought of before coming to this world, I picked a few skills. This was also the reason I decided to wait until night to use skill synthesis. However, once I placed all the skills in the stone slab slots, I cancelled skill synthesis. It's not enough. If I continued, I felt that I wouldn't get the skill I wanted. Perhaps it was the effect of spirit of the mixer, or perhaps, it was just a warrior's intuition. Regardless, I felt that it wasn't wise to synthesize the skill. Of course, before I regretted it, I would have to decide before I finished crossing the mountain range. I shrugged and went back to the tent with Latte. It would take more energy to climb the rocky mountain. I had to get rest when I could. However, what we faced the next day wasn't the aerial unit of El Pedais, but a completely unexpected massive, terrifying enemy. I thought the skill synthesis stone slab was rectangular as slabs generally are, but apparently, it was circular. My imagery. I hope everyone understands the Wind King's Rage skill. 
The word charge is used in two meaning there one as in to rush forward and another as in to collect energy over time. 1. The Police Mascot in Korea. Chapter, 190. Before we left the forest, Ren reminded the children. Just close your eyes, and we'll take care of everything. Ren Appa. If Appa gets hurt, he'll hate you. Hyung, protect Ren. Don't worry, I'm not so weak that I need someone's protection. Guys, get on Latte first. I made the children switch to Latte. She was, of course, back in her wyvern form. Ren and Labik also got on her back. To protect them, I flew up using Sharana's power and Teleria. Latte flapped her wings and complained. I hate having people other than Hero ride me. Sorry for making you do this all the time, Latte. Hero must pay the price for hurting this dark wing Lottie's pride. Be prepared, Hero. Sure, he'll do anything you want if it's within my power. Kuhum then he'll let it slide this time. I patted Lottie's head and appeased her. The children stayed still watching Latte and I talk, but Ren and Labik strangely looked at Lottie's body jealously. I wish I had a wyvern like this too. She really was a wyvern I've never seen such a large and powerful wyvern before. I can't believe she's the frail looking woman from before do crown princes pets and elementals all have female human forms. I don't really know. Maybe, it's the will of the universe. I replied with a shrug. Then, I transformed my choker into its spear form. We would soon leave the forest. Knowing that this was the last chance to catch us, the hungry forest monsters were closing in on us from all sides. Everyone, get ready. We're going to leave the forest with a final bang. Ryue. Freezing air. The energy emitted by the materialized Ryue froze everything in our vicinity. At the same time, I shot out the energy gathered at the tip of my spear. Monsters that tried to make us their food became frozen food themselves. Then, unable to withstand the aura I shot out, they shattered along with dozens of trees behind them. Morning sunlight shone down from above. We were now out of the forest. At the same time, countless number of monsters in the air caught sight of us. They were the monsters being controlled by the brain worms. It was hard to describe just how many there were. They probably could not even be counted by the thousands. The sky was practically filled with them. There are too many of them. I'll take care of it. I soared up and activated my evil eyes. With the sheer number of them, my eyes began to hurt and mana continuously drained. However, the result was more than I imagined. Almost 80% of the aerial army petrified and fell. It was almost as if there was a meteor shower going on. I finally began to understand why evil eye holders were so feared. The evil eyes of petrification were specialized for fighting large armies. It was a weapon of mass murder capable of decimating all who could not withstand its power. My evil eyes continued to shine, and the enemy forces continued to dwindle. Crown Prince. Wow, Shin Appa is so cool. I want to marry Shin Appa. I want to learn how to do that, young. Teach me. T teach me too. I cleaned up some of the monsters that survived because they were blind and charged through the air. Latte followed me with a speed that wouldn't lose out in the slightest and killed the approaching monsters with her black flames. A short while later, the monsters' movements became strange. Behind one large flying monster, dozens of smaller monsters lined up like train compartments. I somewhat understood their intentions. After realizing that looking at my eyes would petrify them, they hid themselves behind a scapegoat. It was something humans would think of, not monsters. Kayak. Kagak. They screamed joyfully thinking that they found the solution. I smirked and shot out a whirlpool from my spear. The monster in the front, which had already turned to stone, were covering the dozens of monsters behind it. However, the whirlpool easily tore through the petrified monster. The monsters hiding behind it immediately turned to stone and fell. Just like that, thousands of monsters died once again. If I were a character in a RPG game, my level would have risen explosively. This rocky mountain is too tall. When will we see the forest of tranquility? 
Forest of Tranquility is located at the highest region of Panin continent. Naturally, this mountain range is also the highest. Still, we couldn't see the peak after flying for five minutes. That was just too high. I heard that Earth's mountains were still growing. I was afraid they'd become like Panin Continent's mountains. Kia. The higher we went, the more violently the monsters attacked. It was undoubtedly because they knew they would not be able to touch us once we reached the Forest of Tranquility. Hundreds of monsters were turning into stone every second, but more and more monsters flocked from God knows where. Perhaps, they wanted to kill us by drowning us in stone. I clicked my tongue and took out a mana potion. I put the potion in my mouth and called elementals to my spear. Ah, a different world. Ek, bugs. We're scolding bugs today. There are so many. Prince Nim became even cooler. Spin spin. Ah, that technique is. So many elementals. Mad Typhoon's powerful rotational force seemed to have excited the elementals, as they shone even brighter than usual. I heightened the rotational force and led the elementals. Petrifying the monsters coming to stop it, I very slightly pulled back the spear enveloped by the elemental whirlpool. Elemental. A amazing. Tempest. A gale of elementals stormed through the air. Meanwhile, I gulped down the mana potion in my mouth. Looking at the gaping hole in the sky, I smiled with satisfaction. All right, let's hurry. Hold on tightly, guys. Latte, full speed. Understood, hero. After sweeping away a large number of enemies with Elemental Tempest, I cleaned up the rest with my evil eyes. We were then able to climb to the peak without much trouble. After about five minutes, we finally entered the Forest of Tranquility. The inside of the forest was extremely beautiful. Countless beautiful flowers and tall trees filled the lush forest. Even in this world, where everything was being controlled by the brain worms, this place maintained its natural beauty. However, just like its name suggested, it was unnaturally quiet. There were no signs of animals. It was as if we were the only ones breathing in this place. Cough, cough. Hugh. The highlands' thin oxygen level made it hard for the children to breathe. Even the ones who had mana found breathing difficult. It's hard to breathe. I'm tired. Use the mana breathing method, Alpha. You learned it, right? Un, Daddy taught me. There were many different mana cultivation methods, but the most common were mana breathing methods, which took in mana by a special method of breathing. Ren used this method as well as the children that followed him. The children seemed to have remembered about the mana breathing method after I mentioned it, as they all started to use it. I patted their heads and looked around. How can there be such a lush forest so high? That is something only God knows. But as Crown Prince can probably feel, mana is bountiful in this area. If the greenery here sprouted with the power of mana, it's understandable. He was right. Using common sense from Earth to evaluate Pan and Continent was foolish. In fact, it wouldn't be long until Earth's common sense would change. Let's hurry. You said we can't stay here for more than a day. Yes, no one could stay here for over a day. Guys, it might be tiring, but endure it. It's okay since Shin Appa is here. Alpha you seem to like Crown Prince more than me. Don't make that face like you were just thrown away by your wife, Ren. I almost called the police. Be thankful there are no police here. However, not long afterwards, I tilted my head. Run, you might feel wronged, but can you not glare at me? No, I'm not looking at Crown Prince. Is it Lebeek then? Why would I be looking at you? I'm too busy inscribing Ren Nim's visage in my retina. She sure talked well for someone who abandoned Ren I guess, she proved her love for him by coming back. Then who was it? I looked at the children sitting on top of Ryue and tilted my head. A few of them also tilted their heads after seeing me. They really were too cute. Soon after, however, they began to writhe in pain. I can't breathe. Alpha. Hyung, I can't either. Demi. Ren and I became flustered and checked on the children. They looked like they were suffocating. 
I expanded my mana outwards and scanned the children. Then, I realized that the children's mana were leaving them. Crown Prince. Damn Ren, mana is leaving everyone's bodies. I quickly circulated Peruta circuit at its limit. The mana leaving my body flowed backwards and back into me, but the others couldn't do the same thing with their mana breathing method. Dam, Ren, Labik, and I would be fine, but if the children's mana all left. Then, the forest shook violently. Arrogant human. You dare disturb my meal. Ren, didn't you say it was fine to stay for a day? The last person who crossed this forest did it 130 years ago. The forest's grim reaper must have changed his mind. Or, maybe he doesn't like it that Rookie took back his mana. He said Rookie disturbed his meal. How can you say that so calmly? Well. Labik pointed at the two large eyes staring at us from beyond the dense trees. I got feared, so actually, it's hard to even talk. At that moment, a shocking message rang out to everyone. An event raid has broken out. SS rank 50 man, mana eater. Because you were at the location of the raid boss, you will be forced to participate. Chapter, 191. The creature's presence was powerful enough to make every hair on my body stand on end. It was perhaps about 20 meters tall. For a raid boss, it wasn't particularly big, but its amorphous mana armor and large eyes shining ominously seemed to take away people's willingness to resist. Almost like malformed arms and legs, dozens of long and half-transparent tentacle-like things were squirming around its body. Your mana seems especially tasty. Where did this monster come from? Ren, you should have said something. Kook. I didn't know either rather than that, how can Crown Prince move perfectly fine? Labik. You too. Like I said, I got feared. Damn, did I have to use it now? Seeing the tentacles closing in on us and the two large eyes of the mana eater shining ominously, I gritted my teeth and shouted. Kwong. You used frozen roar. All enemies in the battlefield freeze in place. All allies temporarily become super armored and all abilities are increased by 50%. Your chance of landing critical hits doubles when fighting enemies affected by frozen roar. In an instant, the mana eater's movements froze. Frozen roar had affected both its body and its tentacles. However, the mana eater was not an SS rank raid boss monster for nothing. It was already trying to shake off Frozen Roar's effect. I had to move now. Run, protect the children. Latte. Ride, hero. Latte transformed into her wyvern form and I quickly jumped onto her back. The dense forest made it extremely difficult for Latte to fly. As such, I used Tempest and cleared the trees around us. I won't let you disturb my meal. Annoying. Tentacles flew toward me from all sides. The thick and long tentacles oozed out disgusting black mana. I enveloped my spear with chaos flames and ordered Latte to charge toward one tentacle. I raised my spear up with vigor and struck down. Then, with an immense resistance, I felt my mana being sucked in. Kohaha, truly tasty kook. At the same time it happily remarked on the taste of my mana, it screamed. As I thought, Chaos Flames worked on an SS rank raid boss too. I smiled in relief and shot my spear at another tentacle. I wanted to sever it completely. Crown Prince, be careful. He doesn't just have one or two tentacles. Don't mind me. Focus on protecting the children. The children had to use mana just to be in this place. I wasn't sure if I could win against the mana eater in a direct one-on-one -on -one fight, much less with the added condition that I had to do it before the children completely ran out of mana. I shot chaos flame tempests towards two tentacles flying toward me from behind. Afraid of the chaos flames, the tentacles instinctively backed off, and I used this chance to escape from the tentacles with Latte. T this flame a mana I can't completely absorb who are you. I'm a hero that will end your life, you damned octopus. Try it. Dozens of tentacles instantly shot up into the air. The mana eater seemed to have shaken off the frost covering it completely. Plus, it did so by absorbing the mana used in the attack. My instincts told me that using chaos flames was the best way to damage it. 
Latte, can you do it? Lottie's reliable retort cheered me up. Latte flapped her wings valiantly, shooting out waves of aura from the edges of her wings. The waves of aura then fell the nearby trees and created, even more, space for her to maneuver around. A few of the tentacles then grabbed some of the trees that fell and threw it at us. I received them with chaos flame aura and shouted. Latte, I'm going to use Gaia Buster. The moment she heard my words, Latte flapped her wings strongly. With each flap of her wings, she flew higher at an incredible speed. You can't escape. Along with the Mana Eater's shout, its tentacles shot up into the air towards Latte. It seemed it wanted to fight with just its tentacles. With how tall the trees were, even though I thought we had flown up high, I could still see trees all around us. Because we knocked down the trees around us, there was no problem with Latte moving around, but the trees here were still too strange. Feeling somewhat uneasy, I bit my lips. It's on the tip of my tongue. Tongue. Let's descend for now. The moment she heard me, Latte shot down like an arrow. A few tentacles attacked us. It was impossible to dodge them all. I expanded Mad Typhoon's range as much as I could and created a whirlpool surrounding Latte and me. Then, I wrapped it with chaos flames. The tentacles hurling toward us didn't seem to mind and fell down after hitting us once. Even so, their attacks had carried an immense force. More importantly, they were stealing our mana every time they hit us. Latte, are you okay? This is nothing. Rather than that, we're almost back down on the ground. I raised my spear. A single tentacle left a heavy injury on my cheek, then fell back from chaos flames. Furthermore, dozens of tentacles had joined together to form a hammer-like arm, as if to prevent us from doing what we wanted. It'll suck your mana dry. Latte, dodge. No problem. The tentacle hammer smashed down toward us without warning. As for its size, it was several times bigger than Latte. Shin Appa. Crown Prince, be careful. Kwong. Latte roared and flapped her wings weakly. The mana contained within that flap was overly complex for what a monster could have, but I already realized that we were now only a few meters away from the ground. Dear God, Latte just used Blink. Hero. Gaia Buster. After Latte successfully dodged the tentacle hammer with Blink, her shout snapped me out of my shock. I immediately struck my spear wrapped in black lightning into the ground. At that moment, the tentacles, which had separated from the hammer form and were hurling toward us once again, were all thrown back. The ground exploded and large boulders had shot out. Furthermore, the trees that had their roots in the ground were pulled out along with their roots. Protect the children. I know. Boulders carrying black lightning clashed with tentacles. The mana eater screamed and squirmed its tentacles, but even an SS rank boss monster couldn't help but be paralyzed after being from repeatedly being hit by the boulders. However, even after successfully dealing an attack, I couldn't relax. I could tell that the mana eater's boundless mana hadn't decreased in the slightest. Koha. The change occurred the moment Gaia Buster ended. Black as sticky black mana began to spread out in all directions, forming a thick fog that made it hard to see. Even with my eyes that had far surpassed the limits of human eyes, I could not see through the fog. You are the first human to injure me you must pay for this humiliation. I could feel its tentacles getting farther away. On the other hand, its killing intent shot up to a peak. This only meant one thing. It'll eat the others first. You will have to face me alone. You bastard. Hero, his presence is continuously changing location. If we rashly attack. I know Ren, Labique. I can't die when I've come so far. Before you take Ren Nim's life, you'll you'll have to take mine. The tentacles had already begun their attack on the others. I didn't think that Ren and Labique would lose, but if even a single tentacle reached the children I urgently materialized Sharana. Take away this fog. Ek, what an unpleasant fog. Master, he'll get right on it. Once materialized, Sharana was truly powerful. As the elemental storm she wielded pushed back the mana eater's fog, I gulped down a highest grade mana potion. 
The amount of mana I had used and had been absorbed by the mana eater was no joke. Kohaha. Beast men, how impudent. Labik, be careful. I won't let you hurt Rin Nim. The fog dissipated, and I could see once again. With Latte, I quickly charged toward Ren, Labik, Ruyue, and the children. At the same time, I summoned Pika and infused her into my spear. Die. Lightning Spear Storm. A powerful whirlpool erupted from my spear and attracted the tentacles that were aiming for the children. In addition, the mana eater's body was slowly being pulled toward me. It seemed to have realized my skill's power as it joined its tentacles together to form a hammer once more. Let's see if you can take this. Try it. The spear I shot out consecutively stabbed into the tentacles and discharged powerful electricity. Even so, the tentacle hammer didn't waver in the slightest and slammed down on me from above. Regardless, I had successfully taken the tentacles away from the children. Ruyue, take the children and run. Run, Labik, go on ahead. It'll go after I take care of this guy. I can't. No. Protect the children. Ruyue, listen to me. Everyone here is just getting in my way. Rookie, how can you win against that thing by yourself? Like I said, all of you are just burdens. The moment the hammer slammed down on my head, Latte used blink and dodged it. Because of it, lightning spear storm was interrupted, and the tentacles freed themselves from the whirlpool. Seeing the tentacles aim for the children once more, I gritted my teeth. They really didn't know when to stop. Pika, Sharana. I need a big one. Why with this wind woman but since it's master's request, it can't be helped. Worm SSI, hurry up and attack. It'll strengthen it. Pika left the spear for a moment and raised her hand. The entire forest was instantly brightened and all the trees burnt up. Sharana also raised her hand and strengthened Pika's attack, after which the dozens of tentacles hurling towards the children were obliterated. Kwa. Well done. Ruyue, run. Latte, let's run too. Understood. The children were already in trouble. Ren and Labik gritted their teeth and smacked away a couple of tentacles near them. Along with Ryue, they then began to run. Kohaha, foolish. You can't escape from here. Just when I thought Ryue had escaped the tentacles' range, two thick tentacles sprung up from the ground in front of her. Flustered, I urged Latte to use Blink. At that moment, Kook. With a blunt sound, my chest plate shattered. Feeling vision shaking for a moment, I closed my eyes and opened them. Five tentacles had skewered through my chest. H. How? You still don't understand. The mana eater shouted triumphantly. I could hear its voice from all sides. I raised my head and was amazed when I saw that the tentacles piercing through me had sprung up from the trees above. Right, the thought that had almost crossed my mind before was. This entire forest is me. Foolish human. It was the start of a nightmare. Chapter, 192. Shin Appa, don't die. Tisk. As I lost too much blood in a short period of time, dizziness swept over me. I felt like I would scream if I opened my mouth, so I clenched my teeth and grabbed the tentacles poking through my chest. I then burnt the tentacles with the strongest lightning power I could muster and activated my ring's regeneration ability. I had to regenerate my chest area. Die Hard activates. Your HP is recovered to 50%. It seemed my HP had fallen to a dangerous level as Die Hard activated and filled up my HP. That was dangerous. I almost died. Just by looking at Ren's expression, I could tell the grave situation I was in. I burnt the tentacles flying towards me with a spear attack and drank an HP potion. You. Seeing that I had recovered from my injuries, the mana eater sounded shocked. I smirked and put my middle finger up, but in truth, I was still at a disadvantage. Regeneration could only be used once every two weeks, and diehard could only be used once a day. In other words, if the same thing happened again, I would die. And what was that just now? It pierced through my epic grade armor and put me on the brink of death. Although the mana eater must have carefully planned the attack, 
it was entirely possible that it still had more cards up its sleeve. I was doubtful that that was his trump card attack. An attack that increased its attack power by eating the opponent's mana and decreased the opponent's defense. That was why the mana eater was so feared. Why you dare hurt my hero? While I contemplated on how to defeat the mana eater's attack, Latte said something with rage and trembled. I could feel the mana in her body surging up. You must pay the price. Latte breathed out fierce flames. The trees around us with the tentacles hanging from them were devoured by Lottie's black flames. Her flames, which carried a powerful curse, quickly spread and set other trees on fire. This isn't an ordinary flame it'll kill you first. You bastard. Chaos flames formed a whirlpool using Mad Typhoon. As the whirlpool undulated around me, I came to a decision. I poured a large amount of mana into my spear and shouted. Everyone, get on Latte. What? Hold out in the air for a moment. It'll take care of him during that time. What are you talking about? Take care of him how? And why should we? I jumped down from Lottie's back and shouted. This forest is dangerous. Much more than fighting the damned aerial army. So listen to me. What about you? Naturally, I had my methods. I didn't have the time to leisurely explain everything. Pushing away the tentacles with chaos flames, I ordered Latte and Ryue. Protect the others. I'll finish it soon. Hero, I want to end him. Shin, this place is dangerous. But this is the best method. In truth, using deific manifestation and getting Peruta's help was the best way of dealing with this situation. However, if I faced the worst case possible scenario I envisioned, I wouldn't have a way out. As long as other methods were available to me, I had to try them first. I won't let them escape. You'll have to. I heightened my mana detection and used Chaos Flame Tempests to hit away the tentacles attacking my companions. At the same time, I glared at the others who were still hesitant on getting on Latte. I was signaling them to hurry. In that case, Crown Prince, I'll stay too. I knew you'd say that. Unfortunately, you're a burden. Just protect the children. If you have mana potions that aren't from the floor shop, give them to the children to drink. I turned down Ren bluntly. Labique was more sensible than Ren, as she was already moving the children to Lottie's back. Ren seemed to want to say something, but he soon followed Labique with a look of resignation. I formed more chaos flames as I anxiously waited for them to go. I didn't have much mana left. I was constantly using mana to maintain the materialized elementals and form chaos flames not to mention, the mana eater kept stealing some away. My mana wait. If I remember correctly, death blood ring's effect was. On attack, 2% chance to absorb 10% of enemy's mana, and with 1% chance, using 5% of my HP to place the enemy under blood contamination status effect. As I had almost only seen the effect on ordinary trash monsters, the effect had never really felt impactful. However, it was different now. Hugh let's try it. I was certain that the mana eater had at least 10 times the mana I had. In other words, absorbing 10% of its mana meant recovering my mana entirely. I raised my spear. I didn't need to target anything specific. This entire forest was the mana eater. I breathed in, then shouted the skill I needed desperately. Divine speed. No matter what you do, it's useful. Hap. I focused entirely on stabbing consecutively. Although I had to use 10% of my remaining mana, my speed became 1000% for 3 seconds. During that time, if I gave up on destructive force and focused solely on numbers, I could attack at least 100 times. I stabbed the ground like a madman. Not even using a jackhammer would make such a sound. Once the mana eater noticed my strange actions, it gave up chasing the others and aimed toward me with all of its tentacles. I ignored them. Unlike last time, I had an insurance. Bulwark of wind. Master, it won't last long. I just need three seconds. Because of how quickly I talked, she might not have understood. In any case, when was this mana absorption thing going to happen? 
Don't tell me it won't work because death blood ring's grade is too low. I stabbed the ground repeatedly, resolving to steal the mana eater's mana. A large hole was dug through and the trees around me fell. At the same time, the tentacles buried under the ground became shredded. Death blood activates, taking 10% of the enemy's mana. Quack. At that moment, something completely unexpected happened. The tentacles flying toward me deflated like a balloon out of air. Not only that, the trees in the area lost their vitality and looked as if they'd been rotting for 100 years. Of course, the intended effect was still there. My mana had gone back up to full. Don't tell me, is mana this bastard's entire life force? Well, it was a monster that freely stole mana, so in that sense, it wasn't all that surprising. Unexpectedly, stealing its mana with death blood had dealt more damage than all the attacks I had done combined. Feeling my body overflowing with mana, I immediately materialized Sharana. The mana eater's rage became focused on me. You. Am I mana, you dare take my mana. Don't be so stingy, you bastard. You drilled holes in my chest. Ten times. If I stole its mana ten times, it would die. The moment I pulled my spear out of the ground, the ground exploded and dozens of tentacles shot toward me. With materialized Sharana's overwhelming power of wind, I blew them away. Even so, it would be hard to leisurely strike as I did previously. Return my mana. Thanks for the meal, you bastard. Sharana, stir up wind in the entire forest. When I gave Sharana almost half the mana I took from the mana eater, her body gave off a dazzling light. The wind blowing around us became fiercer, and the mana eater's tentacles became like rice plants pained by a storm. Meanwhile, everyone riding on Ryue had successfully switched to Latte. Hero, if Hero becomes unable to pay my reward, this Darkwing Latte will drag Hero out of his grave. Hurry up and end him. Shin, he'll go back for a bit. After safely completing her mission, Ryue returned to Fairy Garden. At the same time, Latte cheered me on and soared up into the sky. The Mana Eater didn't forget to send some tentacles their way even while he was focused on me, but Ren and Labik pushed away the tentacles with their aura attacks. The trees blocking their way out of the forest were also cut down. If Crown Prince doesn't come quick, well come back. So hurry. Just focus on getting out. Appa, don't die. Before they left the forest, Ren and the others shouted at the top of their lungs. Even so, they wouldn't be safe just by leaving the forest. Outside of the forest was the aerial army of the El Paytis. Though Latte, Ren, and Labique were surely able to hold their ground, I still had to finish the Mana Eater as soon as possible. After confirming that the others left the forest, I let out a sigh of relief. Of course, the Mana Eater's tentacles were still slashing across my face and leaving injuries. It'll blow a hole in your chest again. Let's see if you can regenerate again. Sharana, make my voice ring out in the entire forest. No problem. It wouldn't make sense if a wind elemental like Sharana was unable to amplify my voice, especially when she was materialized. Along with her answer, my voice indeed rang out sonorously whenever I talked. With the evil eyes and soul guard, I had increased my soul's league. I had also constantly increased my strength in other areas. Now, just my voice carried a certain level of power, which seemed to be able to impact the mana eater, albeit only slightly. Noisy brat. I won't let you fool around with wind. Now, Sharana. Dematerialize and go back. Sharana's immediately returned to the spirit world the moment I gave the order. Her elemental magic was still in effect. I had to finish it before it ended. Become my food, human. Burn. You used crimson roar. Everything blazes as flames. In an instant, my entire view became filled with flames. Amplified by Sharana's wind, my voice, which reached every corner of the forest, turned into flames and burnt everything. Other than the crackling sound of the fire, only the mana eater's scream rang out. Qua. Its tentacles flew toward me, but they became scorched and crumbled. The entire world was dyed red. I used divine speed once again and struck the ground crazily. 
Before Crimson Roar's effect ran out, I trusted that I would be able to steal its mana again. Why you tee this flame? Shut it. Death Blood activates, using 5% of your HP to inject contaminated blood into the enemy. The Mana Eater fell under the Blood Contamination status effect. Its attack power and movement speed decreases, and it loses mana continuously. This effect cannot be dispelled unless the target dies. Oh, a different effect. As it continuously drained the Mana Eater's mana, it was excellent against the Mana Eater. However, as I wanted to refill my mana, I couldn't help but be disappointed. The flames covering the forest were beginning to disappear. The forest I grew for hundreds of years I it has been burnt by a mere human. What was once a dense forest was now entirely scorched to ashes. Protruding out of the black ground, the mana eater's circular body and its dozens of tentacles caught my attention. Half of the tentacles were still burrowed. I can finally see. I raised my head and looked up at the sky. At the same time, a few boulders fell down. They were the monsters that had been flying in the air. Even though we cleaned up a lot of them before, they had already increased in numbers during the time we stayed in the Forest of Tranquility. I could also see Ren and Labik fighting on top of Latte. Thankfully, the children seemed to be doing well. Kahak. It'll kill you. Thanks to the blood contamination effect, the mana eater was slower than before. Even so, its tentacles were still fast and powerful. Seeing them shooting toward me, I summoned Sharana and infused her in my body. Now that I knew the mana eater could spring up tentacles from the ground, it wasn't wise to fight on ground. However, almost as if it seemed to be waiting for me to fly, the mana eater's tentacles changed direction. It was aiming at the sky. Damn! Was it trying to attack the others again? I raised my voice to warn them. However, it was in vain. The mana eaters target weren't my companions. Mana, give me your mana. Gua. Kia. The tentacles danced and pierced through a countless number of monsters. Surprisingly, the moment the tentacles sucked up the monsters' mana, they absorbed the brain worms' mana and killed them effortlessly. I understood why the brain worms had left the forest of tranquility alone. Wait, now isn't the time to be surprised. I quickly charged through the air. However, the mana eater was continuously recovering mana and regaining its vitality. The number of tentacles attacking me increased as well. As more tentacles sprung up, they pierced through more monsters in the air and created more tentacles. Evil eyes were indeed good for fighting against a large army, but the mana eater was miles ahead of me. As long as there were monsters it could feed on, it would never run out of steam. At the same time, the increased number of tentacles attacking me made it hard for me to block them all. The distance between us wasn't something that could be covered by one or two divine speed. In the end, I gritted my teeth and used another skill. Gigant time. Prepare to die. No one can threaten my lift kook. It wasn't my spear. The spear enlarged to dozens of meters by gigant time was only used to slash away dozens of tentacles attacking me. Then who was it? I burnt away the tentacles blocking my vision and looked forward. The mana eater's circular body, which was protruding out of the ground like a flower bud, had two horns piercing through it. Two horns, is that? Good, note late. I came to help. In the air, a seven-meter drake was flapping its wings. A relatively small drake that possessed immense strength. As I could tell that it was undead, there was only one answer as to its identity. As if to wash away any doubt I might have, a beautiful woman carrying a chain whip stood up above the drake, flashing her red eyes. Flowing ash-gray hair and a beret shining like a gemstone. There was no doubt. Goo. A large undead rhinoceros beetle stabbed its horns deeper into the mana eater and roared. The mana eater screamed in pain and attacked the rhinoceros beetle with its tentacles. However, seemingly from a special buff, the rhinoceros beetle's carapace could not be penetrated. Loro, nice. Cool. Really. Can't you give it a cooler name, Daisy? Right, Revival's newest member, Daisy, had come as reinforcement. Chapter, 193. Kugaya. Loro, 
Finish him. Qua. The rhinoceros beetle waved its two horns and tormented the mana eater. At the same time, the mana eater's tentacles began to slowly melt the rhinoceros beetle's carapace. Daisy's expression changed. W what is that? Loro's carapace can't be melted by physical attacks. Didn't you get the raid message? It's a mana eater. It's eating the mana strengthening Loro's carapace. Why fight against this crazy monster? Because we can't run. Tell me if you know anything about it. Extract all mana. Otherwise, won't die. Her confidence from when she first appeared disappeared and she looked a bit nervous. No matter how the outside looks hurt, if mana is left it regenerates. It's not an organism. So it's constantly using mana to regenerate its body. That means, if we can't deplete its mana, there's no way to defeat it. Smart. Good student looks like, they'll have to go all out. With that, Daisy flashed her evil eyes. Countless number of monsters began to appear in the air. They were all monsters I sold to her. Other than the drake that she was riding on and the rhinoceros beetle that was attacking the mana eater, the cyclops lord, mantis queen, and all sorts of monsters from the insect world showed themselves as undead monsters. You can control all of them at the same time. Im hero successor candidate. Very amazing. Well, if she wasn't that strong, the empire behind the Desert Scorpions guild master wouldn't have gone so far to obtain her it was just that their method wasn't the best. Since I could accept Daisy into my guild thanks to that, perhaps I should be thanking them. If they were still alive in that ruined world when I visited, I needed to repay them. With Mad Typhoon. The monsters, which had appeared above what had now become a vacant lot, changed their positions whenever Daisy flashed her evil eyes. It was then that I understood how Daisy was using her evil eyes power. Her evil eyes allowed her to read others' thoughts and even transmit her own thoughts to them. Using this ability, she commanded her undead army quickly and efficiently, exactly as she wished. Undead monsters under necromancy followed the orders of their master word by word. In other words, no matter how outstanding they were, they would not be able to display their full potential if the necromancer controlling them were inadequate. As I'd never seen other necromancers, I couldn't say how skilled Daisy was as a commander, but it was fairly obvious. All of Daisy's undead monsters were moving as if they were alive, severing, biting, and burning the mana eater's tentacles. They struck at the mana eater's body, prevented the tentacles from attacking Daisy and me, and even snatched the monsters in the air to prevent the mana eater from recovering mana. Daisy's army was doing all these with ease. Daisy, you really are amazing. Now, show me, Kong Shin's power. Looking forward to, Guildmaster's strength. She's trying to order me around now too, eh? Seeing Daisy swing her whip around on the drake, I snorted and raised my spear. Even if she didn't say anything, I would have done it anyways. I charged straight toward the mana eater as I called my elementals. Ruyue, Sharena. Im ready. Pika, materialize. Okay, master. The three elementals flew next to me energetically. Pika had materialized in her dragon form and was emitting her aura wildly. Prevent that guy from touching me. Ruyue, stop the tentacles with ice. Sharena, power up Ruyue. Pika, Try to paralyze the mana eater as much as you can. Don't worry, my lightning is a lightning that can even burn mana. Pika shouted a somewhat familiar line, after which thick bolts of lightning struck the mana eater's body. The damage taken by the mana eater was greater than the mana he absorbed from the lightning. As a result, its body became slightly scorched, and the tentacle's grip on Loro became loose. Guang. Get away from me with this rotting stench. That's why I'm going instead, you son of a bitch. The tentacles flying toward us became frozen by Ryu's empowered freezing energy, then shattered. The same happened to the tentacles springing up from the ground. Having all three elementals attacking and having Pika materialized made my mana drop by 1% a second, but I already knew how to replenish my mana. You think I'll let you? I think so. Obliterate. Kia. Daisy's shout caused her undead army to let out strange screams and attack the tentacles even more enthusiastically. 
Meanwhile, Pika took more of my mana and hurled spears of lightning at the mana eater's body. I then jumped on top of its body, and held up my enlarged spear, as if to hurl it toward him. Divine Speed 100 consecutive strikes by a thick and large spear. ITLL different than last time. The moment I stabbed its body with my enlarged spear, the mana eater's body puffed up crazily and tried to swallow me. However, a wall of ice immediately rose up around me, freezing parts of the mana eater's body and shattering it. Ice created from Ryue and Shirana's joint power truly had incredible destructive power and defensive power. WAP Kugya Gigant Time's effect was truly amazing. Even though I was small, I was still able to wield the giant spear freely. In the three seconds that felt like thirty seconds, I consecutively struck my spear into its body. I wanted to blow up its entire body. Death Blood activates, taking 10% of the enemy's mana. Then, Death Blood activated twice and overflowed my body with mana. Just 10% of its mana was enough to replenish my mana to full. With twice the amount, an overwhelming pressure weighed down on me. When I circulated per Yuta circuit, I felt like my body would explode. However, I had taken this into consideration. Without hesitation, I poured out mana, flaring up a white aura above the chaos flames enveloping the giant spear. Heroic Strike If there was a fire wielded by the devil of hell, Balrog, would it be this? A terrifying flame shot up to the sky as I pierced the mana eater's body with my flaming spear. Kia The chaos flames surrounding the spear dealt great damage to the mana eater, but it was the white aura that was more effective against the mana eater. Though it was only a theory, I suspected that heroic aura couldn't be absorbed as a pure mana. Although I couldn't be sure, I had more than enough mana to test the theory. I followed up with a second, then third heroic strike. The mana overflowing inside me drained out, and in return, consecutive critical hits rang out. My theory seemed to be true. Pika quickly flew toward me, infusing herself into my spear. Instead of the chaos flames, heroic aura and white lightning enveloped my spear. Its body was already covered with chaos flames. As such, it was more effective to borrow Pika's power than to attack with more chaos flames. Why you, a mere human? With mana taken by me again, the mana eater had become visibly weaker. Furthermore, Daisus' undead army was cutting apart its tentacles everywhere and preventing it from recovering mana. With chaos flames and blood contamination constantly draining its mana, it would surely die if this continued. However, I couldn't be certain that Daisy and my elementals could last until then. More importantly, I wanted to finish the job with my own strength. Now was the time, when Gigant Time was still active. As such, I held my spear transformed into a giant white lightning and struck the mana eater again. Heroic Strike. It'll kill you and regain my mana. I won't let that happen. Tentacles, cut them all off. Amidst shouts from all sides, our bodies and powerful mana clashed. Then, no sound entered my ears. The tentacles wanting to penetrate my armor, the earth tremoring with the mana eater struggling, Ryu's ice scattering into all directions, and the chaotic spear infused with pika, crackling with a blinding lightning. The moment I heard that message, I detonated the mana gathered in my spear and dealt a final blow to the mana eater. Die, my armor's arch enemy. Don't think I forgot about you breaking my epic grade armor. Cack. M I M mana. Its dying words was quite memorable. In an instant, its body shrunk down. The once boundless mana contained in the earth had all drained out, and was gathering in a single point. Wait, was this? Danger, Kong Shin. It was the third shout from Daisy I heard. However, I wasn't the only one in danger. This mana explosion couldn't be targeting me alone. I gritted my teeth and threw my body toward that single point. Dragon Skin. Don't let me down, Dragon Skin. Don't let me down, Golden Scarab Tattoo. I covered the mana eater's compressed body with my own. Immediately afterwards, a huge explosion followed. Event Raid Success Four participants successfully completed an event raid. This great achievement increases the rewards greatly. 
As your average rank is lower than the raid boss, the reward increases again. For completing an event raid, you obtain 5 stat points and 2 skill points. Current skill points, 6. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. 1. Mana Absorption Magic Book. 2. Million Tentacle Epic. 3. Elixir X3. 4. Mana Eater's Hood Epic. I felt like I had been hit with a blunt weapon and felt dizzy. Having almost died twice in a single day, I didn't feel like I was alive. But still, I didn't die. Of course, if I wasn't confident to a certain degree, I wouldn't have thrown my body as such. Kong Shin, Kong Shin. Tell me if you're dead. How would I answer if I'm dead? Feeling Daisy's presence nearing me, I shot up and shouted. After seeing me get up, Daisy's stiffened expression loosened. She seemed relieved. It was rare for her to shout, but I had heard her shout more than once today. SS rank raid, how amazing. While I was in a daze thinking, another shout rang out from above. Crown Prince. I'm coming down. Wake. Help, I can't hold out any longer. Ah right, that was there. Seeing Daisy tilt her head and look up into the sky, I shrugged and spoke. Let's go take care of those. From then, it only us two hours to clean the aerial army and descend from the mountain. Chapter, 194 when we defeated the aerial army and entered another forest to escape the reinforcements pursuit, Daisy let out a sigh. She was riding on Iana, the iron boar. She had somehow modified it to have a steel body, and it even crackled with lightning as he bulldozed through everything. Rather than an undead, it was a futuristic cyborg. She looked incredibly relaxed for someone riding on a vigorously moving boar, as she asked me a question. Annoying. The whole world, those bugs. Yes. Almost all monsters in this world became like that tens of years ago. Crown Prince, who is this dazzling beauty? Mesmerized by Daisy's figure, Ren answered instead, then whispered in my ear with a flushed face. If you want to say something secretly, just message me. Are you doing this on purpose to get Daisy to notice you? Why is Crown Prince so popular with beautiful women? It seemed that was what he really wanted to ask. But wasn't there a beautiful woman who loved you too? She's right next to you. Think about where TYLTYL and MYTYL found their bluebird. Ah, now that I think about it, that means that my bluebird is in my house too. I couldn't help but be shocked at the fact that even the world-famous fairy tale was pointing to you of being my bluebird of happiness. But that was beside the point. There was something I had to tell Ren. Ren, Daisy is my guild member. We aren't in a man-woman relationship. We're just friends. Don't say that, Crown Prince. What kind of idiot would come to a ruined world because she was worried about a friend? Don't make excuses. Are you calling me an idiot? Didn't I come to help you? Do you want to die? Ah, why you're right. I'm not calling Crown Prince an idiot. I'm not doubting our friendship either. When I formed my aura around my gauntlet and glared at Ren, he waved his hands in denial as he sweated. He was brave when he fought, but I didn't know why he became so pathetic whenever we talked about something like this. Crown Prince and I are both men, but a pure friendship between a man and a woman is harder to find. You're too old-fashioned. However, as I had once thought the relationship I had with Waya and Yi Yoon were of pure friendship, I couldn't deny him directly. Though I believed that pure friendship between members of the opposite sex existed, I couldn't be bothered to argue with Ren at the moment. As such, I simply smiled bitterly. At that moment, Daisy's boar slowed down and Daisy spoke nonchalantly. Kong Shin promised me. To save my world. Yeah, I did. Meeting Kong Shin, I felt strength and hope. I resolved to rise, once again. Can't let him die here. So I came to save him. She was talking about why she came to help. It was more or less what I was expecting. More importantly, look. What a pure and wholesome reason. It felt more genuine than saying we had some deep friendship, as we had not known each other for long. 
In a way, it made me happy. I stuck my tongue out at Ren, then answered Daisy. Thanks, Daisy. You saved us. Beyond's thirteenth floor cleared, then came. That's why I was late. You weren't that late. It was the perfect timing. And I also obtained a good weapon. Daisy held up a silver chain whip, which didn't look that different from what she had before, with a satisfied expression. If I remembered correctly, she said it was a unique enchanting method from her continent or perhaps from her race. No matter what weapons she had, she could fuse their functions into a single weapon. It was slightly different than how the chaotic spear worked, but it was still an infinitely growing weapon. Of course, the weapon she enchanted to her chain whip was the million tentacle. I didn't really want to see what million tentacle looked like, and it seemed Daisy had thought the same way, as she immediately used the weapon as material to strengthen the chain whip. What was the reward Crown Prince got? I got the epic grade hood. I won't tell you. As I had the highest contribution, the others couldn't tell what item I chose. However, as there were two epic grade items left after I made my choice, Ren seemed to be extremely curious about the reward I got. On the other hand, Labique, who got the elixirs, didn't look all that curious. Could it be a legend grade item? Is it truly the legend grade I only heard about its stories? Legend grade can't be that easy. Of course not. I've never seen one before. Legend very few owners. I only have one. She was probably born with her evil eyes, so she was probably talking about something else. I couldn't help but be curious about her legend grade item, but I kept my silence. Then, I told the two of them. It wasn't legend grade. Maybe you guys will find out later. Of course, the reward I got was the mana absorption magic book. The skill was registered the moment I obtained it. With this skill, my plan became flawless. I even thought that meeting the mana eater was a blessing. Now, if I just had time to use skill synthesis, everything would be perfect. How long do we have left, Ren? Well reach the plains in just 70 kilometers if possible, I'd like to rest once before. That's a good idea. The children must be tired too. The children riding on Ryue, regardless of whether they were beast man or human, were all dozing off. Beast men only differed from humans in that they had animal ears and tails. Now that they were sleeping, they were folded down and made them look even cuter. If it wasn't for Ryu's carefulness, they would have fallen off of her a long time ago. Daisy looked at the children and spoke apathetically. Cooperation is good. Acknowledging other race, also good. Daisy? Let's hurry. I want to go back quickly. Daisy turned away. Iana kicked the ground and began to march forward quickly. I looked at her back blankly and forgot to run for a moment. She's powerful and truly beautiful crown prince, I might have fallen in love with her. Miss Silver Wolf is also beautiful, but she lacks the elegance that lady has. Don't, run. Take my advice, if you don't people around you will only end up hurt. Namely, you and Labique. Just look for your bluebird already. As Ren suggested, we stopped to take a rest before we reached the plane. Perhaps knowing that they'll reach the plane soon, the children seemed to be feeling anxious. It was understandable, as it wouldn't end with us just running across the plane to the coast. I had already consulted the others about this matter. Guys, make sure you get some sleep for tomorrow. Appa I'm scared. Me too. Many people died. Will we die too? What happens when you die? I don't like bugs. Alpha and the other kids barraged me with questions. I wryly smiled and consoled them until they fell asleep. Ren and Labik helped me as well. After the children all fell asleep, I put down Alpha, who was leaning against me, and put a blanket over her. Then, I stood up. Ren, it'll be off for a bit. Got it. Um thank Miss Ectradian for today. Sure. As undead monsters never fell asleep, never felt tired, and carried out their master's commands faithfully, they were practically born for night watch. Daisy's undead minions were guarding the area around the tent. This didn't mean that Daisy had to be awake. However, she seemed to have found it cumbersome to stay in the tent with others, as she said she'd stay outside. 
Seeing me leave the tent, Latte, who was only in a light sleep, woke up and rose. Hero, I'll go too. No, Latte. I'll be back in a bit, so sleep. You did well today. Mm if that's what Hero says. I then met eyes with Daisy, who was resting on Iana's hard back. Where are you going? To do some business. Ren says thank you. Lion Beast Man. I don't like men. The feelings they have for me, even more uncomfortable. If they put them into action disgusting. She thoroughly stomped on the seed that barely sprouted. I smiled bitterly as I spoke. It's out of respect for your overwhelming power. In his mind, he might be a bit forward, so forgive him. You respect me, too. Not really. I do think you're a reliable ally that I can trust to protect my back. Even though she was the one who asked, she nodded her head somewhat apathetically. Then, she looked at me and asked. Is it really okay, like this? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. About battles, you're genius. I trust you. Tomorrow, protect the children. Existences with potential, I like. Just call them children, really. Daisy shook her head resolutely and added. Children aren't, only ones with potential. Others have potential too, like you. Thanks for the compliment. For the record, you have it too. Potential. Yes, I know. Now, I like me too. Why yeah, that's good. The corner of Daisy's lips curled up in a smile. Caught off guard by her mesmerizing smile, I fell in a daze for a brief moment. I then let out a dry cough and walked off after saying goodbye. Daisy sent me off by weakly waving her hand. Monsters were active even deep into the night. In this short period of time, I felt like I crushed at least thirty of them. I'm finally alone skill synthesis. I've been using it quite a lot in this world. I thought as a circular stone slab was summoned in front of me. I then opened my skill window and took out the skills I needed. In the supplement skill slots, I placed heavy armor mastery, death counter, then mana absorption. In the base skill slot, I placed soul guard. Hugh that's it, right? Good. Skill synthesis. The materials were there, and the circular stone slab began to spin as it shone with a golden radiance. I looked at the slab in a daze, forgetting to even breathe. It didn't take long. A transparent, dazzling symbol appeared, then jumped into my face as if it couldn't wait any longer. You obtained the unique skill, Absolute Soul. When I read the skill description, my eyes widened. It was even more perfect than what I had imagined. Not only would it affect my future dungeon progress and monster subjugation, but it would also deliver me a sure victory in tomorrow's battle. I smiled. My final night in the Pan and Continent was passing by quickly. Chapter 195 Though I was somewhat expecting it, the moment we left the forest, I became stifled for breath. The number of monsters present made me wonder if all the monsters in the world were gathered here. It wasn't that I thought our presence was unnoticed, but this was too much. It was almost as if all the El Paydais in the world were deployed to hunt us. I had already seen a sky full of monsters, but the number of monsters filling up the plane was as if all the floors in the dungeon broke down and had their monsters released. Even Daisy, who commanded an army of undead, seemed to flinch. If we tried to charge through them like we did previously, we would undoubtedly be swallowed up before we could advance even a 100 meters. Run. What are we going to do? Crown Prince should already know. We can only break through. Right, I wasn't a devil who would abandon the children after coming this far. Plus, even if we retreated to the forest, it wasn't a place the children could survive in without Ren. The ocean, the place the El Paytais couldn't go. We had to reach that place. All right, then let's fly. There was no need to mind the monsters on the ground. I breathed in and jumped on Lottie's back with Ren, two beast men children, and one human girl. The others were riding Daisy's flame drake, Pookie. The monsters on the ground charged at us like an army of ants and roared, but that was none of our business. We're going straight to the ocean. Got it. Latte flapped her wings and shot up. Instead of the monsters on the ground, 
which became like dogs chasing after chickens, the flying monsters roared and flew toward us. A majority of them instantly turned into stone and fell. The monsters on the ground hit by the rocks screamed. This was truly killing two birds with one stone. Shin Appa is cool. Thanks, Alpha. No matter how much they used each other as shields or came from different angles to avoid my sight, unless their resistance was above SS rank, they had no choice but to turn into stone the moment they neared me. To me, numbers didn't mean a thing anymore. Latte, full speed ahead. I know, hero. Latte accelerated, and Pookie chased after us. Enemies in front of us all turned into stone, and enemies behind and to our sides were first pushed back with Mad Typhoon, then turned into stone. There was 50 kilometers from the start of the plane to the coast, and we had already passed about 10 kilometers. Hero, there are attacks coming from below. Raise the altitude a bit more. Guys, remember, if you're feeling tired, use the mana breathing method. Okay. After a while, the number of monsters that couldn't be petrified increased. I held on to a mana potion with my mouth and swung my spear at the giant flying monsters attacking us fiercely. Run. Protect the children. I can handle that much. Pookie, breath. Guang. Daisy, who was following from behind, seemed to have been attacked by the monsters as well. As I attacked with my spear, I once again used the power of my evil eyes against the army of monsters. Let's see if you can be so energetic when we get to the ocean. Kayak. Kaya. Eat this. Lade flapped her wings fiercely and breathed out black flames, burning the enemies in front of us to ashes. If a path was open for even a moment, I would go through it. With the riding skill, Latte and I were like a single entity as we displayed flawless coordination, becoming a single acute bullet that shot through the air. Because of our incredible speed, Ran, Sharana, and Ryue all had to help prevent the children from falling. Appa, look! Then, Alpha screamed. I looked at the direction Alpha was pointing to, as I stabbed my spear through the neck of a wyvern. In the air was a giant tuna. Though we were far away, its fat body and tuna face was too clear. I doubted my eyes. It was just too big. What the hell is that tuna? Why is a tuna flying? Dear God, it's the guardian icon. The divine beast protector of the ocean kingdom Zenit. A tuna is. I thought they would be safe from the El Pedais, but to think even Icon had been taken over. Ku, did they aim for when it came out to protect the kingdom? It's a tuna. You know, the fish. Ren spoke with grief without paying attention to my questions. Regardless of whether it was a tuna or a salmon, it was giving off a terrifying mana. We were over one kilometer away, but the mana it was emitting made my body tremble slightly. Gua. The giant tuna cried in the air and charged toward us like the devil. It was incomparably bigger than the power basilisk, which gave me the evil eyes. It went without saying that the mana it possessed in its body was something I could not hope to affect with my evil eyes. If it simply crashed into us, we would undoubtedly be crushed to death. The other flying monsters seemed to be terrified by the tuna too, as they all scattered away. At that moment, Pookie stepped in front of Latte. Daisy took out a chain whip with a flushed face. That figure, I like it. But it's a tuna. Extremely powerful. Smooth body. I want it. But it's. A tuna. What's wrong with these people? Something was wrong. Daisy pulled on her whip, as if she was burning with passion, then swung her whip when the tuna neared us. Spines. Bloom. In an instant, the end of the whip split, forming thousands of gross tentacles, which swept over the tuna. From the distance, it looked like a jellyfish sticking onto its prey. In any case, its repulsive appearance made me want to turn away. It looks like you tried to make it sound cool, but words can't change tentacles into spines. Kook, the skill. Couldn't be changed. Daisy's voice was full of grief, even making me feel sympathy for her. Of course, looks had little to do with strength. Each spine, possessing terrifying levels of mana, reached the tuna, crawling straight to its brain. Ren spoke as he shuddered. 
it feels like I'm watching an El Patai's mutant. Well, I'm sure they're only trying to destroy the brain. I won't argue that it's disgusting though. Why did this continent have to filled with things like bugs and tentacles? Thankfully, I was the only one seeing such cruel sights. Even while I thought rather stupid things, the tuna didn't stop charging toward us. It shone with a brilliant light and burned away the tentacles sticking to its body. Although its overwhelming power was worthy of its name as a guardian, there were more tentacles being created than being burned. How amazing! Brain, open it. Let's be friends. Guang. Daisy made the worst kind of proposal one could get as she added in another skill. Her ears seemed to perk up slightly, after which a black mist spread out from the hand unoccupied by the whip. When the tuna touched the mist, the tuna's resistance began to dwindle slowly. I suspected that it was a skill necessary to create an undead. Gua. Ut, resisting. Kong Shin, help. The tuna's roar rang out sonorously in all directions. Then, countless number of flying monsters once again began to attack, like soldiers following the command of a general. However, they weren't attacking us, but rather the tentacles connecting Daisy and the tuna. Were you guys okay with being ordered around by a tuna? I lamented. Regardless, if we could make the tuna become part of our strengths, it couldn't be better. I materialized Pika. Pika, go wild. Burn up everything. That's exactly what I like to hear. Daisy shot out countless number of tentacles the tuna roared, bounded by the tentacles and many monsters swooped in to free the tuna. Pika jumped into the fray daringly and shot out vast amount of lightning. The sky was almost being dyed gold. Come. It'll fry all of you to crisp. As powerful as Pika was, she expended a vast amount of mana. Although the fight between the tuna and Daisy was leaning towards Daisy's victory with Pika joining, I was paying for it with my mana. I impatiently waited for the mana potion's cooldown time to end. Meanwhile, I put a highest grade mana potion in my mouth and circulated per Yuta circuit even more strongly to collect mana from the surroundings. Perhaps because I was focused on per Yuta circuit, I was the first to notice. The tuna is doing something. It opened mouth. Before it does something, destroy bugs. Daisy calmly spoke and poured out flying undead monsters from her inventory with a wave of her hand. The undead monsters flew in a straight line and attacked the giant tuna's head. Although many tentacles were going inside the giant tuna's body from its mouth, the tuna paid them no mind as it opened its mouth wider. Daisy's expression turned slightly perplexed. That, must dodge. Similar power to, mana wave tentacles. Spines are, being destroyed. No, ITLL be hard to escape from its range, so let's destroy its brain before then. Guildmaster's spirit, cool. I grinned at Daisy's comment, then charged towards the tuna on latte. The children screamed, but I couldn't hold on to them right now. Hold on, guys. Yuan, Appa. I raised my spear high, and called Pika and Sharana. I infused Sharana in my body and Pika in the chaotic spear. Then, Latte and I shot towards the monsters blocking our path with the force to destroy a world. Wind King's Rage The power of lightning and wind that had begun to gather in my body drove me forward. Latte adapted to the flow surprisingly naturally, flying faster than lightning and freer than wind. Every time a monster in front of us was sent flying, the hard-to-contain power intensified. Though only a little, mana was also filling up inside me. Using Mad Typhoon, I contained the wild and turbulent lightning and wind in the form of a whirlpool. I then changed directions and dug into another group of monsters. There was no need to dodge anything. No monsters existed that could be my spear's opponent. Wop! Now it's your turn. The attack had long since charged up to 150%. I held up the spear buried in a giant whirlpool and pointed it at the tuna's head. By now, visible particles of mana had gathered at its mouth. If possible, I had to neutralize it now. Crone Princey. The children will die. Hold on tight. Even I couldn't control Lottie's speed. I focused solely on piercing the tuna with this whirlpool of lightning and wind in my hand. Now. Kwong. 
I didn't have a chance to clash with whatever it was trying to do, as the spear bore through its head and caused a giant explosion. I pulled out the spear from its head, which was dug in like a crater. I could feel it slowly closing its mouth. Of course. How could it shoot out a mana wave when its head exploded? Ah. I really poured out all the strength in my body. The skill description said I wouldn't be able to use the skill for three hours, but that wasn't it. I didn't know if I had the strength to use other skills. I was completely exhausted. At that moment, hundreds of tentacles approached me and dug into the place my spear had pierced through. They were truly disgusting. Good, reached the brain. Yuck, disgusting. Daisy seemed to be extremely elated as she even messaged me to report on her success. Meanwhile, I could feel something inside its brain puffing up unnaturally. Soon, a giant bug popped out. There were strange bumps on its body, and its mouth looked like a drill. So this was an El Pedis. It wasn't even dead. I need to kill it. Crown Prince, you look tired. This is not. Before I could finish my sentence, I became startled by Ren's shout and turned around. However, I couldn't turn my body. It seemed like my body was fixed in place. This is something special prepared just for you. An unpleasant voice of a man rang out. It came from one of the children on Lottie's back, Yuruto. I didn't think I'd be able to capture another hero. You see, we only have two of our kind that can contain a hero. Losing Icon is a bit regretful, but if we can obtain a hero in exchange, it is more than worth it. Ah, don't think about using your elementals. As long as I'm touching you, I can damage you as much as I want. Yuruto. Don't come close, Alpha. He isn't Yuruto. Kook, Crown Prince, I can't get him off. I if I use an attack skill, you'll. Run, I'm fine, so take the others and go to Daisy. I'll deal with this on my own. Kook. Understood. Appa, Shinop. Alpha closed her mouth mid-shout. More exactly, Ren had grabbed her and the other human girl. Latte seemed to have noticed what was happening on her back as she thrashed about wildly. A mere human brat dares to attack the hero. However, Yuruto was no longer in a human form. I didn't know how he was binding me, but there was something adhesive stuck to my chest and limbs. You can't escape. Your mana should be frozen as well as your body. You won't be able to open your inventory much less open the door to the dungeon. I was created for this purpose. Unless you're something like a mana eater, you won't be able to escape. Now, open your mouth. Become our ally. It was a powerful binding just like the demon lord's curse cast on me by Sheena in the Luka continent. Although I should be able to use skills, it was difficult to do so without being able to move my body. Plus, the El Pedis binding me was perfectly guarded against the one person who might be able to free me, Daisy. Knowing that she was a necromancer, it had provided a prey in the form of Icon. It knew that Daisy would try to use necromancy on Icon the moment it was defeated. Currently, Daisy was completely focused on making Icon into her own, so much so that she didn't even realize the danger I was in. But I didn't detect any mana from your brain. I told you, I was created for this purpose. I hid myself to hunt the last explorer when I had the chance. The voice no longer belonged to that of a human. The bug that had jumped out of Icon's brain was approaching me slowly. Then you won't be discovered by anyone. Hu hu hu, I can imitate anyone with my mana. Unless you can read my thoughts or read my soul, you won't be able to see through me. Right, it was indeed difficult to read your at first. Of course, that wasn't the case now. Although it was a bit embarrassing to say, I had the absolute soul skill. I could be called an expert when it came to souls. Sky gods play. The next moment, I was floating in the air leisurely. As what people from Earth would call, a fly. What? Yuruto, who had turned into a slime-like creature, and the unpleasant-looking bug that looked like a floating vein both made disconcerted shouts. I yelled as a fly. Pika, scorch them. Kook, in that case, well take the other one. Unless you're faster than lightning, it's over. The moment the slime tried to stick onto Lottie's body, 
Pika's lightning shot down. The slime that had imitated Yuruto then vaporized in midair. While the other bug didn't know what to do, I returned to my original form and grinned. Villains can't die without giving out all the information, can they? You said there's one more of you. Guang. Ten minutes after that, we set off toward the coast once again. This time, with a new friend, Iken, and at full speed. Chapter, 196. Strange. The number of monsters in the air was increasing. They were desperately trying to stop us. Even though the giant tuna icon had become an undead monster with its power as a guardian intact, it could not continue to march forward freely with so many monsters blocking the way. Appa, is Yuruto gone? Yuruto is dead. Yuruto. Plus, after finding out that a friend had died, the children's mood and morale had turned for the worst. They cried in Wrens, Lebwicks, and my embrace. Though they lasted this far in such a hopeless situation, after finding out that a friend they had talked and laughed with had been a bug the entire time, the shock caused them to lose all of their energy. As I had told Ren and Labique about the truth before, they weren't in shock, but they seemed worried about the enervated children. Should I have done it differently? I could have easily killed the fake Yuruto when the children weren't looking. However, I didn't do so, because there was valuable information to obtain, like how they operated. It's more shocking when someone disappears suddenly. That was Bookwalker's method. Once we woke up from sleep, our friends would be gone. One by one, it was terrifying. Ahem. It's a bit different in our case though. Daisy discovered what I was thinking instantly and consoled me. Perhaps, my thoughts flowed into her while I wasn't paying attention. With a wry smile, I held up my spear and swept away dozens of monsters with a swing. We've come far. We should be able to bring the children to safety soon. About that, there's something. Daisy brought herself next to me and whispered something in my ear. It was rather simple. The skill point I have left, if I use them, I can bring two people. To Earth, total six people. I shook my head. No, it's not enough. Just one, we have to give up. They'll get mad, you know. That might be, less sacrifice. We don't know, what will come. Kong Shin might live, but the children, all might die. Seeing Daisy's serious expression, I flicked her forehead. She took a few steps back with a surprised face. With how big Iken was, just taking a few steps back still put us on the same level. Don't worry, I won't let any of them die. But you only have talent, for fighting. I have elementals. Ren and Labik are trying hard too. So Daisy, please. Then, fine. You're the guild master, ill respect your wishes. I know you came to help me. Thanks. To save our worlds. We are in a contract. Right, contract. I grinned at her words. Perhaps because I refused her offer, her cheeks were puffed up. She looked incredibly cute. Of course, with the situation being what it is, I couldn't leisurely stare at Daisy. The sky was practically made of monsters that were attacking us from all directions. Iken's secret skill, beam. Is that what it was trying to use before? While I asked in shock, Iken opened its mouth and gathered mana. At its immense suction power, the monsters that were pulled inside all disintegrated from the high density of mana. Gua. Soon, a mana wave thick enough to envelop a whole building shot out from its mouth. The path taken by the mana wave shone like a white slate. To our dismay, however, the area swept by the mana wave were filled up with monsters again in just twenty seconds. They kept coming and coming like homework. Daisy seemed to be thinking the same thing. More coming, I'm tired. Can't you use those tentacles? Spines. Once per day. She was still insisting on it being spines. While Daisy sulked that nothing changed even with Iken's mana wave, I thought about what I could do. I looked back at Ren and Labik. Ren was focused on taking care of the children, while Labik was focused on shooting down monsters with her crossbow. With that, a thought suddenly flashed across my mind. Ha, huh, I really didn't want to do this, but it looks like I have no choice. What? 
It's a bit disgusting, so close your eyes. Gigant time. Thankfully, Sky God's play was still in effect for about 10 minutes. Before that, however, I used Gigant time. Without this skill, what I was about to do would have no meaning. After I used Gigant time, I closed my eyes and imagined the form I would take. As I had practiced many times before, I could soon feel that I transformed. Kaya. Daisy must have been extremely surprised, as she screamed without an exclamation mark. But since she screamed, it meant that the transformation was a success. I opened my eyes. Then, feeling dizzy from the 360 degrees vision, I almost vomited. What did you do? Labique, who turned around to see me after Daisy's scream, also asked in surprise. I replied bluntly. Can't you see? I can't. That's why I'm asking. W what is that disgusting? My original eyes were located further up than normal. With Sky God's play, I transformed my body into a 10 meter tall giant. Even I can probably found it hard to carry me. With this size, however, even though I would be able to move freely with my high stats, fighting would be more cumbersome than usual. Of course, I didn't become a giant just to fight the monsters like this. After all, what I gigantified with gigant time wasn't my weapon, arms, or legs, but my eyes. I was thankful that everything went as I imagined. Everyone look here. If him what you want, come. You used high rank provoke. All enemies burn fiercely with hatred and hostility towards you. It was worth holding in the dizziness and shouting. Though the El Paidais were controlling their bodies, in the end, they were still monsters, which were weak to provocation. They didn't hide behind bigger monsters to hide from my evil eyes. They simply charged toward me with piercing killing intent. Of course, with so many of them, I couldn't help but sweat at the sight of them. Just one second afterward, a countless number of rocks fell to the ground. Come. Come. Rocks rained down. There were even monsters that lost their lives after being hit by them. Come. So that disgusting look was on purpose. I pretended not to hear Labik. Hundreds of eyes covering my body blinked repeatedly as they aimed at more targets. This is the combined power of the mythical Argos and Medusa. Argos, the thousand-eyed giant ordered by Hera to watch over Io and slain by Hermes. With eyes covering its body, it had no blind spots. It was the perfect appearance for my evil eyes. Come. Come attack me. I shouted triumphantly and blinked once again. Monsters closing in on us all turned to stone, and only the monsters with an abnormally high resistance survived. Labik then commented on my appearance. Eyes all over the body. Gross. I can't maintain it for very long anyway. It was Zeus who ordered Hermes to slay Argos. As the holder of Zeus' true name, it was a bit ironic that I took Argos' form. The monsters filling up the sky visibly decreased. By the time Gigant time ended and it became hard for all of the eyes to have an equal effect, only a few powerful monsters were left. Zhao. Kwa. Feeling satisfied by the monsters roaring after losing their friends and subordinates, I returned to my original appearance. Although Sky God's play should have lasted a couple more minutes, it had ended prematurely. It was perhaps because taking Argo's form used more energy, or because I strengthened the power of my evil eyes with it. Regardless, as I had obtained the result I wanted, I was satisfied. There seemed to be some hope now. With a sigh of relief, I took out a mana potion from my inventory. I can, forward. Crush everything. Young. There really were only a few left. Realizing this, Daisy ordered Iken in a cool pose. Although it was undead, Iken intelligently responded with a roar and charged forward. The few monsters that were left had no chance against Iken. Just five kilometers more, Crown Prince. Ren Nim, calm down. Look forward. Kook, how can I calm down, Lebu? Ick. Ah, though it was a difficult journey, once we arrived at the coast, everything would be over. Eh. As expected. There's an army. Of course, I.D. somewhat expected it as well. I didn't think they'd try to stop us with just monsters. 
However, the army standing by the coast like beach lifeguards seemed to surprise Ren and Labique more than me or Daisy. How dare they! Dear God! Ren and Lebwix exclaimed. Did they know someone? I surveyed the ground. Though there weren't as many as the monsters we faced in the sky, the refined spirit and keen killing intent of the soldiers radiated out. Of course, with most of them being men, there really wasn't a reason to keep staring at them. After all, I couldn't be certain how strong they were before I fought them. Other than the army, I focused my attention on. The commander. Right, the strength of an army really was in the hands of its commander. I looked at the man standing in the front. Golden hair like a lion's mane, deep wrinkles across the forehead, and brilliant golden pupils. The firm, strong muscular body, and a set of jet black armor. Finally, in his hands, a large claymore. He was too similar to someone I knew. In fact, they almost had the same face. No matter how dense I was, it wasn't hard to figure out who he was. Your Highness Cook, Father The last trial awaiting us at the coast. It was none other than the Pan Incontinence Hero, and the World's Enemy. Chapter 197 This is the worst situation I could have imagined. Even I can't win against that. Before we can't, go back to the dungeon forever decide. I can stop in the air hurriedly. Daisy stared at me fixedly and pressed me for a decision. What she wanted was undoubtedly to abandon one child so that the rest can escape. However, I didn't want that. The value of a life wasn't something I could calculate. Furthermore, I took my eyes off of Daisy and looked at Ren. His gaze were fixed on Pan Incontinence Hero. His hands were clenching his sword and shaking. As for Labique, she initially had a conflicted expression, but after seeing Ren, she took a battle stance with a resolute expression. She spoke with a stiff voice. Before my head rolls Ren Nim must not die. Don't speak nonsense, Labique. Everyone must survive. Coming. Daisy made a brief comment immediately following Ren's heartfelt statement. Immediately afterwards, a light flashed on the ground and a portion of Iken's body disintegrated. It was an enormous amount of mana. Pure aura. What kind of brute strength is that? Kook, father's strength is beyond our imagination. Still, he fell to the scheme used against Crown Prince today. Damn. Daisy, Iken is too big of a target. Move the children to Lottie's back. That aura, fast. Living pet, more dangerous. I am the queen of the wyverns, Darkwing Latte. Do not look down on me, elf. Latte quickly transformed into her wyvern form, grabbing children by her mouth and throwing them onto her back. I also helped move the children. Daisy, open the path with your undead. We need to go straight to the ocean. Run, Labik. Get on Latte and protect the children. What about Crown Prince? I held up my chaotic spear. It was already surrounded by a whirlpool of chaos flames and heroic aura. It'll stop the hero. With deific manifestation. Of course, I had not forgotten about deific manifestation. However, now wasn't the time. Though the situation developed in one of the worst ways it could have, it wasn't the end. Plus, the moment I manifested Pryuta with deific manifestation, I... I grinned. They'll try to kill me too. It's obvious if you think about why they brought out their head. Crown Prince, are you saying you'll use yourself as bait? Oh. You've gotten smarter, Ren. Right, they were aiming for me. Otherwise, they wouldn't have sent out the last remaining one. The power of the hero could only be vested into a living creature. There had to be an El Paytais controlling the hero inside his body. It's too dangerous. If you have a better way of keeping the children safe, tell me. Of course, there was no such way. I smiled wryly at Daisy, who was glaring at me. Don't worry, I won't die until I save your world. An outstanding warrior must have, a cool mind, a burning heart. You're too hot, for both. As a warrior, a second rate. I know my faults. Here, take this. It's the crystal lair. 
With this, the children should be able to stay underwater safely. I won't accept. At that moment, a burst of light surged up from the ground once again. This time, Iken generated a barrier of light at the area concentrated by the attack, but it seemed it wouldn't be able to last long. Daisy, hurry. You you, no matter win or lose, it'll hit you. Unable to win against my stubbornness, Daisy complained and took the crystal lair, then summoned her undead army from her inventory. Open the path. Head straight to the ocean. Qua. Qua. At the same time, the warriors only the ground roared, marking the start of a war. Welcome the other world's hero. Yuak. Qua. I jumped off of Iken's back without hesitation. I immediately summoned Teleria and accelerated, as my spear continually grinded away monsters in its path. At the same time, I used another one of Hermes' power, Caduceus. You summon Caduceus. All physical abilities have been energized. The two snakes have opened their eyes. You can only use one of the snake's power. Last time, I used the destructive power of the black snake. However, this snake would bring about devastating results if used when my opponent was higher level than me. Even so, I still chose the black snake. While the black snake slowly coiled around my arm, a voice rang out from behind. Yuwak. Kuk, Ren Nim. I turned around and doubted my eyes. Ren was falling along with me. Of course, with the frowning Labik. What are you two doing? Miss Ectradian is more than enough to protect the children. Did Crown Prince think I wouldn't notice Crown Prince trying to keep us out of harm's way? This is my world. If Crown Prince shoulders all the heavy burden and ends up dying, I won't be able to live on as a warrior. Ren Naim. This idiot. His absurd statement almost made me shout at him to stop acting like a kid. However, a golden aura flying toward me wiped the thought off my mind. Next time, it will be aimed at your friends. That bastard, he knew I was trying to act as the bait. I grit my teeth and glared at the El Paytais comfortably waving his claymore. Not only did it kill the hero and steal the hero's power, it enjoyed itself using the hero's power as if it was its own. The enemy in front of me wasn't a warrior. It was quite literally an insect. Unfortunately, it was an insect with great power. A mere bug dares to dishonor a once mighty warrior. Yo! Before he fell onto the ground, Ren roared and stuck his claymore on the ground. The ground fissured and rocks shot up, shooting towards monsters around us. That was outburst. Even though Ren was wearing Dullahan's armor, I had forgotten about it. Then, Ren took off his armor and threw it away. Underneath was the twin-headed ogre set. Right, no matter how many layers one put on, only one would be recognized as one's armor. As such, Ren put on the twin-headed ogre set, which was made out of leather, and overlaid it with the metallic Dullahan set. With that, Dullahan set would be in effect, but when he took it off, the twin-headed ogre set would take effect. How clever! Having to take off one's armor was slightly annoying, but that was certainly the best thing an explorer without the collector's pocket watch could do. However, that was no way enough to defeat the El Paytais. I also hurriedly descended. Labik followed suit. Don't block me. In the air, Daza's shout rang out. The undead monsters raised their voices and used their skills as they swept through the flying monsters. Though the El Paytais army on the ground looked uncomfortable, they were undoubtedly focused on us. Kook, the damned golden aura was flying toward us again. You are injured by an aura of a powerful league. It is difficult to heal the injury from natural healing or ordinary potions. Although I dodged the attack, I was still damaged by it. I grit my teeth and circulated Peruta circuit as I landed on the ground. The enemy was laughing, not far away from me. Deific Manifestation 1. Why are you calling me by my name now, Ren? As I was focused on the enemy completely, I didn't look at Ren who called me. However, he didn't respond. Then, the mana in the air began to burn. Wait, was this? Kwang. Ren roared violently. The roar filled with mana even made my ears ring and caused the enemies to stagger. 
Using this opportunity, I glanced at the distance. The moment they met my eyes, countless number of enemy soldiers turned to stone. Ha, quite a cowardly move for someone who calls himself a hero. Cut the bullshit and attack. Koha. Ren charged across the ground before me. A golden aura enveloped his body, as if a golden mane sprouted up. He had undoubtedly used deific manifestation. If he solo cleared the fifth floor, he surely had that skill. Little kitten, he'll take care of you today too. The pan incontinent belongs to us, El Patai's. Kuang. Ren seemed a bit strange. Though he was beastly, he never only roared. What did you summon, Ren? Furthermore, the amount of aura in his claymore was powerful enough to contend with a hero's. Humph, a mere beast. The claymore held up by the El Patais clashed with Ren's own. It seemed to have been caught off guard by Ren's powerful strength as it fell back slightly. Meanwhile, I charged forward. Lebeek also charged on with a stern expression I had never seen before. I won't let Ren Nim die. Wop. You used frozen roar. All enemies in the battlefield freezes in place. All allies temporarily become super armored and has all abilities increased by 50%. Your chance of landing a critical hit doubles when fighting enemies affected by frozen roar. The moment I used frozen roar to help Ren's attack, all enemies in the battlefield froze. With their resistance lowered during freezing, many fell to my evil eye's power and turned to stone. However, the El Patai's in the hero's body, the world's enemy, wasn't affected. He easily bounced away Frozen Roar's effect. Then, Ren roared like a beast, as if he was stimulated by my roar. Kwang. Golden Lion's roar activates. All enemies with resistances under SS rank faints temporarily. All those that wield the Golden Lion's aura have their attack power tripled for one attack. All those following the Golden Lion have their attack power doubled for one attack. In an instant, Ren's claymore shone with a brilliant light. As if to cut apart the heavens, his claymore slashed down. However, the world's enemy snorted and received the attack with his claymore. The earth tremored as if it would crumble, and Ren's body was pushed backwards. Shouldn't he be super armored? La Beek. Don't worry. La Beek sped up and received Ren. Damn, he directly received an attack boosted by frozen roar and a unique skill. Just how much of a monster was he? No, rather than that, if things continued, it was possible for Ren and Lebeek to lose their lives. Elemental Tempest. However, that was that and this was this. While the enemy was busy receiving Ren's claymore, I readied my area of effect attack and shot it forward. With the combined effort of Frozen Roar, Evil Eyes, and Elemental Tempest, the army had dwindled down quite a bit. The enemy only realized what I did after it pushed away Ren. You dare attack my subordinates like a sneaky rat. If I'm a rat, you're a flea. For someone who stole the hero's body, you sure must have been afraid if you brought along your army. Quap. It shot out another terrifying golden aura. This attack couldn't be dodged with ordinary movements. I used divine speed to move far away, then charged towards the El Patais. I couldn't let it fight Ren. As such, there was only one thing I could do. At that moment, Daisy messaged me. It was the perfect timing. Done. Children, underwater. That makes it sound like you drowned them. In the distance, I could see Iken's large body going underwater. The flying monsters that were fiercely attacking Iken just a moment ago lost their target and started attacking the other undead monsters in the air. With that, I heaved a sigh of relief. Good. The request is a success. The only thing left now is. When I took a step forward with such thought, a large claymore pierced through my stomach. In front of my eyes was a beast man with a golden lion's mane. I could feel his powerful energy and see his underhanded eyes. Kuhu, I aimed for when your guard was down. Weren't you too relaxed, hero? After all, you are our target. Kuk damn, again. How unpleasant. Seeing his clash with Ren, the only impression I got was that he was incredibly powerful, a critical error on my part. 
Although I was still under the effect of divine speed, he had caught up to me. I could see my HP falling rapidly. In the end, Die Hard activated once again. This was the first time Die Hard was used so often. It was the second time since I came to the world. Really, dimensional mercenary job sucked. Hoo-hoo, you can't turn into a fly this time, can you, hero? So you knew. That was a special El Pedis, you see. It can communicate with me. Know thy enemy and know yourself, and you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Isn't it the most basic rule? So, what now? Sleep. When you wake up, you will be filled with nothing but happiness. The El Pedis twisted its sword. At the same time, countless number of bugs crawled out of the claymore and tried to enter my stomach. Damn, though I was somewhat expecting it, it wasn't trying to finish me here. Before the bugs could enter my body, I shouted urgently. Caduceus, activate. Your target's level is overwhelmingly higher. The physical injuries of the target will be overridden. The target is currently corroded by an unknown existence. Prepare for corrosion. Hearing the hopeless message, I smiled. Message Nuna really worried about me. With this, we, El Pedis, will come to possess two heroes per. Its happy declaration was suddenly cut short. At the same time the hero's body fell back without strength, something inside my head stung and the presence of the world's enemy completely disappeared. You defeated the world's enemy of the Panin continent. However, unless you subjugate all seeds, another enemy might appear. The message that popped up proved that the world's enemy had disappeared. Plus, the ball of light floating in front of me was undoubtedly the power of the hero. In an instant, the battlefield became silent and countless number of eyes fell on me. I received them all and spoke. Just as planned. Chapter, 198 You defeated the world's enemy of Pan and Continent. A truly great achievement. You received 50 bonus stat points and 10 skill points. Current skill points, 18. You obtained the title, Savior Hero. The Lord begins to focus his support for you. You can now decrease the influence of those who ignore the dungeon system. Whenever you fight world's enemies, your abilities increase by 10%. All gods feel great interest towards you. Gods related to battles, strategies, and courage favors you greatly. You obtain the entrance ticket to the SS rank event dungeon, Wonderland. You can go in with your guild members. All skill levels increase by 1. By destroying a powerful enemy, Absolute Soul became level 3. The League of Your Soul becomes higher, further increasing your resistance to all physical, magical, and mental attacks. The amount of mana you absorb with physical attacks and defense increases. You completed the request successfully. You obtained 10 bonus stats as the reward. It is highly recommended to return immediately. This place is currently extremely dangerous. After happily listening to the messages flowing in, I let out a long sigh. I was able to make the best case scenario come true. Even as I readied Caduceus, I was worried that the El Pedis would avoid it somehow, but my worry was unfounded. Everything worked out perfectly. Of course, even if things didn't work out as I intended, I was at least confident that I wouldn't have my brain eaten by the El Pedis. It was because of absolute soul. When I came to the Panin continent, I thought about how to defend myself against the El Pedis. A bug that eats one's brain and takes over one's body. How cruel was that? I wanted a skill that would protect my brain from an unexpected sneak attack. Since even the Pan Incontinence hero was taken over by the El Pedis, I knew that my identity as a hero wouldn't protect me from them. Saving my friend was important, but my life was even more important. Absolute Soul that was the skill I tried to create that day in the forest. But as I was synthesizing the skill, I felt something was lacking. Heavy armor mastery, soul guard, and death counter. They were all excellent defensive skills, and I knew the resulting skill would protect my mind and body perfectly. However, I felt that I needed something else. After all, these damned bugs had even consumed the hero. In the end, I synthesized the skill only after I obtained mana absorption. Mana absorption's effect was simple. 
Whenever I attacked with a melee weapon, or whenever an enemy attacked me with a melee or magical attack, I would absorb the enemy's mana. That is, whenever I came in contact with mana, I would absorb a portion of it. As the skill level increased, the amount that I absorbed would increase. As I was always lacking in mana, it was a truly wonderful skill to have. I focused on the fact that this skill could steal the enemy's mana. Humans generally did not have mana at birth, and even if they did, it would be an extremely low amount. Other races, however, were different. The more dissimilar they were to humans, the more mana they would possess. It wasn't wrong to say that the El Padais were giant lumps of mana. They were afraid of the mana eater for the same reason. The mana eater's existence itself ate away at the El Padais's life. For that reason, I added mana absorption to the skill I wanted to create. The resulting skill was Absolute Soul. It raised the Soul's League, allowing me to resist those of higher level. It perfectly protected my body and soul. Your soul is complete and pure. Such a lofty soul affects you both internally and externally. Positive effects are added to all of your actions. Your attacks become stronger, and your defense against all types of physical, magical, and mental attacks increases greatly. Nothing can invade your body and mind. You become immune to all mental status effects, and you are unaffected by all corrosion, parasite, possession, and control. As curses cannot affect you, you cannot be reborn as an undead when you die. Your soul absorbs mana that nears you and prevents it from functioning properly. It is the same even when you approach the enemy. Physical attacks, and physical and magical defense absorb a fixed amount of mana. Whenever the skill level increases, the skill's effect increases. When I first read the skill description, I almost fainted because of how good it was. Soon, I began to see the skill's potential, a potential to destroy the world's enemy of Pan and Continent. I immediately began to scheme. I first had to ensure my safety, then run, Labik, and the children's safety. I had to come up with a way to make the El Patais with the hero's power to come into my brain. At first, I wanted to make use of the bug acting as Yuruto. I intentionally put him on Lottie's back and acted as if I was exhausted. Then, at the critical moment, I used Sky God's play and escaped. I was surprised that there were two bugs that could take the hero's power, but it didn't matter since I was able to destroy one of them. Once there was only one bug that could do so, the bug inside Pan Incontinent's hero had to face me. My plan's chance of success had risen greatly. After that, I freely used Sky God's play and decimated the monsters. It was a simple psychological trick. From the beginning, I used a powerful skill to protect myself from the bug. By showing that I couldn't use that skill anymore, I let the El Padais lower their guard. In other words, I hid the potential existence of a skill like Absolute Soul with Sky God's play. Even if I didn't use Sky God's play and used something like my physical ability to defense against the first bug, the El Padais might have been more cautious. However, I left a strong impact with Sky God's play and showed that the ability was no longer usable. With that, they would think that I didn't have any other methods. Presumably, that was why they acted without hesitation. Although it was rather simple, in the heat of battle, it was hard to consider something like it. Feints easily tricked people, especially a double-layered feint. As I acted proud when I used Sky God's play and acted like I was troubled when it ended, the enemy had fallen for it even more. Although the El Patais didn't try to eat my brain on the spot, that was still within my expectation. It didn't matter if it did or didn't try to eat my brain. As long as it entered the range of Caduceus, that was enough. After I obtained Absolute Soul, I thought of using the backlash from Caduceus to my benefit. Caduceus was the scepter representing Hermes. There were two snakes coiling around it one that represented death or plague, and one representing healing and regeneration. Although there were other theories, the Caduceus snakes I had at least represented those meanings. Caduceus had two abilities. First came from the Black Snake. As one could see from how it was used in the Luca continent, its use was offensive. When someone with a lower level or lead damaged me, I could return the damage completely. If our levels were the same, the damage done would simply disappear as if it never happened. However, it had an equally great flaw. 
When used against an enemy stronger than me, the damage done to the enemy would be transferred to me. As enemies stronger than me generally had higher leagues, using the black snake against them was not a good idea. On the other hand, there really wasn't a reason to use them against those weaker than me. After all, I had numerous ways of dealing with weak enemies. As such, it really only came into use that one time against China in the Luka continent. This time, however, I used Caduceus Flaw to my advantage. The damage received by the enemy included the mine's corrosion by the El Pedais. Although I wasn't 100% certain, Message Nuna confirmed it when I asked her. Even though she didn't answer me most of the time, she was quick to do so whenever I was in a dimensional mercenary mission. In any case, Caduceus' power forcefully overwrote the damage done to Pan Incontinence Hero to myself. As I had become completely immune to corrosions, I could destroy the El Patais the moment it entered my brain. I was worried that it would escape, so I was perfectly prepared to use Sky God's Rage. However, everything turned out perfectly. Hugh, Kook. First, I pulled out the claymore in my stomach. Then, along with the hero's corpse, I put it inside my inventory. Blood spurted out of my stomach, and I could feel the strength leaving my body. With no other choice, I took out the elixir Ludia gave me and drank it. I immediately recovered completely, and the gaping wound on my stomach sealed up as if it never existed. Plus, the elixir was extremely tasty. It was sweet and refreshing, but hard to describe more in detail. I had never had something like it. I then realized that the elixir bottle had a very fancy design. When I was observing it with interest, someone finally spoke out. What what happened? He died. The hero's power the hero's power was taken. I can tell. Our blessing was taken back. Is there another that can hold the hero's power? No, they're all gone. We have to wait for another's birth. First, kill him. Seize what belongs to us. It seemed they had finally come to a conclusion. The monsters, humans, and beast men being controlled by the El Pedais all glared at me. However, I leisurely stuffed the hero's power in the crystal bottle in my hand and sealed it. Then, I turned around and shouted. Run, La Beak. We're done here. Let's go back. Ren Nim fainted. Slap him awake. Return to the dungeon before they come. What about you? Me? For destroying the world's enemy, all skill levels had increased by one. Return was now level 9. While I put 16 skill points into it, I answered. They'll go back to Earth with the children. You mastered return. Up to 10 times a day, you can teleport to set locations with 9 other people. You can set up to 10 teleport locations, but they cannot be in other dimensions. Perfect. The skill effect practically doubled. I smiled and shot up to the sky. After seeing Labik wake run up and return to the dungeon, I flew to the ocean while cutting down the monsters in my path. Stop him. Retrieve the hero's power. Reclaim the prosperity of El Patais. Hail El Patais. How noisy. While many monsters fell to the ground as stones, many of them also only became slightly weakened as they continued to charge toward me. They really were desperate. You've stolen our hope. You evil hero. I'm surprised you say that considering what you did to this world. Will you be able to say that after your world lost its power? Of course. Do I look like a fool? Eat crimson roar, you bugs. At the very moment, I was undoubtedly at the center of the world. The world became dyed in crimson flames. In it, only I could breathe freely. Capture him. Get him before he enters the dungeon. The ocean. He's going in the ocean. Crimson Roar bought more time than I expected. By the time the El Pedais found a way to see through the flames, I had the ocean surface right in front of me. Now that I was here, there was no need to hesitate. No. No oh. I dove in. With Talaria allowing me to maneuver myself freely, I went in deeper and deeper. When I looked back, the monsters, humans, and beast men that had thrown their bodies to stop me were spurting out blood and disintegrating. Although I was somewhat skeptical, 
they really were incompatible with ocean water. I left the screams of despair behind and found the crystal lair deep inside the ocean. It wasn't hard to find with Iken sitting on the ocean floor. The crystal lair was sitting on Iken's back. Daisy caught sight of me, and realizing what was inside the crystal bottle on me, she messaged me with a dumbfounded face. You really did it. Sorry, but don't fall for me. Stupid. I landed on Iken's back and entered the crystal lair. The children all jumped in my embrace with frowns. The rabbit-eared girl Elfa was crying as if she washed up face with tears. Hying, I thought Appa was going to die. Appa, where's Renappa? Where's the night Nuna? Did they die? Ren Appa died. Yua. Calm down, guys. I held them and calmed them down. They're both alive and kicking. Though Ren is probably a bit depressed. Before Ren entered the dungeon, I saw his drooped lion ears. Deific manifestation and ogre power was most likely his trump card, but it had been defeated easily. Although he was powerful, his enemy wasn't one that he could defeat with raw physical power. That said, I was still surprised by his strength and felt great potential in him. Although his overzealous personality would need some fixing, Ren had the talent and will to become much stronger. He also had a clear goal to protect the children and to defeat the El Padais controlling the Pan Incontinent. His will was deserving of respect, and I conveniently had an ownerless hero's power, which I didn't mind giving to someone who would help me when needed. This power belonged to the Pan Incontinent. What I was thinking of doing with it was undoubtedly the correct choice. And I'll get myself a new guild member, too. Expression, wicked. I responded to Daisy's murmur with a smile. The crying children looked at Daisy and me curiously. I waved my hand to tell them it was nothing. All right, let's go to Appa's home. We can meet up with Ren and Labique there. Appa's home? We don't have to be underwater. Of course. Well be away from here for a while. The day you return to this continent, I hope you will be excellent warriors. I whispered in an inaudible voice and used return. The destination was my home on earth. Panon Continent's dimensional mercenary mission had ended. Chapter, 199 Rabbit ears, dog ears, wolf ears, cat ears, bear's ears. With five beast-man children and two cute girls in the house, mother screamed in joy. Where did so many children come from? Are they yours? I'm only twenty-one, mom. Animals' ears, how cute. They feel so realistic. Let me go. They're real, mom. Don't try to pull them out. After I returned, I first reported to the guild and Loretta. As I also brought Ren and Labique from the dungeon, the house was full. Mother happily went off to cook for the guests, while Yuo went to help her. Ren, on the other hand, sat in my room depressed. I had to stay and talk to him without being able to eat. Sorry, Crown Prince when I saw the enemy that took father's body, I felt like my blood was flowing backwards. I should have trusted Crown Prince's plan. I have no excuses. Right, you don't. Rookie. I told you before, right? A warrior has to be cool-headed. I didn't think you'd charge at the world's enemy with no plan. That, Kong Shin has, no right. Kong Shin is far from, being cool-headed. It's just, Kong Shin's ability is overwhelming, so no problem. When I was admonishing Ren, Daisy appeared out of nowhere and refuted me. I wanted to say something, but seeing what was in Daisy's hands, I became lost for words. On one hand, she had a beer can, and on the other, she had a thick sausage. I remembered seeing the sausage before. After seeing that Ren and Labik were safe, the children sat around the living room table and ate with mother, Yua, and father. Before I came in my room, I remembered being surprised how adaptable they were. If I remembered correctly, the sausage was on the table. The sausage in Daisy's hand had undoubtedly come from there. Kong Shin's mother, gave me sausage. Kong Shin's father, gave me beer. Well, I'm happy you've gotten close to my F.A. Why are you here? I shouted in shock. Why was Daisy on earth? She then answered as if I was being dumb. Kong Shin used return, with me too. 
barely put Icon in my inventory. Eh, sorry. I like this place. I stay still, and I get food. I, I see that's good. She looked like a middle school student, so it was somewhat strange seeing her drink beer. Though I wanted to say something to her, I held it in. I looked at Ren again and spoke. Ren, it's time. The second season of Thrashing Phase. And no. Even if you say no, your body is shaking from excitement. I'm shaking because I'm terrified. Stop saying weird things. What's thrashing phase, rookie? It's a special training I make Rin do. T training? No, if it's training, he'll do it. Ren Nim is my disciple. Labik is too soft. Plus, I feel like Labik will end up doing some other training, so no. With a face saying, how did you know? Ren took a step back. I was just joking, but this woman how scary. On the other hand, Ren tilted his head. With a virgin-like innocence, he asked. Some other training? What's that? Labik is an excellent warrior. If there's something I can learn from her, I'd like to learn it. Please, teach this foolish one. Rrn Nim. If that's what you wish, this Labik will. Seeing Labik drooling and fiddling with her clothes, I flicked her forehead and shot her down. Then, I took out the crystal bottle containing the world's power. All eyes became focused on the ball of light floating in the bottle. Crown Prince, could this be? Yep, it's your world's power. H. How? I'm Earth's hero. I can do at least this much. Why didn't you take it for yourself? Don't be absurd. This power belongs to Pan and Continent. Ren sounded touched. Annoyingly, he was tearing up. I knocked on the table catch his attention and continued. Let me explain. I trapped the world's power in an elixir bottle. The bottle's special material is preventing it from leaking out, but it won't be last forever. The moment it's taken out, it will probably start to assimilate itself as Earth's power. Do you want the Pan and Continent's power to be absorbed by Earth? No of course not. I grinned. I of course brought up the topic to prevent that from happening. As Earth's hero, I can vest this ownerless power to someone. It's much easier and less time-consuming to transfer an ownerless power than transferring it from one human to another. But as more times passes, this power will start to weaken and ITLL get harder for me transfer it to someone. Now, what should I do with it? You'll need to transfer it to an explorer as quickly as possible. Correct. And it just so happens that there's an excellent candidate in front of me. Labik is here too. I stared at Labik, who's sleeping on the ground with a happy expression. It made me shake my head. That said, I had to acknowledge her courage of risking her life to help Ren, and charging in in the midst of battle to stop Ren who had lost his sanity. Although Ren still seemed oblivious, Lebwick's actions came from her love for Ren. At some point, loyalty seemed to have become love. Regardless, to Labik, Ren was more important than Pan Incontinent. On the other hand, even when all hope seemed to be lost, Ren stayed in Pan Incontinent. Between Ren and Labik, I'm going to have to choose Ren. But I'm foolish. Because of me, both Labik and Crown Prince suffered. When I'm watching Crown Prince, I can't help but think why I can't be like Crown Prince. Kohuk. I flicked his forehead strongly. His head was so hard that it made my finger hurt slightly. I held the pain in and told Ren. I already said what you did was foolish. But it was understandable. Mm -hmm. well, he was your father Kohum. In any case, Ren is different than before, and I know Ren can get stronger. As for your rash personality, it can be fixed through another thrashing phase. But I... I hold Ren in high regard because Ren managed to save eight children from that hell without losing hope. Ren's full of spirit and hungry for battle. That's exactly what I want. That's not something that can be taught. You have to be born with it. Crown Prince. I won't take no for an answer. I won't change my mind anyways. Can I really not avoid another thrashing phase? Is that what you were worried about? I gave Ren the world's power. It was simple. I opened the bottle and shoved it in Ren's mouth. 
Then, using my power as the hero, I just had to settle and energize it. Compared to the time and effort it took for a hero to transfer his own power to someone else, it was extremely simple. After obtaining the hero's power, Ren rubbed his belly and spoke. Yu Yu, I feel dizzy. I can feel that this power hasn't settled in. It's nauseating almost. ITLL be better once you get used to it. Congratulations on becoming a hero. Quite the pressure, huh? It'll be sure to fulfill my duties. Well, the kids are here now. Don't go back for a while. Everything Ren wanted to protect was on Earth. Although I couldn't say it was safe to be on Earth, I was at least sure that it was more safe than the Pan and Continent, which was dominated by the El Padis. There's nothing Ren can do alone anyways. If you die and have the world's power stolen again, that would be disastrous. They said so themselves. That they needed time before an El Padis that can contain the hero's power was born. In other words, one would eventually come to being. I'm not sure how they can reproduce without the world's power, but that's what they said. Maybe they'll fuse or evolve or something. All right. Going back alone is simply stupid. Or what, did you plan on hiding in the ocean? Who knows if they can still reproduce? That's true. So Ren, help me. I said bluntly. I'll deal with the danger Earth is facing in two years. After that, I want to save other worlds. Ludia's Luca continent, Daisy's silent continent, and yours, the Panin continent. All of them. Do you know what you're saying, Crown Prince? Of course. You weren't thinking of hiding for the rest of your life, were you? Then there would be no meaning to having the hero's power. Ren's face was dyed red. He shot up and shouted. Impossible. Do you know how many worlds were ruined and how many worlds are being ruined? If you did, you wouldn't say something like that. If strong explorers come together, I'm sure it's possible. People like you, Daisy, and me. So help me, Ren. Help protect Earth. It'll help you too. I spoke calmly as I stared into his eyes. There was no room for joking. I wanted Ren to reply with seriousness. At that moment, Ren's expression became strange. Crown Prince. You're your guild. Didn't I tell you? Revival. It means rebirth. Rebirth. Ren fell. Seeing the hint of flames that began to burn in his eyes, I smiled. I'll try. After all, I owe Crown Prince a debt. Good. Welcome to Revival, Ren. Ren joined my guild. I was somewhat curious how Labique would react, but I decided not to pursue the thought. When Ren and I shook our hands, Daisy, who was watching from the side, slammed her empty beer can down. Long, arduous journey. But, I'm looking forward to it. You'll be sure to save Silent Continent too. Then, you'll become its hero. Get ready to feel the pressure. Humph, I welcome it any time. With that, she left the room. Perhaps she just wanted to hear Ren and my conversation. Or perhaps, she wanted to confirm my resolve. I got up. Ren also followed me up and asked. You um is the thrashing phase starting now? Let me climb the dungeon first. Chapter, 200 Of course, I didn't just march straight into the dungeon. I had to see the guild members, and more importantly, I had to hold a funeral for Ren's father, whose corpse was in my inventory. Daisy drooled after hearing that I had a hero's corpse, but there was no way I could let her use a friend's father as an undead. However, I still promised her that I'd get her a similar corpse one day. Previous Hero Strong, warrior. Even as we cremated Ren's father, Daisy murmured with regret. It was slightly scary. As Labeek and the children had to be at the funeral, it couldn't be held at the dungeon's residential area or the resort area. In the end, we gathered others who wanted to come and held the funeral at a nearby mountain. As it would be hard to explain if an ordinary person saw us, I had Waya cast magic to prevent people from approaching the mountain. Naturally, Waya became the first to hear about what happened. I didn't think you'd defeat a world's enemy. The conditions were favorable. That's it. Waya lightly smiled. 
I'm extremely curious. Who knows, maybe ITLL help us deal with the danger Earth is facing. Tell me about it in detail when we're alone later. Along with a drink, of course. It wasn't anything special. But sure. Although only people unrelated to Pan and Continent didn't have to come, all of Revival's members attended the funeral. It was partly to meet Ren, who was the newest member. When the female members saw the little children, they were all extremely elated. Look at those rabbit ears. She's shaking. I want to hug her. So cute. Of course, with their overwhelming affection, the children got scared and hid behind Ren, Labique, and me. Though there was a little accident where Ina who came running toward me almost froze Alpha accidentally, everything else went smoothly. Ren could send his father off, which I was sure would serve as a good way to affirm his resolve. Going back to Ina, as she was about the same age as the children from the Pan and Continent, she had a little conflict with them. Daddy, who are they? Daddy's Inus. Daddy isn't Inus. Also, they're friends from the Pan and Continent. Daddy? Shin Appa is a daddy? That's a lie. It has to be a lie. They don't have the same hair color. Hearing how Ina called me daddy, Alpha perked up her rabbit ears and asked, while the other children stared at Ina and me surprised. Ina puffed her cheeks and put her arms around Moon Neck. Ina is daddy's daughter. Why yeah. Ina is my daughter. It felt a bit weird saying it, but there was no other choice. I didn't want to provoke Ina's trauma. I patted Ina, who was stuck to me like a koala, and announced to the others that I was her father. Seeing the surprised children jumping up and down while flapping their ears, I wanted to die. After that, the funeral ended. I did catch Daisy trying to put her hands on the ashes, but we managed to clean everything up. After that, the problem was where Ren and the children would stay. As they couldn't all live in my house, we decided to simply buy a house near ours. When Labique realized that Ren and the eight children would live by themselves in a house, she came up to me with a look of determination. I want to enter your guild. You want to live with Ren. Hook. It's written all over your face. Although her motives were impure, it wasn't a bad idea to have a woman in the house, especially with Ren being insensitive about certain things. Like they say, the more the merrier. Furthermore, she was a skilled first dungeon explorer on the 69th floor. After a bit of talking, Labique left the demonic girls guild and joined mine. Only after that did I feel like everything was taken care of. I had to spoil Lydia and Ina as I hadn't seen them for a while, but that was it. So, you came to climb the dungeon right away? Yes. After listening to my short reply, Loretta made a serious expression. Then, she said something that really didn't match her expression. First, congratulations on defeating the world's enemy of Pan and Continent. That is truly a great achievement. It's not something you can disclose carelessly, but at least the dungeon's administrators all know about it. Especially the OL. Lord. Thanks. So. When will you let go of me? At my question, Loretta strengthened her grip on my wrists and continued. But Shin Nim, you have to be careful. Not all world's enemies are the same. Don't think that Earth's problems can be solved as easily as the Pan and Continents. I know. They'll stay with Loretta for an hour before I go. Happy. It was a complete non sequitur, but it seemed to have been the correct answer. Loretta immediately let go of my wrists and smiled brightly. She dragged me along to a table, sat down, and tapped on the seat next to her. Then sit here and tell everything that happened. Yeah, yeah. Ehe, hurry. From then, I had to wait three hours before I could go up to the 59th floor. Since I ended up getting the Queen Elf's blessing, I wasn't particularly unsatisfied. Of course, I didn't do any other strange things. Yup. After breaking through the 59th floor, which only had an increased number of golems, in two hours, I immediately entered Beyond's ninth floor. Each floor of Beyond was bigger than the previous. Without mana detection, it was practically impossible to advance onward. Of course, mana detection was something one naturally learned the first time one entered Beyond. Kugya. 
human, see the power of Lizard Knight. Yeah, I'm happy to see you guys too. After fighting annoying enemies like the Mana Eater and El Paydies, seeing Dark Ratman and Lizard Knights gave me a sense of comfort. Feeling such things and beyond, I felt depressed like I'd taken the wrong road somewhere. Now, even if 200 orc lords appeared at the same time, I felt like I could deal with them without a change in my facial expression. You cleared Beyond's first floor. You obtained the qualification to challenge the dungeon's 60th floor. Your maximum HP and MP increase by 2%. You obtained 5 bonus stats. Experience has been added to skills you frequently use to progress through Beyond's 9th floor. High rank provoke became level 7. Your existence itself is a provocation. Perhaps, even lifeless objects might get angry and attack you. Wind King's Rage became level 3. Damage increase per monster increases to 15%, and the maximum amplification increases to 200%. Who? After decimating hundreds of Dark Rat Men and Lizard Knight with Crimson Roar, I let out a satisfied sigh and checked the message window. It was now time for the 60th floor. After I defeat the floor master, Ren's thrashing phase would begin. Thinking about how much Ren will grow, a smile bloomed on my face. At that moment, someone sent me a message. Though I flinched, thinking Ren somehow found out what I was thinking and messaged me about it, it wasn't Ren. The message was from someone I couldn't remember when I had added him to my friend list. Oi, the armor's finished. It'll come right away. The moment I saw Lin's message, I left beyond through the gate and rushed to the residential area. I felt like someone was off while I was breaking through the 59th floor and beyond's 9th floor. I didn't have my armor. I was wondering why it hurt so much when I got hit. When I arrived at Fairy Garden, instead of going to Loretta's cabin like I usually did, I asked around and headed to Lin's workshop. As expected of a vice guild master's workshop, although it looked like it ruined Fairy Garden's natural beauty, no one paid any attention to it. In Fairy Garden, where everything looked natural, Lin's workshop was the lone modern building that ruined the environment. A chimney that spewed out black smoke and extreme heat that could be felt all around the building, only after seeing Lin's workshop did I picture Lin as a blacksmith. Oh, you came here quickly. Lin greeted me with a loose well-ventilating clothing and a cigarette in his mouth. Next to him was a new armor in a bracelet form like the Crimson Dragon Scale armor. Interestingly, this one was jet black. It's made out of the materials you brought me. Just because I'm a descendant of a red dragon, it doesn't mean everything I make has to be red. Ah, that makes sense. Well, thanks, Lin. You did all this for me. It's not for you. It's for Nunim, TSK. Lin flicked away the cigarette ashes and murmured curses. However, he seemed to be making a satisfactory smile. Do you like Loretta? Shut up and take the armor. Thanks to my outstanding skills, it turned out better than what's possible from the materials. Did I hit the mark? But he plays around with other women too freely for that to be true. Maybe, it's something like respect and admiration rather than passion. Though Fairy Garden's inner workings seemed to be complicated, since it wasn't any of my business, I just took the black bracelet and examined it. Pure Black Desire Legend Durability Indestructible Defense 7500 Equipment Requirement Kong Shin Option All Stats 30 Decreases Damage Taken From All Basic Attacks By 50% Decreases Damage Taken From All Attack Skills From 30% Chance of receiving a critical hit increases by 50%, but chance of dealing a critical hit increases by 200%. When using a charge type attack, Desire Thorn activates. When using any attack skills, Sacrifice can be used. When HP falls below 10%, Devourer activates once per day. Desire Thorn can be activated once per day while using a charge type attack. Countless number of thorns shoots out from the armor, absorbing the HP from enemies hit by the thorns. The amount of HP absorbed is half the damage dealt. As such, the targets will end up receiving 50% more damage. Sacrifice usable with any attack skill. Receives half of the skill's damage, but doubles the skill's effect. The damage received by sacrifice cannot drop your HP under 10%.
Devourer after choosing a target, all attacks done absorbs a portion of the target's HP to recover your own. However, overabsorbing the target's HP may cause mutations to your body. This change can be purified by highest grade holy magic or elixir. Legend What, I upgraded your cape to legend too. Do you not want it? I want it. Give it to me now. 2 legend grade equipment. I feel like I can conquer the dungeon's 100th floor right now.